<laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm ready. Oh, yeah. Tina! It's your boy, PSA Stitch, here with another Sunday, Sunday live stream with everyone's favorite really desperately yearns to be a computer so he can steal all your art. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my. I guess you can tell what we were talking about before the stream, huh? <laughs> Enough of this. What are we what are we doing? Enough of this AI art controversy. Yes. We're here to talk about Hassan Anabi. Right. All right. So uh our favorite all... uh America deserve 9-11. Yeah. Bro. Oh my god, yeah, of course. Um, so we were off last week, and obviously there was lots of big news breaking. And uh one of those things that happened in the interminum intermittent, I can't intermittent you, you voluminous you say voluminous, yes. <laughs> Listen, listen, like six months in term is the word. Okay. No, no, I'm using a different word, but um, in the interim. Anyway, I think interim is the word you're looking for, but whatever. Continue. Anyway, um, yeah, Adam's gonna claim that he made up that word and just got to be using it six months from now. But anyway, voluminous yes. stories were breaking in the interim of our yes. vacation. Right, right. And uh, so Hassan has been doing a lot of Israel Palestine coverage, obviously, and it's been completely insane for the most part. Um, the left, the leftists, I should say, specifically the leftists, the anti liberal socialists, have really tipped their hand and shown the country and the world kind of how sickeningly psychotic they are in the aftermath of the Hamas attack where a lot of people were cheering it on or having little to no sympathy for Israel. We covered some of this already. And it's like this weird spectrum of people who are like basically just in favor of it to people who are bending over backwards to say it's really bad, but right. That's always, that's always like sketchy. Like, Oh, it's really bad that all these like innocent people die, but and you're like, well, you know, why is look, there a butt there? <laughs> it's it's really bad, period. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let me right, show you how you do sign. this. Yeah. Let it's, me show it's, you how you do this. It's, it's horrendous. It is, period. Yeah, exactly. Very simple. Um, and so today we're going to watch Hassan on Piers Morgan. And also um, there's a couple clip comp. There's a clip compilation of things he said are interesting. And then I made a clip compilation from one of his streams. It's very interesting. And. It really shows how like the leftist psychology works because it lines up exactly perfectly with the BLM protests and riots in terms of this idea that if you're a person who has poor material conditions or the perception is you have poor material conditions, then you have no responsibility for your actions whatsoever and you can just right. you know you're basically just an animal who no one can blame for whatever you do essentially and it's kind of weird because like all of the like both sides kind of look at it in this way but in the opposite direction so like like hassan the leftist basically look at it like well hamas is simply a product of its poor environment its poor material conditions Therefore, they have no uh, choice. They're going to act in this like horrible way. And so you can't like blame them f at all. And then the flip side, it's weird because then the flip side is like, well, Israel and Israelis are like living in a country that's under threat from Hamas. And so they're just going to act like violently in response to Hamas is violent and they have no responsibility. And it's just interesting. Both sides kind of like like the streams, I should say, of both sides kind of have this view that, well, both factions here just have to respond with violence and there's no alternative and there's no responsibility for either side. Right. Is is there an alternative? I mean, there's always an alternative. So <laughs> what would that be? Do you disagree? I, it's a tough situation. The... I feel like the Palestinian people are being taken advantage of by Hamas. I think Hamas is obviously I look at things through the lens of selector theory because mm -hmm. a small contingent of people in charge in Gaza that are Hamas that are going to do 
whatever they want, and they want to wage war with Israel. So even if the 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 Palestinian people of Gaza wanted to vote them out of power or establish some kind of democracy, they can't. They literally can't do that. They have no power to do that. So any any foreign aid that goes in there for the Palestinian people, what well, might make it into the hands of the Palestinian people for a while, but it's inevitably going to end up in the hands of Hamas and they're going to use it to build weapons and of rockets course. and whatever right, they want. Right. Yeah. yeah. They're not going to use it to build infrastructure no, no matter what the people of Palestine want. So right. I just, the, the situation, a lot of the people on the left, I think they're frankly just delusional. <laughs> they think that if we dump a bunch of money into Gaza, that it will become this thriving democratic utopia. Well, no, yeah. they're yeah. literally being held as hostages by Hamas. Well, and that's why I tweeted the thing that I tweeted, uh, you know, a few days ago about how when I hear his son, other people talk about how Israel has all the power to stop the situation. I don't know what the hell they're talking they have, about. Yeah, no power. I don't know if you've ever dealt with like a psychopathic neighbor or someone who's like right. targeted you. Like you look, the idea that you're going to make friends with the psychopath down the street is not it's not going to work yeah because like if even like theoretically we can imagine a scenario where israel in response to being attacked like this is obviously would never happen right but just theoretically mm. in response to israel being attacked israel 100 percent capitulates to hamas demands they release all the palestinian uh hamas prisoners that they have they you so know, years of work have been done to capture those people because they're right. bad guys, That's all right? gone, right. Yeah, they're they psychopaths. Release them. They release them all. They pull out all the settlers from the West Bank because they're in Gaza, and they allow them to have completely open uh, trade access to the rest of the world, right? Mm -hmm. So they do everything that Hamas wants, except for like they can, like Hamas obviously wants Israel to not exist anymore, but that's like the one thing they don't do. Like, does Hassan and these stupid idiots think that if Israel does all those things, that they're suddenly Hamas and be like, oh, I guess we won and now we're going to live in peace and harmony? No, no, they're going to be they're shopping for a that. nuclear weapon. Right. Exactly. They're just going to keep they're like, oh, this is wonderful. Now we can like now that they know that that level of violence works. OK, they're going to a keep doing it. And B, now their trade is open and they're just going to keep importing more and more weapons and they're going to become more even more violent. And this is why, like, when I hear people say Israel's all the power, I'm like, what are you talking about? That makes no sense at all. If you're in a conflict and with one side and if one side's goals, even if you capitulate to those goals, they'll still try to destroy you. Then you can't then you can't uh, make an agreement with that side. Right. Right. We, we talk about Dictator's Handbook a lot on the show. Selectorate theory is a theory from the book. It's very, very simple. If you have a small coalition of people in power, they don't give a flying fuck what the population thinks. There's right. no incentive for them to give a fuck what the population thinks about anything, okay? Right. There, a switch kind of flips when you have these broad coalition democracies because all of a sudden the person in power can't bribe you know 300,000 constituents like that's just physically impossible right so it flips they now they're focused on well i have to make 300,000 people happy to stay in power you know 300,000 people if you're a congressman or a senator obviously if you're president of the united states you got to make 70 million people happy right just to, just to get elected. That's like half of the voting population in the United States. So you're focused on producing public policy that's going to make a lot of people's lives happy. Hamas doesn't have those constraints, right? Right. They don't need to focus on making the people of Gaza happy. They don't need to focus on making the people of West Bank happy. So they can do whatever they want. They can focus on their goals, which is annihilating Israel, right? Right. Well, how also, many? How yeah. many? Do do we know how many people are controlling Hamas? Is it like a hundred, no a thousand? I don't even know. It's probably less that are controlling right. it at the top. And so, you also, so you've got five hundred guys that are controlling a population of, I think it's three million in the Gaza Strip, two and a half million. They I don't mean, care less, what those two probably. look. They don't care what those two million people think. Like if we flew in and said, look. We're going to make 100 Palestinians. We, we're going to pick people 
that are Palestinians, that they're going to be like thought leaders in their community. And we're going to give them the genius grant, the million dollar genius grant, okay, so that they can build up their communities in Palestine. As soon as you give a million dollars to 100 people in Palestine, who, who, who do you think is going to show up at their door and take that money? Hamas. The gang, right. the criminal gang that runs right. the, the entire area. Yes, that's why they're living in poverty. Not because yeah. the West doesn't want them to have 100 millionaires that are going to make the community a better place. It's just, it's technically impossible to do. So you have to clear out. Like, this is, this is a thing. Uh, growing democracies is hard. Getting to the point where you flip that switch, where people care. Where people, it's, you just don't have. You have a culture that believes in law and order instead of believing in bribes and taking as much as you can possibly get away with. That's just a hard culture to grow. Mm -hmm. There was, um, I don't know if you saw it. There was some video Hamas put out. They're kind of bragging about, you know, when they killed the fourteen hundred Israelis, and in the video they showed themselves digging up water pipelines. And then cutting the pipe into pieces and, and turning it into missiles. Wow. And now you know. And now you know. We hear so much about how Israel, you know, is cutting off their water supply and you know, et cetera, et cetera. No way. And it's like, oh okay, my. well, I mean, are they really? Is Hamas helping their own people when they're digging up the water li pipelines before the conflict, and they're literally destroying their own infrastructure just to make missiles that are going to mostly get shot down by the Iron Dome anyway? They don't care. Those people are just, they're hostages. They got, right. look, they got, I don't know how many Israeli hostages. I think it's like 200 and <laughs> something like that. Yeah. They have 2 million Palestinian hostages. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, I, so I don't know what is, the, what's this third option that you've come up with? Well, and it, it's weird because, and we're going to see in this video, like a lot of the people are trying to make, like the distinction between Hamas and the Palestinians in Gaza to say like, oh, well, don't blame all the Palestinians in Gaza for Hamas, which I think is like a correct point of view. I agree. Yeah. Because like, as you said, I think they are hostages. And, you know, people bring up the election that happened in 2006, even though the election was heavily contested about who really won. Was it oh, Hamas? Oh, I'm sure it was right. contested. Because right. like, so people might not know. I think it was 2006 or 2007, there was an election when Israel pulled out of Gaza and it was, the two parties were Hamas and Fatah, who was like the governing body in the West Bank now. And, you know, it was very contentious about who won. They couldn't really decide who won the election. And so basically like a civil war broke out and that's why the Gaza Strip is controlled by Hamas and the West Bank is controlled by Fatah, a completely different organization that isn't you know, as terroristically violent or as a terrorist organization the way Hamas is. And like, it was so violent that in Gaza, like the Hamas people were like killing the other political leaders and throwing them off rooftops and all this other stuff. And there hasn't been an election, you know, since. So it's like, well, you know, I don't think it's fair for people to say like, well, they voted this people. And it's like, well, number one, did they? Number two, that was in 2006. Like, I don't know if that counts. You know, there comes a time period where it's like, okay, I don't think that matters anymore. Yeah, they haven't two, had an election we're, since. we're coming up on 20 years here. I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> I don't, yeah, it's like, okay, sure, 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 sure. Um, I think there, the, we, I, we looked it up. There's a democracy to authoritarian scale that they judge nations based on how they treat the press, whether or not they have freedom of speech, whether or not they have free and fair elections, whether or not the elections are contested, all these different factors. And Hamas or Gaza was just, I think it was like three point something. It's just complete authoritarian right but the the weird and interesting and dark messed up part about you know the coverage that we're going to do on hassan is unlike most people who are trying to like create a distinction between hamas and say like hamas is the bad guys and the palestinian people in gaza are like the hostages he's like intentionally blurring that line and basically saying no it's totally like justifiable and understandable and maybe even good question mark that the Gaza the, the Palestinians in Gaza are supporting Hamas and he doesn't want there to be like this clear distinction and that's very bizarre and disgusting completely yes. disgusting yeah. yeah Hassan doesn't look everything that we articulated in the beginning here just is completely over Hassan's head Hassan is ideologically possessed all he cares about is 
socialism and oppressor oppressed narrative. He's read so much Marx that everything he sees is oppressor oppressed narrative. So, yeah, his brain is so broken on just like every. And here's the thing: it's really annoying too because when I listen to him talk about this, Hassan isn't actually stupid. He gets away with saying a lot of dumb shit because people say he's a himbo. He's not act. Hassan is actually not stupid. He's actually he, yeah, he, pretty smart and very knowledgeable, but it's all just incredibly, insanely biased, like yeah. insane levels of bias. Because whenever I hear him talk about the Israel situation, it's like all just the most one-sided version of everything. It's all just completely one-sided, the anti-Israel, you know, situ you know, version of events. Now, obviously, there are people on the other side that just give like the complete, you know, Israel version of events. You know, Ben Shapiro and Alan Dershowitz are very much, you know, on that in that camp. But like, I do feel like when I'm listening to generally people, people who are generally more pro-Israel, I'd say on average, generally seem to be a little bit more nuanced. And I think that's because they're generally coming from a place of like believing in the values of individual liberalism, where a lot of the people that are kind of uh, like on the Palestinian side. Like they're just like on this like one-sided Palestinian side of, of events are either uh, anti anti liberal like religious people or they're just complete like brain dead leftists who just literally America bad anything America supports must be bad therefore I have to side with them they're quote oppressed they kind of look at it like these are like quote non white people being oppressed by white European colonialists they call Israel a, a colonialist enterprise blah 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 and they can't actually look at anything beyond that point. Yeah, it's it's their ideology, this leftist ideology, which has a pretty big stranglehold of the West. Even that's why everyone is like, like the mask has literally come off in the last couple of weeks. People are shocked yes. by this. You've got these college kids running around Ivy League schools, you know, basically being anti-Semitic, openly anti-Semitic. It's yes. kind of scary. Yeah. Very scary and weird place. BLM the, Chicago just, putting out the the Hamas oh yeah, glider oh person, you know. Yeah. Oh, it's insane. The it's I do think like Hassan blew up because he said America deserved 9-11. I think a lot of people thought this was like memeing or something. Right. I think now it's pretty obvious that he meant that. He yes. totally meant that. Yeah. Yeah. And he still means it. He never really apologized or took it back. He 100% no. means it. He stands by it. He, he believes it. Yeah, his audience, his gigantic audience, they believe it. That's what's scary. Like one yeah, dude like, in, a, in a chair, that's not so scary to me. The fact that he's so popular, that's yeah. what's scary. Yeah. And if you look at his chat when we watch one of his videos, it's like insane. It's in totally insane what people in the chat are saying. These are the most radical, insane psychopaths, you know, that you're seeing. And most of them want Israel to just not exist. And I don't know if Hassan's ever said clearly what his end goal is, because he makes an offhanded comment about like two state solution being cucked and he's in favor of one state solution. And I don't know if that means a one state where Israel doesn't exist. No <laughs> like, way. I don't know what that means. He doesn't finish that? He just Not, makes like a, this what offhanded is a one remark. State solution. Yeah, I was like, well, what does that mean? Right? <laughs> like, are you talking about like uh, one state where Israel controls everything, or are you talking about one state where the Palestinians control everything? What does that mean? So, the anti, anyway. some, the anti. Look, I, it's no, it's no mystery. I have a lot of Jewish friends, including my co-host here, Sitch. Right. The level of anti-Semitism that I've seen in the last couple of weeks is just. I mean, it's fucking demoralizing. It really is. And it's all from like, not the, the typical sources. <laughs> it is. It is not. I'm waiting for Hassan and Nick Fuentes to start collabing. Like, that's really what's fucking how crazy think, shit I has gotten in the last couple actually, weeks. I'm, I don't want to say he's 100% sure. I don't know. I think, I think he's pro-Israel. Like, he's anti-American involvement. But I think they're, I think a lot of those guys are pro-Israel, like, blowing up, you know, <laughs> the Palestinians. The, <laughs> so like like i said israel is in a tough spot it really is yeah because you, you this whole idea that you bomb them with butter you know you you make them fat and happy and nobody wants to go to war that's just that's delusional that's delusional if 
that was a possibility, if that was on the table, we would have done it years ago, decades yeah. ago. It's That's not a viable option for anybody. And the people who who think that it is, they're just, you know, they're out to lunch. They have no idea the technical challenges here. So, mm -hmm. and I mean, I have been racking my brain with the, t the technical challenge here. And I just, look, I don't, this is just, it's one of those wicked problems they call, you know, the yes. more you think about it, the harder it gets to solve. So these people that come out, look, Hassan famously said you could solve the homelessness problem just by giving all the homeless people, all of the empty houses. <laughs> <laughs> that there's, Look, these people like these solutions because they're idiots. Okay. Right. Yeah. Problems, problems like this, simple solutions don't work on. No, <laughs> so, no. And even when there's a solution, it's not going to be simple, fast process. It's going to be a slow, painful, incremental, yes. incremental grueling process. Yes. Um, well, this is it was a slow process to get everyone where they are today. Yeah. Yeah. This, we had a lot of hubris in Iraq. They can, oh, we'll just take over and establish de democratic institutions. It'll happen overnight. The culture has to change. Same first. thing in Russia when the Berlin Wall came down, the Same, USSR yeah. collapsed. Yeah. The culture yeah. has to change, and the culture can only change incrementally. Yes. It can only change slowly over time. So, I guess, uh, so what are we looking at first here? Well, before, I just want to say one last thing before we start about the uh, anti Semitism. It's interesting because there's a couple of things happening here. One, like I, I remember my parents talking about how in the seventies, uh, when the oil embargo came, uh, because of America's support of Israel, and like there was cars going around the block to get gas, you really saw the anti Semitism. <laughs> no way. Holy yeah, like God. super. And it's like it's interesting because like people are seeing the anti Semitism ramp up now. And it's all just ideological. Like there's no real material harm so far that America's suffering from any of this. Um, and so I can only imagine in the 70s when there was a material harm, when gas prices were like getting ramped up, you could see the anti-Semitism, you know, really uh, come up. And it kind of makes you like, I'm not like some, I forget who it was. Someone was like, oh my God, you know, the Jews have to all learn China Chinese because they're only going to be safe to run China. So I like, I don't believe any of that shit. You know, I think Jews will be fine in America. You know, maybe not some of these European countries, but I think they'll be fine in America. I'm not worried about any of that stuff. But it is always good to know that, like, there's a huge population of people that are ready to, like, pop off at any moment, you know, as soon as their lives get a little bit uncomfortable, you know, in terms of being uh, bigots. Um, number one. Number two, there was, I forget who it was. There's a very interesting conversation that Sam Harris had with uh, with Eric Weinstein on uh, trigonometry and he quoted someone from the atlantic who was saying that this is kind of a turning point in the culture because it's a real mask off moment for wokeness and it's funny because i don't know if you remember i said this like a year ago i said <laughs> look at I, such. I said all the alt-right people and all the right wingers who are so mad about wokeness and also very anti-semitic are all dumb because it's really, or I think I said this, I said this during the Kanye thing. I said, they're all stupid because at the end of the day, just you wait, it's going to be the Jews that save everyone from wokeness because the, <laughs> the woke people are going to come out as just hating Israel so much, hate being so anti-Semitic that it's going to be like, that's how it's going to really open the left, the normal left's eyes open to like the insanity of the, of the woke leftists. And so people are like, I don't know if that's going to happen, Sitch. And here we are, right? Here's the moment where this is, and this is, this is going to change things. Like it's not going to happen overnight, but there are a lot of people on the left who are Jewish, who have a lot of money, who have a lot of influence, who are in academia, who give a lot of money to these, you know, oh yeah, you know, call these Harvard, these Harvard and Yale and Ivy League schools, who and who they're gave a lot at, of money, who, gave exactly, a lot exactly, of money, exactly, exactly, past that, yes. And they're looking at this and they're like, holy shit, what have we been supporting this whole time? So I yes. do think this is a huge tipping point in American society being able to throw off. It's not going to happen overnight, but American society like becoming skeptical and the left, more importantly, becoming skeptical 
the mainstream left, of like understanding the danger of all this woke nonsense. Yeah. Hopefully, let's hope we hit the high water mark here. We're on our, I mean, if we're on a roller coaster, we're going down fast. I can't believe how everything has deteriorated in two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, I mean, that's exactly it. Um, Christian Ball for $20. Thank you. Says currently seven hours into the second 14 hour road trip in two days. Wow. I've been looking forward to the stream to save me from my boredom more than ever. Let's have a good laugh at Hassan's expense. Gents, seven hours to go. Well, thank you for $20. Christian um, said he was listening to 48 Laws of Power, which is a great book, and nice. uh, Dictator's Handbook as well. Right. So cool. And good, uh, good choices. Calvin Paffer for $20 says, tell Shad thanks about the linseed oil tip. I really nailed this baby shower gift. Well, I'll pass that on. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. Go. Okay, let's jump into it. Well, now the battle of the hearts and minds traditionally played out through diplomacy and propaganda is being played out online. My next guest has almost half a billion views for his provocative commentary online, making him hugely influential. Hassan Piker streams live under the name Hassan Abi. His analysis of the Israel-Hamas war has taken a highly critical stance towards Israel and Western media, and he's been calling me out for my coverage. Because he only cares about Israeli citizens. He does not care about Palestinians as human beings. That's why it's apples to oranges. It's like one side is a human, the other side is a barbaric monster child. I never said that, obviously. Uh, he says that he'd like nothing more than to come on to Uncensored and call me a baboon in a suit to my face. Well, here I am, a baboon, uh, and he can <laughs> join me now. Uh, I'm joined by Hassan. Hassan, thank you very much indeed for coming on. Thank you for having me, Piers. Uh, it's very early here in Los Angeles, California, but I'm going to try to do my very best to, to not do my British accent while I'm here. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. And listen okay. So there's a couple of things in the beginning here that are interesting to me. Uh, the first is apparently, even though he criticized Piers Morgan uh, and Piers Morgan reached out to him very fairly quickly that come on, that come on Hassan originally didn't want to. <laughs> really? He originally turned down the offer to go on Piers Morgan's show. And it's kind of funny because there's a stream. I don't know if it's in, I don't remember if I put in the clips that we're going to watch. There's a stream where he's like, someone in his chat is like, oh, I wish you were on TV. So you had a bigger audience to like, you know, spread your propagandic filth. And he's like, they won't have me on TV. And then someone's like, what do you mean? Piers Morgan like said you could come on. And then he's like, well, you know, <laughs> and then like all the hesitancy comes out. And he's like, well, he wanted me to come on while I was streaming and I couldn't do that. And I'm thinking like, the hell does that mean what an idiot you can you couldn't just like take an hour off stream to go to wherever the studio is to film this and then come back like this what, what a ridiculous like that's obviously a lie right doesn't make any sense what do you mean you can't you can't take a break from streaming the thing you do constantly for like seven to eight hours a day you know almost every other day to just do a one hour interview that's bs give me a break yeah and then yeah and then well, now he's saying the, like what's it's the too hesitation early. Now he's you saying know? it's too early in the morning. So it's like, wait a minute, before you couldn't do it because you were streaming and now it's too early in the morning. Well, what's going on here? What do you think the hesitation was? Pierce is gonna just smart get, and he's going to get... He's going to get BTFO in the conversation. He's going to get destroyed. Yeah. That's he's, a, he opened up with a joke, which is very, very smart. He He's in a situation where he's going to either get BTFO'd or his audience is going to criticize him because he didn't like, you know, when he was watching Pierce Morgan uh, coverage, he was like ra like railing into him. You know, they played the clip. He was calling him all sorts of names. And, they, and he knows when he talked to him in person, he's going to like not have that energy. And his chat's going to attack him for it. So it is actually, he's in a, like a very not good situation for the conversation. Right. So maybe that's why he says he's so tired. So he's got an excuse when he goes back to his audience. Yeah, well, sure it's really I wanted morning, to attack him, but he was, I was so tired. They right. got me out of bed so early in the morning. Right. And then the second thing, which is interesting, is that they're like, it really shows you the age gap and the maturity gap between the two audiences because there were a bunch of people in Hassan's audience and Hassan himself were like, I was like, Hassan literally says, Oh, I don't know why he played that clip. And, to, and that's, you know, of me roasting him and said me roasting him right in the beginning. Like he's giving me like a W right off the bat. 
And it's like, oh, well, that's because you're a child. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you, you know, him relaying that you were like it being obnoxious and insulting him is not a win to like the broader audience of adults who are watching this behavior, you know, content. It's like to your young child audience, maybe that's a W, right? Yeah. Thank goodness none of these people vote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? There you go. But look, their parents should be voting for them. Custodial voting is the way to go. Then they can have some reasoned people voting in their stead. Oh, hey, I know that's that's that um the background there. That's that uh what's it called? Yeah. That's that place in LA, the the observatory. It's called Griffith Observatory. There you go. <laughs> I saw that. I didn't go there, but I saw it. I saw it at a distance. Did you? Oh, yes. nice. There you go. Right off to the right there is the Hollywood sign. Look at how, what you know, it's amazing how all of these like places in LA have all been congealed into one frame. <laughs> Well, this no, is not this, a, is this is not how anything looks. Okay, that's not a real background right there. I mean, this picture was probably taken on the trail to the Hollywood sign. I've been up here and seen this this spot. Mm -hmm. It's actually pretty cool. You can see our studios right on the other side of the big group of buildings on the left there. There you go. Our artist studio. Listen, I appreciate you coming on. Explain to me why you consider me a stenographer for the Israeli government, given that in the last week, I think more than any other host in the world, I have given lengthy platforms to pro-Palestinian voices to articulate that side of the argument. No, I, I, I do have to commend you. Uh, you certainly have uh, had more pro-Palestinian voices than uh, the rest of the British media and certainly the rest of uh, Western media in general. Now. As far as uh, uh, saying that you're a stenographer, I said that journalists are not supposed to be stenographers, and yet when it comes down to it, in most circumstances, in whatever conflict uh, we may be in, there are stenographers for whichever, uh, whichever party is aligning with the American State Department and the interests of the West in general. And so, that's a couple of things. First of all, it's interesting that right off the bat, he like has to do this walk back He's like, well, I mean, I guess you've been better than anyone else. <laughs> it's like, okay. Right. And then he gives this stenographer line um, where he basically just saying, oh, you're just copying whatever the U.S. State Department wants, which is, which first of all, ironically hilarious coming from Hassan, because that is literally Hassan, that is his number one frame at which he operates, is America bad. So he's yep. like, well, whatever America says, I'm just going to be the stenographer for the other side. I'm just going to flip everything opposite. America says. Yeah. yeah. Whatever comes out of the State Department, I'm going to say, you lie! <laughs> right, right. And it's like, there's a lot, and first of all, there's lots of, I've, I mean, I've seen them, there's lots of journalists all over the place that have had, you know, a pretty wide uh, variety of views on the Israel-Palestine situation, and this situation specifically. And the and like, when Hassan's entire, op, like, his entire operation, his entire view of everything is literally just to repeat uh, anti-Israeli propaganda, ad nauseum. I don't think I've ever heard him, ever, in all the clips I've seen, defend any part of Israel or Israel's existence. And all the hours of coverage, I've heard him talk about it. I don't think I've heard him once say, you know, you know, Israel, you know, should exist as a as a country, or Israel was justified in doing this. I don't think I've heard him say that one time. Isn't that interesting? Wow. There's not a single part of this conflict where he thinks Israel is justified in doing anything. Yeah, it's crazy. It's totally crazy. Israel happens to be the one uh, in this in this ongoing conflict. It's interesting that you call me a propagandist because I want to play you. This was your reaction to when the hospital got I'm bombed. a propagandist. Well, no, no, for the record. I'm, no, no, I'm not calling I'm you a propagandist. That. Just, no, no, I'm just saying. I'm going to no, play I say, you. I'm saying I am. Okay, well then, I want to I'm play saying it. I am I just before you even it. play it. Okay, I'm going to play. This is the the stupidest exchange I've ever yep. seen in my entire <laughs> life. The, the I know he calls himself a propagandist, but normal people <laughs> hear mm -hmm. the word propagandist, and they it's synonymous with liar. Yes. That's the way they hear propaganda. Yes. 
So what Hassan has just done is he's just talked to a giant audience of normies and basically confessed to being a full-blown liar (laughs) Yes, to all of them in the very beginning of the interview. We're two minutes into this interview. I was like, what the hell? (laughs) Thank goodness this guy's a moron. It's it's he's playing to a different audience because you're right. The average person hears that and they're like, what? This guy just yeah, they hear propagandist. They think liar. They think this guy has no has at the beginning of the interview has zero credibility. Um, but Hassan doesn't really care about like the normie. He cares about his audience and the online uh, leftist socialist scumbag audience. And Which, go ahead. Well, what so what they're doing here is actually incredibly devious, disgusting and evil. And it's funny because there's so many times that I hear Second Thought, who's a horrifically disgusting, amoral psychopath, um, who was basically cheering on the people, the Israelis that were killed in the original Hamas attack. Um, there's so many like things that Hassan says that he just repeats. So now I understand where Second Thought gets a lot of his talking points from. And this is one of them, where essentially all the leftist scumbags are, or the social scumbags, I should say, all want to be able to just preach the most one-sided, dumb, biased worldview possible to their audience, that they're just going to flatly say, of course it's propaganda. Propaganda is actually a good thing, right? They're going to do this like kind of 1948, like uh, we're going to just redefine words. We're going to start switching words around in your mind. Propaganda is actually a good thing and everyone does it. Right. So they want to take the power away from you saying, oh, well, you're propagandist. No, no, no. Everyone's a propagandist. I'm just a propagandist for like correct things. Yeah. And that's what's so devious about the whole situation is they want to. It's like if someone's saying like, oh, well, everyone's racist. So if you call me racist, it has no power. It's like, well, everyone's a liar. Everyone's a propagandist. So it's okay for me to be a propagandist. And they actually believe this, too, because the the socialist worldview is nothing matters. People don't have principles. Everything is a series of power games and power struggles. And that plays perfectly with this. I I feel like this was the same kind of justification for partisan media when Fox News came into existence. I really do. Like Fox News had the idea that you can't, that it's impossible to be uh, objective in journalism. So therefore you had to have some sort of partisan news network. Yeah, but even them, they had the charade, right? Because what was their slogan? Fair and balanced. Exactly, which was like kind of a joke, but that was the slogan. Um, and this is like, this kind of goes into, you know, when Joe Biden nominated uh, Jackson for the Supreme Court, and there used to be this idea, like when the Republicans nominated Clarence Thomas, uh, they were replacing, uh, what's I forget his name, the very famous uh, black Supreme Court justice, and so I was like, okay, obviously they were like, well, we have to replace him with another black guy, right? Like right. everyone knew that you had to do that, but you, but they didn't want to just say it because to say it seemed to be a violation of like the liberal principles of colorblindness that we were supposed to be working towards. So when they got Clarence Thomas and people were like, oh, you're, you know, they asked George Bush Sr., you know, oh, are you just doing this because he's black? Um, he's like, no, I'm doing it because he's the best person for the job. And even though it's like, okay, well, he's you're doing because he's black, right? Which, you know, we all know that. But there isn't like the performance has importance because it shows you where the values of society are either are or are supposed to be the direction the values are supposed to be heading in. And the thing that was concerning to me is that when Biden nominated Jackson, it was the opposite. He didn't just say he didn't say, well, she's the best person for the job. And then people could say, oh, she, you know, he did it because she's a black woman. Right. He literally is like, no. I'm going to get a black woman on the Supreme Court. <laughs> like that was the shift from kind of like 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 liberalism to leftism thinking that you need to get someone that matches some specific identity and that that has to be broadcast. And that's essentially what Hassan and all these other social scumbags are doing here. They're broadcasting this like shift in thinking of like, no, 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 propaganda is actually a good thing and we all do it. So therefore it's okay for me to be a biased, you know, piece of shit Thurgood Marshall is the first black Supreme Court justice yeah second thought was is simping for authoritarianism now 
He's trying to do the same thing with authoritarianism that Hassan is doing with propaganda. Oh, what, what, he is? Wait, what, what happened? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. When did this he happen? A, he has a video now that authoritarianism yeah. is actually good. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I I thought you would have already seen this. So. Oh no! Next, oh, maybe next God. Sunday we'll dig into that. But. Uh, oh no! I mean, yeah, it doesn't just, surprise me. But look, the <laughs> it's so bizarre too. I I mentioned earlier the democracy scale, which ranges to, from democracy to authoritarian. Reading Marx or any of these fringe communist writers. So the the thing also about Hassan here, I mean, he's doing this thing, like he mentions Noam Chomsky in here about the the prop on the propaganda thing. I don't know mm -hmm. if you know Noam Chomsky's thesis that even if the person is not politically biased, the people hiring the person are politically biased, yeah. so they buy yeah. they hire that person to fill the role, and that's how they create propaganda. All that applies to Hassan, just in being audience captured. But well, I guess you're you're saying that he, his response will be, well, yes, but my propaganda is for truth. They're doing propaganda that's false. Yeah, that right. he, he would say it's for truth and for like a better uh, existence, right? You know, the socialist existence. Yeah, no, I mean it's, it's despicable. It's despicable. Propaganda um, generally means look if it's if it's news. We assume it's honest, credible, facts laden, that kind of thing, right? Right. If it's propaganda, we assume it's like news but full of lies, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. It's designed to look like news, look like facts, look like information, but really it's just advertisement for the state. That's the way True. people think of propaganda. Yeah. Uh, Mithram six for five hundred Kazarkazarks. Thank you. Says, of course you can bribe three hundred thousand constituents if you promise three hundred thousand from a nation of three hundred fifty thousand that you'll take money from the top fifty thousand richest people and give it to the rest. They'll vote for you. We just call it social contract instead of bribe. Well, they they look right now. Joe Biden is president of the United States because he told a bunch of young people that he'd forgive their student loan debt, and they showed up at the polls and voted for him. Right. So look, I'm <laughs> I'm not Pollyanna about this. Yeah, a lot of people offer what could be called bribes in other contexts for votes. Sure, that happens. People voted for for um. This was what. Look, uh, I'm not I'm not a fan of Donald Trump. I'm not going to vote for Donald Trump. But as a politician, Donald Trump is pretty smart. <laughs> Like right. he said, I'm going to build the wall and Mexico is going to pay for it. <laughs> right. <laughs> None right. of you guys are going to have to pay for it. Look, somebody else is going to pay for it. So he found a way to bribe you with Mexico's money. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, Jacob Loy for $20 says, help. My older sister is a communist. She unironically watches the majority report in Hassan and accepts their word as gospel. I tried talking to her about it and it feels like I'm hitting a brick wall. Any advice? Wow. I don't know. Wow. What, what, I mean, the thing is, I don't know if there's general advice I could give you. You'd have to know your sister and try to figure out what, like, why is she, what about it is, is appealing to her? What moral foundations or moral intuitions are kind of sucking her into accepting all this and figuring out like, you know, figuring out what it is that attracts her to, to it. And then to try to like deprogram the whole, well, what you're advocating for is not going to bring about this thing that's attracting you to it. Yeah. I, I don't know what her personal circumstances are. A lot of times that plays a giant role. Right. Like it's very easy for people to advocate for socialism when they don't have any money or property or anything like that. Yeah. They're like, oh, you're going to take money and property from other people and give it to me? Look, this sounds like a great idea. Yeah, part of what's frustrating to try to convince people is that so often, like, it's nothing that you, like, I don't know what your relationship is, but I know, like, it's very funny, and I talked about this before. If I have a conversation with my parents, like, my parents are very stubborn towards each other, and if, like, one of them suggests something to the other one, 
that they disagree with, it's very unlikely that their minds will be changed. But if I say something, I can convince like one of them to do something different. And it's just, and even if I'm saying the exact same thing, so it's just like, because I'm a different, like my relationship with my parents is very different than how they relate, like they relate to each other. And so like a lot of, it's just the source of the information, you know, for all I know your sister's just like into this stuff because her friends are into this stuff. And it's like, once her friends say it's cringe, she'll say it's cringe. So I can understand it's very, it can be very frustrating to sort of uh, try to be, try to convince people of something and just be unable to, because you have to remember your sister, like everyone else is probably not coming at this from like a logical place. They're probably coming at it from an emotional place. You have to try to understand what is the emotion that's guiding her to kind of fall in line with all this stuff. Cause that's the right. only way I think you can kind of change uh, their opinion. Yeah. Usually it, it's from an idea that the world is unfair or treat, treating them personally unfairly. So you kind of got to resolve that first. Right. Uh, Understate for 20 Canadians says, gents, I'd love to be disabused of the notion that the Palestinian people are by far more enthusiastically genocidal in a way that would have made a 1940 German Hitler youth blush. I mean, I, th I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure that there's lots of people who have lots of uh, screwed up notions about things. And it does, I mean, it makes sense. You know, people, the Palestinian people are not magic. You know, they don't, they're not, there's not some like magical part of their DNA that makes them, you know, different from anyone else. You know, you well, have, you have a uh, situation uh, where people uh, exist in a very bad situation and obviously it's going to make them very angry and bitter and, you know, want to lash out. I mean, that shouldn't surprise anyone. You know, the question is, what do you do about that? And I don't think the answer is just genocide. Yeah, obviously, I think the Palestinian people are being likely manipulated, right? You've got Hamas running the show and right. scapegoating the Jews for all of Hamas's inequities. They're basically, yeah. you know, not really trying to improve people's lives those people are 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 going deeper and deeper into poverty and despair and they're basically pointing at israel and saying yeah it's all the jews fault so uh, it's a vicious cycle that's going to continue <laughs> until it's broken right, right? Exactly. look our our politicians do this all the time our politicians scapegoat other people right the democrats scapegoat the republicans the republicans scapegoat the democrats it's like a a normal thing in politics that happens all the time. I'm sure it's happening over there. And look, it's so it's very easy to manipulate the population into hating the Jews for the things that Hamas is doing. Right. Play the clip. This is your reaction to the bombing of the hospital uh, the other night. While I was in the process of, of getting ready for the stream, uh, Israel enacted uh, one of the singular worst strikes they have done thus far, and an airstrike, an Israeli airstrike, hit the Al Ahli Hospital in Gaza City, where thousands of civilians were seeking medical treatment and shelter from the relentless bombing campaign. Now, interestingly, when that when you were saying that, uh, I was coming on air too, and I took a position uh, based probably on 30 years of being a journalist, including running major newspapers, working at CNN and others, uh, of waiting, of just saying, I think we should just wait and see what has actually happened here, get clarification, see who's actually to blame before we start passing judgment. You rate you're, you're not going to pause there? <laughs> you like that? Like, you like um, that slap? That slap in the face? That was that the adult slap? slap? Yeah, that was like, that, listen. That look, look how big my dick is here, Hassan. <laughs> look at this. I got a 30 year dick here, <laughs> right here, 30 years big. Unlike your little running, baby, your little baby streaming dick. Running multimedia conglomerates, your little baby dick over there on your fucking, on your live stream, <laughs> babysitting, babysitting a million Chinese bots. <laughs> Uh -huh. Look, uh, we like to keep it real here on the show. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what's going on here, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. You called me a baboon, baby <laughs> dick. <laughs> You're right. You're, you know what? 
Pierce should have just called him a baby dick. <laughs> he just made it very <laughs> clear. Made it very clear what was going on in this interaction. Okay. Oh, look at the look on Hassan's face. He knows what's going on here. <laughs> he knows what's going on. Hassan, Hassan looks like a boy who just got his butt paddled. <laughs> Hassan knows what's happening here. You made me get up early, Daddy. <laughs> Just so you can spank me. <laughs> oh, this is so good. Raced in to assume, as many people did, by the way, including the New York Times, BBC, mainstream media, uh, and of course, most of the Arab world uh, then followed, that this was clearly, uh, indisputably, an Israeli airstrike or Miss Hospital. And yet all the evidence now suggests very strongly that it wasn't. That, in fact, this was a rocket that misfired coming from a, a, a terrorist go group inside Gaza. So my question for you is this. Why would, why would, you, wouldn't be, go that far, why would you be so certain in, in what you said before you knew? OK, so first and foremost, before we get started on this conversation, let's understand something very important here. There's no electricity in Gaza. Internet is patchy in Gaza. F there's no food in Gaza. There's no water in Gaza. This is all by design. This mm -hmm. is because Gaza is under a brutal blockade, a brutal occupation by the Israeli government. Okay? So that, it, that plays a role in the fog of war and misinformation that gets spread. Having said that, however... So I, you like that... Okay, so obviously, I'm assuming everyone knows the context, but in case you don't, there was a hospital... That was claimed to have been uh, bombed a, a few days ago, some days ago. And at first, Hassan claim, said an uh, airstrike. That's that's a uh, plane flying over and targeting it. Yes, yes. And we'll get into that. Um, and the claim originally was Israel blew up a hospital that led to the death of 500 Palestinian people. Right. Uh, which would be like really horrific, obviously, to blow up a hospital with 500 you know, patients and their families. Um, and this was kind of the narrative that existed for about a day. And then additional information came out where I was like, well, actually, there's additional information. I think it was actually like in the same day that was that raised question of, well, maybe it wasn't uh, an airstrike from an Israeli plane. Maybe it was a failed launch from someone in the Gaza Strip. And as the more and more information came out, that seemed to be more and more likely to be the situation now we don't know 100 percent sure um but that seems Whoa, to be what a lot of the evidence is pointing <laughs> to right now and look i've seen i've seen enough evidence that i'm 100 percent sure i don't okay. look they they showed from two different angles the yes. launching of the rockets and I've the explosion it, right? yes. they had two they had intercepted a call between two palestinian people talking about it well i mean that's pretty damning evidence I don't believe the call, and I'll tell you okay. why. Or I'm, I shouldn't say that. I'm skeptical of the call. The reason, and I have only one reason for it. I'm skeptical of the call because I'm not seeing a lot of Western media report on it being valid. Even okay. Western media that believes that this was not Israel, I don't see them supporting the call. So that makes me suspicious of it. So it could be fake. I don't know. So you I think it's an idea, an I potentially an idea fake? It could be. Okay. And I mean, also, I'm very Look, skeptical. Look, I don't speak of, Arabic. I don't yeah, know. Like, right. I'm also I'm very skeptical. I'm just going off of the translation. I know. And I'm, I'm also, I'm very skeptical of anything that's so like perfectly on the nose. Right. And it's like, okay, there's a, there's a perfect phone call where they're like discussing how they accidentally blew up this hospital. It's like, okay, maybe, like it could be real. I'm not saying, but I'm just, I'm skeptical of it. But anyway, you no, know, there's a lot of evidence of it. Part of the reason that Hassan kind of sunk himself on this. Look, if I, I blow up a hospital, the first thing I'm doing is calling you, Sis. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. Oh my Adam, God. If you blow up a hospital, do not call me. <laughs> my <laughs> God. Did you look. I'm going to hang up the second you say that. Do not call look, me. Look, Sitch. Sitch, I was making one of my fire videos. <laughs> and you're, not, you're never going to believe what happened. <laughs> no. no, 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 no. Stop. stop. It came down in the hospital parking lot. Exactly. <laughs> Okay. You gotta hide me. <laughs> Save like, listen, me. Listen, what you should do is you should immediately turn yourself into the police. Okay. Hide me, Sitch. Listen, Adam, you're white. They'll protect you. They'll go easy on you. Okay. That's what I heard from Hassan Piker. 
<laughs> he told me they don't go after white people. I saw Piker. Are... He's a propagandist. What are you talking about? That, but everyone is. What do you mean? Look, no, but so I think part... I think the call could be real. It seemed it seemed very real to me. Maybe I don't know. I'm just saying I'm skeptical of it. But so part of the reason Hassan kind of is double screwed on this is because before there's any like real information about this, he not only jumped onto the narrative that it was Israel that did this, he jumped onto the narrative that it must have been Israel that did this because only Israel would has the ordinances to blow up the hospital building with a bomb right. of that size. And he really, really, for some reason, hits on that specific point. And then when the picture finally came out of the blast site, right. we found out the, the bomb didn't actually hit the hospital. It hit, it hit the, the courtyard lot, yeah. and it has a, a teeny tiny impact crater that doesn't match any of the ordinances that Israel would normally use. Uh, to, right. That's to, another to, piece to of evidence that they released. Right. They released and, satellite photos of the parking lot and also of normal Israeli airstrikes. And they were like, look, these don't look anything alike. Right. And so it basically said, well, the only thing that could happen is a it was a false shot from a Palestinian rocket, which would make that size crater, or Israel dropped uh, an airburst uh, bomb, which is a bomb that it blows up in the air before it hits the ground. Though why they would even do that is not clear in the situation. Um, but something that's weird to me about this that I don't quite understand is that so the number was originally the Palestinians were saying that like 500 people died in this. Um, and if you look at it, there's very little structural damage in the picture. I don't know if you want to bring it up or not. We might, I mean, I don't know if the stream is going to get I hope, anyway. Look, I, I don't, I can bring it up. Sure. Keep talking. Listen, I'll bring it up. Um, yeah. I, I'll I, had it. A, I got I have, it. I have a, I had a tab with the picture open for this exact okay. conversation. Um, so let me see if I can find Look, it. I'll bring it up. You keep talking. Okay, here, wait, no, I, I found it. Look, it's it's like all over the internet. I can right, find right. it pretty easily. No, I got it. I'll send it to you in a second. Because um, some of them are like really crappy quality. So, Look, he, he wants it from like, he wants a cinema. Well, no, cinematic this is the best view. angle that I've seen of it. So like there's a lot of damage and the cars are like damaged too. And so right. basically anyone that was standing outside in this like courtyard area Oh, it's probably could, dead. Yeah, would probably be killed or seriously injured um, from this blast. But if you mm -hmm. were inside the building, I'm assuming You're that fine. you wouldn't. You'd be fine because it doesn't didn't cause that much structural damage to any of the buildings. Um, so, so you know, I'm not bringing up your picture. I'm bringing up the one I found. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. You do whatever you want. So, for first of all, it's kind of weird because, like, okay, I guess it's possible. That there was just like hundreds of people like in this area at, in, in the middle of the night, right? I mean, that's possible. Hilarious. There's a lot, you know. Was, I think this was supposed to be one of the shelter areas, so it is possible that there was just like a crap ton of people in the parking lot or in this kind of like little veranda areas of these buildings. So it is possible that like hundreds of people died uh, from this blast. But what's weird to me, and I don't know if you've seen this, why is there no picture like of when the, the bomb bodies. hit yeah. of just like all these bodies on the ground? Yeah, look, I, I'm not buying the 500 people died, at, like, at all. It's just, that seems ridiculous. Don't don't you think? I mean, look, why do you have 500 people in the parking lot? Like, 500 people are going out to their car at the same time? I mean, we've got one, two, three, look, we got, like, a, a dozen or more cars here. Well, there's, like, so there's a lot, like, there's these, like, if you've seen the picture, there's, like, these little balconies. And I mean, it's, mm -hmm. again, it's possible that there was like a bunch of people cramming in these spaces. Um, I would think if there was, there first of all, their blood would just be like everywhere. I hate to be like gruesome would, about this. Look, they would take all kinds of pictures of the bodies. But see, that's what's weird to me because even the U.S. is even the U.S. has estimated that like a hundred to, to three hundred people died from this. But I'm like, why did they not take a picture? Well, look, like, it's, that would have been the perfect propaganda for them to do. Like, no one there took a picture of just like hundreds of people lying like dead on the ground. I, that is just it, bizarre to me. As soon as they, as soon as they know Hamas is responsible for it, they're like, yes, 500 people. They sign off on it. 
Oh, you, you the, think the death maybe. toll works in their right. favor? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It, so I don't know. The fact that there's no pictures of all of the aftermath with people laying on the ground to me is very suspect. Um, it's completely suspect. You don't like not a single person there took a picture with their phone. You know, I know they say they don't have internet or whatever, but obviously there are pictures that are come, like they're looking at a picture right now. Their pictures are getting out. So that's very strange to me. Yeah. But so anyway, the point is Hassan kind of really uh, dug himself in this hole because he made such a big deal about how the ordinance would have to be Israel. And we find out, well, no, it's this tiny little crater that doesn't match an Israeli ordinance unless it was airburst, which why would Israel do an airburst on a hospital right next to it? And as you said, there's like a videos that shows that there's like a Palestinian rocket uh, being fired. And then you see like it kind of, you know, hit something or disappears. And then you see the explosion and there's just there's just a lot of information that's pointing this in the direction of a failed uh, rocket attack. I saw two angles on the rockets actually being launched, and mm -hmm. one like looks to short circuit or something in the air, and then right. you see, but right beneath it, the impact in the hosp of the hospital, and that just seems. I mean, that's undeniable. <laughs> like, so I mean, you, it, yeah. Well, I don't want to say it's undeniable because lots of things can happen. But it looks very much like you see one go off in the air and then malfunction. Then a second later, you see it explode nearby on the ground. And you go, oh, you know, one plus one, right? So yeah. But but I don't. I want to be careful because I'm not some fucking weapons expert. I don't know anything about this stuff. Okay, I'm just listening to other people talk about it, and I'm assuming there's some validity to what they're saying. I don't have any expertise in munitions, bombs, mortars, any of this crap whatsoever. But I think it's completely mm. horribly irresponsible for for Hassan here to be a total dipshit and go to his massive audience and pretend like he does have some massive expertise in like um, you know bombing bombs and bombings and, and warfare and just make these declarative statements to his audience about how it has to be Israel has to be Israel has to be Israel and then it turns out probably it's not Israel and now he's doing this all like well you know maybe it still is you know doing this bullshit tightrope walk where he's going to say well maybe it still was he still he still claims that he thinks it is Israel and then even now the clip that we just played he's blaming Israel like even if like he's like, well, it's still if I got it wrong, like this is how insane, this is how disgustingly stupid this is. Even if Hassan got this take wrong, okay, he's still saying, listen, even if I got it wrong, it's still Israel's fault because they made the fog of war worse by cutting off internet. So it's still Israel's fault for me misreporting a story because I didn't wait for the more information to come in. Liar. <laughs> so despicable. Uh, you, uh, you made it seem as though there is a certainty that this was 100% uh, not an Israeli airstrike. No, I didn't. I didn't. And instead, I literally just uh, said. I literally just said it, it's not a certainty. You, okay, sorry. I said I, the, I, evidence, I the evidence is then increasingly pointing to this not being an Israeli airstrike, and that is expert evidence okay, from people that... who have no skin in the game at all. What okay, is the so... evidence for? What is the evidence for it being an Israeli airstrike? None. Uh, I mean, there's some circumstantial evidence that Hassan will levy. Um, I'll say someone could hear a plane. Uh, <laughs> I, you know. You're going to call, look, you're going to call that evidence. I'm just some, saying what some I, a nondescript person in the area heard a plane. Or there's a plane in the video. I don't know. So, there's a plane sound that someone claims they can hear. Um, he claims that the hospital was hit by a bomb earlier in a previous day. Though, when I looked into this, while well, there was reporting that that happened, I mis it didn't report that anyone was killed or injured. So whatever was hit by this bomb, you know, I don't know, it didn't seem like it was something significant. Though they did say that there was some structural damage to some area of the hospital or something. But, um, but yeah, compared to the evidence pointing the other direction, it's definitely much more minor. Don't we have satellite capabilities all over that area do you think the americans would would see israeli fighter jets if if i feel like we would have information if that was the case you think we wouldn't share that information you think we would keep that information a secret um i don't know i mean i i would I mean, on they one moved hand, I would an think... aircraft carrier into the area. They got to have surveillance right. all over the place. They have these drones now. <laughs> like, 
come on. On one hand, it seems like, yeah, they should be able to like say, okay, they would at the know. time, right. At the time that this happened, was there a jet nearby? Yes. Now maybe there was a jet nearby. That doesn't mean it dropped the bomb. So maybe that, that information would not help. Right. Right. Or maybe the technology to track all this stuff isn't nearly as good as we think. I don't know the answer to that question. Right. Um, but, but this isn't, I want to, I pause it here because this is important. So Hassan, after watching this again, goes on Twitter and he accuses Pierce Morgan of being a lying propagandist. <laughs> oh, okay. Fuck, he really? tweets this to, to Pierce. He calls him a lying <laughs> propagandist. And it's over, it's over this interaction where he, where Hassan claims that Pierce, uh, said definitively that it was a failed uh, Palestinian rocket. So I want to go back. I want you to listen very carefully to what Pierce says and what Hassan says, and you can make a determination whether you think Pierce is being he, honest or not. He tweeted this after the interview? He tweeted this after the interview and after watching the interview back. So he's trying to save face, basically. Yeah. As many people did, by the way, including the New York Times, BBC, mainstream media, uh, and of course, most of the Arab world, uh, then followed that this was clearly, uh, indisputably, an Israeli airstrike or missile hospital. And yet all the evidence now suggests very strongly that it wasn't, that in fact this was a rocket that misfired coming from a, a, a terrorist go group inside Gaza. So, my so, so his words were, all the evidence we have now shows that it wasn't, that it was in fact a terrorist group coming from inside Palestine. Okay. He that says was suggests. Statement. Right. But right. he does say it was, in fact. So, I mean, it's it's like you could see it either way. Well, okay. So Was, in fact, is... Right. So I'm glad, you know, it's very interesting. That's the line that Hassan and his simps also focused on, was that Pierce right. said the word, in fact. Now, I would say, if we're going to be honest in interpreting language, if someone says evidence suggests... That that's it was the, in fact, yeah, that's yeah, the that thing. it was in fact, like that. That's them, <laughs> like them saying in fact is not saying that this is a hundred percent fact. That they're using it in a colloquial sense to say the evidence suggests that this is what happened, right? Right. That's how I, I think an honest person would interpret that sentence. Though obviously Hassan is not being honest, and he's going to go back, and now he has gone back on Twitter, and now say, like, oh, he said it was in fact, therefore I was correct, and therefore he's a lying propaganda. Wow. My question for you is this. Why would you, why would you I wouldn't be, go that far? Why Pierre. would you be so certain in in what you said before you knew? Okay. So first and foremost, before we get started on this conversation, let's understand something very important here. There's no electricity in Gaza. Internet is patchy in Gaza. There's no food in Gaza. There's no water in Gaza. This is all by design. This is because Gaza is under a brutal blockade, a brutal occupation by the Israeli government. Okay? So that, it, that plays a role in the fog of war and misinformation that gets spread. Ha Hassan was forced to lie to his audience. Sitch. It's not, none of this is his fault. <laughs> it was all the IDF. The IDF, Israeli Defense Forces, forced him to lie to his entire audience. In, in another said, clip... And another clip that we'll watch, you know, he kind of goes off about how awful it is that American commentators sort of use the situation happening in Israel and Palestine to like talk about things relating to them and themselves. And yet here we have Hassan using what's going on in Israel and Palestine in terms of like the blackout to justify his bad reporting on the situation. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's all their fault. Right. That, however... Uh, you uh, you made it seem as though there is a certainty that this was 100% uh, not an Israeli airstrike. No, I didn't. I didn't. And instead, I literally just said. I literally just said it, it's not a certainty. You, okay, sorry. I said I, I, the evidence. The you. evidence is then increasingly pointing to this not being an Israeli airstrike, and that is expert evidence. So I think he's off the hook with the uh, in fact situation yeah. here with this follow-up. Pretty. Yes. Pretty devastating. Well, no, they're saying that this follow-up is, is Pierce lying. That's their interpretation. Well, like, well, why would he... Look, how's he lying? He just is clarifying. What do you mean lying? I, yeah, but that see, makes that's, absolutely no sense. 
but th- that's exactly how a lot of these internet conversations work. Some you say something, someone misinterprets it, you clarify, and then instead of them saying, "Oh, okay," they say, "Oh, no, 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 no." You just realized what you said was stupid, and now are backtracking, so you're a liar. The internet was a mistake, Sitch. It really <laughs> was. I just this. <laughs> There's, look, there's absolutely no good faith conversations out there anymore. It's just impossible to have. What do you mean? There, of course, there is. Not on with this, this show. kind of sitch. Oh yeah, on of the course. Sitch and we, Adam look, show. Look, we try to do it, but still, there are a bunch of meatheads that try to take us of out of context. Of course. No, you did. You look. You meant what you said the first time. Right. No, I meant something different and clarified because you misunderstood what I meant. Right. Yeah. Right. But yeah. Okay interesting that they're fighting about this on twitter is peers chiming in or uh I, i'll check i didn't see but... it was just okay the hordes of internet people were like i want to beat up on peers evidence okay. from people that... who have no skin in the game at all yes uh well i don't know which expert you're, uh, you're talking about because i think channel four did a pretty good job as a matter of fact i would say channel four did probably the best job so far in analyzing everything that the IDF has said. But the reason why I believed, and I still do believe that the likelihood is that this was an Israeli bombing campaign, wasn't only because of the singular verifiable video, the the phone video from the balcony that uh, had all of the markings of an airstrike, the fact that the Israeli Air Force was enacting a bombing campaign in the region at the time, according to the Al Jazeera live streaming footage that everyone is using but doesn't understand. Uh, the fact that uh, the, the uh, digital media person uh, for the IDF uh, immediately came out and, and said that this was actually a, an airstrike that hit a Hamas target and that he was sad that there were, you know, uh, casualties at the end of the day, but this, this uh, was a Hamas target and celebrated it. And more importantly, I guess, the fact that this hospital had been bombed by Israel. Mm. This hospital had been bombed by Israel on Saturday. 22 hospitals have, as a matter of fact, been bombed by Israel since this last uh, saga in the occupation. And this hospital had been bombed directly by Israel where the cancer ward was destroyed. Israel has been bombing all of these hospitals. Israel has been calling all of these hospitals to evacuate over and over and over again. The medical professionals at the hospital had been called by the Israeli government Uh, the day prior, and everyone on the ground assumes that this is an Israeli airstrike. They are the ones who experienced the uh, the situation. So when you have have every single... Can I just finish If you watch the BBC BBC account of all this last night... So I just want to point out, so it's interesting that (laughs) the evidence that I've seen people talk about for it not to be an Israeli strike seems to be related to the physical evidence of the blast, the physical evidence of uh, the video of the rocket fire, th- things of that nature. And Hassan's evidence for why it is Israel is all this like, well, they bombed other hospitals. Well, they supposedly bombed this hospital. You know, well, yeah, some any guy that... who's doing propaganda said that. Like, it's not like actually the evidence that would be that you would want to track to make a determination. It's all the secondary kind of stuff. Yeah, who reported the bombings of the hospital? Are these is this straight from Hamas? Like yes. I don't know these originally. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so he's basically right. just lapping up Hamas talking points for yes. a stream. Yeah. Does he have a contact there? Is he emailing with them? Where does he get his, his his Hamas talking points for the day? Well, that's what's so idiotic about the whole situation is that he criticizes people for just uncritically believing the IDF, which is fair enough, but then he uncritically just believes Hamas and Hamas propaganda. <laughs> yeah. Like, just because it it falls in with his worldview. And as Pierce yeah, actually what he wants brings to up, believe. Yeah, exactly. And Pierce even says this in the conversation, you want to believe that Israel did this. Look what so. he's doing. He's sticking his tongue out at Pierce. Pierce is like, thank goodness. I was about to pause it and say, look, this. what is all this nonsense he's talking about, Sitch? Right. This is the first. Where where are these where are these things that he's saying coming from? I haven't seen these reported in mainstream press. Um, I mean, I they're there. I, if you look for them, you'll find them. But, that the hospitals, Israel's bombing a bunch of hospitals. I mean, I've heard that yeah. Hamas puts their rockets in hospitals and stuff like that, so they're less likely to 
get right. offensive right. strikes against him. And I don't know if it comes up in this clip or maybe later, but Hassan adopts this talking point about how it doesn't actually matter if Israel did this or not because they're killing other people. And it's one of the most insipid and stupid things. And we'll talk about that when it comes up. But, okay. And of course, he's only saying that because he got this wrong. Uh, Mr. M6 for 500 Kazar Kazarks. Thank you. Says, also want to say you guys are one of the few who have refreshing moral clarity on the Israel-Palestine issue. It's scary how rare it is. Stay awesome. Well, thank you, Mr. Oh, okay. Yeah. Appreciate that. I mean, I'll look, I'm, I just, I keep seeing shit online and it, it's disturbing disturbing i know but it's it is it is 100 percent the lens of the ideology right this idea that if you just if you were just nice to the palestinian people everything would be different like mm -hmm. even if that was even possible i just look it's so crazy these people are so dumb right uh Bye. philip kogan's for 20 dollars says i wonder what hassan would think about the massive bouts of mutiny at the State Department about Biden's official stance regarding Israel and Hamas. So I saw, I assume you're talking about today, it was reported, though I don't, I didn't really look into it. A State Department official resigned over the Israel-Hamas situation. I don't know what the um, specifics were. It says, uh, let's see, the guy's name was Josh Paul, and he said, let me be clear, Hamas's attack on Israel was not just a monstrosity, it was a monstrosity of monstrosities. I also believe but. That, yeah, I also believe that potential escalations by Iranian-linked groups such as Hezbollah or by Iran itself would be a further cynical exploitation of the existing tragedy. But I believe there it core, is. Yeah, there it is. I knew it. <laughs> but I believe to the core of my soul that the response Israel is taking, and with it, the American support both for that response and for the status quo of the occupation, will only lead to more deeper suffering for both the Israeli and Palestinian people, and is not the long-term American interest. So, I mean, I, I can understand someone having that position. I don't think that's a super unreasonable position, but. What's the answer here? You, you suggested that the leadership in charge of the West Bank could be in charge in Gaza if Israel, well, what would be the technical aspects of that? Israel removes Hamas and get, provides security for whatever leadership, West Bank leadership, they want to put in place there. So there's a clip we'll watch later where Hassan talks about this. And even though Hassan talks about it in a very disgusting and horrible way, because that's how he talks about everything, there's a kernel of truth to what he's saying, which is, which is something I've always said, which is you have to incentivize from people the behavior you want, and you have to disincentivize the behavior you don't want. Because if you punish people for doing the right thing, you're not then obviously they're going to do bad the stuff wrong thing yeah the wrong thing i and completely I agree like the whole selector theory is based on incentives exactly and i believe very strongly that israel is not incentivizing peaceful coexistence with the west bank they should they should basically if israel i mean there's a lot of reasons for why this is and we'll get into this in the future but you know israel from my position in my opinion needs to try to draw a very clear distinction to both the Palestinians and the rest of the world and say, okay, if you are peaceful and you play ball with us, we will treat you very well. And if you don't and you're violent with us, we will treat you very poorly. And they have this weird situation with between Gaza and the West Bank where they could say, okay, as long as the government of West Bank is playing ball with us and being peaceful and acknowledging our existence, we will help protect them and, you know, let them, you know, be and be good neighbors. And then we'll just destroy Hamas in the West Bank because they're attacking us. The problem is that's not what the Israel government is doing. They're allowing settlers to go into the West Bank and buy up land and slowly. They're, yeah, displace. so they're not treating them well. Right. So they're they're doing the exact opposite. They're not treating them well. So they're basically penalizing people uh, in the West Bank for doing what they want them to do yeah that's awful right and so and that's I think, netanyahu right that's like his thing yes currently yeah that's the right. current kind of trajectory and you know there's a lot of reasons for why this is you know and by the way there's lots of huge swaths of israelis think that this is completely fucked up that this is going on but there's also you know very ultra nationalistic right-wing israelis who are 
you know, just one uh, one state is able right. to control the whole area. But blah blah blah. Okay. And so, if I had the magic button, if I was in charge of Israel, you know, I would say no, no, no. We need to incentivize the West Bank to be peaceful. The government running West Bank to be peaceful. We need to show this clear distinction between the West Bank and Gaza. And I think what Israel should do is, if they could theoretically pull, just fucking remove all the settlers from the West Bank. Say, okay, we're just, this is your area. And I know this is what happened with Gaza. Okay, we'll talk about that. You know, this is your area. You're working with us. You're being peaceful. And and say to Hamas in the situation, say, okay, you want a ceasefire? Here are our demands. Our demands are you, Hamas, surrender. We won't kill any of you, any of you but you're going to go to prison. We won't kill any of you. You surrender. You disarm completely. You release all the hostages, obviously. And what we'll do is we'll work with the government of West Bank to reintegrate Gaza into being under their control. And we won't have to bomb any innocent Palestinians. And if Israel says that to the world, Israel unequivocally becomes the good guy. Because they're like, listen, right. there, this is the pathway. You know, you're saying that we just want to kill Palestinians. Hassan is going to go on a rant that we're going to see that he's going to say Israel just wants to genocide Palestinians, blah, 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 blah. If, if Israel took this pathway, they very clearly show, no, 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 no. We just want to root out Hamas and we want to live peacefully with our neighbors. And that would be the way to do it. Yeah. You, you know, Hamas is never going to take that deal, but you're really, obviously they're not. Yeah. You're offering to. the deal to the wider public. So you basically you're, you're, have your hands right. clean and you're saying the blood of the past Palestinian children are on Hamas, not on right. you. Because you're saying, yeah, because you're saying, listen, here's the deal. It's a it's a fair deal. How could anyone in the rest of the world be against this deal? And you'd even get, mm -hmm. I would imagine, you could even get people in Gaza to be in favor of this uh, deal. And you want, I mean, you have to show that there's this dichotomy. You have to show if you work with Israel, you get benefited. If you don't, you get penalized. That If you don't do that, nothing, you can't move forward. Nothing will work. Right. So. This is Sensu. This is straight art of war. Treat your enemies... Uh, graciously or annihilate them completely. <laughs> That's well, like, this there is, is one no of the, middle ground. This is one of the things that, you know, for all the dumb things that Trump would do, one of the things that he would do well is that if you praised him or helped him, he would oh, shower yeah. you with praise and support. And if you were, you know, said mean things about him or, or went against him, he would try to destroy you. And you yes. have to, sh there has to be this like clear dichotomy when you're like in a ruling position, if you want people to do the things that you want them to do, you want to be yeah. crystal clear. It's, you know, Adam's favorite phrase, you want to be crystal clear if you're yes. in command here. True. Like, like, so that if you're a ruler, that people know if they do something, they know how you're going to react. You want to yep. be crystal clear, like, oh, if I do what they want, they'll help me. If I don't do what they want, they'll destroy me. Yeah. Got to build the proper incentive structure. Right now, the incentive structure is garbage. Yeah. By their Verify unit, which was specifically set up by the BBC to be completely dispassionate in these investigations. And they reached a pretty clear conclusion based on circumstantial evidence, I'll make that clear, that this would not have been an Israeli airstrike, including, for example, the size of the crater, which bears no relation to the size of craters normally left yes. by Israeli radio. So, look, my point is, neither of us know for sure. But you took to your airwaves immediately because actually you're, I wouldn't even say unconscious bias, your admitted propagandist bias on your part was that you wanted that to be an Israeli airstrike. It suited your narrative. And I would say that that in itself in its I way, it to be it's an being Israeli a stenographer. Well, you know, you accuse me no, of being putting, a stenographer. I try and be mouth. fair and get to the truth. In your case, I don't think mm -hmm. you try to do that. I think you appeal to your audience, appeal to your base, this and you unfair. don't really care whether the facts are there or not. This is entirely unfair, because you just said circumstantial evidence favors that this was not an Israeli airstrike. Yeah. I gave you all of the circumstantial evidence that it does favor that this is an Israeli airstrike. Mm -hmm. The reason why, however, circumstantial evidence is not enough. And the one thing that I will concede to because when more information did come out, and no, I do not mean when Israel said that they did not bomb this mm. hospital and it was actually Hamas, and then they turned around and went, never mind, it's not Hamas, it's actually Islamic Jihad. 
And then they said, we have more evidence coming out in a couple hours. And then the evidence came out and it turns out it sounded like uh, it, it, the, the phone conversations that they were able to intercept supposedly uh, sounded like uh, 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 by experts at the very least uh, to be uh, completely false and, and uh, completely uh, made up. Yeah, but Hassan, I don't accent, think, I, listen, in all, all honesty, wrong. Now, I now, don't but, think wait, even on. as you're Hold saying on, all let me this, finish. I think you're a smart guy. Piers, let me finish. I think you've looked at all of this, and I think in your heart, you know this was probably not an Israeli airstrike. And I'm just curious why That's, you would, instead of admitting no, that as facts no, change, that is your not what I'm changed. saying. That no, is not what I'm saying at all. I don't all. understand why you would Please. double and treble you, you, down you're when the evidence is pointing show. the other you're way. You're asking me to be on so even though I enjoy this because I don't like Hassan, it's fun to see him uh, get crapped on. I mean, obviously, it's very bad faith for uh, Pierce to be like, oh, well, you secretly know you're wrong. You just don't want to admit it. It's good. What are you talking about? It's I great. mean, it's good because I don't like Hassan, but obviously it's not, you know, not a good it's faith not approach. What? To it's not a good faith approach to the situation. He's... I don't care what he says. I mean, he's acting as a journalist. People listen to him because yes. they think they're getting the news. Yes. So as, you know, one journalist to another, even if he's not willing to admit it. And Sam Cedar said this on our show, and I just was like, what the fuck? Like, Sam Cedar claimed, you know, he doesn't see himself as a news provider. I'm like... Uh, get the fuck out of here! Like it's you're a John Stewart defense. It's the it's that's what you're acting the, as. The meme of the comedy show came from. Look, we yeah. we are we are a comedy show. So we're <laughs> not trying. We're not actively trying to disseminate disinformation. I no, just, but look, we are. I would never um, say something that was wrong. Yeah, said, first of all, <laughs> I, I, well, I've said things that are wrong. I would never say something that was wrong, and then when someone calls me out for it, say not we're correct just a the record. Cow! Like, it's like, no, 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 no. Listen, we have an audience, you know, people listen to us. Hassan is a much larger audience. Sam Cedar is a much larger audience than us. Yeah. You, know, you, you have responsibility if you're talking about news to try, at least try to get the facts right. And, and if you if get, you them, get wrong, them wrong, take responsibility. Yeah. There you go. And that's exactly what's going on here. Piers is saying, listen, yes. you got this wrong, mofo. Correct yes. the record. Yes. Well, Biatch. I mean, and Hassan is being a uh, hyper bad faith. It's weird because he takes issue with stenographer. He says journalists shouldn't be stenographers. Um, but then he says, well, everyone's a propagandist. I, what is, there's no difference. What's the difference? They're the same thing. If, like if you're a propagandist for Israel, how is that difference than being a stenographer for the IDF? Or if you're a propagandist for Palestine, how is that different than being a stenographer for Hamas? Like how is it any different? Yeah. It's really weird that he makes this distinction that he never explains to say, oh, this thing's bad, but this thing's actually good. You want to talk? Yes. You, you, if you're asking me to be on your show and I want to be on the show, thank you so much for having me on your yeah. show. Let me explain exactly what I said and let me explain to you why I think still t to this very moment, until there is a third party investigation mm -hmm. that is concluded by uh, the UN, the International Criminal Court, or specifically a forensic analyst that uh, that looks at the situation is allowed to be on the ground. This is not just my perspective. This is Beth Selim as well, which is an Israeli organization that has also demanded a okay. third party investigation occur. I am not going to I am not going to conclusively say that this was not. I don't Israel's expect you to. Fault. I Why? don't expect you to. Because I just gave you because I and not because I'm a pro. So he's also kind of being was not kind of, he's being very dishonest here because he has said on his stream that he's still like 90% sure, I forget the exact number, but he's still in the majority percent sure that it was Israel that did this. Wow. So, so for him to wow. say like, well, I'm not going to say, like, he's like, I'm not going to say conclusively. It's like, okay, he's making it sound like that he's saying, well, we don't know, right? No, 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 He didn't say that. He still majority says and believes that it was Israel and has said this publicly. So what's going on is he has said conclusively that it was an Israeli airstrike. And he's not going to take it back until someone proves him wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, right. He's yeah. gone from like 100% certainty to like, okay, I'm like 90%. Sure. This is just gar garbage. <laughs> Propagandist. As far as me being a propagandist goes, everyone is a propagandist. I'm just honest about it. You're a propagandist. We have our I'm biases. I'm curious who you think I'm I a propagandist for. I am at least honest for. about my biases. Who do you think I'm a propagandist for? So I want to pause this here. 
this is like a genius response. And I don't know if it was intentional or not, because like normally if instead of saying, what do you mean? How am I a propagandist? Right. If you ask how that gives them way too much like ground to redefine the word and however they want, right. Mm -hmm. To like wiggle room. But he doesn't say that. He says, who am I a propagandist for? So he's locking in the definition to something more yeah. solid and demanding a clear answer. And so I don't know if Pierce is like super fucking smart and that just instantly that was his uh, go to or if it's just his perception of propagandist is you're a propagandist for a person. So that's just like his his initial reaction. But it's a great follow up, which, as you'll find out, Hassan has no answer to the question. <laughs> You know, propaganda is generally promoting some sort of political cause or political party. So it is right. brilliant for him to say, well, if you're saying I'm a propagandist, who, who or what am I promoting? Right. Yeah. And you're going to watch. So, and to be clear, Hassan, I want everyone to track the other events. Hassan brought up the propagandist claim. Okay. He first, he levied, he levied it at Pierce. And then said that he then Hassan said that he was a propagandist. Now he's lovely did Levy did at Pierce a second time and, and again a second time said that he's a propagandist. And then when Pierce simply asks him, Well, who am I a propagandist for? Hassan is going to throw a total bitch fit here and use the deaths of Palestinians as a shield to try to not answer a question when he gets trapped in a conversation. Right. Okay. This so this I, is the oh, go ahead. So just think about like, to me, that is very immorally disgusting. Like you're in a public conversation, you say something stupid, someone traps you. And so you're going to hold up the dead bodies of some people to try to extricate yourself from your mistake and try to Awful. act like you're the moral person. No, fuck you. Awful. Awful. Pro propaganda is... Is there's a clear conflict between propaganda and journalism, though, because if propaganda is meant to serve a cause, journalism is is meant to find the truth. And depending upon what the cause is or party is or whatever political faction that you're trying to support, the truth can often be against promoting that party or cause or whatever. So exactly. that, that is that's a clear conflict here. Right. I don't look. Can you be a propagandist for truth? I don't. No. That doesn't really make sense. No, they, they hearken to some original definition of propaganda, but that's irrelevant because that's not how anyone uses the word, you know, in the last forty years. So. Right. I'm not going to conclusively say that this was not. I don't Israel's expect you to. Fault. I Why? don't expect you to. Because I just gave you. Because I and not because I'm a propagandist. As far as me being a propagandist goes, everyone is a propagandist. I'm just honest about it. You're a propagandist. We have our I'm biases. Curious who you think I'm I a am propagandist at least honest for? About my biases. Who do you think I'm a propagandist for? Who do I think you're a propagandist yeah. for? Yeah. Whichever your every every media person is is doing propaganda. This yeah, but who? Is, is but who for? Just, I've got to be doing it with somebody. You think it's a bad word? I don't. That's just the difference. This is a semantic conversation. I do. I think it's actually quite a serious charge. Hassan, I think it's a serious charge to level, not as a podcaster, but as a journalist who's broadcasting around the world, who has a reputation, I believe, for being fair and impartial, actually, on these issues. It's quite a charge to just say, I'm a stenographer for the Israeli government or I'm a propagandist. I don't think there's any evidence I'm either of those things. I'm curious who you think I'm doing while the propaganda for. While we're having this conversation, 3,000... peers. while we're having this back and forth, 3,840 Palestinians have been ruthlessly slaughtered mm -hmm. in the last incursion into Gaza. I feel like this is an incredibly selfish, self-centered conversation to have. You asked me to be on here. You wanted, you wanted to hear my perspective. I'm willing to give it to you. I don't want to talk about like whether the I don't want to. Yeah, you're right. Fucking disgusting. That's disgusting. Yeah, disgusting. It's like disgusting. Look, uh, these journalists. Propaganda is the opposite of what they're trying to do. They're trying to be fair and impartial, and to say basically, you know, your whole job is a scam, yep. and then throw dead bodies up as if that's some sort of defense against the the defamation you're basically levying here at the guy disgusting yeah. total yeah. disgusting it's yeah. despicable like so hassan is doing a straight agi prop trying to redefine the word propaganda to be a positive thing 
for his own socialist devices, um, number one. And then when he calls someone else a propagandist, obviously in a negative connotation, and they're like, well, what do you mean by that? For him to say, oh, it's a semantic conversation. It's like, no, bitch, you're the one that's trying to redefine the word. You're the one complicating the definition to suit your own disgusting political purposes. And then when they hone in on you and they narrow you down, so you actually have to defend your insipid uh, statement, he runs away to like, oh, listen, I don't have, you know, I know you cornered me in a conversation, but look at all these dead bodies. Yeah. You're a bad person because look at all these dead bodies. And it's like, no, you're being a selfish, disgusting prick, Hassan. Okay. You're literally using the corpses of Palestinian uh, people, men, women, and children to extricate yourself from an uncomfortable part of a conversation that you fucked up on. So go fuck yourself. You don't have any yeah. moral high ground in this situation. And it's despicable. Yeah. Very, very gross. Can you imagine like going up to someone? It's like literally their job. Okay. Their job is they they make their livelihood based on the credibility of how they tell information to an audience. Okay. Yeah. And you go up to that person and you say, This person You're lying to your audience <laughs> is a big fat liar to their audience. And that person says, Wow, that's a bold claim. Care to back it up? Your response is Listen, there are people dying, okay, right now. We don't, yeah, we don't have dying, time to talk right, about this. Right. How dare you ask me to how dare you ask me to defend this claim where I tried to destroy your career? Like, you know, fuck, go fuck yourself. It's despicable. Yeah. It's really despicable. I want to talk about Noam Chomsky style manufacturing okay. consent conversations okay. about how the media is operating listen, in the I, in the, listen, uh, the behest of capital. You were the guy, listen, I think you were the, the guy that told me there are dead people. Listen, my son. I only asked you because you're the guy that called me a propagandist and called me a baboon in the soup. I was curious as to why. You don't want to say I who, know, I'm, but, who I'm but doing I, the propaganda for. We'll move on. We'll move on. I agree with I you. Said you. I said there's a bigger there's a bigger pitch here. Let's move I on. Said Let's take a short you... break. Hassan, let's take a short break. I want to come okay. back. I want to talk to you about what happened on October the seventh. Get your reaction to that. I, I don't think Pierce should off the hook. Either. Fucking class act. Class yeah. act. I'm with I, you. Yeah. Take his I, look. Take his take him down to the mat on that. Like, I would have ripped his head off and shit. Look, we have all look, we have all day, and you don't need to hide behind what's going on in Palestine right now. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, Just answer the question. Jesus, what is this name? Oh, oh, you killed to Putestra. Wow, it's quite the name. Well, thank you for the twenty Aussie bucks. It says I am a center left in Australia and was introduced to your channel via your Anna interview. Thank you for moderating my views. Of supporting on the right and stressing the importance of not straw manning S class is the best class. Well, thank you for the, for the twenty dollars. Yeah, and thanks for the first ever super chat. Yeah, thanks for your for first super chat, and also yeah, thanks for look. The internet is about ninety five percent straw manning, so we have a <laughs> thank you for joining our mission. That's right to rid the internet of the scourge. Straw manning. Every time you straw man on the internet, a puppy dies. Right. Don't let those puppies die. True. Joe the Meg for twenty dollars. Hey Joe. Says former US naval officer. There isn't a single J Dam compatible warhead that doesn't leave a massive impact crater or an area wide damage in the case of airburst. Anyone still peddling the IDF attack is full throated lying. Well, there you go. Well, lucky Hassan knows that the pilot shot a bottle rocket out the window, and uh, that's what it was. Yeah, because I had heard people also saying that if it was an airburst uh, from an Israeli ordinance, the damage to the cars and everything would have been far more significant. I don't know enough about it to make claims about that. Um, and then I, because of that, I think Hassan was even suggesting that they're like, well, maybe it was a mortar from Israel or something. So it's like it's wow. like it's just you have to keep going down the list till you can you know somehow blame Israel for it. So, I mean, uh, I just the evidence I've seen so far is pretty. I mean, I'm convinced. Like, I I don't. I, why do I have to? I don't know. It just seems overwhelming to me. Yeah, but. the the evidence is far more. There's a lot more in the in the idea that it was not Israel. Uh, Achillean Narya Sawami, thank you so much for the one hundred dollars. Yeah, thank that's you so very much. generous. Incredibly generous. Says people view foreign issues through the lens of domestic issues. 
So leftists treat the Israel-Palestine conflict the same way they treat crime in the U.S. They think because criminals slash Hamas are proxies of their environment, you can't hold them accountable for their actions. That's a great totally fucking agree. point. Yeah, hey, It's a great point. You are 100% correct. That is exactly what's happening here. 100% what's happening here. This is why I want to promote the meme that crime causes poverty to try to fight that narrative. Now, Sitch is going to go, well... Ba, it's ba, more ba, complicated. Ba. It's complicated. It is, more, it is more complicated. It's a good meme. The, I agree. It's a good meme. Well, the whole idea behind... This is what ideologies are designed to do. Ideologies are designed to simplify yes. ideas to motivate behavior. And yes. we're just... Look, we're motivating the wrong behavior here with this whole poverty causes crime thing. I think that does more damage than the crime causes poverty meme would ever do, even though it may not be 1,000% accurate. If it's 90% accurate and it does more good in the world, what's the problem? Yeah, no, I, I understand. And there's truth to that. There's a bunch um, of truth to it. Look, yeah. there's these. the reason why Hamas is never going to take that deal that you laid out was because, look, they want to murder rape and kill they want to they want to live in society without any consequences for any actions they want to be able to do whatever they want to do well we, we don't they, even have to look at it through that lens you can like even just looking at hamas the selector theory lens they gain their support and power by being the radical violent um faction that attacks israel if that's yes. how they define themselves and that's how they gain their political power. Why would they ever be incentivized to be peaceful for any reason? Yeah, they're not. They, they're going not to be. at all. Because it's, and, and here's why this is really stupid when I hear Hassan and all this people talk about this. So in 2006, when there was the elections, and it was bet between Hamas and Fatah, and there was that kind of uh, argument about who really won, and it led to a, a violence of a war, and you're Hamas. Why would you ever want to have another election where that same situation can happen again, where maybe you actually lose this time? Yeah. Look, I'm sure they've got, they would put copious countermeasures in place so that they didn't lose that election. Even yeah, if it was Why would you even citizens. trust the results if there was yeah. an election and Hamas was yeah. enrollment? Like, right. Like, it's like when Look, you know, Russia rolled in the Crimea and they're like, hey, we had an election and 90% of the population said that they were wanted to join Russia yeah, as the tank outside is like point. right outside the voting booth, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just, look, this is, the elections look good. All of these Timpok dictators have elections. Yeah. They're all a scam. <laughs> of course. Yeah. There was actually a poll in 2019 for, uh, I don't know if it was all Palestinians or just in Gaza Strip, but 50% uh, or the respondents said that they did not have any faith or trust in an election being valid. <laughs> the results really? being valid, yeah, in 2019. Wow. Wow. Uh, Poboxy See, for 20 euros says, so Chank's nephew tried the Chewbacca defense. <laughs> That's true. He did. He did, yeah. Are you saying Palestine blew up the hospital? Now that doesn't make sense. Because Chewbacca living with Ewoks, that also doesn't make sense. <laughs> True. Welcome back, Hassan Pika is still with me. Hassan, I want to just play you a clip of something that you said about the uh, October 7th terror attacks, and in particular, the attack at the music festival, which killed 260 people. Look at this guy. You know what shouldn't happen? Killing 260 people at a music festival. No, you're right, man. That just happened on its own because, like, bad guys wanted to do bad things. You're right. Dude, if they f subjugated you, to a open air prison your whole f life, you're gonna break out eventually when you realize that there is no other way to get out of it. I mean, it sounds to me there, Hassan, that you are in some way saying they had it coming. Were you? Um, no, I wouldn't say that they had it coming. I think that uh, Michael Brooks used to say, uh, analysis is not justification. And while obviously civilian casualties and, and horrific barbaric acts that were committed on October 7 are completely unacceptable, uh, the, the important thing to make sure that it never happens again is to analyze what are the conditions as to, as to how it happened to begin with. And 
I think uh, Ehud Barak is going to be on uh, mm. in a little bit as well, or maybe he's on before yeah, he is, me. Yeah. Uh, and, and, I'm, and I'm almost certain that while he has held the keys to the conversation and held uh, the, the levers of the power in this conversation in many key and critical points, uh, I, I would go so far as to say that he is among many others who also recognize that the Bibi Netanyahu administration is responsible. This is not just my assessment. Mm -hmm. This is 85% uh, of the uh, Israeli population's assessment at the time. Uh, this is years and years and years of refusing to negotiate with the Palestinian Authority. Take, don't take my word for it. Take no, no, listen, I would agree, personal listen, word for it I would agree again. In a closed-door conversation with Likud members, he yeah. said... So, we're going to watch that clip, that, the, the rest of the clip that Pierce put out, because it ends with Hassan just screeching like a psychopath. <laughs> oh, really? It's, it's very fascinating, the psychology at play here, because... You know, Hassan says, you know, you put all these people, and it's exactly what Akilin said, you know, you put all these people in the open air prison, you put them in these bad material conditions, and therefore you should expect and anticipate that they're going to behave in this kind of like violent, brutal fashion. And he does this thing where even though he does say that he thinks that it was wrong and he doesn't support it, you know, it kind of walks this weird line where he also doesn't say that Palestinians should, he, he refuses to say whether Palestinians should denounce or support Hamas, which I think is fucking disgusting and pathetically he, cowardly. He's using the poverty causes crime narrative. Yes. He's basically 100%. saying their material conditions yes. are horrible and they're going to lash out because of those material conditions. And that's crime. Right. What, what and, I think it's far more likely that these guys are just psychopaths, that that's how they're maintaining their power is through brute force right and they're but, they're loving it they're loving subjugating people but let's say that theoretically let's say i don't know 20 percent of the population is psychopaths right or something like what three percent of the population is like supposed to be authoritarian i thought let's it was five percent of psychopaths that's okay that's fine so let's say three percent of the population is fine with authoritarianism five percent are psychopaths right so that yes. so we in America we have five percent of a psychopath too. In every country, five percent of the population is a psychopath. But there has to be specific environmental conditions that allow those psychopaths to go in to rise to rise to the top levels of power, right? Yeah, like in America, a lot of like surgeons could be psychopaths because they are able to cut people open without worrying about. Without feeling no, the okay. things so like, most of us feel. A better way to, to, or the way that I would conceptualize it is like, okay, in a middle class or upper middle class society in America, it will be difficult, not possible, but it'd be far more difficult for a psychopath to rise to the top hierarchy of power somewhere um, because of kind of the rules and culture of engagement that exist in middle and upper middle class life for most people. And it can still happen. They could still be surgeons or they could become psychopathic I, rulers I do of companies. Think a lot of... You know, blah, 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 right? That could still happen. Right. But it's far easier in environments where there's a lower income situation, where there's a lot of rampant crime. It's far easier in that situation for a psychopath to rise at the top of a hierarchy of like a violent gang because their natural proclivity completely aligns with the violence required to climb the hierarchy. Right. And so well, that, I, so, so I mean, the, I should, the so, institutions yeah. box in psychopaths, like yes. psychopaths don't want to be in prison, but I, I would argue yes. that a lot of the people in prison are psychopaths. They right? are. Yes. So, yeah. but in, if a, a, someone who's a psychopath who you know doesn't really care about other people can be used in in a social setting if there's certain jobs that are kind of you know, obviously like prosecutors a psychopath could be useful for but um in a situation like hamas i just what other how are they useful in any other way than climbing some gang-like hierarchy they're not they're yeah. not but see but that's the whole thing is like so the reason in middle and upper middle class cultures and societies it's harder for the psychopath to rise it's not possible but harder is because people as you said psychopaths don't want to follow the rules they don't want to follow systems they're psychopaths but they also don't want to go to jail 
but people that exist in that realm want to protect the existing structures of society. And so when they see the psychopath, if the psychopath behavior is alerted to them, they want to announce that to everyone and get the fuck away from the psychopath. Right. Like being a psychopath in that situation is not viewed as a good thing. But if you're in a lower situ in a lower situation, a crime situation, you don't care about the structures and rules of society. You want to tear them down. And so the psychopathic behavior suddenly is is a is a benefit as opposed to a penalty. And and announcing that you're the psychopath can actually be beneficial too. And so if you relate that to the situation in Gaza, you say like, well, if the people broadly are living in a situation where they want everything torn down, where they don't want to protect any existing structure or society, then that makes it significantly easier for the psychopaths then to rise to the top levels of hierarchical power in that society. Right. We've kind and of drifted into the, like how different societies deal with the psychopath problem, which is a constant persistent problem in society. Yes. I think the problem with Hassan and most, well, a lot of people on the left, their analysis is that they just, they don't think psychopaths exist. Yeah. Like they don't, they don't, they can't They're perceive of a world. Well, uh, yeah. Well, they, they just, they don't, they think everyone is basically good. They don't understand that there are people out there. They don't understand the old adage that man is a wolf to man, that there are people out there that want to subjugate and hurt people. Right. They think uh, societal conditions put people into that situation. When I just, I don't, I don't believe that. I think well, you have yeah. like 5% of the population wants to subjugate and take advantage of people and manipulate people and, and gain social status and wealth and fame by any means necessary. And how you deal with that 5% of the population is through various institutions in society. Now, right. if you have a place that's uh, an authoritarian regime and the only way to gain status in society is through politics, then you're going to have the psychopaths basically controlling government. If you have a situation like the first world democracies, where you've got all these other routes to power, right? Start a business, sports, um, media, acting, making, um, you know, arts, the arts, what all these different ways that you can uh, climb the hierarchy. It's not all based on might makes right politics. Does that yeah. make sense? No, no, I agree completely. The, the, the idea that like the environment makes psychopaths. Well, first, I mean, to some extent, you can condition people to do horrific things to an extent. Um, I look, I, I don't look, I, I do think in situations of war, it's just like the psychopaths are willing to do uh, horrible things. No, 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 no. Okay. And the we other 95% wants to get out of the fucking way. Uh, no, no, no. That, okay. We have to be very clear here. Okay. Mm -hmm. In war, there are people that are not psychopaths that will do really fucked up shit. And then we'll mm -hmm. go back home and just be normal. Yes. If you put the human animal in certain situations, they can act horribly barbaric. Right. right. So we have to, so that exists. Okay. That you definitely can force exists. people to do horribly barbaric things, but they're right. never going to, they're always going to feel bad about it. And a lot of the PTSD that our guys come home with is because it's they're not they psychopaths. Yes, right. Yeah. The problem is that you're correct that while the human animal can be put in situations in war and other situations where they do horrific shit, there still is putting those people aside, there is some percentage of the population that are just psychopathic evil people that are, that's just who they are. Okay. In right. any situation. And they're they're right? going to be criminals. And, yeah. And the problem is that a lot of people, specifically on the left, they assume that those people are just the people put in the war situation. They, they think they don't understand that those exactly. people are just who they really okay. are. Okay. We're right. at, we found it. Yeah. Right. That's exactly so, what's going on. Right. And so, the thing isn't that society creates the psychopath. Society can create situations that put people, normal people, in situations where they behave badly. That definitely exists. But also, society can create situations where the psychopath thrives. Right, and that's which is Gaza. <laughs> right. And so there's a great line from one of your favorite movies, uh, Sin City. Oh, yeah, I love that movie. And it's where, um, I forget the, the actor's name, it's in the bar... And he's looking at Marv 
And he's like, you know, Marv is a person oh, yes. who was born in the wrong era. The wrong he, time. Wrong, yeah, because if he was born back in like the, the Roman gladiator days, he'd be like some they'd massive be champion. They'd be tossing yeah. women at him. Exactly. He'd be so easy for him to climb the status hierarchy because he's so good at like murdering people. You yes. know, he's so great at it that in a different time period, that skill would have been so valued. Right. But since, but he doesn't live in that society. So that skill isn't valued. And it's kind of like the same thing that we're trying, talking about with the psychopaths in Gaza is that because of the environmental conditions that exist in Gaza, that's that skill set of being like brutal and psychopathic is actually valued. Right. And that to, allows to society's to detriment. Right. I want to make one but more and point. And also this. Yeah. Right. Oh, go ahead. Well, I want to make one more point before we move on, just because so in Gaza, like we can imagine a, like a businessman, someone who wants to climb the hierarchy by improving his community, right? He's going to open up a local shop that's going to import cheap products for, for all the poor people, right? Is that businessman going to be unmolested by the Gaza uh, leadership? Of course I not. find it hard to believe that he's not, right? He's, he's going to have to bribe them, pay them off, uh, whatever. And that's just... Let them store weapons in his base. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's just, that's a fundamental problem. Now, yeah. I, I mean, I would uh, relate this back to insecure property rights. Like I've often said, you know, property rights are the foundation of Western society, right? Obviously, right. Hassan disagrees with me. He's a socialist. But that businessman in Gaza, that hypothetical businessman that could improve the society, people are going to think think this through before they go into business and do, and try to improve society because they don't have secure property rights. He knows whatever he builds that the Gazan people in, in control, the might makes right psychopaths that are running the place, they can take whatever he builds away from him at any time, right? Right. That... that totally demotivates anybody from building anything valuable of course see this is this is the problem you just look you have to remove the leadership and they're going to scream and and holler they're going to say look we were rightfully elected in 2006 almost two decades ago and you've got hassan the hassans of the world are just going to lap this nonsense up yep well, it's a tough situation do you want to say anything but, else? Or? Well, just because again, he uh, he views it as the. It's so weird because he says in the clip that Pierce played, where he's like, "You know, these people are put in this bad situation. What did you expect to happen?" Right. That, that's kind of Hassan's position. It's super stupid, hypocritical, and ironic that he says that for the Palestinians, but he doesn't say that for the Israelis. Because the Israelis have the exact same situation. Oh, that's like, a wait great a minute. point. You know, they pulled out the settlers, you know, in, in 2005. And if you remember, well, we didn't cover it, but you watched the conversation that Hassan had with Ethan, which I didn't finish, but I found very obnoxious. Because essentially that whole conversation is Ethan uh, Klein saying, I understand the plight of the Palestinian people. I understand what Israel is doing wrong. Um, but Hamas sucks, blah, 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 blah. Like he's he's kind of understanding the complexities of both sides. And all Hassan does is Israel bad, Israel bad, Israel bad, Israel bad. Like a stupid, you know, donkey. Like he, he like he can't move. He sees no nuance, no understanding, no complexity of the situation that Ethan is is talking about. And at least the part of the conversation I saw, Ethan never calls him out uh, for doing this in the first half of the conversation. He says, you're like a fucking idiot. That you, you know, I'm give I'm, you know, I'm able to see all this nuance and able to see both sides of the issue. And you're just a fucking idiot who's just your brain has been rotted on Israel bad, and you're just simping for Hamas essentially this in this conversation. Yeah, Ethan but, so, does pretty good in that conversation. Okay. I, I the part I saw he did not do. He was just letting Hassan walk all over him, and it was frustrating. So I couldn't watch the okay. rest of it. So um, you weren't <laughs> so you were like it's a it's slow. Ethan is really Taking baby steps with Hassan. Right. So right. I, I can maybe see it all that happens in the frustrated. second half, but I, I tapped out. Well, um, no, he does. He does eventually be like, What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck, dude? What the fuck? Right. But which I, I mean, you're feeling that the whole time. 
the problem... Hassan is just making excuses. This is what's so infuriating. Hassan is literally making excuses for psychopaths. Yes. And trying to say, oh, we're responsible. Society created those psychopaths. This is why we just, we got to change that but, meme, man. Right. But in that conversation, Ela talks about how when she was growing up in the 90s, there was a lot, the travel restrictions between Israel and the Palestinian locations were far more lax. It was far easier for people to travel between the two countries. And she, she should have brought this up and Hassan doesn't ask because he's an idiot and he doesn't actually care about what's true is, well, why did Israel go from having much more laxer travel restrictions to the very stringent travel restrictions they have now? And because the they had a is, bunch of suicide bombers. Exactly, because they had a bunch of suicide bombers. And this is why Hassan is so stupid about his entire take on this, because he has he has infinite sympathy for the people in Palestine and infinite charity to say no one in Palestine is remotely responsible for their actions because of their conditions, right, of, of having, you know, all these bad things happen to them. So they're completely off the hook. So he's going to defend them forever, infinitely. But for some reason, Israel doesn't get that, even though Israel has been subject to suicide bombing, has been subject to multiple wars throughout the years, has been subject to all these uh, missiles being shot at them. Like, and this is why this is kind of despicable, because the way Israel or the way Hassan frames the Israel situation to his audience, whether he says it explicitly or not, is that Israel is an evil state with people who are just doing evil things because they're evil. Hassan never actually gives a just a reason, not even justification. He never gives a single reason that I've heard in a single clip about why the Israeli people or the Israeli government is doing the things that they're doing. In Hassan's worldview, Israel and the Israeli government are just evil people that are just, I guess, psychopaths that just do whatever they do because they're evil. And all the Palestinians are like innocent lambs who have just been conditioned to do bad things. When in reality, it's like, no. Both sides have been conditioned by each other to behave in a very specific way as often very destructive towards the other. Israel is just as much a product of its environment as is the Gaza Strip in the West Bank. It's not like, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, when, when when the war, the first war started, when Israel was declared a country, okay, it's not like Israel just said, you know what, we're going to just be evil and take over Palestine because we hate them. No. Like the five surrounding countries and the Palestinian, the Arab Palestinians in the area all attacked Israel. And that's yeah. been, that's basically been Israel's existence for like <laughs> since then. It's just been on this constant defensive of being attacked by fuck shit tons of people are surrounding them. And so, you know, does that justify them to do whatever they want? Of course not. But it's just it's insanely insipid and fucking stupid to me that Hassan has infinite charity for one side of the conflict. And zero charity, zero nuance, zero understanding for why the people in Israel, why the government in Israel behaves the way it does. Yeah, it's so stupid to me. I Look, I don't know how they can handle, how they just live with these constant missiles being shot at them that they're shooting out of the air. Like, if America had that going on, like if Canada wanted to randomly shoot missiles at our cities or, or Mexico wanted to do that, we're fucking invading. That's bullshit. Yeah. Just because we have the technology to shoot them out of the sky? No, fuck you. <laughs> fuck right. you, Mexico. Fuck you, Canada. You're going to become the 51st state. I just, the the idea that this goes on and somebody can just say, oh, yeah, that's just normal. The fucking nation next door shoots missiles at us randomly. Right. What the heck? <laughs> how, look, how are we even having a conversation about this? Sometimes just. Like it blows my mind. Yeah. How, yeah. How do, you, how, have, how do you live like that? Yeah. I mean, and I wish Hassan wouldn't be such a coward. I would love to talk to him about this, but he never will because we're not big enough. He can't claw shark off us. But if you guys are having a conversation with someone who's like regurgitating Hassan talking points and they bring up the trade blockade, the open air prison, you know, any of these things, you just ask this them. This is bullshit. You, you just, yeah, you, you just ask them, why is Israel doing that? Just ask them, why yeah. is Israel doing that? And they won't have an answer. They won't have an answer. Because every, op the open air prison stuff drives me fucking crazy, man. Right. It's right. so insane. But look, 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 that that narrative exists. Let me be yeah, clear Yeah, yeah, I understand. It's just, yeah. That 
want to thwart any kind of Palestinian nation state, you must do everything you can to only negotiate with Hamas. We control how high the, how high the fire goes. He has given cash to Hamas right. by way of Qatar. Uh, there is no bigger fan of Hamas than Bibi Netanyahu, which uh, I hope one day you can maybe uh, interview and then you'll ask him to. No, no, I, I actually uh, did interview uh, him a few months ago and I, and I did actually spell out to him that there have been a lot more Palestinian deaths this year so far up to the point of the interview than Israelis and what he intended to do about it. He said then he didn't believe in collective responsibility, which is now this hot phrase in this whole uh, crisis about whether you would hold all people in Gaza responsible for Hamas. Interesting to see if Wait, when they... Can well, I ask it, well, let me just finish you, my point. Do you, do you if they do, they launch that? a ground invasion. It'd be interesting to see if they keep to that word. You know, I'm not... How do you feel about leftists all of a sudden being against collective punishment? <laughs> it's kind of fucking weird, isn't it? We live, we're living in bizarro world now. You know, it's funny. Um, uh, you know, we've been having our conversation about is, is socialism individualistic or collectivist? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one, of, one of the clips we have, or I have, is his oh, no. <laughs> complaining about how it's an, you know, it's a liberal individualist perspective to have a certain perspective. So he's oh, really? literally using individualism as like a negative uh, modifier for something. The, the people that want to say all white people have white privilege and they're yeah. all colonialists and that we Ooh. all sh we all have to pay reparations right. for the for the sins oh, of that's our a great forefathers point. Yes. are now all of a sudden oh they're all up in arms about collective punishment here. It's like you you're the ones that brought this on. What the hell are you talking about? true yeah that's such a good point i'm gonna steal it and tweet it out it's so it's so insidious every time i hear one of them talk about collective punishment i think what, what have you been talking about for the last eight years mm -hmm. all this critical race theory is all based on collective punishment that's what's wrong with it thank you for coming to our side on critical race theory finally <laughs> Had to take war in the Middle East for it to happen. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a, a defender of what Bibi Netanyahu has been doing in Israel. In, in the last year, his attack on the uh, credibility and integrity of the Supreme Court, I think, has been a disgrace. And I think it has fractured society in Israel. I also think that it's caused so much social unrest and had such big protests that you could argue it's taken the eye off the ball of the people who should have been defending the border uh, because they've been trying to sort out what's been going on domestically, internally inside Israel. So I think it's a catastrophic failure of intelligence, of security, of defence, all of those things. I'd be amazed, frankly, if Netanyahu survives this. So I'm certainly not here to defend him, even if you do view me as a stenographer for his government. Uh, my, my, my question for you, I think, is this. is that I've had a lot of problems trying to get people on the pro-Palestinian side, to separate two things. That you can say, as I believe and you believe, that the Palestinians have been maltreated for decades. That the situation where they are effectively... Maltreated by Hamas for decades. I mean, I don't even call it mm -hmm. an occupation because Israelis aren't in Gaza. They pulled out in 2005. But they still control the ability of Gaza... Is, well, see, this is why I call you propagandist well, well, no, I, no, 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 I'm just saying the phraseology is confusing to me because the reality is... Israel exercises control over people in Gaza. It allows them in and out. It allows them to turn on the tap of water and so on and so on. I because of Hamas, as soon as a, a brutal, ruthless gang is no longer the leadership in Hamas, all of that changes. Mm -hmm. Changes tomorrow. Get all that. They don't actually live there because they can't live side by side That's with each other. That's why it's called an open-air prison. Right, I, I don't That's disagree with... That's why they call it the world's disagree. largest open-air yeah, prison. Yeah, but Hassan, I don't disagree with you. And I've, I've pointed this okay. out for a long time as a journalist. So we don't, we don't disagree about the appalling plight of Palestinian people. Um, but the issue comes that if you can't separate that ongoing dispute between Israel and Palestine from the absolutely appalling barbarism of October the 7th, which was on a whole different scale to anything we've seen, where 1,400 people, Holocaust survivors, babies in their, in their cribs, you know, young women taken, uh, tortured, abused, shot, beheaded, it was reported, and so on. If we can't look at that collectively, 
with a with a, a general humanity and agreement that that is an absolute atrocity, then there's something wrong with this. And I find that the, the tribalism on both sides is now so toxic and so frenzied that you get people who literally can't. We've had a bunch of actors, right, signing this statement saying they want a ceasefire in Gaza and calling Israel war criminals and so on. But they don't say a word about the Hamas attacks that precipitated this. And I find that you really, hard, them, right? really hard to accept. But, you, but, you, but do you agree with them? If, if they had said, for example, that October 7 attacks were brutal and, and massacres occurred, and then they said everything else, that Israel is committing war crimes, would you agree with them? I, well, it, OK, here's what I would honestly say about that. Is Israel not allowed to defend itself from the worst terror attack we've seen since 9-11? Is it not allowed to defend itself it's just after 1,400 people in Israel are butchered in that way? And the question then, if you assume that they are able to defend themselves, as any Pierce, free democratic the, country, that is the then, then the question State becomes... Line, Hassan, that, is me, the then, that is the IDF's line. That is the line that... So this is part of like the BS2. Is, so if Hassan wants to complain about uh, the bombings, killing innocent people, if he wants to complain about cutting off electricity and water to the area... You know, you can you can complain about all these things, but what is you know what is his proposed alternative uh, solution to any of this? Because I've never heard him give one, except capitulation, which is like, which is not going to work. Which is number one is not going to work. Number two, you're literally insane if you think that would like the pull. Like you don't understand anything about human psychology if you think the reaction of a country after the worst terrorist attack they've ever experienced and probably one of the worst terrorist attacks a first world country has experienced like probably in the top 10 okay in terms of like just death count and barbarity of like worst terrorist attacks a first world country has ever experienced you know in modern times um if you think that their response to that is just going to be to roll over and capitulate right now i'm not saying that justifies them to become you know horribly brutal but what is the military response that Hassan would say they they should do, or sh what should they be doing instead? If you think what they're doing is wrong, it's a great question. I mean, and that's kind of like the difficulty of this is, you know, obviously, I think it's horrible and horrific if innocent Palestinian people are dying and are dying, and they're even the ones that are not dying, their entire homes and and businesses are being destroyed. By the bombings and as you said you know i think they are hostages essentially to hamas um but it's like at the end of the day the kind of sickening reality of the world is that the way our countries exist and the way governments exist is that they're going to protect their own people first before they protect other people and there's always going to be that like overlap of natural human rights versus you protecting your own you protecting your own and you have to try to find the line of like how many people are you willing to kill that are not your people to protect your people and it's like a yeah. super fucked up difficult moral question that we all have to grapple with in the modern world and it's completely and i understand why people don't want to grapple with it because it's it's it, there's no good answer it's as you said it's a wicked problem a wicked problem that has no good answer uh, to it whatsoever. And I'm just kind of annoyed and sickened by these pathetic loser responses from people like Hassan, who just want like a magical fairy solution where we wave a magic wand and like everything's just better, I guess. Do you, I mean, I, I have an idea of how, what they're going to do. <laughs> I mean, I, whether or not... I mean, I don't know how various people feel about the morality of it. Oh, yeah, no, I, I know what they're doing and I know what they're going to do. But I'm talking about like, what is the quote, more moral, like what would be well, the Hassan? What is like the moral military well, response? Look, a, that an entirely different universe has to exist for right. that to take place. Like Hassan lives in a fucking dream world. OK, sure. Like I said, I think the Israeli government probably has decent intelligence on how many people are are keeping Hamas in power in Gaza they've they basically declared half of the nation 
an, uh, a inevitable war zone and said, you know, get out of here um, if you have the means to get out of here because we're going to go through. And if it's 500 guys, we're going to round those guys up and, and incarcerate them. I feel right. like that's incarcerate or kill them. And uh, I feel like that's that's what's going to happen. I think that's what they're preparing for. I think that's what they're going to do. Yeah. Do you, I, do I you agree? So. No, I yeah. agree. And, I, and I'm not, I don't think, I mean, it would depend on how effective they are. I don't think Gaza is going to be under its own uh, rule after this. It what might be. Means. I don't know. They I don't look, think they had be. a bunch of they had a bunch of potential leaders step up in Iraq. I just the that's the thing. The population. No, no, I'm, I'm not saying forever. I'm just saying Israel is going to take control of Gaza for how long? I don't know the answer. But look, you can't just say, "Okay, you're a democracy now." Obviously, here here are the democratic <laughs> institutions. Start voting like people. People are very habitual, right? They have, they live in a society. I'm, I look, I don't know. I've never been to Gaza. I don't know what it's like. I have read a bunch of books on places that are these third world nations where just basically everything runs off of bribes and patronage with your neighbors, that kind of thing. Like the police are all corrupt. If you get pulled over, you got to bribe money to get out of it. They'll shake you down for anything. If, if you're a local business owner, expect to be paying a large portion of your business to the local secure authorities to basically keep the criminals from from raiding you nightly, that kind of stuff. So just we we in the West were totally spoiled by this idea that, oh, the police aren't corrupt. Oh, if we have a problem, we can go to a, a judge and they'll try and at least be fair and impartial. Look, I'm not Pollyanna about the the judicial system. Obviously, it's it it ranges by how much money you have, how much access to legal services you have, but at least we have some semblance of order here and the that sort of that sort of thing. I don't exactly. I don't know. The the problem is gonna be the how do you build those institutions? I mean you it's Slowly. we're gonna replace look for every there's like five hundred guys that are controlling Hamas. And once those 500 guys go, I mean, are there another 500 guys who would like to be in their position? Probably. They probably just take over, start doing what those other people were doing, right? Look, the guy who was shaking down the local businessmen for bribes once a week is dead now. But Hey, I could just go shake down the local business man and take his place, right? And everything's the exactly the same. This local business guy still needs someone to protect him from other people who will take advantage of him, right? I'm going to be that guy. What changes? Nothing. Sure. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if the situation... They're going to take out the 500 guys and 500 other guys are going to take their well, place. That's why I'm 500, saying I think 500 other gonna, guys already waiting to take uh, their place. And there are other groups besides Hamas and that, you know, they think the group that launched the the rocket that blew up the hospital wasn't even Hamas, it was some other group. Okay, so, so you've got, look, so there you've are got other groups, right. But that's why I'm saying you've I got don't four think, or five criminal gangs that are Yeah, but Israel's not stupid. Okay. That's why I'm right. saying they're gonna I think they're gonna once they do move troops in, I think they're going to take over Gaza. And the question yeah, is, gonna, how long? What is that going to look they're like? They're going to be responsible for security. They're going to do the exact yeah. same thing we did in Iraq. They're basically yeah. going to say, look, we're the police now. Right. Good luck with that. Didn't go well for us either. Look, I, I don't know how... Like, nobody in Los Angeles would stand for the Iraqi military being the police force in Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> you You watch a bunch of hippies in Los Angeles turn into... Soldier of Fortune pretty quick if that happened. Everyone, so let me ask channel. you this. It then becomes a question of how can they defend themselves? If their mission now is to get rid of Hamas, a terror organization that's committed one of the worst acts of terror ever seen, if that is their stated aim, mm -hmm. then what they are doing is consistent with that, isn't it? No. Here's why this is actually an abject failure, and this is not just my perspective on the matter. I'm just a 
you know, dumb idiot uh, with a Twitch stream who, who is live reacting to the news and trying to make sense of everything as it's on. We're, we're definitely going to clip that out, right, Sitch? Promise me. <laughs> that's going like, to be our show intro the, from now on. Hassan clip, calling himself a dumb idiot. There's a longer clip of him just saying, like, how he, how he and other Twitch streamers are idiots. Anyway. Oh, okay. People shouldn't even listen to him. It's like, okay, you, you're just, it's really disgusting because he's lying when he says that because he doesn't actually think he's an idiot and he thinks that oh, he, he has thinks he's a genius insight into the world, you know. I'm going, I usually have a policy of not covering breaking news and, and uh, sometimes that policy is violated. But oh, sometimes. <laughs> Part of the problem here is like, we're talking about incentives and, and disincentives. Hassan is incentivized to be as shitty as possible. He is 100% incentivized to cover breaking news. He is 100% incentivized to cover it in the worst way possible, to be audience captured, et cetera, et cetera. He will not be penalized for his mistake about the hospital. He will not be penalized for any of his dog shit takes on Israel. So he will only grow from this interview. He will only grow from all the horrific propaganda he has been spewing relating to this. Uh, circumstance to this incident and the only thing i can hope is that broadly on the left that the left the older people on the left the non-leftist socialist types are just looking at the insanity they're seeing in these ivy league schools and the insanity they're seeing from some of the blm members and on the internet and they're realizing that they're basically have made a bed with racist psychopaths yeah and that that's they're our, not aligned. that's our coalition yeah that's your coalition but uh, ultimately i am not uh, held up by the same journalistic standards even though i think i do a much better job than most other news outlets in uh, in general so let me just say this really quickly you said israel has a right to defend itself absolutely zero people think that this is a ridiculous statement however how israel is defending mm -hmm. itself is collective punishment I don't know if Hassan actually, he says zero people, but does he, does Hassan think Israel has a right to defend itself? I mean, Hassan famously said that America deserved 9 11. Okay. That's right. what Hassan said. And he never backtracked that. Does he, I want to ask Hassan, does Hassan think Israel deserved October 7th? I think he does. Okay. So then, how, so then how can he say that they, the zero people think they have a right to defend themselves. Because I if mean, you say they clip, deserve it, I mean, then they don't have a right to defend themselves, right? The clip he played about the open air prison. Look, he just, he wants Israel to roll over and take it. He does. Yeah. He's like, Israel created this problem. Yep. Yeah. Now, collective punishment in the form of depriving 2.2 million people of electricity, collective punishment in the form of depriving them of of water, of food, collective punishment of uh, in the form of 51 people dying in the West Bank where, you know, there is no Hamas in the West Bank and yet 51 people have died because in the West Bank, settlers that are occupying Palestinian territory in violation of the international law, settlers who are doing an act of colonial terrorism, and this is not my statement on it, this is international law, that are doing horrifying things by simply just existing there and, and maintaining the presence uh, with, a, with an occupying force in the form of IDF, who is ritualistically humiliating Palestinians. Uh, uh. So, as I said earlier in the stream, I, I completely don't agree with the settlers in the West Bank. And I think Israel should forcibly remove them all. And I, I generally think what they're doing is just incredibly immoral. And Israel needs to incentivize peaceful behavior from the government in the West Bank. Um, and so this is completely going counter to, to peace efforts. And I've said all that stuff. Okay. That being said, anyone, anyone that brings up what's happening with settlers in the West Bank to explain or justify what's going on in Gaza is insanely stupid and completely uh, dishonest as Hassan is doing right now because he's going through the whole list of oh you know look at what's going on in the West Bank West Bank's a different government okay it's essentially a different country there's not settlers in Gaza Israel pulled the settlers out of Gaza just as I said okay just as I said 
that Israel is incentivizing bad behavior by allowing people to settle in West Bank. Hamas incentivized all the worst behavior from Israel because when Israel actually did the thing they wanted, actually gave the people in Gaza the reins of power, actually pulled out all the settlers from Gaza, what did they do? They elected Hamas and started attacking Israel with rockets and suicide bombs and all sorts of other fucked up shit. Right. Okay. So they're so for so for Hassan to bring this up, the settlers in the West Bank, as if that justifies Hamas's action in Gaza, is absurd. He said fifty-one Palestinians were killed, but he's doing a long dance around. Like, well, I hear 51 Palestinians were killed, and I think, well, how? What happened? They, he always does this long. He always does this nonsensical dance where he, everything he, the way he describes information is from this completely one-sided view that Israel is just the evil colonialist empire and all the Palestinians are these like innocent just lambs innocent. that were yeah. like, you know, forced into doing horrific things because of their conditions. When right. and we'll t you know whenever he would bring up some incident, you know when I look into it, say oh this person was killed by IDF snipers or whatever, it'd be like oh well that's because that person was like fucking around with the border gate, which they tell you not to do or they'll shoot you, and then someone does it and then they get shot and then you act surprised. Right. It's like you know it's like when you resist arrest and the police beat you up and then you act surprised that you got beaten up by the police after you resisted arrest, right? Or get shot right. or something. Yeah, he makes it sound like it's a Hunger Games. Israel shows up in the morgue and they're like, give us 51 children. Yeah, he's, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. No, he acts like that the Israel, like the IDF just puts a bunch of snipers on a hilltop and they're just playing like Duck Hunter with right. the Palestinian lives just for like the lulls. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, he's in a, a propagandist, right? Yeah, because he's a admitted propagandist. A.K.A. liar. Yes. Structure that B'Tselem, an Israeli organization, calls the permit regime, where every waking moment of, of uh, Palestinians' lives in the West Bank are absolute hell, where they have no legal recourse. 51 Palestinians have died, and that was before the Ramallah uh, the, the Ramallah protest that happened last night and uh, the Israeli forces were uh, opening up with live fire on protesters last night. So who knows what that death toll has become. This is all, this is all a product of Israel being an apartheid state. This is a violent apartheid state. There is no way to be a let, peaceful right, son, apartheid state. Let me ask you state. this. It, let is, you it this. is a violence let it me is ask violence you this, required for its maintenance. Okay, listen. And that violence is frustrating people. I hear that you. That violence I is hear radicalizing you. people. But here's Hold my, on. I hear as you. far as Israel, as far as, it, as far as what Benjamin Netanyahu has done, as far as the war government, what they have done, peers, going into Gaza yeah. and bombing Gaza and killing 3,480 uh, Palestinians so far in Gaza, 1,000 plus children mm. out of all of those casualties. 22 hospitals being bombed, a bakery, the only remaining intact bakery being bombed yesterday. Um, these, are, these are horrifying crimes mm. that you would openly say are horrifying and unjustifiable when Russia does it, but when Israel does it, it Israel has a right to defend itself. This is identical to the same talking points that I've heard from every Israeli administration official. It's the same talking points that I've heard from American politicians championing the, the exact same talking points. It's the same thing that I've heard from everyone else in the media. You might have been against the Iraq uh, war and, and you use that, but you're using that for, for evil, in my opinion, at this point. If you are not sitting here and condemning those acts of war crimes, those acts of violence, that those acts of collective punishment. Well, so it, it's funny. So you're like, well, just by simply saying that Israel has a right to defend itself, you're repeating some kind of talking points. <laughs> okay. Right. It's like, okay. Reducing it to talking points. Is, right. oh, I hate that. Which, you know, again, this is so stupid because every stupid thing that Hassan is saying about this could so easily is be a talking point. Yeah. On him is just a talking point we've all heard from the, you know, the anti-Israel side. I mean, even like, you know, the whole calling an apartheid state I think is is a talking point. Is a talking a giant point. Talking point. And also, it's like completely stupid and wrong. It doesn't even make sense because when you talk about apartheid, everyone's thinking that you're talking about South Africa, which is like a situation where you literally had you know white 
European colonialists come in, uh, take over an area of Africa, you know, enslave the people originally. Then when slavery goes away, basically, you know, keep a, you know, segregation through laws. It's like, that's not even remotely what happened with Israel. What happened with Israel was you had a native population of Jews, you had a native population of Arab Palestinians, or whatever you want to call them that the region, because part of what everyone forgets in this conversation is that, you know, originally, even though the UN wanted to have kind of the separate country between Israel and Palestine, the surrounding countries didn't want it to be Palestine. Jordan wanted it, you know, wanted what they want. They wanted to have a, or Transjordan at the time wanted, you know, big chunks of Israel to be their country. And Egypt wanted big chunks of the country to be their country. And Lebanon wanted big chunks of the country to be their country. They didn't want an independent Palestine. They all wanted pieces of Israel to be theirs. Right. This whole concept of an independent Palestine didn't arise until decades later. Wow. Well, I would say to that, that I think the death of any child in this conflict is horrific, absolutely horrific. But the question comes down to me that after an act of terror, as we saw on October the 7th, Israel should be able to defend itself and should be able to go after the people that perpetrated that, who live amongst civilians in, in Gaza deliberately. And the question for me becomes down to what is proportionate? I don't know the answer, then. I'll be honest with you. I don't know what that answer I is. I do know the answer to that. I do know the answer to that. Last night I had uh, Dr. Ofer Kassif, uh, an Israeli Knesset member who was expelled, uh, suspended for 45 days for saying uh, what I believe is the truth, uh, what uh, is championing the exact same position of the, uh, the Haaretz's uh, editorial board. Um, there are a lot of thoughtful people, a lot of... Or, or is he going to tell us what the position is or he's just going to say it exists? <laughs> <laughs> don't don't hold your breath man i'm curious i want to know what is it what is the position what is the military position that hassan takes and i and here's the thing he'll never tell you that you know why because he's a coward because when you is watch it? his videos and you see his chat his chat is like so much more radicalized than hassan is right. his chat is insane there's like a right. handful of people that are like what this is like crazy and they, they peace out but overall, his chat is completely insane, and they want Israel to just not exist. And Hassan knows that, and he's too cowardly, even if he believes it. I don't know if he does or not. Even if he believes there's some justified military action that Israel could, should or could take, I don't think Hassan would ever tell us what that is. Because he'd be afraid of his audience? Yeah, because he knows his, his audience, audience would like flip out. like you're an Israel him. sympathizer? Yes, 100%. So weird. Who knew Hassan's audience is all just Nazis? <laughs> I mean... I mean, I did. We all did. What do you mean? Look, I don't know what to call someone who's actively trying to genocide Jews other than Nazis, right? Right. Just They're makes... all a bunch of bigots and racists. Yeah. Yep. That's why I said, listen, I said all, you know, people better, people, people, all the, the right-wing anti-Semites they should be happy because eventually it's going to be, as I said, it's going to be the, the Jews. Anti-Semites. It's going to be the Jews that expose the, you know, the bigotry and racism of the left. <laughs> I'm worried they're going to join forces, man. Maybe, maybe the horseshoe is against us here. I don't know. They're just well, you're like, oh, you're so close. Let's just reach out. You're right there on the other side of the horseshoe. It's funny because there are some. Um, there are some right-wing anti-liberal collectivists who, and left-wing anti-liberal collectivists who will definitely, you know, bond over their hatred of the Jews, and that definitely was going on within like the Nazi Party back in the day. Um. But I, but I think most, I think a lot of the the very far right people, even though people that are anti-Semitic, I think their anti-Semitism comes second. It's kind of like oh, they're very anti-woke. They're very anti-socialist, and then they buy into the propaganda that well, it's Jews that create and and intentionally created and manifest and propagate wokeness and socialism, and so right. their anti-Semitism comes separately. So they're those people will not ever team up with the the socialist, the, the actual socialist, yeah, yeah, the anti-Semitic socialist. Which, by the way, 
by the way, this whole situation, how does this not completely destroy the narrative about secret Jewish control? I mean, there's this whole narrative that the Jews secretly control all the Ivy Leagues and control the left and do all this woke shit and all this stuff because they're secret part of their secret Jew plan. And now we find out, oh, all the Ivy League schools and all the woke people, they're all horribly anti-Israel. Oh, yeah, and that's a great point. That's a <laughs> like, great point. It's like, oh, okay. So, I mean, what's going on here? Is it so the how exactly did the Jews are the Jews just like the worst people, like the most incompetent uh, secret controllers of all the people ever? Or was it never really a secret Jewish plot? Well, no, you but you said it earlier. Here's what the counter claim yeah. would be, because if all the rich Jewish people pull their money out and Harvard ceases to be an institution, we'll be like, oh, maybe they did control Harvard. Yeah, but see, then that shows you, wait a minute, they were controlling it for a good thing. They actually stopped the leftists. <laughs> <laughs> they were controlling it for good. Okay. If, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I agree. Like, pull your money out. I don't, if, I don't. Why are you giving your money to these Ivy League institutions nowadays, anyway? Right. If and here's the here's the thing. I, I challenge any of the idiots that kind of push the JQ stuff. If the JQ was real, uh, Harvard and Yale and all these Ivy League schools and all these media institutions would all be bending over backwards to defend Israel and to shit all over the woke people that are defending uh, Palestine. And they're not doing that though. They're completely not doing that. They're all cowardly about it. That is not, that is like one, that is the biggest uh, uh, cough or uh, nail in the chest of this idea of the JQ. It is. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. They, they won't change their mind. It does. It does fit the narrative that, these institutions have become commercialized to the point where they're just catering to a student body that they see as customers. A hundred percent. Yeah. So they but that's can't really, really it's not, yeah. yeah, it's not JQ. It's that. Yes. Yeah. So it's they can't that, really speak back against them because yeah. all these kids grew up. I mean, I guess just on this Israel Palestine thing, it's like they're, they're Super Bowl here. Yeah. So they're just seeing a, it like a sports game. You have a bunch of left-wing uh, white people who have been basically guilted into believing, and yeah. indoctrinated and guilted into believing a bunch of woke dog shit. Yeah, and and the adults are too cowardly to stand up to the kids who are their customers. Essentially, that's what's happening here. Right. Um, uh, formative Holocaust scholars, a lot of historians uh, that all agree on the same point. The reason why violence that even penetrates through the Israeli security blanket that, that people thought existed, that penetrated through that Iron Dome, the Iron Wall, if you want to call it that, is because of years and years of oppression and years and years of violence, which is a necessity to maintain an apartheid state. And this has to stop. There's only two ways out of this. Guys, it's so painful just listening to this, Such, <laughs> it's, it's so much bullshit. I know. He just goes on and on and on about this bullshit. It's like so annoying. So annoying. <laughs> well, he just, he, it's exactly like the Hunger Games. He, pit, he basically is just pitching this narrative that Israel's the Hunger Games. It's like the rich Israelis there just feeding off of the outer districts. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's so sad. It's so sad. He's painting just a, a picture of this that's completely untrue. It's untrue. Completely false. Either you engage in full-blown ethnic cleansing, and if you, if you listen to the likes of Smotrich, or if you listen to the likes of Itamar Ben-Givir, and these very unfavorable, unpopular, mm -hmm. far-right figures, if you listen to Netanyahu and his Likud government, uh, they say that they are interested in going in that direction, the ethnic cleansing direction, the ethnic displacement direction, or the only way out of this for a real... This, so Netanyahu said we gotta ethnically cleanse the Palestinians? I'm Where's sure. that clip? Yeah, whatever. Where's that clip at? That's a pretty big claim. No, no, no. You don't understand. It wasn't Benjamin Netanyahu. It was 
Netanyahu. It was Net and Yahoo. It was yeah. not, it was, it Net was Net and Yahoo, Yahoo. Yes. On the Alex Jones and Kanye West show. Yes. I saw not, that. Not to be confused with the Prime Minister of Israel. It was the Net and Yahoo soda. Yahoo so <laughs> Yahoo soda on the uh, Alex Jones show with Kanye West. Can you imagine if Benjamin Netanyahu came out and said, "Look, we just got to kill all the Palestinians." <laughs> <laughs> like what? Really? Mm -hmm. Really? There you go. But that's, that's what he said. Did you hear that? That's what he Did said. Did you yeah. hear that? Yeah, Look, go back. I'm, I'm back. I'm backing yeah. it up. Back here we go. Up. Listen listen closely here. They say that they are interested in going in that direction, the ethnic cleansing direction, the ethnic displacement direction, or the only way out of this for a real solution. Did you hear what he said? I, I heard it. I don't know. Benjamin Netanyahu is interested in going in the ethnic cleansing direction. Right. I mean, that. I would like to see that clip. But <laughs> Can you bring the clip up uh, for I'm me? I'm looking. I don't see it. Oh, okay. ...is... To, to move towards peace, to genuinely have, to genuinely end the blockade, to end the apartheid, to end the occupation, and create a pathway towards citizenship for all people with a right to return for uh, all 14 million Palestinians, uh, uh, 5 million of which live under Israeli occupation. It's brutal. And then the rest living in diaspora. These are not unreasonable requests. Okay, Hassan, These are requests that understand the dignity and the humanity of one you. side and does not simply treat them as their uh, their colonial subjects. Hassan, I, and, and it's the only way to create okay, permanent I, security listen. and prosperity in the region. If it was so colonial subjects, people need to call us out for what it is racist. Hassan is a racist bigot. Calling Israel a colonial state is racism. It's 100 percent racism. Because what they're saying is, oh, it's a bunch of white Europeans that are stealing the land from native populations, okay? Yeah, that's when, what they mean by colonialism. Right. When first of all, number one, a big swath of the population of Israel are not European, okay? They're not European Jews, number one. So it's incredibly racist for you to just say they're all a bunch of white Jews. Number two, go fuck yourself, Mr. We need to have more immigration. Suddenly, when it's a different country, immigration's bad. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, open, you know, if, open borders, bitch. Yeah. What the <laughs> fuck? If it's America or Europe, oh, you have to have open borders. You have to let all the immigrants in. But suddenly, oh my god! If it's not a white country, you can't have immigration. Immigration's wrong. What the fuck? Get the fuck out of here. That's that's colonization when you have immigrants come to your country. Oh, OK. I'm pretty sure that Hassan and other people would say it's super racist if someone were to call like, you know, African or Middle Eastern or Latin American immigration into America or Europe. They call that like, oh, they're yeah, they're trying to come in and colonize our country. You'd say that's really fucking racist. But for some reason in Israel, oh, well, you know, that's acceptable. Like get the, the border fuck out crisis. Of the border crisis is colonialism, such I never. There you go. Really... Listen, How the Mexicans terrible. are trying to colonize America. I don't know if you know this, okay? <laughs> These colonialists from the South. Yes, exactly. These Southern colonialists coming in to our country, right? It's just so hilariously stupid how how completely like nonsensical all their views are on any of this stuff and contradictory yeah. all their views are. Because it all just depends on like, it's not based on a principle of morality. It's based on America bad. Who do I perceive as white is bad. Who's oppressed. Yeah. yeah. Who's oppressed is bad. Like, that's all it is. Like, it's literally just, it's literally just because, like, this is how stupid they are. Their view is just because Israel won the wars in the past. So Israel's bad. That's their yeah. view. Because, like, if the reverse happened, if Israel lost the war in 1948 and the Israelis, were the ones who got you know pushed into s smaller areas because they started a war that they lost, they'd be on completely reversed on all. They'd on be the situation. good guys, right? It's just because Israel won, which, by the way, it's like in 1948 when the UN came up with the the partition plan. Okay, the Jewish leadership said, "Yes, we will accept this two state solution." What did the Arab leadership said? 
They said, go fuck yourself. Yes. They said, no, not only did they say no, they said, we'll not agree to any partition plan. We don't agree to any two state solution. We should have the whole fucking thing. They said in the immortal words of Hassan Piker, suck my dick. Exactly. <laughs> and you know what happened? They lost. They started exactly. a war and they lost. And now Hassan and all these other people are crying because they're like, well, you know, why don't we go back to the borders that the UN originally you know, proposed, even though the fucking other people didn't agree to that in the first place. Too late for that one. Look, that ship has sailed, right, buddy? It's kind that of was like the offer on the table before we had to come in and kick your butts. Right. Hindsight's twenty twenty. It's like, okay, maybe you should have just agreed to coexist peacefully in the first fucking place. And yeah. None of this situation would have ever happened. You rolled the dice. Right. The dice have been rolled, and yes. you lost. They yes. came up snake eyes, buddy. You want to bring up history, you want to whine about all this stuff. It's like, listen, if 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 the, the Jewish side of the of the population agreed with the, the partition plan, which by the way, and it's funny because like so the Arab side complains because when it was partitioned, the Jewish side got 55% of the country and they got 45%, even though the Jewish side was a third One. of the population. But oh, the Jewish okay. retort to that is, yeah, we got 10% more land. But it was like the desert. It was the shitty area that was completely uninhabited at the time, which is true. Right. They got mostly uninhabited. They got a good, they got a, like a little chunk of good land, and then they got mostly uninhabited land. And Guess what? The, Pal the Palestinians got Irrigation. better land. <laughs> right. But obviously, as technology increases, you know, it's fine. Um, but it's like, yeah, if, if they had just agreed to the plan in 1948 and just said, okay, that we'll, we're totally fine with this, none of this conflict would have happened. Everything, everything would have been totally fine, but no, right? But no, so is there some psychological reactance going on here? Is that what's happening? Uh, what do you mean? Psycho psychological reactance is that feeling you get when someone. I mean, tells I know what it is, but what do you mean this? What do you mean this concept? Well, they're like, look, we're uh, we're offering you this, and they're just they won't take it. Uh, well, I, guess it's just, it, I guess it doesn't really apply. Does no, it's, it? it's it's funny because it was actually, this is why I bring up the immigration thing. Because They're not forcing it on them. They're offering it to them. Well, this is why I bring up the immigration thing. Because at the time in 1948, when there was a lot of Jews immigrating to Israel because of the Holocaust, and even before 1948, even before the Holocaust, lots of Jews were immigrating to Israel because of the pogroms and lots of other anti-Semitism. Guess who was all against the immigration? <laughs> the Arabs are like, we need it, to keep the, these immigrants out of our country. Right? Really? Yes, of course. Not the Israelis, though, right? The well, there Israelis was no Israel like... pre-1948. So. Oh, okay. So you had a bunch of Israelis migrating to the area. You had a, that, you had a bunch of Jews Israel. from Europe in, you know, throughout the early 1900s, even before World War II. Were immigrating to Israel to escape anti-Semitism. Uh, right. England controlled the area after World War One. It was a British mandate. And oh, okay. They were, they were allowing some level true colonialism. Of, right. Exactly. And they Historical were allowing colonialism. You know, it was after the Ottoman Empire broke up, and and England said, "Mine." <laughs> they, they called dibs on Israel. This was the great error of the dibs. Yes, exactly. Where people World were sailing all over the sea, <laughs> yeah, yeah. sailing the oceans blue and dibsing everything. Exactly. Spain exactly. dibs this. Israel right. or England dibs this. Right. France dibs it, this. Yep, a hundred percent. And England dibs Israel, and they were allowing some level of Jewish immigration into the country, and then the, right. the non-Jewish Arab population was, you know, obviously didn't like that, and so they were they ended up restricting it to some degree. But it's like. Where was the left then? I thought the left was all in favor of immigrant of immigration. Shouldn't they have been? Shouldn't they be chastising the native Arab population for not allowing these Jewish immigrants to escape the the poor conditions in Europe and the bigotry in Europe to go to Israel? Yeah, you'd think that, but I don't look, know. But they're white, so it's different. Is... You know, you, you can't have you know if if you're a leftist, you can't have any sympathy for white people. I guess is that look if. 
Like if Canada, Canadians started invading, would they be like, no, we have too many white people already? Probably, yeah. Then it would be a crisis at the northern border. Yep. They'd be like, oh, no. That's why we got to invade Canada first. Is Isn't Canada as... like a tenth of the American population? Something like Canada's... That. They're tiny. It's not worth it. That, I'm sure that would have happened already. I would say this. I agree with a lot of what you've just said. Not all of it, a lot of it. I don't think you can ever achieve peace now with Hamas controlling Gaza. I don't think you can achieve peace with Netanyahu in charge of Israel, actually, after this. I don't think his own people will want him to be in charge of Israel down below when they examine exactly how this happened. But we will see. Uh, but, Hassan, I've got to leave it there. It, look, it's good to talk to you. You know, you're an important, influential voice to a lot of people. Um, and I, I think we have a lot of common ground and there are some things that we disagree about, but I suspect it's not as much as you think. You know, I do think that the core problem here has got to get resolved in a way that's been completely ignored for decades. And until it gets resolved, until the plight of the Palestinian people is resolved, until all these young people in Palestine feel there's some sense of hope and they can get out of what effectively is, as you say, a prison camp, then nothing is going to change. Uh, I don't think it justifies in well, any... I don't, well, let me just say, I, I've got to finish it, but I don't think it justifies in any way what happened on October the 7th. But I do agree with you that until that core problem gets it resolved, doesn't. there will never be peace. Uh, Sam, I appreciate you joining me. Thank you Thank very much. You. Thank you for having me. Wow. I'm speechless. Okay. That was fun. What Let's next? watch... Well, let's watch some more. We got three Hassan clips, so two more to get through. So we'll see. Let's I'm see sorry, man. So, well, actually, let me ask you. So we have the two clips are we have Hassan saying crazy shit. No comment. Shit. Hassan saying crazy shit on his stream, a compilation I made. We can watch that first, or we can watch court. Uh, we can watch Hassan watching Cornell West debate Alan Dershowitz on Fox News. I think we should watch that one first. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Let me read some Super Chats, though. I have not seen that, so I am interested in that. Alan Dershowitz is obviously very pro-Israel. Yes. Is Cornell West equally pro-Palestine? I, I have not seen Cornell West's position on He's it. pretty pro-Palestine, yeah. Okay. Does he throw a lot of brothers in there and... That's funny that you say that actually. My my brother. That's funny. Sean my Haney's like brother. Sean Haney's like you used to call me your brother. No way. <laughs> oh but, no way. But he's like but amazing. He's like, but I'm very angry with you here, and so you know. That's pretty funny. Amazing, amazing. Well, you know I do like the my brothers. My brother. I don't look. I don't know why I do. It's just endearing to me. <laughs> What's up, my brother? Mm -hmm. All right, super chats. Look, we got okay. a couple nice ones from Mark Twain's Revenge. Thank we you did. so much. Uh, Our friend from me... the stream, Mark Twain's been on the on the show. Yeah, uh, Mark Twain's Revenge. Thanks so much for twenty dollars. Says a Palestinian state to be stable must first most be able to remain autonomous from the other regional Arab states. No pup puppet leaders, factions, etc. Then it must be able to identify and quash fundamentalist Islamic factions. That is going that. to be the tough part, yeah. especially if uh, a huge part of the the nation has already been indoctrinated to like scapegoat Jews for everything. Yes, because they're going to play point. up that nationalist rigor to stay in power, even if it is a democracy. Right. Uh, Fat Brown Buffalo for twenty dollars says any possibility of getting no bullshit on. <laughs> <laughs> to probe his thoughts on what Israel's response should be based on his... Oh, maybe it's not bullshit. No bullshit. Who's N... I don't know who NB is. Uh, based on his Twitter, he seems to think Israel is not only as bad as Hamas, but is also a parasite on America and is our number one enemy. That is nuance, bro. Not no bullshit. Oh, my God. Nuance bro Living in the thinks, past. Really? Nuance bro thinks that? That's pretty crazy. I mean, we could probably reach out to him for the Tuesday stream. Maybe, yeah. I mean, he's, he's an so. acquaintance of the show. <laughs> he thinks Israel is not only as bad as Hamas, but is also a parasite on America and is our number one enemy. Wow. I mean, if that's true, that's pretty wild. 
Yeah. Uh, Mark a lot of Fantasy. people are yeah. are are not into the economic because I guess we're sending a bunch of money over there, so they're right. It's gotta hurt if you're here in the United States struggling to get by, paying of not obscene amounts of money for gas and and fuel and housing and all the things to just live and they're sending a bunch of money to israel and and uh ukraine right that's painful right such definitely seems completely unfair you're thinking a hundred billion dollars they could send me some money help me pay my rent right but there's always a, there's a difference between just simply saying um I don't think we should be supporting them financially versus saying like they're the worst, you know, they're the number one enemy to America. Right? Well, I'm a, look, I don't know why he's saying that, but I just, I know a lot of people are saying financially, this is bullshit. So sure. I don't know his reasoning. Uh, Mark Twain's revenge for $50. Thank you. Says, and there's also a really candid talk about, there's also a really can't talk the Western world needs to have about Islam because it's not Islamic radicals that do these terrible things, but fundamentalists, Muslims adhering to a very literal reading of the Quran and Hadiths. I mean, yeah, obviously we haven't really talked about it, but obviously the Islamic uh, fundamentalist portion of, of it has a huge factor here in regards to Hamas um, and definitely makes it significantly more difficult for you to have peaceful neighbors and a peaceful kind of Western liberal style culture, you know, to exist in some of these countries that can work with their neighbors. So, right. Uh, cameraman 502 for $20. Thank you so much. Says lefties, even the decent ones need to realize that the right of return will not happen. And it's weird that socialists are suddenly into property rights. And they never talk about how the Jews in Palestine were self-governing. That's a great point. That's a great point. Now, yeah, suddenly now they're all into property rights, you know. Very interesting. Very interesting. Is that what the right of return is all about? Well, the right of return is the idea that like, and Hassan brings this up. So in when the 1948 war occurred, um, a lot of Palestinians left their homes. Now, it's very contentious about what exactly the rationale was. So there's an idea that, oh, all the Arab uh, leadership told the Palestinians to flee their homes and that once they destroyed the Jews, that they would go back to their homes. That, you know, that's kind of like the Jewish narrative. The Arab narrative, it, narr the Arab narrative is, oh, all the Jews forcefully expelled all the Palestinians from their homes. The reality is, right. my understanding of the reality is, there was some of the Jews expelling some of the native Palestinians, there was some of the Arab leadership telling the Palestinians to leave their homes, but the majority of it seems to be people were just running away because it was a war zone. And right. that's what people do. They, you know, as, as we've seen, do. yeah, as people do, people flee in war zones. And, you know, that means they're going to leave their homes. And so essentially what happened was so lots of Palestinians, lots and lots and lots of Palestinians fled their homes in the war. When the war was over, Israel. Israel ended up conquering 22% of the territory that was originally supposed to be partitioned to the Arab population. And they right, were not giving it back after the war. And I so see. if you lived in that 22% of the population, you were kind of SOL. Uh, because that stands Israel, for shit out of luck, right? Yes, that stands for shit out of luck. Because Israel did not want to allow the Palestinians who lived in the areas they, they conquered after the war to come back. And the rationale was that, that that population of Palestinians or Arabs at the time, out even in that, even in that little area, outnumbered the Jews. And so if they came back in the country and they were granted equal rights, the Jews would now be a minority in their own country. Right. In a democracy. That wouldn't go well at the next election. Right. And so since these and since a lot of those people uh, were factioned with and participated in a war against them just before they didn't exactly feel safe and secure having themselves be, you know, the minority in a country with the people that just tried to attack them. Right. And so for whether you agree with it or not, ethically, morally, they basically did not allow 
the overwhelming majority of Palestinians who fled their homes to to come back. And so that was kind of the beginning of the Palestinian refugee crisis was those people that lost their homes in the 1948 war. And so that's what the right of return is, is saying that like, oh, they should be able to return. Like, first of all, it's I mean, like 70 years ago. Yeah, obviously, like now it's kind of just, you know, completely ludicrous. You know, who, who are we even talking about now? But well, I mean, you you would know you'd be like, my granddad had a house there. I want it. I want that land. Right. Somebody. The security concerns. First of all, it's it's even more removed from the original ownership of Cause, the people. Yeah, because they built new homes there. Right. Someone it's else like, lives there now. Right. We're talking about like a second or third generation down the line, number one. Number two, the security concerns are just as present as they were back in those days. Yeah, after so those, this yeah. thing on October 6th or yeah. 7th, it's like... Even yeah. before then, yeah, exactly. So, uh, Did you miss a super chat for Mark? I did, 20th? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, Vinyl for twenty dollars. Thank you so much. Says, what is the point of Hassan doing these TV interviews? Is he doing it to raise his profile to non Twitch viewers? What did he expect to gain from this? If the media is so biased as he claims, then it would be pointless. I think it's a couple of things. I think it's number one, as you said. I think it is to raise his profile to non Twitch viewers, which is always a good thing uh, for him to do. Um, number one, a smart thing for him to do, but a yeah, bad smart thing. thing for obviously, us. I don't think it's a good thing, but yeah, smart thing for him to do. Um, but I think he also got bullied into it because when I was listening to the clips of him. As I said earlier, he 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 criticized Pierce Morgan, and he challenged Pierce Morgan that he would talk to him, and Pierce Mor and I think he did that thinking Pierce Morgan would not talk to him. Um, and Pierce Morgan heard this and said, "I would love to have you come on the show." And Hassan pussied yeah. out, and he backed down, and he originally turned him down. And I think he started to get so much shit from his own chat because he challenged him and then backed down that he kind of had to accept to save face at that point That'd he seems super nervous yes he did he did yeah so but anyway so let's watch this is a very very interesting conversation why did you uh, skip the first mark twain's revenge tweet oh, did i the first one is it's 50 dollars, but i don't remember you reading it mark twain's revenge you, I just asked you if you skipped, if you missed oh, one. Right. You said, I yeah, I did. That? Yeah. Uh, Mark Twain's Revenge for $50. Thank you so much. Apologize for missing this. Says, Israel is a beacon of light in the darkness of the Arab world. Hands down, people who can't see that are blind. Palestinians are present. Palestinians at present do not possess the capacity or aptitude to form a stable state. It would be great for everyone if they did. Well, I mean, I wouldn't use the word aptitude because I think that has neg <laughs> some negative connotations. I would agree with capacity. Um, I don't think they do have the capacity to. I mean, I think they could if there was a coalition of Palestinians willing to govern peacefully with Israel's help. I 100% think it would be possible to do so, to do that. It's and I just, think that's what Israel should be trying to work towards. It's a strange thing because it is really kind of a prisoner's dilemma so much of our so much of what's good in the west is because of our culture that we've inherited we've just yes. inherited these cultural norms of of honesty respect for the police <laughs> right like they, right um and those if you live in a culture that has none of those cultural norms like if the cultural norm is if you can cheat cheat then you know everyone around you is going to cheat at every opportunity they get. And you are literally a fool if you don't participate in that way, right? Because you're going to be taken advantage of. So I just, slowly the culture has to change where people have s s cultural norms that are more pro-social, more, uh, more trusting. Mm -hmm. And I just, look, I, I don't know how you can blame that on, on individuals because... You know, everyone has to work as a team. It's a it's a collective action problem. You yeah, know, we're so we're so lucky in the West to have these institutions, and well, I just I don't think people recognize that enough. And and it's like I do think that the opportunity for peace exists now, um, because of sort of how the West Bank leadership 
definitely seems to be more open to working with Israel peacefully. But it's important to, and I do think Israel's fucking up by basically squandering that. Um, but it's also important to to realize historically that's a very very new development. I mean, that's very right. recent. You know, for most of the time period, there was literally no leadership from any organization in, in Palestine or from the Palestinian people that had any, uh, you know, desire to work towards peace with Israel. So, I mean, and even yeah. like, you know, when you had the PLL with PLO with Yasser Arafat and kind of, you know, the whole meeting with Bill Clinton to kind of hammer out peace. I mean, before that all was going on, you know, the PLO, PLO was a basically a terrorist organization. So yeah, this is kind of like the way these things go. But anyway, sorry, man. That's nuts. That's nuts. That's nuts. That's, That's insane. Nuts. That's nuts. Like he he's saying it. Like he's openly saying it. You, you, it's not a good like opening clip. You don't even know what the fuck he's talking about. What did he say? He just said it's nuts. It's nuts. Okay. The highest quality edits of the best Hasanabi reactions. Mm. This must be the Hasanabi industrial complex I've been hearing <laughs> so much about. I don't think Hassan makes any money off of these reaction channels. He says he doesn't, yeah. That's his oh, okay. uh, that's his excuse he gives when people say he's not a socialist. He's like, listen, I let people steal my content. Even right. though he's making millions of dollars anyway, so it doesn't <laughs> Well, and they're promoting him. Yes. So, all right, let's watch the heated debate between Cornell West and Alan Dershowitz over Israel Hamas we'll war. Back in with him throughout the evening time. First, left wing bigotry, anti Semitism running rampant on university campuses. Dude, there is nothing sillier, nothing sillier than talking about uh, what is going on in the world from the framework of like university campuses being bigoted or whatever the fuck. I'm sorry. This is this is simply a method to derail the conversation. This is simply a, a a successful way to just like talk about some of the most like individualist, selfish. Like, there is nothing more selfish than looking at a situation where like a, a a heavily militarized nation with our fucking dollars and our weapons is like destroying the most dense open air prison on the fucking planet that they've cut off the water, food, and and, and electricity too. And then we're like, ooh, what does this say about fucking college campuses in America? Uh, so, first of all, did you catch he threw individualism under the bus there? He did, yeah. Yeah. This individualist <laughs> yeah. mindset. Right. Um, Yet so he wants to, he doesn't like collective guilt. I mean, he wants people right. treated like individuals. I'm confused. Right. What's going on? Very Why is he contradicting himself like a moron? It's um well, first of all, his crit his criticism here is bullshit for a couple of reasons. First of all, his criticism is a hundred thousand percent bullshit because we all know, every single person listening to this right now knows that if all those college campuses were a bunch of people uh not only waving Israeli flags but saying purge all the Palestinians you know, wipe them all out. Uh, Israel shall be free from the river to the sea. One state solution, Israel, Israel, Israel. Like if that was the mainstream college opinion and you saw college kids everywhere chanting these things and doing all this stuff, Hassan would be bringing it up, talking about it, playing clips of it and raising the alarm on it 24 seven. Of course, because it'd be against his beloved narrative. And he'd be saying, this is such a threat to fascism in our country. Oh my God, look, here's the fascism, you know, in America. Here's the racism in America, blah, 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 blah. He'd be talking about it nonstop. But, but because the narrative is what he doesn't want, because it makes the communists and the leftists look bad, he's like, why are we talking about this? Yes. We shouldn't be talking about this. Pay no attention to the, the communists behind the curtain. This is just a uh, 
senseless detour. We have yes. deep intellectual things to talk about here. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And it is important to talk about this because it does say something. It is important for us to know what the fuck's going on in our country. And it is it is important to know like, wow, there's a bunch of kids in, in colleges, supposed to be these Ivy League institutions mm -hmm. of, you know, that are that are supposed to be shaping the leadership, you know, the future leadership of the country. And so many of them are fucking insane. That's a big story. That's a big deal. I'm sorry. What kind of bullshit is this that we shouldn't talk about that? Yeah. These are the kids that we're going to draft for Ukraine. It's perfect. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Who, who where, you know, a dumbass American college kids are like taking either side of this conflict or some shit. It's, it's so stupid. I fucking hate it so much. I hate Americans so much. We are disgusting pigs. We are so disgusting in the way that we, we contextualize everything from our own individual selfish needs. It is so obvious. It's, first of all, like, it's not selfish to look at a population in your country and be like, these people are psychos. We need to do something about this, right? There's some like insipid culture that is being perpetuated on the youth. That's not selfish. That's just normal. You need to protect yourself and your society and your culture, okay? And he's only saying this because he's a biased leftist communist piece of shit who knows that this is making his side look bad. That's the only fucking reason he's saying this. Make him look horrible. Yeah, right. Terrible. And number they two- They look like terrorist sympathizers. Right. And number two, and I mean, this is, you know, there's no kind way to say this. So Hassan was born in New Jersey. And when he was a toddler, so when he was two or three, his parents moved back to Turkey. And he lived there till he was 18. And then he went, he moved back to go to college in America in 18. It's actually kind of funny. He went to the University of Miami where he got a, like a 2.9 GPA or something. Wow. Um, which is, is low. Solid C. And somehow, and his parents got mad at him because he was fucking around. And somehow, even though he had a 2.9 GPA, I guess this shows you where your money and connections come in. He was able to transfer from the University of Miami to Rutgers. He was able to transfer yes. up into a, into a higher rank school. Yep. <laughs> okay. And I guess that was so his parents or some family members in New Jersey could keep an eye on him and tell him to stop fucking around and do good college. And then immediately out of college, he gets a job on the Young Turks. This is elite overproduction at his finest. Right. I don't know how you can say it's not. The th He's definitely an elite that's become a counter-revolutionary. Yeah. And so I think Hassan is like in his early 30s now. Um, and it's, and you know, call me racist or whatever. It rubs me the wrong way when someone who spent their entire formative years in a different country and only comes back to America at 18 to be like, we Americans are so evil and despicable. I'm like, what do you mean we Americans? Like, go fuck yourself. You fucking right. racist piece of shit. Like, that's that disgusts me and hits me. So he, lived, like a weird he lived in Turkey from five years old to 18? From like three to 18. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. It's just, it just hits me this wrong way to be like, oh, we Americans are so disgusting. It's like, eh, go fuck yourself. Okay. Right. Go live somewhere else motherfucker if, if we're so evil and bad and despicable because we care that there's a population in our country that has some like really bad cultural attitudes that are highly destructive if that bothers you and talking about it bothers you you can go live somewhere else this is a loyalty foundation and god bless it i love it <laughs> yep i guess Look, I, I know exactly where you're coming from. I think of all the things I did between 3 and 18 that were basically just made me as a person. And it's all American. Yep. Well, he was, I mean, what do they even do in Turkey? I don't what know. What goes on there? He rode horses. Think... <laughs> you know, see that picture right. of him riding horses? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I just Googled Turkey and looked at the images. 
and a bunch of turkeys came up. <laughs> to no, me, what is <laughs> that? It is so obvious to me that like we do not give a fuck. This is the same instance. It's the same energy that like a lot of people in, uh, engage with the news with when they go. Oh, did you hear what this YouTuber said about this fucking thing about Israel? Did you hear what this YouTuber said about this thing about uh, Palestine? It's just like you cannot contextualize good things and bad things on their own. So you have to uh, you have to do a secondary battle on on fronts that you are more familiar with. This is familiar territory. So okay, so he's trying to do this thing where he's trying to basically provide cover for himself to say, if you criticize me. Uh, in my take on Israel, you're bad. Okay. When reality, it's like, no, you uh, a hole. You are a very popular, like colleges, you're a very popular streamer who has a, unfortunately spreads their message very wide to a lot of people and thus is able to perpetuate a narrative. And it's completely right. justifiable and correct if that narrative is toxic and wrong for people to call it out. And you know this and you're lying and you're being dishonest because you constantly criticize Ben Shapiro, Fox News and the right for perpetuating a narrative that you think is lying and that you think is wrong. So don't give me this shit about how suddenly when someone criticizes you, you're like above the fray. Yeah, great point. <laughs> Okay. And then we have fucking leftists who do this shit. Please stop calling it a prison. They're not convicted of a crime. It's a concentration crime. I hate this idiotic language policing. This is no different than the other side of the language police. Hey, let me. I took time. So we don't have to watch this whole thing because it's very long. It took. It's a concentration camp now. Yeah, again, this, like... this, this whole conversation about this is stupid. So let's just skip it. They're like, we have to. Look, we have to craft our narrative here, not around the facts. We have to right. craft our narrative around what looks sounds best. Words, and yeah, I know, it's dumb. What you're trying to say? All right, let's watch Around this. the world, London, Australia, what's happening? Chanting in Australia, you know, about gas chambers. Uh, and, you know. Like, this is, this is, this is such a silly fucking frame, okay? It's such a silly way to refuse to address the main problem at hand when we move away from the actual issue at hand israel's relentless bombing campaign that is unjustifiable and okay so to be clear what hannity was bringing up about how there was you know this protest in australia i'm sure some of you saw it where not only very pro-palestinian is very anti-semitic you know they were talking about gassing jews killing jews et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, it was awful. Right, it was very awful. And Hassan over here is is so dishonest, is so tribal brained, so wants to protect his side that he just wants to cover up anything bad that anyone on the left is doing and say, no, 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 no. If you talk about that, you're immoral. You only can you can only talk about you know the bombing, the bombing campaign that's happening in Palestine right now. You're not allowed to talk about people who are literally advocating for genocide. On my on my side, quote on my finger, quote my side, somewhere else in the world. You're not allowed to talk about that. When we all know that if it was the reverse, he would be all over it. If there was a bunch of, which by the way, yeah. he's Young done. Republicans he's chanting, yes, gas the Jews. He'd be all up in arms. Yes, which he's done. And I don't know if he does in the stream, but in the clips that I saw, him, he's 100% criticized Ben Shapiro and other people on the right for making statements like. Oh, you know, you don't negotiate with terrorists. You bomb them. You wipe them all out, blah, 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 blah. He's totally criticized those statements. And that's totally fine to do. And yet when someone criticizes the left saying hyperbolic crazy shit, he's all like, oh, how dare you? How dare you? Yeah, he's just trying to protect his side. It's pretty simple. Look, he doesn't care anything about the facts. Human rights violation. Okay, a violation of human rights and and just the most immoral thing you can do it's an ethnic cleansing campaign on a population of largely children okay this is him explaining why they're chanting gas to jews at harvard right it's basically him saying yes. he's basically it's true right 
He's explaining why it's reasonable for them to to chant all this anti-Semitic garbage at these Ivy League universities. What a fucking prick. That is unjustifiable. It's inhumane and it's cruel. So you can't have that conversation on those terms. So what do you do? You go, well, here are some of the supporters of Palestine saying deeply and insanely anti-Semitic things. Okay. <laughs> Where's the but correct things? I mean, I'm just waiting for it, Sitch. <laughs> Tell me he's not stupid enough to actually say that. I mean, we can all see he's thinking it. Right. What a jackass. Right. What a jackass. What do you want me to say about that? Yeah, that's really fucked up. Does this mean that I should... What's your suggestion? Should I stop defending... Uh, uh, Palestinian emancipation because some fucking dipshits took over a rally? Or is your goal to say all supporters of Palestinian emancipation also believe that, like, Jews should burn or whatever? Is that your goal here? Is that what you're trying to say, Sean Hannity? Or are you a fucking charlatan who just simply wants to distract, deflect, and not talk about the real issue at hand? Which he, he means is Israel, obviously. The real issue at hand. This right. is all Israel's fault. Yeah, of course. Dumb. Very dumb. You said Sean and Hannity's doing the exact same thing you said the news would do on Leftovers. Exactly. They are doing this deliberately. Because every moment that you talk about this shit is a moment where you're not talking about the actual on-the-ground realities that Palestinians are subjected to. Okay? This, this is so much Israel had it coming. All of this is subtext is Israel had it coming. That's what's so... Yeah, that's what's so like bizarre about this whole situation because he says oh it's 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 all bad you know like i'm happy that he's saying it's awful but the the entire implicit context everything he says is that it's all it's israel had it coming and it's israel's fault yeah it's weird when peers asked him asked him that he's like oh no no of course not of course not i mean this is just obvious you can't say these things and not walk away thinking israel had it coming Right. That's it. For Jewish people, what is happening on our college campuses? What is happening among the Democratic Party? Some Harvard students. It's a way to try to paint a fucking brush on every single person that says Palestinians are human beings and they do not deserve this. They want to paint you with a brush. To Hassan has never painted a group with a brush ever before. Right. Ha, 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 ha. ha. Anyway. Uh, I gotta answer the door. I'll be right back. Keep it going. Oh, nice. Good. Maybe you'll stop pausing so much. We can finally get through a chunk of this video. Thank goodness Sitch is gone now, guys. We're gonna watch the video. To say you are anti you are anti-Semitic. Are there anti-Semites who uh, join in on these protests? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. There are. Of course, there are. There are anti-Semites everywhere. Okay especially in the Western world. But the idea that a few voices being anti-Semitic in a protest immediately, uh, immediately means that the, the Palestinian cause is unjust or rooted within anti-Semitism is fucking psychotic. And it's additionally psychotic for the most anti-Semitic network to put this out there. These motherfuckers do George Soros conspiracy. This is this is so one-sided too because it's like, oh, if there's a couple Nazis on my side, obviously you're gonna have a couple Nazis. All all large groups are gonna have a couple Nazis, right? But if it's a Nazi on my political adversary side, oh my God, they're all Nazis, <laughs> every single one of them. One Nazi, <laughs> they're all Nazis. Ah, uh, this is. <laughs> This is the uh, the political atmosphere that we live in now. Conspiracies every other week. You think we forgot? You think we don't hear you when you say that uh, Tucker Carlson had the most prominent slot in your news network? You really mean to tell me that you all of a sudden care about anti-Semitism when it's like a, a bunch of fucking idiots at a, at a pro-Palestine protest being anti-Semitic? Really? Really? Now you care about anti-Semitism? Suck my cock. You've never cared about anti-Semitism. It is so 
disgusting. Look at ah, oh, that's so crazy. I this this is all about just so much of the so much of this back and forth going on about Israel and Palestine is the left just completely trying to hold on to their narrative. And so many places their narrative creates cognitive dissonance. So you've got a bunch of people on the right who immediately are pro Israel. Well, the narrative on the left is that everyone on the right is Nazis. <laughs> They're all anti-Semitic Nazis. So all of a sudden, if you've got people on the right coming out and being in favor of Israel and Israel protecting themselves from terrorism, that doesn't make a lot of sense to them. They experience cognitive dissonance over that. So Hassan has to co concoct some narrative to deal with that cognitive dissonance. And that's what he's trying to do right now. That these guys, for them, it's just like, oh, it's just a talking point. There's a few accurate... See, it's just, look, he's, he's reducing it to a talking point. Yeah, they don't really care about Israel. No, none of these evangelical Christians who read about Israel in the Bible all day long don't care. They don't care about Israel. Yeah, I mean, I think they care about Israel a lot. It's, part, it's a big part of their religion. Do you deny that basically everybody in Gaza agrees with what Hamas did? What? What does this have to do with people in Gaza? People in Gaza are in a concentration camp. Also, the majority of the people in Gaza that you're talking about are children. Do you think children agree with what Hamas did? Or let's say they did. Do you think they deserve to be fucking shelled and murdered? Go ahead. Explain that to me. Because, like, these aren't even fucking adults okay these are children these are children that were born in a fucking open air prison i'm back what did i miss nothing no okay. more open more open air prison nonsense okay. i just the open air prison stuff i mean he makes it sound like it's escape from new york over there mm. that's a good movie i don't know is it escape from new york is it is it anarchy is it lawlessness you know, when I, when I saw Adam in person, I was like, I thought you were taller. What do you mean? That was, that's what they keep saying, the snake. Oh, yeah. Escape from New York. I remember that. Yeah. But I thought you were taller. I'm going to ask ChatGPT what it's like to live in Gaza. Mm. I mean, I'm sure it's awful. I don't get me wrong. Why? Well, I, I don't know. I'm sure it's not good. I mean, I've been to Mexico, and there's some. I'm it's probably worse than Mexico. I'm probably, probably one of the top parts. ten places you don't want to live. I'm gonna type Gaza tourism and see what comes up. The question isn't that it's. I mean, it, listen, it's sure. I it's mean, very now nice. I'm look. I'm talking before this. I'm talking shit. before too. I'm sure it was very not good to live in Gaza, and I understand that. But the question is, how do we make, how do we improve those conditions? That's the question. And the problem with Hassan, his dumb take on this, is that, you know, he was like, oh, Israel, you know, they won't let trade into the region. They won't let concrete in the region, into the region. It's like, yeah, because when they do, Hamas takes those materials to make weapons. It's literally, and this is why Hassan's take is so fucking stupid, where he says Israel has all the power. That's a lie. Hamas has all the power. If all they did was say, listen, Israel, we're not going to shoot weapons at you anymore. We're going to acknowledge that you exist and that you have a right to exist. And we will now use all our materials to, instead of building weapons, build infrastructure. Congratulations. The conflict will then end or at least be on the path to ending. Then they can construct some kind of relationship or then Israel says, oh, well, if you behave and we trust you over the next couple of years, as you're not shooting weapons or rockets at us anymore, we can start letting trade in. We can start letting concrete in. We can start letting metal pipes in because you're actually showing that you're building infrastructure instead of creating weapons. So it's actually, t Hassan's an idiot. Hamas has literally all the power to make the situation better, not Israel. Right. I just, I want to know the social dynamic that's going on. 
like before the October 7th stuff, like they're firing rockets off indiscriminately into Israel. Like what's, what's that like? Is it just like a party and they just are firing rockets for fun? I mean, what's, uh, what's happening here? What's the purpose of this? The, I don't know, just to reestablish their, the fact that they're fighting against Israel. Well, I mean, the rockets are going to get shot down, so they're not really going to do anything. I mean, right? it's largely symbolic. Yeah. Is there, does, there's no tourism in Gaza? I mean, he's calling it an of open-air prison. <laughs> so nobody goes to Gaza? I don't think Nobody so. says, I'm going to take a trip to Gaza, see if no. I can shoot some of those rockets off? No, I don't think so. Is If somebody went into Gaza, or is there like, there's a lot of kidnappings in in Mexico because that's they kidnap people and get ransom and that's how criminals make money and stuff. Is it a lot of that go on in Gaza? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. They've never known a moment of freedom in their entire lives. Go ahead. Explain to me why you dropped that little tidbit in there. Is a few accurate? Do you really deny that basically everybody in Gaza agrees with Hamas did? If Russia if Russia launches a nuclear attack on on US, should we not launch back because children Brother, if Russia launches a nuclear attack on the U.S., it's over. Everything is over. The world, you know it is over. And quite frankly, I would rather, you know, have that happen than have to entertain these fucking idiotic counterpoints, these idiotic... Okay, so someone... So Hassan makes his point about how, how dare, you know, Israel do what they do and attack because there's, like, you know, a big swath of the population in Palestine, which is true, is under eight, under 18. So like 50%, some massive part of the population. Um, and so someone says, which I think is a fair question, well, if if Russia attacks America, do you just not attack them back because they have you know children in the country? Like, how do you deal with this issue? And so Hassan, because he's dishonest and doesn't want to grapple with this difficult question, just says, bro. Brother, the world would be over because of nukes, bro. That's what are you talking about, bro? The world's over. Like he just completely dodges the question because he doesn't have an answer. Right. Hypotheticals okay. that somehow compare uh, the the a group of militants, a group of fundamentalist militants propped up by the Israeli government itself, uh, retaliating in an incredibly violent and unjustifiable way against Israeli civilians. Okay, so he keeps saying this, and it's like a total fucking lie, and it's really annoying. So it's like, it's true that, like, I don't know, in the 1970s or something, that the Israeli government, um, in some roundabout way, supported a guy who created the precursor to Hamas or something. And part of the reason they were doing it was they were trying, because the... There was disagreement in Palestine, the Palestinian regions, about who was going to be in charge, and both sides were kind of like terroristic. There wasn't a good side in the conflict, and so Israel's thought process was, we're going to kind of like, you know, divide and conquer, kind of have them going at each other's throats. Supposedly, oh, okay. Supposedly, this is true. I don't. I've done deep research. This is all a lie, but this is the narrative. And so they helped fund in like the seventies some guy who was related to the precursor movement to Hamas. And so that means that now 50 fucking years later, Hassan can sit on his stream and say Israel is backing Hamas, you know, 50 years right. later. Bullshit. Civilians to a nation state with a nuclear warhead launching its nuclear warhead in a hypothetical scenario towards the United States of America. You are, you are, such a fabulist, okay? You are living in a world of fantasy. Why do you live in a world of fantasy? Because you cannot live in the real world because there is at least some shred of humanity inside of you that I think deep down inside recognizes the humanity of Palestinians and, and it makes you feel bad. You want to support Israel, but simultaneously you're like, oh, this like kind of hurts inside of me. So I have to create more and more 
insane hypotheticals to be able to justify the situation that is in front of me that is unfolding while simultaneously maintaining the positions that I believe. Okay? It's additionally ironic. Because so this is how you can tell when you're interacting with someone who's being dishonest. So obviously, no hypothetical exists as a one-to-one -one parallel because then it wouldn't be a hypothetical. You'd just be talking about the situation. <laughs> that's a good right? point. Um, that's like that's the entire point of the hypothetical is it's slightly different. Um, but usually, like now, someone gives you a hypothetical, and you could say, "Well, I don't think that hypothetical is analogous because blah 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 blah," right? And you can explain that. But usually, the point of the hypothetical, if it's a, if it's a good hypothetical, is you're trying to isolate some variable to hone in on. And so Hassan was saying it was wrong for Israel to attack Gaza because of the population of children. So the hypothetical that the person gives, the fact that it has to do with nukes is kind of irrelevant. That was just something that was just part of the hypothetical. You could just brush that away and say, well, what if Russia attacks the US? Should we not attack them back because their you know, children will die? Or you can even change the hypothetical slightly. You say, well, what if, like, what if the whole cartel situation in Mexico becomes significantly worse? And what if the cartels start launching missile attacks on Texas and start going over the border and killing people in Texas. I mean, does the U.S. government just kind of take it because they say, well, we can't bomb parts of Mexico. We can't go into Mexico because we'll end up killing innocent people. I mean, do we just throw up our hands and say, okay, well, innocent people, the cartel is hiding behind innocent people. So we just give up. Like, what are you proposing exactly, Hassan? But he's too much of a coward to answer that question. Yeah. He doesn't want to answer because you're going to be in favor of killing babies. Yeah. Look, there's no way around it. Because is a nuclear state. You know, Israel does have nukes secretly and never has claimed to have it, but everybody knows is a nuclear state. But that is besides the point. Do you understand? I, I want to believe in your humanity here. I want to believe that internally you have some level of contradiction that you recognize. That on the one hand, you understand that dead babies are dead babies, no matter which side of the border they're on, and that hurts your feelings. But on the other hand, you have a deep-rooted fear that, like, you know, uh, Hamas is going to come and, and murder you in your sleep, and that's precisely the reason why maybe this kind of retaliation is justifiable. But that poses... A, a, a glimmer of light inside of you, okay? That means that inside of you, you are still relatively conflicted. You can't meet the issue head on, so you must come up with hypotheticals to justify what's going on. So search deep within yourself that recognizes the humanity of Palestinians, and you will arrive at the conclusion that this is completely unjustifiable, completely immoral, completely unacceptable. Okay? There is no world in which... He, he just doesn't accept that there's casualties of war. That's no. the... That's the trade-off. Yeah. You're or, not killing babies for fun. You're killing them because you're trying yeah. to prevent more babies from dying in the future. Yeah. It is acceptable to drop white phosphorus on children. Israel has done that. Why don't you go on TV and get uh, give your opinion on the matter? I think TV would be a better, better megaphone for the cause. Well, I mean, it's not like people are inviting me to go on TV. It's now a <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Someone's going to bring up Pierce Morgan on this, too. But like, well, wait a minute. You did get invited. What are you talking about? So Nice. By the way, so I don't, I don't know the white phosphorus thing. Um, I don't know if he's talking about in the past or something. Uh, so apparently there was some usage of white phosphorus recently by Israel, but it didn't, there was no reporting that it was used to attack people and that people were harmed by it. So what they attack. Now, so, and I didn't know this cause I'm not a military guy. Cause when you hear white phosphorus, you think of like, oh my God, you're, you know, using this to like burn a bunch of people to death. Right. That's not what white pho white phosphorus is not s intentionally used for that purpose. White phosphorus is a smokescreen agent that is apparently the best smokescreen agent that exists that is used to create smokescreens for um to mask targets, to mask troop deployments, things of that nature. And that's the that's the primary use of it is to create masks on the field essentially. 
And so, so it doesn't burn people. I well, it not. does. It it can't now. To be clear, it can burn people, right? It can burn people, right? Um, and now I don't know if if it's just if you touch that. Since I'm, I don't know about this. I don't know if it's just the smoke that burns you, or if it's like when it's detonated. If it's detonated near you, that it burns people. I don't know the answer to that question. Hmm. Um, but and there are people saying that you shouldn't be using white phosphorus in civilian areas. Which okay, that's fine. You can say that, and maybe you shouldn't be. But when when I looked into this. There was some, the incident that they were pointing to where white phosphorus was used recently, there was no reports that anyone was actually injured by it. And it was used in like, not on a ground level. A smoke screen? Yeah, it was used as a smoke screen, so. So they, they deploy it in an area and then the guys use ventilators and, I don't know, heat signature goggles or something? Well, not, I mean, they can, but not necessarily that, just to to bake it so people can't see whatever is about to occur, essentially. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but you need to see somehow, right? Right, but they weren't using cloud. it. But there are reasons to use it. That They weren't using it to... They were not using it in regards to pulling their own troops. Right. They were oh, using okay. it to try to mask a target or something for some reason. Yeah, if you drop that on a military base, everyone's going to... Like, they're going to be completely not able to do anything. Sure. So scrambling to finally rescind their support of their vile letter, actually blaming the victim, Israel, for the brutal Hamas terror attacks. Not everyone disagrees with them. 2024 presidential candidate, former Harvard professor Cornell West said, the students were largely right, but they lack nuance. He joins us now with reaction along with attorney. That's so funny Harvard that he said that because I don't even think that they lack nuance. Yes, Piers Morgan invited me on his TV show, but he wanted me to do it while I was streaming. And and I couldn't do it while I was live. So, no, I did not do that. <laughs> what a dumbass. <laughs> so he does just he said really, earlier. Does he really think that Piers Morgan is like, come on the show right this minute? I maybe I don't know. I guess he was. He's like, was well, I Look, I then, just got an email to go on right. Piers Morgan's show. But unfortunately, I'm streaming right now, so I can't go. <laughs> yeah, and even, even if that happened, why don't you be like, oh, I'm going to take an hour break from streaming and go to the studio to film something? Like, Hell yeah. Like, if it's come are. down here now? About? Yeah. Yeah. He's acting like, oh, I can't. He's like, listen, I'm streaming right now. Like, my boss won't let me leave. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> That's right. Like it's ridiculous. Like you can just fucking leave whenever you want. This is, you know, he's like, oh, I wish they would let me on TV. Oh, Pierce Morgan invited me. Oh, well, I I was streaming. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, guys. Yeah, you're. And right. also, I mean, and it's funny because that stupid comment just was on the heels of another stupid comment. Was him saying he doesn't even think that the letter that they sent at Harvard lacked nuance. He just thinks it's just correct. Hassan thinks that that insane, like that letter, by the way. That disgusting like letter that was put out was the day after. Oh man. Yeah, October it was on October 8th, okay? The day after that horrendous fucking attack happened. Yeah. And these pieces of shit. And there's an article, it's this very interesting article. I forget who wrote it. Um, where they were they interviewed, there was like four students that wrote that letter. And all these people tried to hide their identity. And I, listen, I hate to be sexist, but of course it was three women and one guy that wrote that fucking letter. <laughs> okay. Wow. It's so funny. There's like this idea, this feminist idea that like men are all violent psychopaths. And it's like, I don't know, whenever I like read like weird fan fiction or stories or hear like ideas, like men are more aggressive outwardly and physically uh, but women have a lot of fucked up ideas about the world <laughs> and people. <laughs> and I feel like the most like kind of like weird fucked up ideas come from women, not men. <laughs> generally. Right. I'm You're not sexist. saying every woman. I'm saying like in the subset of women that that are like fucked up, in the subset of men that are fucked up, there's a lot of fucked up women that have a lot of fucked up weird crazy ideas, and they seem to like for whatever reason get a pass because I guess it manifests in a different way. And so yeah, it doesn't surprise me that it was three women. And one dude that basically the day after seeing uh, civilians brutally murdered, shot, raped, and kidnapped, that they're like, oh, yeah, this is all Israel's fault. This this ideology is just working all these people like a puppet sitch. Yeah. 
They think all those, they do think all those people had it coming. They yes. see those people as jailers. Yes. All the jailers got fought back against. That's the way they look at this. If you see it that way. Right. That's no helping you. Yeah. And just to be clear, I'm, I'm just going to say this. Listen, if you read fan fiction, and, and you, you read like the it? most bizarre, you're a degenerate. <laughs> no, no, that's true. But if you read the most fucked up, bizarre, like weird, dark fan fiction, it's not guys writing it. That's all I'm going to say. It's not, it's not guys generally writing it. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. This narrative is so insidious. Oh, they voted for Hamas. Hamas won the last election in 2006. Even they got only a plurality, not a majority. They ruled as a dictatorship since, refusing to hold elections. This narrative is so insidious. I wouldn't be okay to bomb Gaza if 100% of Palestinians supported Hamas. It also downplays Palestinian support for resistance. They have issues with Hamas when it comes to things like governance, corruption, etc. They support Hamas because it fights Israel. Plus, the polling is just bogus and he's lying about refusing to hold elections. It's the PA and Israel that have kept new elections from happening. So, well, first of all, if every person in the area supported Hamas and you don't support bombing them, then you're a fucking idiot. I don't know what to tell right. you. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, what, that would what is, mean there's that no all, solution. The whole population is Hamas. Right. There's no solution at that point. The solution is you need to beat them into submission militarily, like, like, if that's the case. I mean, it would be a lot easier decision if that was true. Yeah. Like, be that's a, a million like, times easier. You'd just right. be like, women and children at the border. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just, like it's just stupid it's so stupid okay uh but then this person is just lying and they're like well it's the pa in israel that have kept new elections from happening the PA, that's the i was like right? what yeah so they're referring to that makes no sense so what they're referring to is um there's so the pa has been in the west bank ever since 2006 there's been this back and forth between the west bank and gaza about trying to hold new elections and they never come to fruition. And and people don't know this, but like in the past, usually whenever a big rocket strike has come from Gaza, it's because an election was about to occur. And so they send a bunch of rockets at Israel to try to like prevent it from happening or to create a bunch of chaos right before the election happens. And then it gets, uh, you know, the election doesn't go through. And so there was some recent election, I think it was in like 2021, where they were kind of trying to talk about putting forward when... There's a big question about there's a there's a lot of Palestinians that live in East Jerusalem. East Jerusalem is part of uh, Israel, and there was a question of whether the Israeli government would allow the Palestinian Authority to set up polling stations in East Jerusalem for Palestinians in East Jerusalem to vote in the Palestinian elections. And this is a very weird and complicated issue because. Israel is saying to the Palestinians that live in East Jerusalem, you should renounce your Palestinian citizenship and become a citizen of Israel. And a lot of them don't want to do that. And so this obviously- is, This is in the West Bank, right? This, no, this is in East Jerusalem, which is near the West Bank, but it's not in the West Bank. Right. Okay. And so, and so, um, so Israel's position on this situation is- why the fuck would they allow, they want these people to renounce the Palestinian citizenship and become Israeli citizens. If that's what their position is, why would they allow them to set up polling stations for a foreign country in their territory? That doesn't make any sense. Now yeah. they did say that you can set up polling stations in the West Bank on the borders, okay, on the borders of West Bank, and that's fine. They just wouldn't let them set up polling stations in East, Jer in East Jerusalem. And so the PA in the West Bank kind of use that as an excuse to say, well, they're not going to have elections now. When people were kind of generally saying, well, that's, they're just, this is an excuse. Gaza's not going to have elections or the West Bank is not going to have elections? Well, both were supposed to have elections. The right? West Bank hasn't had elections either is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah no one's had elections. Or maybe, oh. the, I don't know if the, to be clear, I don't know if the West Bank's had their own like local elections, but there hasn't but been a the joint West Bank election. is the West Bank is not lobbying no. missiles over at Israel. So no. it's somewhat better relationship. It's it's much better relationship, right? Okay. Um, But so so that's what's going on. So this idiot that says, oh, it's all Israel and the PA's fault is like, okay, that's a gross oversimplification of this complicated situation, number one. Number two, as I said earlier, 50% of the Palestinians 
don't even think they don't even trust their elections. And number three, why the fuck would anyone trust elections coming out of Gaza, which is controlled by Hamas? Why would anyone trust them to be accurate? Yeah, they're just going to set up gunmen at the polling stations. Right. Like, it's just so stupid. Now, yeah. to be clear, that's the that's the real answer to the question. I don't think it's justified for people to say, well, they voted for the people in Gaza voted for Hamas, you know, almost 20 years ago. So therefore, we get to just bomb them with impunity. I think that's a shitty argument. And it's a terrible argument. Um, and that's fine to say it's a terrible argument. But don't give a counter argument that's just as stupid. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. Is a like, missile thing like if, their? E e is, is that like their January six? They're like. That's how they stop their elections from going yes. through. Yes. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> that's their insurrection. Do you get it? I get it. <laughs> Do you get it? I got it. Yeah. Here's some fake it. electors for you. <laughs> exactly. It's not the best analogy, but it's kind of funny. Even if, uh, for the record, the the stupid thing is that like... Oh, don't worry. I have a January 6th comparison that's going to trigger some people that I'm planning to make later. Okay. You know, I was, I was look, I, I was giggling about that <laughs> yes. thing and I was like, yes. oh, this is going to trigger some people. <laughs> no, I, I got, I've got some, I got a January 6th analogy that's going to annoy some people and that's coming up. Don't worry. We'll get there. How dare you com compare January 6th to launching rockets at Israel? There you go. Um, it, the, uh, the, the last election, Hamas, Hamas won the last election in 2006. It's like, okay, how many people were adults and how many of those people that voted for Hamas were alive, are still alive? How many of the people that are currently being bombed? Someone in his chat just said, Come on, you tr you stream twenty four seven. You can't take a break to go on TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I so many of the people there are just there to criticize Hassan. It's hilarious. Funny. It's like it's like a combination of like people that criticize him and just like the most vapid simp's ever. Right. Yeah. Our fucking children. Okay. Is it really true that Hamas would hold elections, but Israel stops them? It's one part of it. Israel collaborating <laughs> with the Palestinian Authority. And the reality... Do, do you like how he refers to Israel working with the government of the West Bank that's not streaming missiles at, at them as collaboration? Do you right. like that? When have you ever heard a socialist use the word collaborator in a positive context? I... Collaborator's not bad. I mean, I've never is, heard is a socialist use the word. They always use it. In, oh, you're collaborating with fascists. You're oh, collaborating okay, you're with right. Nazis. I've never heard yeah. them use it in a positive context. I mean, the That's word itself is neutral, but they don't use it that way. No. He didn't say working with. He said collaborating with. I'm just saying. Collaborating with the enemy. That's what yeah. the implication is. That, that's how I read it. Why? I just... What are the, what's the incentive? Why does Israel not want them to have elections that could displace Hamas? I mean, because, Israel doesn't like Hamas because it's well because it's the same the same situation is going to occur. The West Bank is going to say, "Oh, look, we voted in uh, the PA." Oh, so they're but they're worried about that in the West Bank, not in Gaza. Right? No, no, no. What I'm saying is. So if there was elections in 2021, okay, why would anyone expect the results to be different? The West Bank would say, oh, we voted in the PA, and the Gaza says, oh, we voted in Hamas. Nothing changed. Right. right? Yeah. Like, why would that change anything? True. As so, if it's corrupt. Right. And you have corrupt elections, no one's going anywhere. Now, they could be afraid. Now, Israel could be afraid, or the PA could be afraid that in the West Bank, they would vote try to vote for Hamas or some more radical too. So that could be a real, uh, a fear. It gets um, worse. Oh, right. nightmare. Maybe. The reality is that this level of violence that Israel has brought upon the Palestinian population has also led the Palestinian population into the only form of armed struggle against the Israeli state, which happens to be Hamas. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Let's go back for a second. I mean, to hear this in its entirety. Israel collaborating with the fucking children. Okay. Is it really true that Hamas would hold elections, but Israel stops them? 
It's one part of it, Israel collaborating with the Palestinian Authority. And the reality is that this level of violence that Israel has brought upon the Palestinian population has also led the Palestinian population into the only form of armed struggle against the Israeli state, which happens to be Hamas. Okay? But it, it does not matter. There is no This is so irresponsible. And I don't know if he's doing it intentionally or he's just an idiot. Um, because he keeps trying to say like, oh, I'm not justifying anything. I'm just explaining it. But that's not how his audience is reading what he's saying. And I don't know if he, so, and I don't know if he's being truthful or not. He could just be lying. Because when he says statements like that, it comes off as him justifying support for Hamas. That's how it comes off. And if you want it to not come off that way, you need to be crystal clear when you make that statement and say, right after you say it, say, I don't support Hamas, but this is why like they can come into power. These conditions come into power, right? You have to be very clear and say that if that's what you're trying to say, but he doesn't. And he intentionally doesn't. And he intentionally refuses to denounce Hamas because he's a fucking coward. Right. He's afraid of his audience. Yes. There's no world in which, like, full-fledged genocidal actions are justifiable. Okay? It is so insane. The entire reason as to why there are people, okay, there are, there are people that, like, believe that, would you say clipped? Clipped what? Starving children is unjustifiable. Starving adults is unjustifiable. Okay? Let me take it one step further. Starving the Gaza Strip is unjustifiable. It's just completely and utterly unjustifiable. It is... We're not... We're not in this business to, to fucking uh, talk about, like, what level of, of genocidal behavior is acceptable and morally permissible by those who are not even involved in this struggle in any capacity from thousands of miles away, okay? It's, it's just so ridiculous. The real way to end this violence is by shutting off the violence itself. And you have to look at who the root cause, where the violence actually comes from. Ooh, <laughs> good question. I'm listening. Where does there the violence come from? It, listen, if Israel just shut off, like, there's, I don't know if you know this. Okay. Tell us the root cause. There's like a spigot mm -hmm. in Israel. It's like a right. giant, like, faucet on the border of Israel and Gaza. Right. And it just says so violence. Violence. Yes. Yeah. And right now. Violence. But that's the, the violence the, pipeline. It's the violence <laughs> pipeline. You're right. And right now, it's on full blast. It's right. just spraying violence into Gaza. Right. Now, the problem is. It's got an that, Israeli flag over it. Yeah, the faucet, even though it's like leaned over the border into Gaza, the, right. the knob for the faucet is on Israel's side. Okay. Right. And Israel, you guys don't know this. Israel has actually constructed through genetic secret government genetic engineering a giant who's mm -hmm. big enough and has a big enough hand that they can reach over and grab that faucet and just turn it off. Okay. Right. So Israel is the only country in the entire world with the power to turn off the faucet of violence right why don't they do it obviously because they're evil oh okay i guess that yeah, yeah that makes sense yeah israel he, could you just turn it off please just stop just turn off the spigot of violence please he's using the poverty causes crime lens again of course yeah that's his that's only exactly lens. that's exactly what's going on yes yeah of course is the poverty causes crime lens it is kind of the oppressor oppressed lens yep because the oppressed it, are, are always in poverty yep it's saying yeah. you are oppressed so therefore you are basically justified to do whatever yeah whatever yeah yeah lashing out at your oppressor is good that's right. righteous behavior it, right the, the the insidiousness of this is that with all insidious things that there's always some kernel of truth there that is being mutated for evil purposes because i think it's fair to say that if you have someone who has good material conditions and someone who has dog shit material conditions that the person who has good material conditions should be should be uh, held to a higher standard of responsibility 
I think there's nothing wrong with saying that. That's that's kind of why everyone criticizes Hassan, because he's this fucking millionaire socialist, and he doesn't seem to use his material conditions to actually manifest socialism at all, or right. live the principles that he preaches. And so there's nothing wrong with that concept. But that but just because you think someone having good material conditions means they should have be more responsible, that doesn't absolve people who have bad material conditions. Just because you're in a bad situation, that doesn't mean that you get to steal or murder or rape or do anything else horrific that's insane and that's and i'm glad you brought up the poverty causes crime because that's literally the lens at which they view the world in that poverty causes crime or oppression causes crime right so therefore if someone's committing a crime it must not be their fault it must be an oppressor maybe that's maybe that's it's not poverty it's oppression causes crime and that's why they always right. seem to defend well, the criminal. Oppression causes poverty, and poverty causes crime. I think is a sure, but I'm just saying you don't even need thinking. to you don't, you don't even need to use the poverty. We can skip the step. They think sure. oppression causes crime, and therefore this is why I think they're emotionally in this weird spot where whenever there's crime, there's like this weird tendency they're looking to go for the oppression. Yeah, there's this weird tendency to defend the criminal. Right. Because they're like, well, they yeah. must be oppressed. That's why they committed the crime. Yeah. It's not a fucking justification. I don't give a shit. Okay. Well, I look, let's just imagine a world where everyone thinks, okay, crime causes poverty. So now you're all of a sudden looking right. at the Gazan people and you're saying, look, they're all in poverty. Where's the criminals that are keeping them in poverty, right? Right. Right. You're looking to Hamas, right? Obviously. Exactly. Hamas are the criminals that are keeping them in poverty. Mm -hmm. Does that make perfect sense? It does. So I just, why can't we just switch it up? Why can't we just say crime causes poverty and just, it's got to be as, it's, it's got to be just as second nature to everyone as, as, you know, the sky is blue. Look, you say the sky is, and everyone knows how that ends, right? Right, right. Even though it's factually incorrect. I mean, obviously, nighttime and whatnot, but. What, what is it again? And oftentimes is. What? What is it again? What's the meaning? Crime mean? causes poverty. There you go. Crime causes oppression. Well, you want, you want to stamp out the poverty causes crime because that's what most people believe if right. you say poverty causes what are people going to say right i'm just saying he doesn't understand and people don't understand that's why i'm glad you brought it up people don't understand that they're using the poverty causes crime lens to view the palestine israel conflict. palestine i know yeah, yeah that's why it, i'm bringing it up because right. it's such a it's such like a broad idea yeah. This idea just turns people into NPCs. It does. They just look yep. at everything. Poverty causes crime. Poverty causes crime. Right? That's what causes the people to write this stupid letter. Yeah. Yeah. It's difficult to recognize that because that violence is legal. Well, in the case of Israel, it's also illegal, but we turn a blind eye to that anyway. It's state violence that we are conditioned into thinking is legal. That is the issue. Professor Alan Dershowitz is with us. Thank you both for being with us. I would usually, you always call me Brother Sean. I call you Brother Cornell. I'm not, I'm not that happy with you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> He's like telling him straight up, don't call me brother tonight, bitch. My brother. None my of brother. this brother shit. Uh, You're okay. not my brother anymore, okay? Okay. You terror sympathizer. That's right. You stay on your side of the table there. <laughs> Talk to me when you're uh, when you come back to being pro America again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, then we could talk about why we because we have 31 groups from Harvard. Harvard's supposed. Why they put Cornell West against like the world's best pedophile defender? Like, there's no. Sh I mean, I will never understand why Fox News always has the Dersh on. I feel like, like. The Listen, I hate to give Hassan credit, but that's a pretty funny. That's a pretty funny title for Dershowitz. Dershowitz, yeah. <laughs> the world's did you see him when he was on? Defender. Did you see him when he was on? Yeah, uh, Kim Iverson did an interview with him. No. 
And he, she brought up the Epstein stuff and totally mm-hmm. blindsided him. Oh yeah. God, he was so pissed. We should, <laughs> we should, we'll watch it on Tuesday. We'll bring it up on Tuesday because it's pretty, it's pretty funny. He yeah. like loses his mind. Yeah. And Kim is just smart. Look, I'm not a huge Kim Iverson fan. Like I think obviously she's got some weird ideas on Ukraine and also China. But I mean, it's it's great YouTube. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I don't know anything it's great about Kim Iverson. But... She ba- she had him on once and burned the bridge, and I think he, <laughs> like, he basically tells her in the interview, "Yeah, this bridge is burned, bitch. How dare you invite <laughs> me on your show to ask me this?" Uh huh. Look, we'll watch it on Tuesday. It'll okay. be great. great. Look, we'll clip it out. It'll be amazing. Everyone will love it. I don't know why I didn't bring that up before. This happened a while back, but it was pretty funny. Does the Dersh have some like uh, holdout blackmail from Jeff from Jeffrey Epstein's house or something on every fucking Fox News executive? Like, why do they always have this freak on for every fucking for for every goddamn uh, uh, for every single time that like uh, they want to rely on like an outside perspective? They just always go to him. Did he take like Fox News executive blackmail from the Jeffrey Epstein home when they were definitely not having? doing weird shit with sex do, do you know why they always have the dirt on yes it's very obvious i'm assuming Hassan's just memeing here oh, okay because he's a virulent defender of donald trump exactly yeah look and also he became look he's on the left but he became a pariah on the left once he defended donald trump so right he was kind of kicked out of the tribe the yeah. leftist tribe, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do all these people that yeah. get kicked out of the leftist, leftist tribe do? They become the liberal on Fox News. Well, I mean, does he identify as a liberal at all? Oh, yeah. Anymore? Oh, yeah, Still? definitely. Still? Yeah, of okay. course he does. Interesting. Oh, hugely, yeah. I mean, I'm assuming he's voting for Trump in the next election, is he not? I, that's a good question. I'm not sure he would, to be honest with you. I'm Look, I don't think he, I would he voted for. I bet you he is. He voted for Hillary. So Yeah, but that was before. You think he's voting for Trump now? Yes. Ah, look. That's a good question. So we'll see if we can find it. I'm Well, I'd be interested to know. I don't I'd be skeptical that he is. I wouldn't have the certainty that you have, that's for sure. Okay. Well, he's so Alan Dershowitz is one of these people who is like super Oh my god, we have to protect Israel. Like he's an American Jew. Okay. Like super, okay. Okay. Like so that to protect Israel, it. and so yeah, That's... he likes that Trump was like so incredibly pro-Israel. So, um, that would, so that probably be a, a big factor for him. I mean, that's why he, that's why they brought him on for this. So, are you there? Yeah, I was. I'm oh. trying to look up if he's voting for Trump or not. Yeah, I don't know if he's. I never. Anything. I've never heard him say that. I've heard him say a million times. Now I never voted for Trump, but I defended him because yeah. he's like civil liberties, and he yep. always talks about being on the left. And okay, we'll see. Being a big Hillary supporter, we'll I see. Am, I loved Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton was my my girl because they were probably banging. I don't know. <laughs> Well, she knew this the Epstein secrets, obviously. There you go. <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course. You think Hillary Clinton becomes president, and he's going to say, "Oh, I didn't vote for you, Hillary." Well, That's look, true. I I bumped into you on Epstein Island. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you not vote for me? <laughs> That's a great point. Excellent. Look, all this is speculation, guys. Okay, I don't want look. Yeah. I don't know if any of this is true. This it's is the funny. comedy. This is the comedy show portion. Okay, it is funny, but I do feel like I need to give it a disclaimer because I, because uh-huh. I don't know that any of this is true. So okay. anyway, slaves that Jeffrey Epstein, was, Jeffrey Epstein was trafficking. Is that what happened? Used to be. I always thought the 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 top of the top to get into Harvard. What, a, what an accomplishment, what an achievement, what, what academic excellence you must show, uh, a, a, a cut above everyone else. And 31 student groups blaming Israel, blaming the victim. And your answer to this is they are largely right. 
Hamas. They are. Why are you fucking bullying him? They're 100% right. And he, Cornell West gave like. What? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, listen, they're right. Why? He just comes out and says it. Yeah. America, How... this is the person indoctrinating your children, by the way. So what that happened be known. to. What happened to Michael Brooks? Analysis is not endorsement. Well, that's all out the window. I guess, you know? uh, I guess he just lit that on fire, right? Yeah. yeah. Was it was the letter analysis? No, I, it was blaming I mean, it Israel was endorsement. the day after the most horrific terrorist attack they've experienced. It was saying, hey, Israel, fuck you. It's your fault. The letter was a, a total endorsement, right? Well, I mean, no, it wasn't. Well, happened. it wasn't an endorsement per se. Right. Um, but it was just saying that it was all Israel's fault. It was an endorsement with a fig leaf of analysis? Um, like, <laughs> it, I mean, I mean that's, what, that's what Hassan said. Hassan is like, look, I'm just, I'm calling balls and strikes here. I'm just analyzing the situation. Right. I'm not taking, I'm not taking some moral stance here saying Israel had it coming or anything, even though that's what I just did. Mm-hmm. The loudest condemnations to to uh, Palestinians, and he's still getting fucking wrecked because there is no room, there is no room in this world where you can ever side with the Palestinians. There's just no legally permissible, acceptable way to say Palestinians are human beings because that's the all. Look, this, this, oh god, the Mott and Bailey, the mop and bucket. It's driving me crazy, Sitch. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What the fuck? The classic mop and bucket. He keeps he keeps retreating to this position that like everyone wants to kill Palestinians. Well, that's yeah. I mean, how else do you justify this? Haven't we said the a million times that Palestinians are prisoners of Hamas? The Palestinians yeah. are being like it's what, Hamas that can actually turn off the violence spigot. Yes, we all know that. Idiots. They don't see that. Okay, here's what the statement said. It was very short. It says, uh, joint statement by Harvard Palestinian Solidarity Groups on the situation in Palestine. We, the undersigned student organizations, hold the Israeli regime entirely responsible for all the unfolding violence. That, ultimate how, goal here. Look, how do you, that, look, I just almost tried to pause you. <laughs> I did try to pause you. Actually. This is, by the way, this came out supposedly, I thought it was the next day. This is the day of the attack. This is literally that, the day of the attack. Look, that literally reads, yeah. Israel had it coming. I don't of know course. how you can read that any other way than Israel had it right. coming. That's disgusting. That's totally disgusting. Yeah, yeah. That was, that's just the first sentence. Uh, <laughs> today's events did not occur in a vacuum. For the last two decades, millions of Palestinians in Gaza have been forced to live in an open-air prison, your favorite statement. Israeli officials promised to, quote, open the gates of hell, and the massacres in Gaza have already commenced. Palestinians in Gaza have no shelters for refuge and nowhere to escape. In the coming days, Palestinians will be forced to bear the full brunt of Israel's violence. Look, uh, okay. I'm trying to pause you again. What That's the fuck? Fine. <laughs> I just, that. <laughs> you hear something insane and you assume it's a video. We're I know. I know. The. They're. They're saying Israel's response they're basically implying that first of all Israel is responsible for the violence that they received at the hands of Hamas and then yeah. I guess they're just supposed to suck it up and be like yeah you had it coming yeah bend over yeah this is crazy take it is, is it is it over is it that was it is that it this is That's the entire statement. Short statement, yeah. <laughs> wow. That's bizarre. Hmm. Okay. The dehumanization campaign must continue because if you say enough is. Look, no, who the. F oh, infuriating, Sitch. Who is dehumanizing the Palestinian people? Everyone I hear talking about this is talking about Hamas. Right? There, there's some people, but it's not, it's definitely not. There's way more people. There's way more people that I've seen on the Israel had it coming side 
then I've heard the wipe out the Palestinian side, at least on the internet circles that I see. Everyone I've heard talking about this is very clear. Right. This is Hamas's fault. The Palestinian people are the victims here. Just, just as, just as much as Israel is has been a victim of Hamas, the Palestinian people have been a victim of Hamas, and Israel's going in to clean up that mess. The every, every, all the Palestinians are basically like collateral damage in this, but nobody's blaming them, saying the Palestinian people had it coming. I, I've Everyone seen feels... people. I wouldn't say no one. I've seen people that do that say that. I definitely seen people say that. I'm just saying it's way really? less than the yeah. In, in in like the news circles, you've seen this reported. You've I mean, seen I, people. That's, that's essentially. I think that's essentially Alan Dershowitz's position. Um, really? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I don't know if he said it clearly. That's the impression I get from him. Okay. Like okay. About it. But it's definitely way less people than the people that have Hassan's and the Harvard letters bullshit take. So. And they're doing it based off of these poll numbers. They're basically saying, oh, 80% of Palestinians support Hamas, so therefore they have it coming. That's the right. argument. Essentially, yeah. That's just that's so... Look, I don't know that you can get a accurate polling in these places. Like if you're... If Hamas is basically... You know, they can disappear you in the middle of the night. How are you going to answer a poll about your approval rating of Hamas? Right. Yeah. And it's also, it's like, what I mean, do you, what do you think you're going to answer on that poll question? Right. And it, you know, it's like, are you going to trust a poll of like North Korea? Like, well, you know, their, their uh, favorability. Oh, of course. Towards, Dear you know, leader. Jong, we love you. you know? <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. It's like, who cares? You know, I'm not going to necessarily look at that as like valid information. So. Yes, of course. Well, that's basically, you're saying the same thing I'm saying. Like if right. any regime that can disappear you in the night automatically has like 99% approval. Guess why? Nobody yeah, wants exactly. to disappear in the middle of the night. Right. Yeah. I don't trust the approval ratings of Hamas. I don't trust the approval ratings of Kim Jong. I don't trust the, trust the approval ratings of the Chinese government, of Putin. You know, it's like. Yeah. But this is why I would be super skeptical of anyone who's marching out that poll and saying the Palestinian people have it coming. There's, I because... mean, the people that do it. I think it's a stupid thing to say, but I've seen people do it. So. Okay. Well, I haven't seen it, but I guess right. I'm going to see Dershowitz do it right now. Yep. Thank goodness I don't watch any. Look, <laughs> I'm not watching any of these people. Look, I, I watched some of Ben Shapiro's coverage on this, and Ben Shapiro didn't even go in that mm -hmm. direction. So he, He's made some kind of crazy-ass statements about it. but Did he? What is it on Twitter? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Maybe he's leaning in that direction. There was, I just bring him up because obviously he's. I think right. It's hard to find someone more pro Israel than him, right? Yeah, right. And he's a bit of a neocon, so. Yep. Is enough. This is fucking ridiculous. You're out of your mind. Then you're a bad guy. You're making me feel bad. Fuck you. Why are you bringing this up? You fucking piece of shit. That is the reason why we don't talk about what is going on on the ground. And instead, talk about what our feelings are about what you said, or what he said, or what she said. And of course, the inverse of this never happens. When you talk about the tragedy that befall uh, upon Israeli borders on October 7th, no one is talking about like uh, the, the perspective of, of uh, those who... Uh, I don't know. No one is, no one is even bringing up the, the, any sort of counters to that, okay? No, nobody's simping for the rapist, Hassan. Why don't you look? If you want to do it, you jump in there. Go ahead, jump in there. The hang gliding rapists. Yeah. Awful. Let's see. Uh, make a make a defense for him. <laughs> what the fuck? This is yep. just. It's so insane. It's it insane, Sitch. Yep. I know. This is unhinged. Yep. Why is Hassan simping for hang gliding rapists? I mean, answer that question for me. Such, so tell me that. Do I have to? If you're look, if you're on the side of the hang gliding rapists, yeah, someone fucked up somewhere. <laughs> like, yeah, I agree. Hang gliding rapist is not something you want to write on your resume. <laughs> hang gliding rapist apologist is not something you want to write on your resume. Yes. Ah, oh, this is insane. Hassan Piker, known for apologia for hang gliding rapist and saying America deserved nine eleven. Right. Look, this resume is getting long and very insane, Hassan. Yeah. Back up. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting close to the cliff here. And I'm not sure you have a hang glider. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and they shouldn't.
They, they like the only thing that you should say in this circumstance is an analysis of how that violence began, and it wasn't in a vacuum. Okay. It <laughs> Every time they say that, that's that's code for they had it coming. Well, and also, I mean, he's full of shit. Hassan Piker is one hundred percent full of shit because he acts like all the violence that Israel does exists in a vacuum and is just them being evil. But all the they, violence Hamas does is just, oh, there's a very, listen, there's a very complicated, sympathetic reason for why they do all this stuff. Right, yeah. They're in an open air prison, right. et cetera, It's like, go fuck yourself. You, you can either say, you can either say, no, I'm going to, you know, they're just evil and one side's good, which is wrong. Or you can say, no, 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 there's nuance to this, but you have to understand there's nuance to everything, including why Israel is behaving the way that Israel is behaving. You can't just say, well, their violence is all in a vacuum. Like, fuck they off. Need, they need one of those big signs that they put up in factories that are like 150 days since our last injury, right? Mm -hmm. Like if they could just get a bunch of days on that map for no missile strikes or suicide bombings. No terrorist bombings. attacks. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. No terrorist attack for 500 days. I mean that would that would be meaningful. It would be. That yeah. would be meaningful. And they'd be like, "Oh, look, this doesn't have to be an open air prison. This can be a nice friendly next door neighbor now. We can just let the feud stop, right?" Mhm. Mm but it just seems like Hamas wants to make that zero days since the last terrorist attack like that's basically what they're getting elected on. Yep. So messed up. It is ridiculous that uh, it has been four or five days now of, of exclusively uh, championing like why Israel's cause of, of uh, genocidal ideation and ethnic cleansing campaign in the Gaza Strip is just it's crazy. That murdered children. Hamas that read, murdered read innocent people. That's what I said, though, brother. Read okay. That's what I They said. are largely right, but lacking nuance. No, not, I didn't say lack nuance. That's the title of the piece. Okay. My actual words were, I'll just be very honest. I got I'm it here in front of the me. Words too, the words were that Israel's policies of war crimes and collective punishment against Palestinians I'll read set it a to you. Israel. Like, I want to make, I want to mention something here, Okay. I fucking hate Nazis, and you guys know that already. <laughs> I also hate the top of the hour ad break. And I don't want you to see the top of the hour ad break, which is why I tell you you can subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. <laughs> oh, my God. Do we have that option to, like, subscribers don't get hit with ad breaks? That should be let it. Me, is that an option on YouTube? Let me just start here. Listen. Before my... Before my advertisement. You know, I hate Nazis. By the way. Listen. Black Rifle very, Coffee. We have a very serious. Listen. We have a very serious topic to talk about. Okay. Right. And that topic is. Yeah. I just hit the insert ad button. I don't know what it did. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. Look, that button. That I've never joke. hit that button. I hit the button. I hit the button. Did it, did it work? Oh, Are I don't people know. people seeing an ad? Are you guys seeing an ad? <laughs> YouTube Red. Thank you, Shady. Shady's like, Shady D Rags on YouTube Red. Oh, okay. There Look, I, I never know what to do when the ad break hits. Do we like go? <laughs> did we take a break or something? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's, don't we all have ad block on? Rage Shadow Legends. Okay. Oh, so, so. <laughs> We have, a, we have to talk about this very important crisis Clever. going on in, in, in Israel, Palestine. This, the death toll is unmatched. It got but Have me. you played Raid Shadow Legends? Did that really put an ad break in? Look. I don't know. I feel like we got to put a poll up and ask, did you see the ad break? The, that's a good question because a lot of people don't see anything. Uh, let's see. <laughs> did you see an ad break? <laughs> Look at you. Okay. Yes. Where is it? Okay. No, I have Perfect. premium. Let's see. No, I, have, I definitely I have, have premium. Ad block. No, and I have neither. Oh, that's a good look at you. There you go. There you go. I have no clue because we never do it. So. Yeah.
Oh, look. A lot of people saw an ad. 20%. Oh, wait. The majority of people have <laughs> ad block. Well, what is this? 30% says no, and they have nothing. So how does the ad thing even work? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, I feel like we hit it before, and it didn't. nothing really happened, but... YouTube disables videos of you to use ad block. Oh, really? Okay. For us? Right. Maybe it's because we're talking about Israel, Palestine. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Like what ad's going to come in? I mean, I think I even used Israel in the, in the title right. of the thing. Yeah, I don't know. I used Israel, Palestine in the title. Mm -hmm. I figured mm -hmm. we'd get demonetized. That's why I was throwing F-bombs early on. Oh, yeah. So I think if you have membership, you shouldn't. I should add, well, there's only four options, so I don't know, but. Oh, yeah. Because I wonder if membership, I mean, if you have a membership, you shouldn't see ads either. I agree with that. Let's test this out on the Tuesday stream. We will. We have 1,600 viewers right now. I know. So thank you so much around. for, yeah. Since it's trying to destroy our stream here. It's true. It's true. Okay. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that <laughs> ad break. <laughs> I hope um, you didn't enjoy it. three minute ad break now. But anyway. I hate Nazis. You guys know this, okay? But what do I always say? What do I always say? I hate Nazis, but they still deserve health care, okay? Oh, my God. It was a very weird statement, but all right. <laughs> oh, my God. He's going, the, he's going the Nazis are people too route? Oh, yeah, my there God. there you go. They deserve health care. I mean, they deserve to be fired from their jobs and r ridiculed and... But they deserve health care, so I guess that's okay. I guess, question mark? Nazis? Seriously? Yeah. Look, I'm not... Uh, look, I'm in favor of incarcerating the Nazis. I'm going to be <laughs> real with you, okay? <laughs> there you go. There you go. In incarceration and or capital punishment. Wow. Like Strict. Okay. okay. Nazis? What are you talking about? Well, right. I guess, sir, I guess it, it is... Hmm. I guess there is, there could be like non-offending Nazis or just the Nazi <laughs> like ideology. Like non-offending pedophiles, non-offending Nazis. But I just, look, I think of Nazi and I'm think, well, I, th I think of the Holocaust, right? Yeah. Well, that's People generally like, how got, the thought process works. Yeah. yeah. The blood of the Jews on their hands. So right, I right. think you should be clear here, Hassan. Who are you talking, who are you talking about? Who needs health care? So is he, is he saying that if Hitler came back to life, Right. That's that's what I'm if, that's what I'm no, thinking. No, if a time portal opened up and Hitler walked out of it. Himmler, he's like, Yes, he needs health care. Give him health care, yeah. Yeah, I don't know about that one. No. I think yeah. give him I'm like, give him the chair. What do we got? <laughs> Draw right. and quarter him. Mm-hmm. They do. We have to treat all human beings with dignity. Nazis? <laughs> Man. Look, look, if you're committing genocide, yeah. we don't have to treat you with dignity anymore, okay? That's true. Look, you, you need to be clear here. If you're just talking yeah. about, like, online Nazis, who just, well, no, you he, know, like he, to... He has to say this because he thinks the Israelis are genocidal Nazis. So. What? Yeah, so that's why he has to say this. I just, look, I... It's so simple. If... If... They stop firing rockets. They put that big old sign up, you know, 500 days since our last terrorist attack. Things are going to start changing. Be right. the change that you want to be. You don't have to terrorist attack your neighbors all day long. Why not just do that? Look, they're, they're responsible for not putting the sign up. It's Hamas's fault. Easy peasy. All right. All human beings deserve dignity. That psychopaths okay. murderers racists to get through this segment <laughs> look i just i fucking hate this this is yeah. this is this is the root cause of the poverty causes crime narrative there are fucking psychopaths out there Hassan, mm -hmm. who would like to murder you and have sex with your dead corpse okay those people do not deserve health care they don't deserve justice they don't deserve any of this shit that's what bothers me. It's it's just insane. Like they have no concept of there are evil people in the world that want to do sick shit to you, you Listen, and your loved ones. 
I'm not going to be out here defending the murdering necrophiliacs. Okay. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but look, Hassan doesn't even doesn't even recognize that those people exist. Right. And in situations of lawlessness, those people rise to power. Right. They become the people you have to deal with. Uh, who were who were Saddam Hussein's kids? Uday and whatever Kusi or whatever his name was. The horrible things that those people did. Yeah. To other people, to innocent people. And you have Hassan here on a live stream saying, oh, those people, look, all people deserve health care. Look, they're just innocent kids that were destroyed by the system. No, they're murderous, raping psychopaths that came to power and did whatever they wanted to, innocent people, because they had the power to do it. And this whole idea that, you know, people are just, you know, it's, just, it's the system that made them that way. It's just, it's garbage. It's totally garbage. There, there are people that will take advantage when they can take advantage. And if they're in a situation that they can take advantage, they will. And Hamas is the perfect example of that. And you have him here simping for them, making it sound like, oh, you know, it was the Israelis that made him do it. Ridiculous. That is how you stomp out reactionary sentiment. That is how... You push. Look, and then he's like, he's going to blame it all on the conservatives. It's a conservative's fault. Look, it's a conservative's fault. There's psychopaths in the world. It's so mm -hmm. intriguing, Sitch. These reactionary ideologies away. Because people who are comfortable are going to be less likely to be ideologically predisposed to do violence. Okay? Medicare. <laughs> hey, look, just treat people nice and they won't do violence. <laughs> for all means Medicare for all. Doesn't mean Medicare for all, except for the people that I don't like. You just give Hamas health care, Sitch, and all of a sudden the rockets stop flying. You don't have anything to say about this, Sitch? It sounds like I, you're signing off. I on agree. This. I, I want to get through this part of the video. Look, it's so triggering. I know it. Yell at him. <laughs> what he's saying is stupid. You're yelling at you. Listen, you're yelling at him enough for both of us. Sitch, it's <laughs> insane what he's saying. Yeah. Look, it's this. This is mental retardation it. needs okay. to change. People need to stop thinking this. Why do leftists think this? They, it's there's some truth to the fact that leftists are just conservatives that have not been mugged yet. <laughs> like they have this belief in their head that no one would ever do such a thing. And then as soon as it happens to them, they're like, "Oh, I guess there are people in the world that just are mean." Mm -hmm. And those same principles apply here. You can show me a thousand fucking protests of, of people being dumbasses when they're, uh, you know, speaking uh, for the emancipation of Palestinian people. That is not going to make me uh, change my perspective. You are not going to be able to make me change my perspective that Israel's human rights abuses are actually justifiable or that the uh, apartheid campaign is is totally morally righteous somehow because some fucking dumbass says some anti-semitic bullshit at a pro-palestine rally that's ridiculous okay ridiculous i think this is your most liberal take no this is actually your most liberal take to assume that this is liberal you want to know why that's your most liberal take to think this is liberal because i believe in Fixing the material realities of people that makes it infinitely easier to to squash out any kind of to squash out any kind of reactionary sentiment. Okay, I think it's the most effective way to say what what the, what is he calling a reactionary sentiment here? This is this is ridiculous. Look, these these murdering rapists are watching these protests in America and laughing their fucking asses off. You know they are. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. This is insane. Safeguard against reactionary ideology. This, I, don't, I don't know what he means by reactionary ideology. He's saying it's reactionary to, I guess. So someone said that he's a libcock for saying Nazis deserve health care. And then he's saying, no, you're a reactionary for saying the, the opposite. That's all it's, he's saying. Right. Reactionary. They use reactionary all the time to mean conservative. 
which yeah. I don't really know what they mean, but I don't think they know what they mean by it. But. Right. You think that's the most liberal take? Liberals are the ones who are like, uh, let's kill everyone in the South. Who gives a shit? They voted for it. That's what liberals say. Yeah, I'll fucking out marks you any day of the week, dude. Don't even come for me like that. Fought, faded you. Thank you for the tank of the subs. They were saying the protests were Hamas sympathizers, anti-Semitic before they got the footage of anti-Semitism. My perspective is the same, okay? It is ridiculous. Should Israeli hospitals refuse medical th uh, treatment to Hamas terrorists? Like, obviously, yes, right? To Hamas terrorists? Well, unless they've been captured, then I guess you have to give them medical treatment, right? They might have good information. We might be able to get some yeah. more of those terrorists. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so, I'd give, I'd treat them. Sure. Sure. Yeah. But if they're not been captured, if some terrorist just wanders into the hospital, like, oh, I've been shot. Uh, oh, that, that's great. Well, you capture them there. Right. I guess that's true. Yeah. The fact that perspective is so scary. No, man. Of course they should fucking treat Hamas terrorists. What the fuck are we doing? Look, the, the, this is a I, I think he thinks they should be treated for very different reasons than we I think know, they should be treated. That's exactly, look, that's exactly what I was going to say. Like, obviously, yeah. there's a, a very different thing going on here. Yes. I'm saying, yes, we should treat them so that we can hang them with their buddies <laughs> yeah. to get more information out of them, right? Right, right. Hassan is saying we should treat them and take them out to dinner. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. They should get medals for what they've done. Yeah. There are rules specifically designed for this. Okay. <laughs> this doesn't make the Hamas terrorists right. What the fuck? Brother, there is no better representation of this than, than looking at the, the individualized acts, acts of violence in the United States of America. Okay, in comparison to how relig how our religious fundamentalists operate. Okay, yeah, we give serial killers and child abusers medical treatment in prison. Well, the problem is we fucking kind of don't in America, which is why Israel and America. Right? That's a problem. <laughs> That's the why does problem? he keep saying brother? Like he's Hulk Hogan. It's very weird. That's the brother. problem. Look at this. He's just like pro ser pro serial killer now. Okay, there you go. America are so similar in their like, in their in their dehumanization uh, attitude towards the incarcerated or towards uh, those who have uh, found themselves outside of the boundaries of law. It is fucking ridiculous. Well, in the United and States, Hamas are must primarily take responsibility for killing innocent people. Anybody who kills innocent people are engaging in barbaric acts. You said no matter Israel, who they are, on, what color, what nation, and so forth. Israel and the United States are primarily and The United States has supported and in this is this That's an interesting distinction because what they're trying to do with the letters is to say that Israel is not innocent. Yeah. So that changes his statement completely. He said anyone that kills innocent people is a barbarian, which, you know, everyone can agree with. The question is, who are, who's innocent here, right? They want to make the argument that Israel is not innocent and therefore fair targets. Nabal, you explain to this audience, I want you to explain, how, to how is Israel and the United States responsible for beheading 40 children? How? I'm talking about the context. 545 Palestinian children died in August 2004. Not one American said a word. I believe a Pal so, Do okay. you know what that's about? Yeah. Yeah. So, Thank okay. Goodness. So, first of all, it's weird. He said, he said 545 Palestinian children died in 2004. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I, I tried to I tried to look in this class. Just an earthquake or something? <laughs> right. So, the only thing I could find about this, there's a single article from like, it was like Al Jazeera or. I think it wasn't even Al Jazeera. It was from some other uh, Middle Eastern publication. So obviously, uh, it was a biased publication, or ideologically slanted, I should say. Uh, and they were saying that since like the beginning of the Second Intifada conflict, 
I think that started in 2000. They're saying since that period up to 2004, 545 children that are Palestinian had died throughout like this mm-hmm. whole conflict. This like this, this military conflict that had been going on for four years. So I, he's making Between it Between sound... Israel and Palestine? Yeah. Right. So they were collateral damage in some other exchange. Yes. Yes. Right. This was the, okay. uh, I believe this was the second intifada. Yeah. Second intifada. Um, and so, but the way he kind of phrased it in the way the article he was citing kind of phrased, they kind of make it sound like in one month in 2004, like 545 children were just killed, which is not what was said. Yeah. Hassan and all, all these people, they keep throwing out these numbers. Palestinians died here. Palestinians died there. They never give the context. It's pretty, no. it's pretty funny when they keep saying, oh, the context matters, but they never explain the context. It's just like well, Palestinians died once. It, it's, it's really stupid because there's a huge difference between like this incredibly complicated history between Israel and its neighbors that both sides have done bad things and both sides deserve empathy for, which has led to various conflicts and wars in which innocent people die, obviously. And then you compare that to like, oh, well, a bunch of terrorists just poured into our country and just started murdering every person that could, they could find, right? Yeah. Like, those are so wildly different to each other. Like there was never a situation where Israel just had like idea soldiers just bust into Palestine and just start mowing down every fucking person they could see. That never happened. That right. never happened. And, and so kidnapping people and bringing them back to Israel right, to right. do whatever with them. Yeah. 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 And it's just so it's just so horribly dishonest to pretend like, you know, these situations are comparable. Like that's why people think of the situations very differently. Like I understand that from a cold, like hard you know, unemotional level, like if a child dies, a child dies, it doesn't really matter the way in which they died, right? I get that, but this, but- It does matter. It matters. It totally matters. Like right, if it's an it's, earthquake or natural disaster, it's like- Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Different. That's what I'm saying. Like the, the, the context, and it's funny because he said context, the context of why it's going on does matter. Because if you had a situation where the Israeli government was sending, you know, troops in to intentionally just kill civilians, intentionally just kill children- intentionally kidnap people just because fuck you like that's right. essentially what hamas did and to compare that to these military conflicts where hamas is essentially suicide bombing israeli civilian targets you know yeah, that's dishonest. Going, like that's what was going on in the second uh, intifada that they're talking about is there was like massive amount of suicide bombing on civilian targets you know there's all these bus bombings like oh like it's so that's why so like Hassan and all these fucking idiots they complain. Oh my God, the security is so strict in the borders. And it's like yeah, the the reason for that was because in the two thousands there would be there would be a bus that had Israelis and Palestinians just trying to go right. to work on it, and some fucking piece of shit Hamas terrorist would go on the bus with a suicide bomb and just kill everyone on the fucking bus. Right. Okay. That's so why that, that's why the security people. exists now. You fucking dumb fuck. Yeah, and and they're conveniently forgetting all those. 50 people that got bombed on a bus by a suicide bomber. None yeah, all the children that got killed or crippled on that bus, you know, they don't care. Right. Right. That doesn't, doesn't figure in. Yeah. I think a lot of what's going on is is cognitive dissonance. It's like their ideology has painted Palestine as the good guys for so long. And now it's just, they have this horrible thing that they have to deal with. So they have to make excuses for it. Yeah. That's exactly what's going on. June, yeah, I mean, like June 1st, 2001, Islamic Jihad suicide bomber detonates himself at Tel Aviv Dolphin Dolphinarium Dancing Club, uh, kills 21 Israeli citizens, injures 132, most of them high school students. Wow. Like, there's all sorts of, like, this is why this, the way he talks about this is so fucking stupid. Right. Yeah. Dumbasses. May of May eighth, two thousand and one. Two Israeli teenagers, thirteen and fourteen, were kidnapped and murdered, and discovered in a cave nearby where they lived. Just think, they Cornell both... West can be your president next, right? It's like 
ridiculous. That's awful, yeah. Yeah. Palestinian baby, the same value as an Israeli baby. So when you have that kind of vicious hatred and revenge, you get response of hatred and revenge. They are all wrong. They're all war crimes. They're all to be condemned. It's like, dude, the question to, to pull. Well, okay, let me interrupt Hassan because he's going to say something really fucking stupid, probably. Like, I, that's fine. You want to say this shall be condemned. That's fine, I guess. But then. You're not what, condemning them, though. Well, like from from Cornell West, the question I have Cornell West is like, well, what the fuck is Israel's response? They just say, oh, well, you know, you came in and you killed a bunch of people. You kidnapped a bunch of people. Then you run and hide in a very po densely populated uh, city that's a, from a different country. We just throw our hands up in the air and say, well, I guess you got us. Like, I mean, what do you, what is this, what is the, what is his, uh, what does he think they should do? What is the military response he thinks that Israel should do? I'm just the curious. The letter was very clearly condemning Israel. <laughs> yeah. Well, which saying is it was Israel's weird. fault. Yeah. Yeah. Which is weird. Especially, and by the way, that letter was before, was the day of. So it was really before there was any of the bombings or anything. And, it, and it's what's, here's what's despicable. It wasn't even like the whole Norm MacDonald joke of like, oh, you know, the worst thing if they set off a nuke, if Islamic terrorists set off a nuke, you know, the worst thing will be like, oh, that will attack, you know, and will be baited towards Islamic people, right? Like it wasn't even like this whole, oh, well, this, you know, you'd expect a letter from some leftist to be like, this was a horrible tragedy committed by Hamas and Hamas should be condemned fully, but we need to call uh, on Israel to temper its response and not just indiscriminately kill you know, Palestinian people. Innocent people, yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah, like that, like, that, that would totally have been fine, acceptable. You know, response. That's kind of the response you would have expected. Uh, but that's not the response they gave. That's not the right. response they gave. The response they gave sounded like is they were saying Israel had it coming. Yeah. Which is just uh, so morally offensive. Pose to Sean is like, what do you think happens to a Palestinian baby? When a fucking Israeli munition is dumped on their on their house or the hospital, you know what I mean? You think the baby's head is intact? Like, what 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 happens? Like, is that is that the the method of execution? That's the that's the problem here. Like, what's going on? What are you fucking nuts? Nobody out here is saying it's cool to decapitate uh, babies. Okay, like that's kind of half of the argument against Israel is literally this. Okay. Like, well, what are you doing? Are you saying that Israel is engaging in the most humane way of executing babies versus Hamas engaged in a non-humane, barbaric way of executing babies is so fucking dumb. No. Well, no, no. You're saying that the there's a huge difference between we're attacking people that attacked us directly and that causes collateral damage, which I'm not saying that gives them, you know, total impunity to just do whatever. But that's, you have to admit and maybe he wouldn't because he's being dishonest or cognitive dissonance at this moment. That's very different than the collateral damage of going after people that are that literally killed and raped your citizens to, oh, we sent soldiers to literally kill and rape your citizens. That was the intention. Yeah, it's night and day. I just, it's so easy to distinguish, but it's I, like I'm saying it's cognitive dissonance because they, they l seem un incapable of even recognizing this. Yeah. Everybody wants the baby killing to stop, okay? That's kind of the point. Except the difference is we know. We know that, that Republicans have never given a, sh given a shit about uh, baby executions. Let's be fucking really real. Let's be for fucking real, okay? But you cannot simply... Yeah, there you go, babe. I don't know what that had to do with anything. I don't know why he brought up Republicans want to kill babies, but... Okay, uh, okay. Generally, it's the Republicans that are calling... Lefties, baby killers. Yeah, so, I'm very confused. What, what exactly is he talking about here? Yeah. yeah. We look at this particular moment. Without Republicans be like, is really <laughs> fucked up uh, how, uh, you know, babies die when they should actually uh, be be forcibly carried to term so they can live a life of, like, poverty and, and, and fucking uh, uh, awful, monstrous conditions that we subject to them so that inevitably, if they make it to 18, they can become soldiers and go fucking die somewhere so that a Raytheon executive can can uh, uh, talk about how their, their quarterly returns are better. 
That's what we need to do with our babies, okay? How many puppies died in that straw man, Sitch? I mean, I feel like it was just like a whole litter. Um, I think an entire breed of puppies <laughs> ceased to exist. At that that was awful. Yeah. Fucking sick. At the larger backdrop of an ugly occupation and the ugly attacks chronically against Palestinians. Those I are want to not give my your words. Back. Largely right. Israel and the United States are primarily responsible for this. 100%. It's, it's true. It's correct. It's correct. It's just these guys are, are hopped up on fucking nuclear levels of copium, I think, to be like, oh, well, how, how is this our fault? It's like, bitch, yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. Look at that. That's bitch, so sad. Yes, it is. Bitch, yes, it is. Bitch. Ima uh, look, imagine. <laughs> bitch, yes, it is. Just gunmen coming into a, a music festival. Yep. And mowing down 250 people. And the response from Hassan Piker is, you're on copium. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's crazy levels of sick, Sitch. Yep. You're on copium? Well, it gets worse. Copium? He, he quotes, uh, I don't know if it's in this video or the other video, he quotes the Twitter squirrel. The Twitter squirrel? No way. Um, the Twitter squirrel has second thoughts and in, in friends' insipidly disgusting take where like, well... Why are they dancing next to a concentration camp? Like, they deserved it, sort of mentality. Like, as if wow. they're like, as if like they're taunting the Palestinians by dancing next to a border fence or something. Wow. So. Okay. Oh. And when Palestinian children were killed, but I explained why they were killed. Here is one of the leaders of Hamas. For the Palestinian people, death has become an industry. The elderly excel at this, and so do the children. This is why we have formed... Who's killing them? Who's killing them? Who's killing them? Who's killing the children? Who, who's, who's doing it, Dersh? I love that, once again, it's just like, it's the, classic, it's the classic propaganda. It's like, oh, we had no other option but to kill these children. You know what I mean? Hamas keeps, keeps putting the children in the way of our bullets. It's like, bro, you're shooting them. Like, what, what do you mean? You're bombing them. Oh, it's a, it's a human shield. It's a human shield. It is such a disgusting thing to fucking keep repeating. But I guess if you repeat a lie long... Look, <laughs> Sis, this is so insane. Isn't it insane? Yeah. He's making <laughs> excuses for people who are using children as human shields. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is happening here? Hassan How Piker... Is is uh, making excuses for people that are using children as human shields. Look, yeah. he's not even denying that they're being used as human shields. Yep. <laughs> what? I know. This, look, this is insane. This is totally insane. The whole reason why they point out the fact that they're using people as human shields is because they're, they're, in, they're insane. <laughs> they're just, they're, totally immoral yeah i know that's evil that's evil for people to do he's like oh yeah well you know but you're shooting at them <laughs> long enough it becomes the truth right human shields of the women and the children hamas is the ones responsible for the killing of palestinian children also bro 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 if if you are shooting someone Okay, if you are shooting someone, you can't turn around and be like, man, it's really... They're, look, they're not shooting innocent people. These guys are firing rockets. They're targeting militants. Mm -hmm. does, does Hassan not understand that? It's not like a bunch of guys at a dance club picking up on girls, okay? They got rockets and, and are lobbing those rockets into Israel from a distance. They're retaliating and they're using people as human shields. I yep. thought we were talking about the context here. He makes it sound like, oh, no, they're innocent people that are grabbing human shields because yeah. the Israelis want to have a fun night out. It's super fucking weird and disgusting the way he... Because like, you can make an argument where you say, well, you could make an argument where you say, listen, you have a person who's a horrible murdering killer and they're hiding behind innocent people and you shouldn't just shoot through the innocent people to kill the murderer. Like you can definitely make that argument. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that argument. 
I mean, it's very, it's very context dependent on what's going on exactly for that argument. Um, but Hassan's not, he doesn't like, he doesn't discuss it that way. He's discussing it the way that you are talking about, where he's just making it sound like, oh, well, there's just, you know, innocent people walking around and then they're just, you know, Israelis are just shooting through children just to, to just to get at them. Like that, the way right. he discusses this is very bizarre. So, yeah, I sent you a picture. Uh, I feel like it's kind of relevant to how Hassan oh, no. in, in, interprets the situation. Um, the famous meme picture. Okay. Oh, look <laughs> at this. I'll bring I mean, this right up for you. Sage. Yeah. I mean, this is essentially, this is Hamas, uh, essentially. And Hassan's like, listen. You just got to let him do what he's going to do, I guess, right? What does this mean? So, did you bring it up? I did, yeah. Yeah. So, say this is a famous uh, comic book panel of a guy, a uh, criminal who is basically taped babies to every part of his body. <laughs> and he says, you can't right. shoot me. You can't taste me. You can't gas me. You can't even knock me down. Now, without something very fragile and very precious going squish. Right. And uh, I mean, essentially, that's how his, that's what Hamas is doing. And Hassan's just like, yeah, just, you know, good just strategy, let him go, bro. I guess. Yeah, good strategy. And the thing is, so. um, if, you know, you know why they say you don't, you don't negotiate with terrorists? You know why that's like a thing? Why is it a thing? Because when you negotiate with terrorists, you're, sending a signal uh essentially that the terrorist action works yeah the hostage is worth taking yeah and so part of the problem is and i'm not saying this means that you should just go murder uh you know uh, people that are kidnapped or murder <coughs> human shields but if you just say like hey if you if you use a bunch of people's hostages as human shields we're just going to let you go which is essentially what hassan is advocating for then that's just going to increase the behavior. Why would it? Why would it not? That's a good point. Yeah. By the way, this person in the comic is able. They take him out. Uh, like a guy from a skylight ends up hanging him, <laughs> and they're able to save all the babies. Oh, really? Yes. Nice. So there you go. It has a happy ending. I like that. The, the fictional babies are safe. What uh, comic is this from? Uh, I've never read it. It's called Irredeemable. Okay. I like the name. It's a good name. Fucked up how you, you made me shoot this baby, okay? And before people go, Hassan, isn't that what you're saying about Hamas? Yeah. Isn't that what you're saying about Hamas in yeah. this circumstance? Yes. The violent... So, it's funny. That's a good point. You, why is it that he's making this claim about Israel, but yet when it comes to Hamas killing babies, Hamas killing innocent people, you still say it's Israel's fault. You're saying Israel's making them kill babies. You're saying Israel makes them, you know, kill innocent civilians. Right. Yeah. So, but let's see. Israel makes them use human shields. Right. So let's see what kind of weasel logic Hassan will employ to try to get around this. Okay. You made me shoot this baby. Okay. And, before people go, Hassan, isn't that what you're saying about Hamas? Isn't that what you're saying about Hamas in this circumstance? The violent retaliation from people that have been locked in a fucking prison their whole goddamn lives is not the same as the most militarized state purposely enacting a policy of vengeance, a policy of vengeance that has been ongoing, that has caused this violent retaliation to begin with. So there you go. Listen, the Palestinian people have no agency or responsibility. Hamas has no agency or responsibility. But all of the Israeli citizens, the citizens, not even the government, but the citizens themselves, when they are killed by Hamas, they all have responsibility and agency. Right. Yeah. Right. They should not yeah. been up dan dancing so close to the wall. Right. That's yeah. a. Yeah. That's why they make that argument because mm -hmm. they're the ones with agency. Yeah, people I paragliding mean, over the wall don't have any agency. I am actually. I don't think Hassan is anti-Semitic, but I'm going to call him anti-Semitic. 
Well, I think he's probably anti-Semitic. I don't think he is. I don't think he has. I don't think he's anti-Semitic, but I'm going to call him anti-Semitic. And the reason is because he's constructed a worldview, essentially, where Israel is a bunch of Jews sitting around doing the stereotypical happy merchant holding their hands together going, ha 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 how can we destroy and fuck over the Palestinians today? Like right, that's yeah. what he, in like a dark He believes in room. the Jewish question. Right, exactly. In like a dark room. That's what Hassan thinks the Israeli government is essentially. And so therefore they're just all evil and apparently, and they're just, they're just acting evilly for no reason. For no reason, Israel's just decided to be evil. But Hamas, you know, oh, you know, they're, they have some kind of rationale. The environment shaped them, but not the Israelis. The Israelis just decided to be evil. They're free agents. Okay. They have free will, but the Palestinians and Hamas, they have no free will, no agency. Okay. Yeah. This is why the story is fucking insane, especially when there's a different way out of that. So the. Hamas has a term. It's called the CNN strategy. And the CNN strategy is induce Israel into killing Palestinian children. I'm sorry, man. That's nuts. That's nuts. That's nuts. That's insane. Like he, he's saying it like he's openly saying it like we're inducing Israel into killing children so CNN can cover it is such a fucking psychotic thing. He's saying telegenically dead babies, but like in a longer way. By using them as human shields. Then that, that's literally what happens, though. He, I mean, Hassan is lying or so hoped up, hopped up on copium if he doesn't think that Hamas and other terrorist organizations will do a tactic where they'll commit a horrific crime and then hide behind civilian targets, knowing that if the civilian targets are are killed or hurt that it will look really bad that's like the most obvious fucking thing everyone knows is what they're doing that's exactly what's going on that's why they use the human shields right and hassan is pretending like that's some like wild claim fuck like that was literally the strategy for leftist communist dipshits in colleges in the 60s and 70s when they were protesting was this strategy was to go and cause a bunch of like problems so that the police would beat them up and then they could get photographed, you know, getting beat up by the police. Right. And Hassan's pretending like, oh, he doesn't think terrorists do this like basic bitch, obvious tactic. And parade the bodies out on CNN and you'll see what happens. People like Cornell West will engage in crocodile tears, blame it on Israel when the entire tears, blame is on the Palestinians, Hamas, for using their children, their children as human no, shields the and then using their children. Like us, us blowing up the children, we're totally, totally in the right here. Them putting the children in the way of our bombs it's really fucked up it's really fucked up yeah unless he believes that like hamas has like some kind of mental control look he, he, his whole premise is just we should do nothing we have to do nothing that's yeah we have to just take it yeah i don't it's uh, so infuriating such well, over like, the idf soldiers i don't know what the fuck he means by this <laughs> this is such a rapist talking point to be honest <laughs> yeah children as shields Professor there you go. That's a rapist talking point, which is interesting because Hassan is literally providing cover for people that were actually raping in this situation. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, it's, it's just so stupid because like, obviously, you know, if you say, okay, the definition of insanity, one of the colloquial sayings is that doing the same thing and expecting different results. Yeah, Hassan. How and and there should be an addendum to that is the definition of being an insane leftist scumbag is watching people do the same thing and expecting different results. Okay, right. why? Like, why would you look at what Hamas did or is doing and think that they give a shit about the Palestinian people or actually constructing a better country? Or a better life for the people in Gaza. Because they obviously don't. Like anyone with a single brain cell of a, of a single digit IQ knows, and Hamas knows this, okay? I don't believe they're so fucking stupid. 
I don't believe this, that they're so stupid that they didn't think that in re- in re- response to this attack, if they were successful, that would be one of the most violent um, counter horrific counter responses from Israel that they've ever seen. They know that's going to happen. They're not stupid. They know that's going to happen. Right. So if you're yeah. in the leadership of Hamas and you actually gave a shit about your people, you'd say, listen, I don't want a bunch of innocent Palestinians to die. So instead of doing this, why don't we actually try to, I don't know, make life better for everyone where they live? You know, what is that an option? Try to have basic infrastructure, try to have clean drinking water, try to create an economy so people can have jobs, try to, you know, work with your work with Israel so you can open up trade again. If you actually cared, that is. And I mean, that's the thing. They don't actually care about this. And this is why Hassan is such a piece of shit when he talks about this. The leadership of Hamas doesn't actually care about creating a better life for the Palestinian people. And that's why what you said is very true in the beginning of the stream. The Palestinian people in the Gaza are essentially, you know, two million hostages for these psychopaths. Yeah. They're superfluous to how Hamas maintains power. If they move closer to a democracy, they lose Hamas power. is going to lose power. Yeah. So obviously exactly. they don't want them to move towards a towards democracy. Right. Yeah, the, these people are just hostages, human shields. It's so weird that that I guess, you know, obviously Hassan is just a, a dummy. Like these people don't matter to Hamas. No. He he probably thinks Hamas cares about these people or is representing he them won't or, even I don't know, some weird shit hassan's such a coward he won't even denounce um support for hamas palestinian support for hamas really? he says oh, he says i'm not palestinian it's not my place <laughs> really yes he says that it's wild yeah uh, well what you say? that that's that definitely illuminates his read of the situation here yep uh, Kachongo for $20 says, I wonder if more leftists don't let on that they understand the use of the hypothetical because they either don't have a principled stance or are obsessed with avoiding gotchas. They blend in with the Hassans of the world. Yeah, that's probably true. That's probably what's going on. And thank you for the third ever super chat. Look at that. Number three. Hypotheticals are weird because I do, they're, there are situations where people create hypotheticals that I think are totally done in bad faith. Of course. Like they want to set up a hypothetical so you're forced to side with the Nazis or something. Right. And they like want to that. trap you in something right. that's not related to your point. Yeah. Right. Which you can call out, but you still have to understand. But the problem is when people say, like, well, therefore hypotheticals as a concept are worthless, which is not true. That's not true, yeah. That's why I'm saying hypotheticals are a mixed bag, and I understand why some people are like, you know, I don't want to engage in this hypothetical because I know it's going to turn me into a baby killer or something, right? Right, right. So, but then obviously other people at the extreme will say, oh, you, you're so afraid of hypotheticals. Oh, it's a hypothetical. Yeah, well, I don't like engaging in hypotheticals if bad faith people are going to try to trap me into something. Right. Stupid. So, but hypotheticals can be very useful. Obviously, we use them on the show all the time, but neither one of us are trying to trap each other in some sadistic word game for internet no. points. No. Yeah. Uh, Olivia Stratton for $50. Thank you so much. It says Israel Palestine has parallels to the Koreas. Split apart after World War II, poor one is hostile to wealthy one, but North Korea rarely attacks and South Korea doesn't really retaliate. Is that difference due to ideology? Would Israel do better using South Korea strategy? Well, I'll be honest. I don't know anywhere near enough about uh, the North South Korea situation to comment. I mean, is does North? I know in North Korea they just kind of like randomly lob missiles like into the ocean. Um, were they? Was there a time period where North Korea was just attacking South Korea? I don't know enough about it to comment on that. Well, they were at war with one another. No, I'm saying once the war time, ended, yeah. once the war ended, did North Korea just kind of retreat back to its side or were they just keep, you know, was it a situation where they kept attacking their neighbor the way that the Palestinians have just kept attacking Israel? So I do, I do think ideology probably plays a giant role in it 
the yeah. whole Middle East is supercharged just because culturally we all have this book called the Bible that a lot of people respect as kind of a book that is in touch with the spiritual realm and God and all of that. And it it spells out this area of the world. It it talks openly about this area of the world. So, I mean, that's mm -hmm. just culturally a, a charged environment. Do you agree? Yeah. Well, so I'm I, sure the, the religious aspect has a lot to do with it. Um, a lot was that the Gaza and West Bank areas were used by Israel's neighbors intentionally. It was kind of like, you know, with Russia sending weapons to the Donbass to keep the conflict going. You know, Israel's neighbors were intentionally keeping the conflict going in the West Bank and Gaza right. for for decades, right? And that's going to create a culture and that's going to create a cultural attitude uh, for right. people living in those areas. So I don't know exactly how that parallels to the North-South Korea situation, but... Uh, Mark Twain's Revenge for 20 Gifted Subs. Thank you so much. And J-Mac, our surrogate father, Daddy J-Mac, gave us 100 gifted yeah. memberships. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Uh, Solidoge for $20 says, uh, I have the real solution to all this. Since Sargon wants to make a five-page long tweet about how the conflict is evidence of liberalism's failure somehow. Oh, Jesus, really? <laughs> oh, my, really? I say we just give it all back to the Brits and see how they do. There you go. Well, this looks also, like a two-parter. Two-parters. Part two. Thank you for the $5. <laughs> says, also, dumb conservative takes on this nuance, bro. Thanks. October 7th was secretly allowed by Mossad to get Netanyahu elected. Pure stupidity. I mean, that sounds, I agree, that take sounds very stupid. I don't. This is, I mean, I think this is going to hurt Netanyahu's uh, electability going forward. I mean, first of all, the, the idea that they would be so incredibly evil that they would allow this attack to go through just for that purpose is number one. But then number two, that they would- I even, don't think it helps them. Yeah, to, to think that this would actually help them. I don't think this helps them. I mean, it, th that that take is actually blindingly stupid. And that could be nuance bro has a very conspiracy brain and a lot of issues. And I think that's maybe guiding him here um, because even if, even if Israel or Netanyahu specifically at the end of this conflict, you know, ends up retaining power and getting some positive ratings, kind of like, you know, people say George Bush had positive ratings after nine 11 and all this stuff. Um, even if that happens, this has been such a big blow to the faith and security of Israel. Because before this happened, a lot of people kind of viewed Israel as like really on top of their shit and having the world's best security um, apparatus, having the world's best yeah. intelligence agencies. Like, like they were supposed to literally be like so amazing at capturing intelligence. Um, like they're just globally known as like the best intelligence apparatus ever. And yet they were completely missed the most brutal terrorist attack right on their border. And so the idea that Netanyahu or some cabal of in the Israeli government would sacrifice all of that this is just preposterous. That they don't have any clue about how government works, how power works, how people in power think or work. This this would be the stupidest fucking plan they could ever gamble. It's a huge gamble too. Because it could easily backfire, which I think it very well will. So I think that's a really dumb take. But Yeah, they're going to be talking about the intelligence failure here in the same way that they talked about September 11th. Like, there are yeah. going to be commissions. They're going to look into this. They're going to, it's going to be analyze worse. every single detail. It's going to be much detail. worse. Because even with 9-11, with when it came out that, it's, that it was kind of George W. Bush's fault... <laughs> Right, that they had warnings um, ahead of time. Because yeah. there were warnings ahead of time that America knew about, and literally people were trying to warn, Richard Clark was literally trying to warn George W. Bush about them, and he was just, for whatever reason, very yeah, flippant brushed about off. it. And brushed it off. Um, he George W. Bush kind of escaped blame, mostly, for 9-11. He did. That, right. But, but I think that was because, like, it wasn't really... Like that, the the nine eleven terrorist attack 
seemed to be so out of the blue, I think, that people kind of gave them a pass. Like, it just seems so out of the blue. Like, with Israel, even though, like, no one expected this, it's not out of the blue that they would try this if they could. Like, the whole idea is that Israel's supposed to be on its toes 24-7 because they have to be. Right. And so I don't think that kind of um, shielding that Bush got, W got, I don't think that's going to necessarily apply to Netanyahu here. I mean, the polling already shows that most people do blame Netanyahu for this. Or say that he was, you know, responsible for the failure of Israel to prevent this from happening. So I, I don't think yeah. that's going to come to fruition. Ethan and Hassan were talking about a poll on the live stream that they did, and it was driving me insane because they kept saying that like eighty percent of the Israeli people blame Netanyahu for this incident, and they were spinning it as. Netanyahu is this right-wing instigator and they're blaming Netanyahu for this aggressive po uh, policy towards Palestine and that's what caused it. And I was thinking, you dumbasses. No. I'm certain that yeah. I'm certain that poll is the people are mad because the security was breached. Like yeah. he's a big safe and security uh, president. Like they're mad at the security failure, not the not the foreign policy towards Palestine. Right. Yeah. And and there is, and I don't know if this is true, but there has been people making the claim that there are reports that part of the reason Israel's response to this was so fucked up was because they had to have so many uh, military assets protecting the settlers in the West Bank. In the West Bank, yeah. That it Which opened is the door to yeah <laughs> it kind of thin the lines too much of gaza which if that turns out to be true oh he's, I mean, he's gonna toast be, right there's going to be massive retribution against that because a lot like a huge amount of people maybe the majority of people in israel are against west bank are sellers. against the west bank settlers yeah. anyway especially I mean, if look they're getting their people murdered we can't even protect our own people and you're worried about moving people in the west bank fuck you right and people yeah. don't realize this because of like the way that israel's talked about like the majority of Israelis are pretty secular and they're not mm -hmm. really on board with like the religious extremist crazy types who, you know, have these grand designs for Israel. So they're like, we've got to reestablish the Israeli borders so the apocalypse can come. Is that what's going on here? <laughs> well, that's, Look, not the, I... <laughs> that's not the Jewish. The Jews are not the, the Israeli there's a Jewish bunch of evangelicals. Yeah. The Christians are, the Jews are not thinking that way, but the Christians. But are those are. settlers Christian? No, I don't no. know. No, they're Jewish. Okay. Jewish. Now, some of those. But Jewish I'm sure settlers, they're being backed by a bunch of evangelical yes, Christians some who of them are saying, are. "Look, some we have to are. get the, we have right. to get the borders back together. Jesus is coming back. People believe that shit." Yeah, some of them are. That's true. They send their money. They're like, "Look, you want what? You want settlement in the West Bank, and we can get closer to Jesus returning? Sign me up. How much do I have to pay a month?" Uh, Mark Twain's Revenge for twenty dollars. Thank you. Says all innocent lives taken in conflict are tragic, but I have a what if all his long term historical perspective on this matter. Islam needs major reforms where this issue with fundamentalists will keep occurring as it has. Yeah, no, I agree completely. I completely agree. Yeah. I mean, you Rudyard's get your problem... coming back. On... Oh. Well, oh, Rudyard's coming back on on Tuesday, too, by the way. Well, there you, you go. You mentioned nice. what if all his, so. Very nice. Uh, Floki Lord. VT for two dollars says calling an eighty percent plus approval for Hamas quote hostages. I yeah, so we addressed this. I don't know. May, maybe you came in afterwards, where I said, I mean, we both said, I wouldn't. We wouldn't trust. I don't know why. We we shouldn't trust polling data. Like you wouldn't trust polling data on North Korea, on like the approval rating of the Kim of Kim Jong in North Korea, and you wouldn't trust and you shouldn't trust polling data on you know people's approval of of the Chinese government. Or of Putin, so I don't know why we should trust approval data for Hamas in a right. region where there it's a, basically a bunch of military gang. You know, everyone's afraid for their lives. Yeah, I I simplified it to if some regime has the ability to disappear you in the middle of the night, they're gonna be about eighty percent approval. Rating. Yeah, if not high. <laughs> right. Sure. Right. Yeah. A, yeah, 80 to 100% approval rating because people don't want to get disappeared in the middle of the night. And they're worried that if they answer the poll incorrectly, the guy taking the poll is going to narc them off 
to the people who can disappear them in the middle of the night. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So just the uh, this idea, like it's so it's so bad to put this on those people. Right. Look, I even I use the same logic, this exact same logic, with the atheists who want to say, oh, look, atheists are the best. There's no atheists in prison, right? Well, when you go to prison, there's like two gangs. There's like the Aryan Brotherhood, who are all Christians, and there's like the Islam Muslims, who are all Muslim. They all believe in God. Are you going to be the one that is like... Look, I'm an atheist. No, you're gonna join. You're gonna join. Uh, what was it? M13. Yeah. You're gonna be like, I believe in God. I'm no, no, joining. No. You're gonna join the the Mexican drug cartel gang. Well, they believe they're all Christian. What are you talking about? Oh, okay. Well, they're Catholic. Yeah. They're Catholic. Yes. Yeah. They'll join MS13, right? <laughs> everyone, look. Everyone who gets thrown in prison immediately becomes religious. <laughs> There's no way there's, there's no, no atheist, atheist in prison oh, okay. because the, yeah, your survival plummets, right? Your survival ability plummets as soon as you come out as the atheist, right? Yeah, Palestinian babies are killed when it Jewish babies be are Israeli babies. Outrage. I want you to have the same indignation oh, when Palestinians are killed, not when they're That's killed, not consistent. when they're killed by Palestinians. When that you can't make a bro, <laughs> the, oh, oh, this is the. This is the fucking victims of communism technique, okay? It's like everyone that dies both inside of Israel proper and outside of, of uh, you know, historic Palestine, they all died due to Hamas. 1948 Nakba, Palestinians were being fucking raped and, and murdered in their villages and forcibly expelled. That was Hamas. It was a premeditative attack against Hamas that we knew was going to be uh, developed and propped up. Literally just a black on black crime excuse. I hate the dirt so much. No, it's worse than that. He's just, I, I don't know why Hassan's making this argument. He's literally just doing the reverse of this. He's literally just did the reverse of this in this clip. He's like, oh my God, Alan Dershowitz, he's so stupid. He's just saying everything, every person that dies is Hamas's fault. When like five seconds earlier, Hassan was like, everyone that dies is Israel's fault. He right. said that. He literally said that the, the message, the letter from the from Harvard that said that all those people that died on October 7th was all Israel's fault. He said that was correct. And he now did. he's just doing the reverse. He's criticizing Alan Dershowitz for just doing the reverse. Isn't it interesting how it's so important who is to blame? So much of our society is focused on who's to blame here. Yeah. Who's at fault? It's this all justification controversy. for to how of to course. fuck up people. Yeah. Of right. course. That's exactly what's going on. They're this like, is why, no, like, Israel's to blame. No, Palestine's right. to blame. And the whole argument is over who's actually to blame. Well, yeah, it's like, that's why it's so stupid to me. It's like, there gets a point where you have to say, okay, I don't give a fuck what the history is. I don't give a fuck who to blame is. I can either right. move forward in a productive manner or I can get stuck in the cycle of violence forever. Right. And right. if, and right now, it's far the 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 onus is far more on Hamas. Now Israel's not doing anything is not doing the right thing, which I've already said in the stream earlier, but the onus is much more on Hamas to to show the world that they want to do the right thing. For the Palestinians in Gaza to show the they world don't. that they want to do the <laughs> right thing. To. I know they don't. I'm just saying theoretically. They don't want right? to do the right I know thing. they don't. But I'm just saying theoretically. <laughs> It, right, for right, right. No, for I Hamas, for I mean, for Hassan, right. might as well be Hamas at this point. For Hassan's idiotic <laughs> point to for Hamas Hassan, people are calling him Hamas 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 Anabi. Yeah, yeah, that's Ham perfect. Yeah, Hamas for Hamas Anabi's point to make any sense would be for the for the people of Gaza and for Hamas to actually show that they want to move forward in a productive manner, but obviously that's not what's happening. At right, all. and so you know. Israel is going to protect its citizens and act the way it's going to act. Yeah. No, it's even it's even worse than that because the black on black uh, violence one is just a simply a simple method of of deflection. Th this would be like saying no, the police actually have to be really violent because black people want to kill the cops and and the the violent black people are. Well, no, 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 no. I'm actually glad that Hamas and Abi brought this up. Because actually, there is a good comparison here.
to the whole how the leftists see this thing. It's like when you see, did you see that um, there was a, an individual who was black who was wrongly imprisoned for some crime, um, and I then did. they got out of crime, they got out of jail. Um, now I don't know, I don't know about the original case, so I don't know if they actually were wrongly imprisoned or not. But they got out of jail and then they were shot by a police officer. I saw and that. Yeah. They're dead. I assume they're dead, right? Or are they alive? I think they died, yeah. Right. And so people are like, oh my God, racism, this is the worst thing ever, blah, 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 blah. Some people were just going completely uh, insane about the whole situation. And then it, the dash cam uh, came out and showed that the guy was speeding. I think he was going 30 miles over the speed limit. I think he was driving like 100 or something, driving super fast. And... When the police officer said that they were going to arrest him for going over th for going so fast, he starts attacking the he's like 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 really violently attacking the police officer, and the police officer is even tasing him, and or yes, he's hitting him with a taser and it's not stopping him, and he's he's really attacking him and after all that, he shoots him. And yeah. yet Hassan and people like that they see that situation and they say, oh well, the the police officer is still not justified in shooting that. That guy, because of the guy's history, because of systemic violence, because of systemic violence, blah 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 blah. How does he million, know the history? Right. Yeah, they've, there's a million ex explanations about how it doesn't matter what nothing matters. Okay, the cops should never have used violent force to the person that's violently attacking them, right? And that's that's the actual comparison that's happening here. You have the Palestinians or the Hamas specifically violently attacking Israel, and Israel's using violent force back. And Hassan is saying, no, 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 but the but the history, the you know, the specifics, blah, 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 blah. Right. It's like it's very similar to the situation where they react to people who are attacking police officers and then defending that person. Yeah, because they see it the same way. Yep. And it's like, listen, if you don't they want see the, the cops to fuck the violent with you, oppressors. Right. Like, yes, there are corrupt cops in the world. There are corrupt right. cops in America. There are corrupt cops that will go after you, an innocent person. If you want to limit, drastically lower your chances, okay, of a cop right. killing you, like drastically, like 98%. If you want to lower your chances. 98%? I yeah. can't go 99.9. .9. I feel we'll like we'll go I with can. 90. I'll give you 99, <laughs> right? Also, also, there's a 1% chance. If you want to lower your chances of being like brutally killed or beaten up by a cop, by well, you're saying it's like chance. two percent, even okay. if I comply. That right. seems a little odd. I'm saying this. I, I'm I'm willing to throw out there that there's just two percent corrupt cops who will do some fucked up shit. Okay, you, right? I gotcha. Right. Um. So if you want to reduce hands your chances, why are you shooting? Me? Right. If you want to reduce your chances by ninety eight percent, you comply. You don't fuck with the cops. It's very simple. That's not gonna. That is still two percent. There's still some evil cops out there, but you're gonna help yourself ninety eight percent of the time. And it's like they completely ignore this facet of reality completely because they don't care because it's all n nothing that Hassan is saying. Nothing that these people say when they talk about police interactions, they talk about Ham Hamas and Israel. None of it's about logic. It's none of it's about logic. It's all just emotional, psychological reactance. That's all it is. That's yeah. all it is. It's err, revenge. I hate err, the cops. I'm angry. Er, how dare you? That's all it is. There's no logical thought process whatsoever involved in any of this. Yeah. Because if you're logical, you have to ask yourself, you have to say, is what I'm doing at this moment going to make the situation better for me or worse for me? That's the, fu that's the million dollar question. Fuck you, Hassan Piker. Fuck you, Second Thought. Fuck you, every single scumbag Vosh. All these fucking scumbags that are doing the soft defense for Hamas. That's the million dollar question that you have to answer, okay? Is what Hamas did helping them and the Palestinian people or hurting them? It's very simple and it's very fucking obvious. It's hurting the people in Gaza. Is every time they shoot a fucking missile, every time they try to kill someone, every time they do some fucked up shit, does it help the people in Gaza or does it hurt the people in Gaza? That's it. It's very simple. You can really reduce it down to that very simple question. It hurts them. It hurts them. And so maybe 
fucking maybe the goal should be that we need a government in Gaza that actually gives a fuck about helping the people in Gaza. Maybe that should be the fucking goal before you simp for these fucking terrorist scumbags. Amen. Hey, our fucking men. <laughs> causing a situation where the cops have to kill all black people. Black on black violence is simply to say, huh, you don't care about black death. You never cover when black, uh, black people kill other black people. You know, what about that? That is a whataboutism. Okay? His is worse. The Moral kind of comparison. When d Nazi kids were killed in the bombings of Dresden, I didn't have the same comparison when Jewish kids were put in gas chambers and crematoriums. You're a professor of theology. Wait, why does it... Bro, it's so odd to use Dresden. Like, there are so many other more viable arguments to make. Like, I just... It's so odd. He just said Nazi children. Like, what the fuck? Why, why am I hearing Dresden so much? Yeah, why do they keep mentioning Dresden, the only allied bombing campaign that's questioned to this day? Because, like... I just, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't understand it. Like, do, does he think that Hamas is like operating concentration camps or something like systematically uh, against Israeli people? Like, what the fuck is this talking point? Like, here's the thing. Okay. Is Sasan like, how does he not understand that? It's so yeah, easy. Is this like, um, is this performative stupidity? Like what's happening here? Does he not, it's very obvious why the comparison is being made to Dresden, right? Like, like the amount of death uh, the civilian population in, in Germany was like, like crazy high. You What's know, the, those, the difference between here. collateral damage and intentional genocide? I mean, it's a pretty yes. big difference. Right. And that's why, and that's why uh, Alan Dershowitz brought it up is to right. say, well, there's a difference between a military campaign to stop a violent government force from enacting violence, which causes high civilian casualties is very different than a government force or a terrorist force entering a country and just systematically rounding up and killing civilians. Okay. Those are yeah, very different is, actions. Yeah. The difference is intention. Like if, yes. if I, you know, in, in reaching some sort of military objective, kill people as collateral damage. Well, I would prefer not to kill those people, obviously. Right. But Hamas, like the whole purpose is to go in and kill people. Yeah. Yeah, that's the which, goal. <laughs> that's which Israel the could do. Israel could just do that. Yeah, if they were they all so evil. Fucking they could nuke. just do that. They could just say, "Oh, we're just going to level Palestine." You know, yeah, or the West Bank. A bombing until, campaign right. for a week or so, just yeah. bomb until everyone is dead, and then be like, "Okay, look, let's go clean it up." Yeah, they could do that if they wanted yeah. to, but uh, you know, it'd be horrific. The entire it would be world would be completely fucking them. horrific. Yeah. yeah. But, look, I don't. I, how did we get away with shock and awe and fucking? That's so bizarre. I just, could that happen today? Do you remember the invasion of Iraq? How we just did a bombing campaign on Baghdad for like 24 hours? Do you remember that? I do. You brought it up before, yeah. Yeah, shock and awe, they called it. Yep. They were like, Saddam Hussein has to get out of Baghdad by this time or, or else. And they went through with the or else. It was like, how did the world just not be like, this is, these are fucking war crimes, man. Well, they did, but, you know, we're America, so what are they going to do about it? Yeah. Well, imagine that shock and awe in Gaza. Well, I mean, you can make an argument that's kind of what this is, right? I don't, look, are they doing, I, I, they're going after military targets. Yeah, I mean, that's my understanding. I don't know, but that's right. my understanding. I'm guessing that's what they're doing. Hmm. Yeah, okay. But with the shock and awe in Iraq, were they just signed did they did the American government just say, No, fuck you, we're just bombing civilian targets? Or were they saying that they were bombing military targets? I, I mean, I'd be surprised if they just said we're just gonna bomb a bunch of fucking civilian targets, suck it up. Well, no, I think they were basically gave them like a week or something to evacuate the city. And they were saying, Well, it's mostly evacuated, but we're just gonna level it. Right. Okay. Well yeah. then yeah, that is pretty crazy. Yeah. It says there estimate 6,000 people died in the shock and awe. 6,000? Yeah. Civilian people? Yes. 6,600 people. Was it just military targets? I, doesn't, I, I don't remember. think it was. I, don't I think know they were fucking bombing hotels and shit.
They might have been. I don't know. So crazy. It is pretty crazy. Look, they were like, well, look, we gave you two weeks to leave. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. We're leveling this city. Yeah. It's a, that, it's a little insane. Man, it's a little insane considering just all the lies, <laughs> the weapons of mass destruction, lies, all that shit to get the American people on, on the side of Iraq invading Iraq right yeah uh, well the thing a is a different story well I hate to say it but mm -hmm. the shock and awe thing supposedly worked pretty effectively oh, it did um because when the American my understanding is when the American troops rolled in the army was so demoralized and like there was basically very little resistance resistance yeah yeah they it worked they just kind of rolled right in yeah so Okay. Well, maybe, I mean, Israel, Israel's not doing that. Look, I don't, yeah, know, I don't know what necessarily work on Hamas right, but... either. So, well, they're kind of, I'm, I'm assuming they're sort of used to this and expecting this. Right. Right. Like Iraq was obviously not expecting what happened to happen because they had no connection to 9 11. So, right. Yeah. Like shock and awe. Ha! You won't do anything. Oh, shit. Yep, essentially, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people thought they wouldn't do anything. I mean, I remember being just weirded out that it was going on. Yeah. Anyway. A little American history there for you. There you go. <laughs> How old were Here's you the when thing. the shock and it... awe took place? Me? <laughs> I feel like you were like 10 years old. No, I was older than 10, I think. Yeah, I was a little oh, into, okay. but I wasn't like super aware of politics. I mean, I was aware enough to know like this is fucked up. But what'd your dad say about shock and awe? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> I really don't remember him talking about it hmm. at all. Good. Hmm. Protected his kid from the horrendous. This is why Ukraine is interesting because I really do think the hubris of Iraq really got to people and having a win in Ukraine might take the sting out of the Iraq misfortune a bit mm -hmm. but that's for another time let's continue with this insanity here if I have uh, ghettoized uh, an entire population of people whose land I've taken to create living space for myself okay and then on the other hand created an open-air prison or a concentration camp that I routinely bomb just that, that framing. You're never going to get past that framing. You're never going to get through to these people in this Hasanabi bubble. It just that that framing does all the work for you. You just imagine right. people in a fucking... You just envision escape from New York. You're like, they're living in escape from New York. Jeez, of course they're going to lash out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, on the other side of the uh, of the equation, like I wouldn't be making Nazi comparisons so fucking willingly, you know what I mean? So openly, it's just very odd that. But I guess I guess it works. It sticks because like they also literally say that uh, Palestinians are like Russians in this situation. Gee, don't you understand the moral difference I, between I was... deliberately murdering a kid and? having collateral damage because there are human shields you're running for look there's what said it right there president of the united states what would you do oh, if, wait, 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 let do. me tell I'll you, tell let, you me ask the question. let me ask the question okay what would you do if they were firing if terrorists were firing at american children in america and the terrorists were hiding behind palestinian children would you allow Bad take us on. Our enemies have always used human shields. The Japanese military used the civilians of Hiroshima and Nagasaki of human sh as human shields, so we had to nuke them. Yeah. It always feels like uh, whoever our enemies are, no matter what kind of fucking, what kind of devastation we bring upon their, their uh, civilian population is just, you know? Loud. Another puppy dies from a straw man on the internet. Fucking sad <laughs> day. Sad day. Oh, the killing of Americans to continue, or would you go and get the terrorists, even if it meant possibly collateral damage on Palestinians? What would you do? I'll tell you exactly what I would do. First, truth and morality tend to be 
two casualties in any context of war. I would want to tell the American people the truth. I would tell them what the context is, how we found ourselves in this situation. And I would not jump for a military what, what invasion. And yeah, this is a great... A <laughs> what would he do? I, I want to hear. I what would he do? I know. We might have to look. Hassan keeps interrupting. What would he do? Just, I think it's funny. It's just such a leftist move. It really is. It's like, the first thing I would do... Brother Dershowitz is I would apologize for everything America ever did. <laughs> the second thing I would do, end poverty. <laughs> I know. It's like answer the like, fucking okay. question. Like answer the fucking question, right? Look, I'll, obviously, if we're in this situation, it's America's fault. <laughs> America bad. <laughs> Even um, in his hypothetical. Yeah. He can't escape the America bad <laughs> framework, right? No. no, look, I'm telling you, Cornell, hypothetically, America's good in this situation. In right. this hypothetical, America's innocent. No, brother, I can't imagine that. This hypothetical is wrong. <laughs> right, right. It, this is a great question that people always ask. Like, what do you do after 9-11? Literally the opposite of what we did. And I stand by that. And, and I am 100% correct. We are living in the rubbles that we have caused in the post 9-11 universe, okay? What would you do after 9-11? Not whatever we did, okay? It's not violent retaliation, not. The world would be objectively a better place if we never invaded Afghanistan and we never invaded Iraq after 9-11, okay? And the irony of the 9-11 the analogies is also so apt in many ways because like, like you're going and and attacking random people that had nothing to do with the the attack just like in 911 okay just like in 911 like you isolate wait 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 yeah what the fuck how What's is that comparable about? to this situation cuz obviously yeah Iraq and I think do 911 um but how is that comparable to Israel directly attacking Hamas the people that did the actual attack how is it apt well, I don't know if you know this, Sitch, but we actually got Bin Laden, too. <laughs> like, Yeah, but he wasn't in Iraq. Right, of in course Pakistan. he was. But look, we got the guy responsible for 9-11. That sure. was what the aim was, obviously. I understand, so, but we didn't have to start two wars to accomplish that. No, no. Though, again... The, I don't everyone, know that the two wars helped us even get him, but... Right. Though, to be clear, because everyone, everyone, I think, kind of fucks up on the Iraq war situation... I mean, I strongly believe that the Iraq war would have 100% led to a much better situation for the country and the entire world if the Bush administration just didn't have fucked up and they had forced the government to work with the Shiites and worked with the Bath or the Bath Party, I should say, worked with the Bath Party under Hassan, uh, uh, under Hassan, <laughs> under Saddam and that way they wouldn't have all basically grabbed the military weapons and hidden the hills and started the in, you know the rebellion that lasted insurgency? for the entire the insurgency that I don't know if I buy that if they had worked with them i think that that would have that could have been um avoided 100% could have been avoided if they had worked uh, with them there's a, i read a i think it's i don't know if it's moral tribes or not i think it might mm -hmm. be political tribes um by this political consultant that actually consulted, I believe, the Bush administration, Amy Chua. Mm -hmm. That's who wrote the book, Political Tribes. And she talks about this in the book, about how she basically predicted everything that unfolded in Iraq because there was this... Um, market dominant minority the sunnis basically were lording over the shias and the sunnis were a smaller population but they controlled mm -hmm. them economically and since saddam was sunni basically they controlled them by force and she was saying look you can't just implement democracy in in iraq because it's going to like the oppressed population is going to have the democratic power and they're going to get revenge on the Sunnis. That's going to happen. And that's exactly how it played out. So I don't know what you're saying 
I don't know how what you're saying would avoided that would have avoided that because well, even the, in a democratic situation, the the, right. the, the unless so, you have some sort of bill of rights, which obviously we have, but they don't have a mm -hmm. culture of that. Right. So the the fear was for the people that were part of the Ba'ath Party, um, mm -hmm. who that was Saddam's party. Was right, that, Sunnis, right, the smaller population. Yeah, that since they were the smaller population, I think they were one third of the population or something. Right. Um, yes. That with that with Saddam out of power, uh, they would essentially just be, uh, you know, second class citizens and would be oppressed by the majority. Yeah. At that point. The Shia. Right. And so they wanted as part of so after the invasion and after Saddam was killed and they were you know writing the new constitution for iraq they wanted some kind of guarantee some kind of power sharing agreement to sort of maintain the security uh for themselves and my understanding is that essentially uh the shia's party i don't know what the party was uh, locked said, the sunnis out of power they basically said pound sand you know okay. you you know you and saddam's party were basically ruthless oppressing dictators to us for the last, you know, 40 years. <laughs> you know, we're not going to fucking do shit for you. Get fucked, right? Right. And so all those people said, "Oh shit. As soon as these people get into power, they're going to totally fuck us. We better get all our weapons and go hide in the mountains and right. now we're going to have an insurrection for the next 10 to 20 years." Right, a civil war basically. Yeah, right. yeah this is exactly how it, right. Amy Chu so, laid it out to the Bush administration. Right. And so, but my understanding is that the Bush administration, and they got flack for this, essentially they just kind of waved away and they let the the Shias do whatever. Right. And you're just saying said, that they should have forced some no, sort they of power. No, they should have literally, yeah, because America was the power. They literally just have their military in the country. We're they can force security. them to do, yeah, exactly. yeah, they can force anyone to do whatever the fuck they want. The Bush administration should have said, no, we, we are going to force you guys I know that they fucked you, but we're going to force you guys to hammer out some kind of fucking agreement that you can both live with to prevent further conflict. Okay. And if they had done that and there was some kind of agreement between the Sunnis and Shias in Iraq, I do believe that the, that the Iraqi war that we, cause what we think of the Iraqi war is not the actual war. We think of it is after we won the yeah, Iraqi how do, war. How do you win the peace? The, the peace got fucked up with the, the insurgency. Uh, or the insurrection. And so that I think could have been avoided or largely avoided if there were guarantees for those people and they wouldn't have all run away into the mountains and started the civil war and all that stuff. I do think that could have been avoided or at least attempted to be avoided. And they didn't even attempt to. Right. Well, attempting so. it, look, I'm skeptical it might have actually worked just because obviously they don't have the culture and. I think that was the biggest problem, but yeah, like at least try it. They could at right? least try. They could at least try to do it. Yeah, but they didn't, and so that's so, so that's they what just I'm formed a Sunni, uh, a Shia government without Sunnis, and obviously no Sunni is going to feel safe in a government. It, it would be like as if the Democrats just took complete power of the government. Like Republicans would be terrified. Well, yeah, only it'd be if it was right after. The Democrats had violently right after January sixth. <laughs> it's after the Democrats had a violent dictatorship that ruled the country for forty years, where the president's children basically went around raping right. people with impunity. Right. Right. So. Yeah. Oof. Which I mean, Oof. I understand. Listen, I understand the people after Saddam's death. I understand the they people were... not. Yeah, they wanted not wanting, to get even. Yeah, I yeah. get it. I understand it. But uh, for the uh, for the greater good, okay, sometimes you just have to move I forward. For, look, oh, how awful is that? But that's how do you power that's share with someone like that? But that's but that's the truth, and that's where America comes in as the the uh, unemotionally unbiased party because they don't, you know, they hadn't suffered under them and said, "Listen, I understand what you're saying, but for the greater good, you just have to do this because the alternative is civil war." And that's going to be much worse for everyone, which it turned out to be much worse for everyone. So, have you have you seen the? There's a documentary, I believe, about Saddam Hussein's kids, and man, 
I haven't, that's, but I know they're fucking like psychotically evil. That's one that I probably shouldn't have watched, but couldn't look away from. Oh, no, it's oh I, I've heard like really bad things. Yeah, they're really evil. We are so lucky. It's so funny. This is one of the things that drives me crazy about Hassan. If we just had kings, Adam. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, that drives me insane too. We just had kings. Okay. We just had someone with a, a, amazing power to do whatever they wanted. Yeah. That will work out well. Yeah. We fine. Look, we are so sheltered from what other people in the world deal with. <laughs> We, I it's know. just they don't realize this they don't realize this imagine the president of iraq's kids come and like abduct you or your family your wife your daughter whatever and just like turn them into a sex slave for their own pleasure oh my god and then yep. everybody there's like no recourse whatsoever everyone just tells you oh that's just the way it is suck it up get over it <laughs> Uh, so horrible, horrible. Yeah. The perpetrators. Okay. We know who did it. It's fucking ridiculous. You mean to tell me that the Gaza Strip is the most surveilled place on the fucking planet. Okay. The most surveilled place on the fucking planet. And you just happen to kill all of these little babies in Palestine and in, in the Gaza Strip, like on accident, like a oopsie, but then you have to you have to say, no, it's actually a human shield. Look, now he's saying, look, they really could have avoided killing. There's no such thing as collateral damage in the Gaza Strip. <laughs> this is insane, Sitch. <laughs> you can't find where the people are that perpetrated this act of terror and like uh, do, do some kind of targeted strike? No, you can't. You don't want to do that because that's not the goal. You want Hamas to exist. This guy is such a piece of shit. Such I can't did, take this. Did, did you know that? They that they want Hamas to exist. Hamas is is building Hamas makes their their bases among civilians. So they're but less see, likely to get hit. Th that's but see, this is how Hassan in his fucked up head justifies his position of Israel evil because he now he's tied into his worldview. So he feels more comfortable about his righteous anger and righteous indignation is this idea that, well, Israel secretly. What happened? Be happy cut out for, about it. You cut out for a second there. Repeat the last thing that you said. That Hassan's position in order to justify his kind of like fucked up worldview is that he's now adopted this idea that Israel secretly is super stoked about Hamas existing and is super happy about Hamas, you know, going into its, you know, going into Israel and just like brutally murdering a bunch of right. people. Cause this is what they wanted to do. So Cause this is what Israel wants. This is such a giant headache for Israel. Yeah. I think Israel would have much rather Hamas put the sign up 500 days since the last terrorist attack and counting. I think yeah. that's what Israel wanted. No, you're wrong. <laughs> you don't understand it. The Israeli government and the Israeli people are all evil genocidal maniacs who just want any excuse to wipe out all the Palestinians. And so this is just a good excuse for them to do it. I think Israel and the world would love a peaceful Gaza and a peaceful West Bank so that they could donate money to build up a killer pad over there, make it as nice as Israel. I think that's what the world wants. Is that what you think? Yeah, really? I think the people you, you standing think, in the way are these you think fucking Israel insane would be Hamas happier. Pikers. You think Israel would be happier if they had like a neighbor who didn't want to fucking kill them and they could have like normal trade relations with yeah. And not have conflict with why why would you think such a why would you think such a thing, you naive liberal? Why would you believe something so silly? Obviously, Israel wants to live next to a massive security threat at all times. <laughs> like I mean, that's just so obvious. It's so obvious that's what Israel wants. No, they want to live next to a place that's nice with happy people who can, you know, live happy lives and live in peace. Get a little trade going. 
maybe do a Israeli Palestine film festival once a year or something? No. <laughs> Why they not? want to live next to a violent uh, security threat. Look, they could do ski ball together. Build a big arcade. All the all the kids hang out in the summertime at night. No. They could have a surf competition. Don't no, they have a security beach over threat. There? You're just you don't understand anything. Listen, Look, trust I'm me, I you. understand everything about how like governance and countries function. Okay. You want to live next to a violent, psychotic, uh, you know, failed you, terrorist look, state that wants to destroy you. That's like that's you what every country's nice, dream. You get a nice big sign and some yeah. some paints. Five hundred days since the last terrorist attack. Six hundred days. A thousand days. Mm -hmm. Fifteen hundred days. That that sign is going to be worth so much money. That sign is going to bring peace in the Middle East. That's what you need. That's what you need. Right. Trust takes time to build. It does. It does. True. But look, you know what's standing in the way of that sign? Hamas Piker. <laughs> Hamas Piker is standing in the way of that sign. Yeah. Hamas and all of the Hamas simps all over the world, the, the, the Harvards of the world are standing yep. in the way of that sign. Yep. All of them are saying, look, Hamas can't do it because Israel, the mean Israelis have a gun to Hamas's head. Yep. Because they live in delusional land. What's stopping, look, what's stopping the Palestinian people from, from erecting that sign? Hamas, because they're going to show up and say, hey, take that sign down, bitch, or I'm going to shoot you. Yep. Well, they're just going to shoot a rocket, so they're going to ruin the sign anyway. But <laughs> You're right. Doesn't matter. Yeah, they don't even need to take Can down you the imagine? Sign. They're like, oh, Can yeah, leave that sign up. The... Here, keep, keep score. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I want that zero always there. <laughs> oh, you're right. It's pitiful. Anyway, back to Hassan. Hamas Anabi simping. So you can justify the ethnic cleansing campaign. And to be fair, that is what, you know, Netanyahu has openly mentioned time and time again. It's not like it's, you know, it's a, it's a gift. And a <laughs> Where's that clip, Sitch? Where's the clip of Netanyahu talking about ethnic cleansing? So... I, I, I Googled this. The only thing I could find was there's a, in 2016, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu said mm -hmm. that the Palestinians would only be happy ethnically cleansing uh, the Israelis away. And people got very mad at him for saying that because he was saying it kind of in relation to settler violence. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find a clip of him saying that he was in favor of that. So I, I don't know what the fuck Kassan is referring to here. I you still mean think he's that he's lying. Is, no, I don't think he's lying. I think he's confusing Benjamin Netanyahu with Kanye Net and Yahoo. Oh yeah. On the Alex Jones show, who probably did say something to that effect. Oh yeah, he said a bunch of stuff. Way right. worse than that. Yeah. He was fully in favor of ethnic cleansing. He wanted to start with his Jewish attorney, I believe. There you go. Terrible, terrible person. Genocidal attack on a, a genocidal attack on Gaza. No, no, you, you, it's you're not talking a genocidal where are they attack supposed to go when you're where are they supposed to terrorists. Go? Well, this is like Warsaw, 1943. Where do they go? Where do they go? Yes. Let me tell you where they go. Do they where go to the UN? UN, UN is keeping from Gaza them. to they Geneva. Go, they go to no, no, no. The UN has places in Gaza. They go to the eleven crossing. UN people have they, been killed they, in the last few they days. Go, they go to Egypt. They go. Egypt had to wait a minute. Get out. Let Come me on, make brother. another thing clear. No, no, Gaza no, no. City is very dense, Absolutely. but Gaza it itself, dense. the Gaza Strip, there's lots of room. The Israelis have said, "Get out of Gaza City. Go to Rafah. Go to." Uh, uh, Khan Yunus, go to other places. And you know what Hamas With is no saying? With no water, no Wait food, a minute. no electricity. You know what Hamas is dark? saying? Hamas is saying, don't go. Oh, I'm, I'm not don't here to defend go. Hamas. So, so I do think this is some cope coming from Alan Dershowitz here. Because it's like, oh, okay. there's this idea. Well, it, well, it's true that Israel's like, listen, go evacuate. It's like, okay, great. So you have to leave your home to be destroyed and i'm not you know it's like okay i i get it they're going after hamas but this idea that like there isn't going to be just a crap ton of civilians that die regardless of what you do regardless of how they all evacuate correctly or not i mean obviously there's just going to be a ton of 
innocent civilians that die from this campaign. Yeah, this um, is fucked up beyond belief. Obviously. And it's it's yeah. right. And it's just like, and I get it, and it's super fucked up. Um, but the the issue is that no one like Alan Dershowitz and a lot of people just don't want to accept like the fucked up reality of the situation, which is what I said earlier in the stream. The fucked up reality of the situation is that a country is going to protect its citizens first and foremost at, you know, at the expense of other countries. And, you know, if another country has a terrorist organization or a terrorist organization that's acting as its de facto government, which Hamas is acting as its de facto government and, and Gaza, and they commit some fucking horrible attack on your country, your country is going to respond and lots of innocent people will die. And I don't want to sound glib about it, but like, that's just the reality. I don't, there's no other way around that essentially. And, you know, I get it. But I kind of don't like when people are like, oh, well, listen, they can all just leave and go to some magical safe area where they won't get killed. That's like, uh, that's not a thing. <laughs> that's not yeah, that's like people can bullshit. leave, you know, and, and Israel is not just indiscriminately, you know, wiping everyone out, which they could do. But it's still shit tons of innocent people will die from this uh, situation. Dershowitz is trying to claim likewise, like they can all just go hang out in Egypt or something. Wait, Egypt doesn't want Egypt. That's Egypt. No, I, look, they trust, sealed up the border. Yeah. They got no yeah. place to go. Look, Egypt we're, doesn't want them. They don't trust them. We're either. realists about this. We're not right. Yeah, no, exactly what you said is it, is the yeah. situation. There's no no place for them to go. The poorest, I mean, the people with resources are filling up the hotels in Tel Aviv and stuff. So, I mean, the poor people are the ones that suffer most in wars. Well, I mean, I, I don't even, it, it doesn't matter if you have resources because you can't leave, you can't leave the country unless oh, really? you have no some one... like, s like sketchy way of getting out. So no possibility. Look, I feel like if there's rich people so. in there, they're getting out. I mean, there could be some core, I'm sure people are trying to sneak out and there could be some corridors of that, but I'm saying it's like not a, to my understanding, it's not like a normal, you know, channel for escape, right? I don't know if there's some, you know, UN has provided access point, uh, you know, through Egypt to some UN set up thing. I, I mean, I don't know if anything like that is existing or occurring. So, I mean, it's a, mm. it's a horribly fucked up situation. So, and, but people don't want to accept it and they kind of want to have like a, a one-sided, like a bright and cheery approach to it. Like, oh, listen, it'll be fine. They can all evacuate. It's like, mm, no, but. You know, it is what it is. So you are oh, I'm not defending him. Oh. Yeah, dude. It's like, okay, well, if you know that, why don't you just stop bombing? Like, okay, do a ground invasion. But you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that because you don't want to lose IDF lives. You want to keep fucking lobbing missiles at babies from hundreds of miles away. Okay? That's it. That's it. It's fucking bullshit. Well, I mean, this is, I mean, it's kind of a retarded point because number one, like to act like a ground invasion is not going to cause a shit ton of like in the uh, civilian casualties on both sides, right? Is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I guess it wouldn't cause Israeli civilians because it'll be um, Israeli military forces, but there's still going to be a shit ton of, of civilians that, that get killed in a ground invasion. There's still going to be lots of gunfire. There's still going to be lots of explosions, right? Everywhere, number one. Number two, is it, and this is like the weird and the fucked up moral quandary of war in the situation that they don't that people don't really want to grapple with or they don't want to grapple like everyone acknowledges this but they don't want to acknowledge it and talk about it openly which i understand and maybe it's a good thing that we don't talk about this openly um but i'll talk about it <laughs> i know which, i was gonna say look we're like... which is well which is the situation of like so you've just your your country you've just been attacked by like the worst uh terrorist attack on your country's existence um, you know, the brutal attack. Do you have a response? And then you're going to go attack the terrorist government organization of your neighboring country. Do you have a responsibility to risk the lives of your military to lower the civilian casualties of the country that has, you know, the uh, terrorist organization that's its government? Is that your moral responsibility to risk your own military's lives to protect that civilian population 
Do you want the answer? Yeah, what's the answer to that question? No. Because, if, I mean, that's the cold, hard, fucked up truth is the answer is no, you're not. Look, you're, no, you're, you're not going to do that. You'd be stupid to do that. Yeah. And then there's another aspect to this too, which Hassan completely doesn't think about or doesn't address, which is while this is going on, it's like, it's not like the situation could look very different if the rest of Israel's borders were secure and safe, but they're not. They're worried about Hezbollah attacking them. Yeah, they're worried they, about look, Iran attacking them. They already right? got in trouble because the lines were too thin. Like they're, they're exactly getting, they're conscripting people to get people on those lines. Right. Because so you think if, they want to lose half their military going into Gaza on some crazy suicide mission? Hell no. Yeah, because because two things as as we were saying. So say they they commit massive troop deployment to go into Gaza. Okay. Shit tons of Israelis are going to die. Of Israeli military forces will die from that engagement, obviously, um, which is then going to hurt their ability to protect their country going forward in the future, number one. But even not in the future, just at that moment, if there's a bunch of military troops that go into Gaza, then they're kind of, then they have to be afraid that they're going to get attacked from their other borders. From yeah. other countries or other terrorist yeah. organizations in those countries. Syria, Jordan, Egypt. Well, Jordan's probably going to attack them or Egypt. But like they have to worry about Lebanon. They have to worry about Iran and things of that nature, um, you know, uh, coming in and terrorist organizations coming in or, or even their governments coming in and attacking them. Who the fuck knows what could happen? And so the idea that like this idea that Hassan is saying is just so dumb. He's just not conceiving how any of this actually works. The moral questions, the logistical questions. Republicans, as you, yeah, but go ahead. No, I'm, I'm done. Republicans want to ban Palestinian refugees from entering the U.S., but it's yeah. already very hard for them to get in. Uh, NBC News. I'm just, I'm trying to look at because you made a claim that they can't. I'm not sure they can really get leave out the country, of Pal yeah. Palestine. Yeah. I thought I saw a headline saying that there were Palestinians filling up in Tel Aviv hotels, mm -hmm. that all the hotels in Tel Aviv were Yeah, full but of. were those, but where are they from? I don't think they're from the, I don't think they're from Gaza. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know the situation. Look, people, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Israelis have family members in Gaza. I don't know the situation. You know? Mm-hmm. Maybe you go out one night in a border town and you fall in love. Yeah, I mean, because there's some article about even there was some Palestinian Americans that have dual citizenship. They were talking about how difficult it was for them to leave the country. Yeah. So, I mean, Egypt, I'm sure it's Egypt, very difficult. CBS News, Egypt not allowing Gaza refugees into the country. I, yeah. I knew that. Yeah. Like there's a, a small border at the edge of the country that they share with Egypt. And Egypt sealed it up, like basically. Now nah, you guys are staying. How but... come? How come Hassan is not flipping out on Egypt? Right? I mean, shouldn't Egypt be Look, working with the UN to set up some kind of refugee camp for all the fleeing refugees of the crisis? Of course they should. Shouldn't they be absorbing? I mean, Hassan and all these other leftists talk about how racist the. Uh, European countries are and the Republican countries are and yeah. the Republican uh, party is for not wanting immigration and immigration from the Middle East. How come they're not criticizing all the surrounding Arab countries for Excellent not, question. you know, taking in a bunch of these refugees and helping them? It's just, it's Perf so weird. The <laughs> deafening fucking silence from all these leftist communist dipshits for some reason, when it's not white people, Right oh, when yeah. white people aren't to blame, suddenly there's just I there's no I just quiet. There's no criticism. It's so strange how that works, isn't it? Well, first you made my point exactly. Egypt is they perceive as a bunch of brown people. So if they want to seal their border, <laughs> totally fine. If, yeah, yeah, totally fine. The the simping for open borders comes to a complete halt. Yes. It's only white people that have to have open borders to the world, right? Right. right. Uh, so obvious. So only, only, obvious. yeah, only white people.
Only those evil white colonialists, because there's never been, no one ever was a colonialist except for, or had an empire except for white people, right? <laughs> it's so, <laughs> they're just all, they're just racist. Aren't they just all racist? They're I just feel very like they racist. Are. Yeah, it's very yeah. racist. Shit. Okay, you can't do that. You can't take it. You can't take it to the fucking people that are the perpetrators because you're cowardly. Okay, that's it. That's literally it. No, look, they're just cowards. The, the yeah, listen, because uh, Israel doesn't want to have massive casualties on its yeah. side, right? To to try to protect the civilian population of the of the group of people whose terrorist government attacked them, they're cowards. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, son. That's they don't good. want to cut their military population in half and leave right. the borders totally unprotected. Yeah. <laughs> They're no. the cowards. They're cowards. Okay. I got you. And it's not even cowardice. At uh, actually, it's malice. It's like oh, it's it's bloodthirst because oh. the goal isn't to necessarily uh, uh, to to you know uh, to to cut the fucking head of the snake per se. Not. It's the continuation of the radicalization of a Palestinian people that have been endlessly bombed and destroyed and, and, and humiliated. Wait a minute. Okay. So how the fuck? I want to be super fucking clear here. Okay. How the fuck does Alex Jones get, get completely canceled? Oh, I know. From every know. single platform. Because he was saying despicable things about how Sandy Hook was like some kind of false flag or some kind of conspiracy. Spreading misinformation, right? yeah. Right. But Hassan fucking Piker not right. only says that America deserved 9-11, okay, but now is pushing the conspiracy theory that the Israeli government is intentionally bombing uh, the Gaza Strip in yeah. order to further radicalize the population in order to further justify more violence against them. He can promote this batshit crazy conspiracy theory to his audience of impressionable young dumb fuck children. And no one gives a fuck. No yeah. one cares. Silence. A deafening silence. And he says this shit every day. He says this crazy, insane, psychopathic propaganda shit every fucking day. And no one on Twitch gives a fuck. He even calls it propaganda. Like he's open yes. about it. Yes. Yeah. This is insane shit. Look, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> just... And then you, yeah. you wonder why his chat is like so fucking crazy radicalized. Yeah. About this stuff. Why when he was looking through his chat, like there's like just waves and like the video I was looking at that I made the, the compilation of just waves of like from the river to the sea, like every five seconds, just popping up. Really? Okay. Yeah. Oh, Waves man. of that shit, which is a, which is saying that you know all the Jews should be yeah. removed from Israel. Like yeah. obviously, that is you're true gonna, genocidal talk. There. Yes. Obviously, you're going to radicalize your audience when you create this hyperbolic, insane narrative that one side is just a bunch of fucking evil psychopaths that are intent. Like, like the Palestinians are so devoid of responsibility and agency. That now Hassan has constructed this fucking conspiracy that Israel intentionally wants them to be radicalized. That's how much, listen, Adam, that's how much the fucking Israelis deserve to be butchered on October 7th. It's because the Israeli government wants, even after that event, still they further want the Palestinians in Gaza to be further radicalized. This is insane. Yeah. It's all a pack of lies, but I mean, I, if you do believe these lies that Hassan is saying, it's impossible not to believe that Israel is to blame for all of this. That's what yeah. this pack of lies is designed of to course. do. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, that's what this is. That's the point of all this. It's all Israel's fault. Everything's Israel's fault. I don't listen. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how the fuck. I think Ethan Klein is. An immoral person for having a show with Hassan. Because he's platforming this? How he's do you know he's not this trying? fucking piece of shit. Yeah, but how do you know he's not trying to change him through through subtle I don't think he mind is. manipulation? I don't fucking think he is. <laughs> really? 
It's not working. You don't think he's making it's not working strides behind the scenes. He's you not Daryl Davis saying Hassan. Okay, it's not working. Well, no, that's what I. Yeah, no, that's yeah. exactly what I'm saying. Daryl Davis it. saying him. It's that's not working. Good... It's not fucking working. Okay, this well, is it's psychotic. not working now. But look, this is an incremental. This is first. A you get him to stop saying thing. the open air prison thing. Yeah. First, you got to get that. Like that's chief number one. Stop saying that. It's not true, Hassan. It's not true. And if it is an open air prison, it's a prison of Hamas. Hamas has created the prison. Right. Look, as soon as the sign goes up 500 days since the last terrorist attack, the prison thing starts wearing off. The people standing in the way of that sign are Hamas. I know. Yeah. They're the ones that keep the zero going up every day. Yeah, it's just, look. I don't know. Look, we're you and I are proposing tangible solutions here that could actually it's work. It's the only but... fucking solution. The only solution. The power is in Hamas's court if they actually True. wanted to have something good, but they don't obviously. So True. You know. Um so someone I think Zero Fuck sent me on Twitter uh Nebula kicked second thought off their platform. You're kidding me. So, wow. which doesn't surprise me. I was actually, I was curious. Wow. I was very curious about that because, you know, so when I would they... look at, I wouldn't want him anywhere near my brand. Let's be yeah. honest here. That guy's insane. I mean, I'm, I'm shocked if they didn't get a strike uh, from YouTube or even like in trouble from down? YouTube for that. But yeah, because that's why they took down that video. That video was a massive violation of TOS. That video, we never guys... posted our video. Why didn't we need to post our video of that? What do you mean? We did post the video. No, we didn't. I mean, we did the live stream, but we never clipped out the video. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, well, let's do that. We'll do it after We did. This. We did. We um, On the Tuesday stream, we watched that with P Pisco, Destiny Orbiter, famous Destiny Orbiter, and mm -hmm. IRI. And uh, Clip they it, were actually, CT. <laughs> yeah, they were actually, I mean, kind of based and true on watching Second Thought be a fucking moron. Even to the point that I, I or I, I'm really important. I think he calls himself, but he's super progressive. And obviously, we bring him on to argue with him. So he, like, he basically was not even willing to admit these leftists that are simping for fucking terrorists. That they're on the left. He's like, no, this is just like some weird thing. <laughs> remember that? <laughs> I do remember that, yeah. Yeah, Clip he was it, in CT. full he we'll was in full it. denial. He was in right. full denial mode. Yeah. Be an easy thing to clip. Yeah. But yeah, no, definitely upload that. Cause I mean, that stream was psychotic. I glad I downloaded it because I knew I had a feeling yeah. that they were going to delete it because what they were saying was so incendiary. If you didn't listen to it, essentially second thought. And his co-host Hakeem and I forget the other guy uh, were literally praising the attack. On they October said it was 7th. based. They How said it was fucked based. up. Is that? Yep, they are praising it. And second thought said that there's no such thing as civilians in Israel. Essentially justifying any sort of horrific treatment against any Israeli because they're not civilians. They're all just colonial settlers. So it was some insanely despicable, reprehensible things. And oh, and in the stream that they said all this fucked up shit, you know who was there? You know who was there in chat? Who was in the chat? Hassan Guess who was Piker in the chat? was in the fucking chat. Hamas Piker. Hamas Piker was in the chat, raising their viewership. They actually are like, oh, we have higher viewers than we've ever had before on the stream that we're about to say the most fucking craziest shit ever about how we're praising Hamas for brutally murdering Israeli civilians. And thank you, Ham thank you, Hassan, for being in our chat and raising our viewership numbers. Like, this is fucking psychotic. And has Hassan got any blowback for that? Has he got any responsibility for his actions for helping platform? Because he's talked to these people. He's friends with these people. He's watched much of their videos. Has he got any fucking responsibility for helping platform and grow the channel of this fucking psychopath who you now tell me is simping for authoritarianism on his main channel? He literally has a video. What's wrong with authoritarianism? He's such a... It's, it's mental. Fucking, we have some fucking... Oh, my God. It's mental. He tries to make a case for why 
why America is authoritarian and China isn't. <laughs> and in their, in their latest stream, I didn't watch the whole thing. It's funny. So they had two streams since then. They don't talk about Israel, right? Even though that's what's mm -hmm. obviously going on. Um, but they do talk about, they were talking about like the cracker discourse and uh, Hakeem was talking, or the other guy, I don't remember, one of them was talking about how it should be, he was laughing when he was saying it, but it was like kind of those like, I'm laughing, but am I joking about how like they should bring back the white genocide or do the no white genocide. Way. No I'm serious. Way. I'm so wow. serious. They were just laughing about and saying, yes, we should kill white people. I'm just, and, and second thought is, how is, is there like a fucking sitting idiot? there? Because he's a fucking idiot. I don't know. Because he's a, how wow. the fuck is this piece of shit who, you know, I don't know what the fuck his background is. He's obviously wealthy. He's rich as fuck. You know? I yeah, mean, geez, it's so obvious. Second channel where he's fucking driving luxury cars and he's all like, I'm a fucking socialist who's in favor of Hamas killing civilians. Like, like look at his set. Look, yeah, he's, he's obviously got a yeah. set that's the size of a fucking gymnasium. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, a giant set. Very well lit. He has a great camera. He's super into all the, you know, camera equipment, all this stuff. He's obviously doing very well for himself. So it's the know, communist he's, he's a, revolutionaries are not going to like that. He's a despicable. I mean, second thought is like literally a despicable human being. He's a horrible, horrible person. So tell us how you it, really feel. It, it, it sickens me that he exists on YouTube. I do think he well, should be removed on YouTube for, the, for that stream. That's what everyone else. Everyone I, always praises us on our content and is amazed that we have so few subscribers on our channel. We we do have really really good consistent viewership, which I'm always super yeah. thankful for. And obviously, we have a lot of people who give us big super chats, which keeps us alive. So, but um, Hassan, like second thought, his channel's enormous, and it's because Hassan Piker, like every time a new video comes out, Hassan Piker watches it on his stream. So, yep. A guy who's this literally is how these, simping for terrorism and, and killings and rape. Yeah. A lot of people want to blame like the YouTube algorithm, but I don't necessarily think it is the YouTube algorithm. I think it's these commies. They like all simp for one another. I, I think it's both. I, I think they're, I mean, if they're, it's so funny because they all were whining. All these fucking pieces of shit were whining about the alt right pipeline. And yet mm -hmm. there's a bread tube socialist scumbag pipeline that exists a hundred percent. You start watching <laughs> some of this like leftist, exactly. you know, garbage content, right? You're going to get shuttled down, you know, the leftist garbage pipeline. You know, you're going to, if you start watching Sam Cedar yeah. or even if you start watching, I, I would bet, even if you watch like Pac-Man or someone who's not so, you know, not a leftist, um, right. but it's progressive, you know, it's, it's, there's a fucking socialist scumbag pipeline that exists. And second thought, is there on the pipeline. And he's one of the he most is. fucking psychopathic, authoritarian, murderous, simping people there. And no one, and people don't realize it because he says it in this calm, fucking crazy voice because he's like a total psychopath. Yeah. This pipeline leads. Next thing you know, you're yeah. being openly anti Semitic on the Harvard campus and everyone's yeah. cheering you. <laughs> it's like patting you on the back. And his son is this doing this fucking a... guy up. Okay. Can you imagine yeah. if like, I don't know, could you imagine if like Ben Shapiro or Steven Crowder or some like big right wing content creator was like super chummy with, with Nick Fuentes, Nick and Fuentes sharing, yeah, you know, not in a million and, years. Yeah. Or something to that, you know, some, someone who's like advocating for fucking genocide or something. I mean, what he said was even crazier, I think, than anything Nick has said directly. Cause Nick always tries to, you know, hide his fucking oh, like yeah. crazy shit with like you know some level of plausible deniability yeah like i mean i could be wrong i wouldn't be surprised if nick fuentes looked at like some mass shooting you know and, and said oh that was based right like i wouldn't be surprised if he said something like that it's just it's just Maybe. insane to me it's insane second thought should be a pariah on the level of nick fuentes for what he for what he said for not just him him hakeem the other guy on the stream for what they said on that it was just so fucking psychotic. Well, you and said Hassan they got, should be fucking. They lost, what? They lost the Nebula thing. So I mean, that's yeah. some justification, right? That, yeah, it's something. It's something. But he should be known in the YouTube commit in the YouTube community as the guy who praised Hamas 
killing and raping and torturing and kidnapping Israelis. That's they made who he is. They made excuses for the raping, the rapists in the live stream that we listened to. It was yeah. fucking disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. None of these people give a fuck about any of the things that they stand for. No one in the, not a single person, if you're in the leftist bread tube community and you don't call Second Thought and Hakeem and whoever the fuck the other guy's name is, if you don't call them scumbags and you don't, if you don't even call them for them to be canceled, because I know you fucking leftists are so horny to fucking cancel people. If you don't call for those pieces of shit to be canceled, if you don't call for them to just like to be removed from the leftist space, you're a fucking piece of shit who doesn't believe in a single fucking thing you say. And you're just a racist scumbag. Because they are for, so for cancel culture on all the other fronts. Yes. You're in cancel culture for literally everyone, but the people literally praising murder terrorists yeah. and rape and terrorism okay how fucked is that how totally didn't fucked the guy is that? look i remember being super shocked by a bunch of things that that guy was saying on the live stream i think he was like playing a video game and didn't he say like he was gonna go kill his old boss or something when the no so, uh, so the other guy was making a joke that he wishes there was some kind of like revolution in america so he could fly back to america from where I don't know where he lives now. He could fly back to America and go murder his old boss. Yeah. If there was just like a random revolution. Well, I wasn't too America. far off. Yeah. And he's I laughing. Mean, that's kind of weird. Right. Just, Look, know. I've had some bad bosses, but none that I want to like fly to go murder. I know. That's anyway, a little insane. Let's continue. Clip it, CT. <laughs> you don't give a shit about anything. Clip what? What are you talking about? <laughs> he fucking there's going nothing. off on second stuff. There's nothing. <laughs> oh, okay. What do you mean? That's yeah, a great well, club. That was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Who commits war crimes are barbaric. I, I'm saying that explicitly, but I, I want I, you I, to say if the Israeli defense forces are killing children, no, no. are they? Oh, look. <laughs> Hassan is leaving. He's leaving, yeah. He's got to go. Where's he going? I don't know. Who knows? Look, Get some nuggies. I'm, actu I'm actually glad he's taking a nuggy break. Yeah. Because I'm interested in this clip and he's pausing way too much. Here. Right. It's worse than me. Ross, because you don't give a shit about anything. Who commits yeah, war crimes are barbaric. I, I'm saying that explicitly, but I, I want I, you I, to say if the Israeli defense forces are killing children, no, no. are they barbaric too? No, no. Are they, no, are they ever no, barbaric? No, no, no. If they target, no. if they target children. Yes. Uh, have they ever targeted no, children? No, absolutely. Never, ever, never, in, in, never in, in, in the in history years. Years. have they ever targeted oh, brother, a child. You've got to get off the crack pipe, and, man. And, Oh my God. He calls, him a, he calls him a crack smoker. Wow. Bird LOS called Alan Dursowich the crack smoker. That's hilarious. You got to get off the crack pipe, brother. That is pretty fucking No, no, they Please. never you don't think they kill one they innocent not person. Not purposely. To no. 1948? No, not, not Are purposely. they that pure? Are they that You don't pristine? have to be very pure on, not to kill Please. a child. Not to kill oh. a child. Let me, let me. <laughs> they don't want to. This is insane. <laughs> That's a great debate. Yeah, it's a great debate. <laughs> Kill five hundred and fifty. Let me. Well, let me it, it's, it's a be. You know, for my two cents on on what they're yelling about here. Um, mm -hmm. I think it is pretty safe to say that the Israeli government has never intentionally signed off on killing children. Right. Yeah. I think that's yeah. a pretty safe bet. Yeah. I mean, a lot of a lot of democracies have prohibitions on just assassinating bad people. Yeah, yeah. much less babies. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Okay, they don't go I after hate. political targets; they go after military targets. Yeah, because there they're was, being used as human. I, I saw a tweet. I didn't. I don't know if it was turned out to be true or not. Um, and then I saw a report on it, but again, I didn't do a deep dive. It was, it was really mm -hmm. horrific. That said, they found some corpses. Because they found a bunch of corpses that were burned, right. and they found some corpses that they think that it was like a parent and a child were like tied together with metal and then burned, and they don't uh, burned alive or something uh, fucking horrific. So, you know, I, I don't think the Israeli government has ever said, "Hey, let's like go tie a child and and mother together and burn them alive." You know? I mean, what I think would be the purpose bet. of that? Yeah. To be a psychopathic monster would be the purpose. Yeah. Of that. yeah. Ouch. Shields, let me show something. We we show on this. Yeah, this is a ridiculous fucking conversation to have. I'm sorry. 
And not going to lie, it's a, it's a little disappointing to hear Cornell West not be able to turn around and be like in 2018 when there was a peaceful march to return. The, the IDF snipers very deliberately and very purposely fucking targeted children that they shot, at which the IDF openly stated uh, they knew exactly who the fuck they were shooting at. Every single bullet was accounted for. That alone is enough to just like end that conversation. Okay. So I looked into, well, he's kind of vague here. So I tried to find here's whatever. Your, here's he your thing. Here's yes. your thing. He loves to bring this up. Right. He always brings this up. This is why Hassan is so full of shit because he just, he has some one-sided narrative about everything and he just preaches this like it's gospel to his audience and his gospel just his right. audience just picks it up um so i kind of like i was trying to find whatever he was talking about because he's kind of vague here there was an incident that people were talking about where um i think that they were like 16 or something some underage kids or an underage kid was shot uh by an idf uh guard sniper we can call it sniper or sniper guard. Okay. Um, and essentially what was going on, what Hassan is leaving out of the situation, was there was a group of four people, uh, some were underage mm -hmm. and some were not, where they had crawled over to... So there's like a barbed wire fence, and then the, beyond that is like the no man zone, and then there's another fence, and then, then there's the Israel, then you're in Israel. Right. Okay. And so essentially there's a group of like four people who crawled up to the barbed wire part. And it's just like, it's just like a barbed wire thing on, you know, you saw the pictures of like how on the American border, there's just like that, like barbed wire. Razor wire on the ground. Yeah. Razor wire on the ground. Yeah. It's like that. And Israel says, if you approach that, they're going to fucking shoot you. Right. They say this. Everyone so knows. So were they in the neutral zone or they were in the Palestinian? There is area? no neutral zone. <laughs> okay. Okay. So so where they're at, Palestinian, the border butts right up against Israel. Yeah. There's they're, razor they're, wire on the ground, and that's right. How they're you at get the, into Israel. They're at the razor wire zone. Okay. Right. They crawl over to the razor wire zone. One of them starts a fire on the razor wire. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so and the Israeli government says they're doing this because they're creating smoke to obscure so you can't see what they're doing to the razor wire, what they're doing to the fence. Right. Okay. And so while one of them starts a fire in front of the razor wire to create smoke, the other one's trying to pull the razor wire down and dismantle the gate. Mm -hmm. And so they get fucking shot. Right. What a surprise. You go up to the fence where they say, don't go up to the fence or we'll shoot you and try to tear it down. And then they get shot. And then Hassan goes to his audience and says, oh, my God. They assassinated a child. And it's like, listen, play stupid games, win stupid fucking prizes. I don't care how fucking old you are. You don't go up to the fence where they tell you they're going to shoot you and you try to tear it down and then you get shot and you act surprised that you got fucking shot. Yeah. Obviously, that's what's going to happen. Were they Hamas militants? I don't even I don't know. No, I don't think so. They were just Palestinian uh, people. In Gaza. Right. But this is, and this is the problem that he was, he'd bring up this right to return protest shit. They were peaceful. First of all, I wasn't trying to destroy a, a border fence is not a peaceful protest. Okay. Number one. Number two, it's, ins he, it's so insane to me how stupid. Okay. I feel I'm doing, you can't see it because I'm not a camera. I'm literally doing the invincible think Mark think meme. Okay. Mm -hmm. Accidentally. <laughs> okay. I'm doing this to Hassan. Think Hassan. Think. 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 Okay. <laughs> You're just covering now how Hamas uh, perpetuated the worst terrorist attack on Israel. I know they killed like 1,200 people. We're talking about right. four kids here. Right. No, no, no. That's not what I'm going to say. Okay. Okay. We're, we're just covering this. And people are saying, how did Israel allow this to happen? Because in order for Hamas to do this, you know what they had to do? They had to cross those fences, all those fences, right? Of so course. I want you to imagine a situation. Where so is Israel? You have a bunch of people protesting, and the and the bunch of people protesting, they start approaching the big fence that says, "If you approach this fence, you're going to fucking get shot," right? Right. And so when the people get to the fence, and then they get shot, what like what is Israel supposed to do? Are they supposed to not shoot you when you get to the fence that says they're going to shoot you when you get to the fence? 
Because if that they don't shoot, that would make shoot, it a bad thing. Because all of a sudden, people would realize, oh, we can just rush the fence. Oh, so then people realize they can just rush the fucking fence. So the fence doesn't mean anything, right? Right. So what happens when people tear down the fence because you can't shoot the people that get to the fence that they say they're going to shoot you? What happens when they tear down that fence and they make an opening? Yeah, they're going to come and kill a bunch of people. Hamas run through the opening in the fence. How do you know there's not Hamas people in the crowd waiting for the crowd to tear down the fence so they can run in and start fucking killing people just like what fucking happened on October 7th? And then you might say, but wait, Sitch, what are the odds that like there's a bunch of Hamas militants ready to go in this exact moment in the protest? And I say, okay, fair enough, right? So what if the protesters, they tear down the fence, right? And then they kind of don't know what to do. So they just kind of like mill around, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But what happens the next day? What happens the next day? Now that Hamas knows, hey, these people can tear down the fence and they don't get shot and and it's fine. Do you think they're going to tear down the fence and try to use that to send a bunch of people in to go commit fucking horrible murders and rapes like they just did? Obviously. Yeah. That's obviously what the fuck they're going to do, Hassan. You stupid idiot. So yes, when they have the fucking fence that says, don't pass this fucking point or we'll shoot you, don't fucking fuck with the fence. Okay? Because once yeah. people start fucking with the fence, once people start getting through the fence, you're going to have to shoot. Like, what is, and also from a utilitarian perspective, what's better? To shoot the one person at the fence or to let them tear down the fence and have to shoot 10, 20, 30, 40 people once they get through the fence and go on the other side. And the people start pouring in, right? Is it better to shoot one to prevent them from going through or should you wait for them to tear down the fence and have to shoot more people once they start pouring in? Which one of those is the better solution? The less people. Oh, okay. How am I doing? <laughs> Look, I, are you I ready would ready for wonder... me to piss 50% of the people off? In the audience? Our audience? Yeah. Don't do that. Come on. Focus Just on... <laughs> like January 6th <laughs> with Ashley Babbitt, Adam. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you had to go there. I had to go there. Oh, it's terrible. fun. I, I bet you. And I bring it up not just to trigger people in the audience. I can guarantee you that you can go back and you can find a clip of Hassan cheering on them shooting Ashley Babbitt. And and really? also argue, I can guarantee you, there's a clip of him cheering them on. I can guarantee you there's a clip of him saying it was 100% justified for the Capitol Police to shoot Ashley mm-hmm. Babbitt because that if she, they didn't, a bunch of people would start pouring through and the Capitol Police would have no clue what their intentions were, whether they were violent or not. I can fucking guarantee you that that clip exists. And for some I... reason... Don't you think? Agree. Yeah, right. I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure Hassan right argued now. that point. And for some reason, he'll say that with the January 6th protesters, but he won't say that with in Palestine on the West Bank, when there's obviously a much longer history of violent actions and violent threats than anything that happened on January 6th. Yeah. I feel bad for Ashley Babbitt. So do I. Yeah. She just still deserved to be shot, though. Well, maybe not deserve. Still justified to be shot. Yeah, fucked up situation. The, yeah, no, this is sick. I wonder if the, I wonder if Hamas put the kids up to doing the shit at the fence to kind of test out the theory that maybe they could burn it down and not get shot. Maybe. I mean, you wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure they have kids that are Hamas militants. Of course. They don't care about recruiting kids. Like sickos. That is one of many different instances where Israel has purposely targeted children. Alan Dershowitz's response in and of itself is already an admission that they target children. And it's just he has a description for it. Okay? The question to pose in this circle No, no, you stupid idiot. He said they didn't Israel doesn't just go around saying Look, there's a child, bang, bang. They're like, oh, look, there's a child trying to tear down the fence. And child, they're like, there's a 16-year-old who's trying to burn our fence down or tear it down. 
they're going to get shot, right? There's this, there's a, a Palestinian minor who's under the age of 18 who's committing some kind of crime, right? Or some kind of violent action. That's, and you're being a dishonest hack if you're going to compare that to there's literally a bunch of kids dancing at a festival and militants just run in and start shooting and raping them. And that's that's the comparison you are making, Hassan, right now. Yeah, it's horrible. But he's saying that they're not not to blame. They have look, they have to do it. They're in an open air prison fault. sitch. Right. Yeah, it's all it's all yeah. Israel's fault. Yeah. yeah. Circumstance is this. Both of these people are coming to the table with the recognition that yes, Israel has targeted children. Is it morally justifiable? Okay. And he thinks it's morally just and it's justifiable because these children are human shields. That's it. The problem is pro-Palestinian side doesn't have... You're not, look, you're not targeting the human shields, dumbass. Look. Yeah. You, you can't even call it targeting. It's not targeting. They would, they would not want to kill anyone, any of the collateral damage. Clever responders? No, that's, that's not true. There are plenty of incredibly thoughtful and incredible... Well, this is, you know, Sam Harris... Uh, made a point that kind of got repeated again, and it's a very true point about, you know, you can't, this doesn't absolve Israel from doing fucked up shit, obviously. And right. it annoys me that I have to keep saying this, because otherwise stupid people will interpret it in a stupid way. Um, but there's a, if you're going to pretend like there isn't some massive moral difference in the philosophy between the two sides, where, you know, Israel's position is, as you said, they don't want to kill children, right? If they had a magic bullet that they could fire that would just zip around and kill everyone in Hamas and hurt no innocent civilians, okay, they right. would shoot that They'd bullet. fire it immediately. Right. Hamas, on the other hand, wants to kill all Israelis. Right. They want every person dead. They are operating with the second thought uh, Hakim theory of logic that all the Israelis are not civilians and are all militant combatants, colonial settlers that should all be wiped out. And they'd be totally fine with that. And if, yep. and if you are not going to address the massive philosophical differences between these two uh, groups and not understand why some people, you know, look at that and say, well, this is why I'm more sympathetic to Israel because they have a philosophy that's not fucking insane. <laughs> Okay, or is at least aligned with our liberal Western philosophy, then you're kind of missing a big part of the picture here, Hassan. He's obfuscating part of the picture on purpose. That's the whole yes. goal. That's his whole goal. Well, it's because it's he's like, well, it's you know, it's, listen. Well, first of all, he thinks he doesn't. I bet he doesn't agree. He thinks Israel is intentionally wants to just wipe them all out, but can't because right. the blowback internationally would be too strong. Number right. one. And number two, the Palestinians and Hamas have no agency or responsibility for their actions because their material conditions are just too poor for them to have any free will, apparently. So, you know. Yeah. He thinks the Israeli soldiers are saying, oh, please grab the human shield. Grab the human shield. Yep. <laughs> incredibly smart individuals. Cornell West is an incredibly thoughtful and smart person himself. Is the human shields thing even substantiated? You cannot substantiate fascist propaganda. That is insane. What are you talking about? So now Hassan is so fucking stupid. He doesn't actually believe that Hamas uses human shields, even though it's like literally a fact that we all know is true. They will put <laughs> their weapons, they'll put their rocket launchers next to highly populated civilian areas. We all know this is a fact. They will literally have tactics. Well, they will have people pretend to be civilians and then go suicide bomb people. Okay. That was a very well-known tactic in the 2000s. So, wow. and that's done so that you don't know who the threat is, right? That's done so you don't know. And you have to worry about all the civilians. You have to worry about everyone. But Hassan is going to say, listen, that's all fascist. I don't know if you know this, but facts are fascist propaganda. Yeah. So there you go. Crazy. This is fascist propaganda. Brother, it's not substantiated. You want to know why? Because how the fuck can you substantiate that? Is there a morally permissible moment where you shoot through the fucking hostage in a hostage situation? No. Then that's... Okay, so now he's lying 
because he knows how stupid that what he just said was. He's changed the claim. No one's talking about the morality. So when someone says, is the human shield thing even substantiated? They're not asking you, is it morally justified to kill a human shield who's innocent to get at the bad guy? That's not what they asked you. They're asking you, is it true that Hamas uses human shields? And yet that's such a stupid fucking claim for him to try to pretend isn't true that now he's had to change the claim mid-sentence to try to regain some level of 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 authority on the subject matter. That's ridiculous. They don't even do it in fucking movies. The human shields argument is a way to like uh, to 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 engage in um what's the word abdication, like moral abdication to absolve yourself of of the immoral act of killing children. And it's, it's a lie that you tell yourself probably to feel more comfortable at night when you go to sleep. And it's a lie that you tell the rest of the world so they also fucking, I guess, believe it. And the only way that it would work, the only way that it would ever work is if your enemy is so perfectly and ritualistically dehumanized that nobody even thinks about them and it's considered an afterthought. And unfortunately, due to deliberate propaganda for years and years and years both uh, propaganda from the Israeli state, but also way more significantly than that, propaganda from the United States government in an effort. This is so fucking stupid because he's arguing that the America and Israel wants to dehumanize the Palestinians so much that nobody will care if they die. But then how are they effective human shields if that's the case? Yeah. That's like it's a, ridiculous. Right. Well, <laughs> like, it's like it doesn't that show you and, and Sam Harris brought this up in, in the conversation with Eric Weinstein on trigonometry, which was really an interesting conversation where he was saying the tactics of Hamas show you the philosophy that each side is operating with because very much so. So Hamas intentionally uses civilian human shields because they know that Israel doesn't want to kill civilians. Right. That's what makes them an effective shield. Right. Do you think that Israel would think it Uses... was a viable military <laughs> tactic to use Israeli citizens as human shields to deter Hamas attacks? No, because they'd want to, they'd be like, great, now I can kill two people. Oh, of course. <laughs> this is the fucking psychopaths that Hassan is simping for. Oh, isn't that yeah. wonderful? The people who literally don't even see human shields because that's just another fucking target for them. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. Look, and, and there he would argue that this conversation that we're having is an attempt to paint Palestinians as, like, reprehensible. But, I mean, we're just painting Hamas as reprehensible because they literally are. Yes, Look, anyone who engages in this behavior is reprehensible. We're going to so. watch a clip after this where Hassan is going to try intentionally. He is going to intentionally blur the lines between the Palestinians in Gaza and Hamas and say it's wrong to create a clear distinction between. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. This is how fucking stupid he is. This is how Look, psychotic only, he is. We can only have this conversation because... We're making the distinction perfectly clear. Yes. Yeah. Palestinians are to justify totally it, justif yeah. its endless blood and soil war on terror. We do not see Muslims, Arabs as human. We do not see. Fuck you. Who's the we? <laughs> Who the fuck is the we in this situation? Well, you see, he's talking about America. Ugh. Look, now he's a spokesperson for America here. Yeah. This guy is your spokesperson. How do you yeah. feel about that, Sitch? You're Ameri your spokesperson for America here. Listen, if uh, Hassan, if you don't view Middle Eastern people as human, mm -hmm. as you've said, I think you should leave my country. Yeah, okay? totally. I think you should leave my country. I don't like bigots in my country, Hassan. I think you should leave my country. Yeah. Go somewhere else. See them as human, Okay. Maybe we see them as neighbors sometimes, but we do not see them as human when they're overseas.
keep program disagreements last night. on this. What is it? It's, so, it's so ridiculous. It doesn't even Americans, make sense. Yeah. And Americans give so much to charities, overseas charities. Look, Americans are generosity up the wazoo. What the fuck is he even talking about? What about all the Americans that are fucking simping for Hamas right now? They look at all the, look at all the Americans that want to send aid to Ukraine and stuff. I mean, it's just yeah, but well, they're, they're white, not Middle so, Eastern. You know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I gotcha. I gotcha. To show Whoa. this audience, these are cartoons that are air in Gaza for young children that are taught to hate the Jewish people. You know, just just watch this for a second, and I'll have you both comment. Watch that. You know what's funny about this? Half the time, this is like also a completely fucking uh, uh, mistranslated nonsense. Okay, brother, let's say this is real. This is 100% real. This is like what they're teaching children, okay? Are you trying to find a justification for murdering the kids now? Is that what you're saying? Is it, if I find uh, Israeli... Oh my God. He's so stupid. So you like this, right? This is so fucking painful. Yeah. This is so dishonest. What, look, what American watches this cartoon of children being indoctrinated to hate Jewish people and thinks, oh, yeah, we got to go kill those kids. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Right. Who? <laughs> like, yeah. That's the argument he just made. Such. That's the argument he just made, yeah. Right. <laughs> Who does that? Crazy. Look, the the proper response and the response I'm sure, you know, obviously 5% of people are psychopaths. So they were probably thinking, yeah, we should probably just kill the children. But the other 95% of people are thinking, oh, that's awful. Those poor kids are being indoctrinated with hate. Mm -hmm. We should stop the people indoctrinating them. Right? Exactly. Yeah. TV shows where they're fucking dehumanizing Arabs, then is the is the Hamas justification uh, fine then? Like, is that the argument here? It's like po me pointing to the, the um, it's like me pointing to that, that settler guy on TikTok who's making fun of uh, Palestinians who don't have fucking water and being like, this is why it's fine to kill I Israeli citizens. It's not. That is an insane argument to make. The only way that that works, the only way that this argument works, okay, is if you do not, you do not think that those children are are human beings. Like you don't think that they're human. You think that they're something different. This is, Dude, this is so, what they're telling. He's so fucking stupid. He's yeah, so it's stupid. It's made up this insane straw man that no one has ever fucking said. It's so stupid. Yeah. Everyone is. Everyone knows children are innocent. Yeah. They they're feel looking sorry at for it, the children. Right. Yeah. They're looking at it and they're saying, this is the culture and the philosophy of violence that Hamas is basically using to indoctrinate children into growing up to become terrorists and why we have to stop Hamas. Okay. I know it's right. very complicated yeah. for you, Hassan, but that is what's happening there. Yeah. Okay. We have a different idea. We're like, how about we teach these kids about lgbt acceptance <laughs> yeah there right? you go right yeah telling kids in gaza the people that want prager you teaching five-year-olds yeah exactly i guess we can just do a permanent first world genocide jd pond style because like you know in america they're watching fucking prager you videos and shit <laughs> What are these subtitles? I'm not reading. Uh, so, song. okay, well, basically. Jihadi cartoon, okay. There's, a, there's an Look, Israeli I got, soldier. I got uh, morals. Right, he's got, there's an Israeli soldier in a tank. He's got a skull on his hat. And a, a brave Palestinian girl has thrown a tiny rock against the tank. And so okay. now the evil Israeli soldier is is aiming his gun at her. Right. It's a okay. pretty big gun. Right. It's a giant sight. Right. Wait. He aimed at her. Uh-oh. Okay, okay this is not even propaganda. This is like literally what happened. Okay, wait. I'm so I thought they were going to have something better than this. So there you go. Hassan's saying that this 
horrible propaganda. That's just what it really is. That's just reality. A, a little yeah. girl th threw a rock at a tank. Yeah, and so they just shot her. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's evil. That's just how it is. This isn't propaganda. Hmm. Did you know the that? fuck? Looks like propaganda to me. Yeah. This is like saying if you fucking watch a documentary of what befalls uh, the children of Palestine, then, you know, it's really fucked up. They shouldn't watch that documentary. Yeah, it's just a documentary. This is just a documentary. It's not propaganda. Propaganda is actually a good thing. It's just a documentary. Crazy. Why are you backing it up? I'm going forward. Oh, good. Joining fucking ISIS, okay? It is since you defend every terrorist. Oh, wait, let me go back. That? That's what your takeaway is. Your takeaway is, is that, like, you, you legitimately are saying that me saying a five-year-old should not be fucking murdered because a five-year-old doesn't know what he is saying when he says anything, including joining fucking ISIS, okay? It is since you defend every terrorist org on the planet. I did not defend the IDF one time on this, on this broadcast. It is silly of you to say that. I did not defend the American military. I did not defend the IDF. That is silly of you to... to Look at what he's doing here. You like that? Yeah. The person say says, since you... Yeah. It is since you defend every terrorist organization on the planet. So Hassan's going to list a bunch of terrorist organizations. He's like, IDF, the American military. <laughs> right. Yeah. He didn't he did, did you notice he doesn't, doesn't say Hamas? He does of not course list he doesn't. Hamas. So, Look, Hamas Piker is not going to list his best friends. And, and here's why this is so insipid. If... America, if the American military is a terrorist organization, okay, does that not justify an, a foreign country attacking the American civilian population to prevent the American terrorist military organization from attacking them? Sure, it gives them total justification in ha Hamas Asabi's world. Right. So Hamas Asabi, when he says America deserves 9 11, he means it. Because he does. He, he literally views so when someone says it's justified for israel to bomb the gaza strip because they have a terrorist government that attacked israel and they're trying to get rid of that uh the hamas trying to get rid of that terrorist organization okay right hassan is saying that that logic applies to america right. in regards to 9 11. right that they were attacking us to get rid of our terrorist government. Right. Yeah. Psychotic. <laughs> it would seem. To to make this assertion, okay? No, that's not a meme. It's how it's how stupid you have to be to to try to make these arguments, okay? <laughs> but I love you, Chatter. One day I hope you will uh, be a little bit more intelligent, a little bit more empathetic, okay? He Regardless of the of your your mental state, hey, wait, wait. you will uh, be a little bit more intelligent, a little bit more empathetic. Okay. okay. I don't know why it's not showing up on the left. That chatter. Oh no, someone is telling that chatter to go gargle his own cum. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I thought that was that. He like he like that response. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I, hope did, I hope he but... didn't do it. I hope he didn't do it. Oh my yeah. My word. Please don't. Regardless of the of your, your mental state being stuck uh, like a like a five year old, I still believe that you should have a good life. Okay. Eight young children. That you're teaching them to hate from that young age. Not good. <laughs> No. Here's the problem. Any with, kind of here's the problem of with, hatred with is your, immoral and wrong. Here's the problem I, just want I have my with your brothers peace. and others. If there's any hatred of anybody, a second, wait, cat on a journey. Thank you for the fifty gifted subs. I mean, could, would would wrong, you condemn too. Black Lives Matter Chicago for justifying the Hamas murder? We've. What are we talking about? We've moved on. We've moved on to the, like it, it, it just. You are. You have. You have just completely moved on from uh, again trying to defend the position that like it's it's we have to kill children 
because they believe in like uh, violent stuff. The position that he never ever nobody ever, ever said, yeah. had. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Who is? <laughs> I mean, who does he think he's talking about? Okay. By using these little airplane things and coming down on the uh, music event. But I, 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 wanna hear, it, I, I would certainly condemn it. You condemn Black condemn, Lives Matter. I would condemn anybody. Okay. It's not a matter of I'm skin. glad to hear you. This is Yeah, this is ridiculous. Dude, don't fucking, don't, don't, don't get tricked into this, Dr. Cornell Wes. You're a fucking whole ass doctor. What are you doing? Reality and so, okay. So you might be confused as to what Hassan is talking about. Because Cornell West said that he does denounce him. And and right. Alan, to be clear, Alan Dershowitz is being dishonest here. Because it was Black Lives Matter Chicago that posted that meme, who you should denounce. Though you you know, I'm obviously not a lover of Black Lives Matter, as everyone who watches us knows. Uh, yeah, the no, organization. Love, right. Not true. Um, you love but Black Lives Matter. That's true. But the BLM Chicago and all the and most of the BLM like New York, all, like they're not all, they're not affiliated with each other on any official capacity. They're all like separate organizations. Right. And so it's not fair to say like, do you denounce Black Lives Matter as a whole, whatever that means? Is that the movement? Is that the specific organization that's a scam? You know, that they just took all the people's money in relation to what a single spinoff unrelated chapter of Black Lives Matter Chicago, you know, posted. So... But then, but here's what's interesting. So Hassan said, don't get tricked into doing this. And you might say, well, what does that mean? Shouldn't you in this conversation say, obviously I denounce that, that's despicable. How is that not the correct move? And yet Hassan describes that as a trick. Interesting. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll find out what he means by that. Trick in denouncing Black Lives Matter? Yeah. Okay. Wow, dude, I found a fucking Instagram account that said, like, it's actually good to kill children. So now I ha like think about the think about the conversation that took place in the eight minutes and 50 seconds right now. He said it's OK to kill children when they are my enemies. OK, and then he is now <laughs> oh my turning around oh and saying my. this random Instagram account uh, made light of of you know children on my side being fucking murdered which this is so insane such how is this even allowed yes yeah so what hassan meant when he said tricked well first of all he again repeats the straw man that's a total lie something no one ever said about saying you know you should go kill children um but now he's Wait. doing this insipid defense that we all hear from these leftist scumbags who whenever there's some socialist that says some crazy shit. What do they do? They all do the same thing. They go, but that's just a random person. That's just a random person. I mean, it happens to be an official BLM Chicago account. And that's kind of right. a big fucking deal. If some official, B even though it's not associated with the, uh, like, the national BLM, it still is a big deal that an official BLM Chicago account tweeted this fucking, or posted on Instagram this fucking insane, literally a literal uh, cheering on of the murder of civilians. And Hassan, you stupid, disgusting fucking human being. Because you know what happens? You know what happens? You fucking... This is all he cares about. Okay, What he's saying is a fucking lie. All he cares about is the fact that he knows people on the right will point to that and they'll use it as ammunition against people on the left. Okay, we this is the same fucking argument we heard that came up with Anna Kasparian, where they say, listen, if someone on the left is doing some crazy fucking shit, just shut your fucking mouth and don't fucking say anything about it. Yep. Okay, don't attack yep. the left. Don't no enemies to the left, no enemies to the fucking left. And you know what right. fucking happens when you don't if all the fucking people on the left shut their fucking mouth and didn't fucking mm -hmm. say shit about this Black Lives Matter Chicago group posting that. You know what's going to happen? You know what the fuck's going to happen? Way more fucking people. more people on the <laughs> left are going to start fucking promoting that meme. Way Look more leftist organizations mind. are going to say, hey, I guess it's totally, we're not getting any fucking blowback from the left. I guess it's totally fucking fine for us to go cheering yeah. on the fucking murder and rape of civilians. I guess that's right. acceptable now. That's MSNBC is going to make it like a motion graphic right next to their logo. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. 
That's what the fuck happens, Hassan, you fucking piece of shit. That's why, no, you do have to point this shit out. You do have to fucking call it out. And every time a sick fucking piece of shit like you just hand waves it away like, hey, it's just a random fucking Instagram account. Fuck you, you fucking scumbag. You need to call that fucking shit out. And the fact that you're so fucking hesitant to is highly fucking suspect. Okay. Highly, highly fucking suspect. Because either you're too suspect. fucking stupid to understand if you don't call it out, that insane behavior will take over the whole movement, or you don't give a shit if it does, because that's actually what you want. Okay. So it's right. one of the fucking other. I think it's the, the latter. I think he wants to make that his profile pick on Twitter. That's what he really desires. I bet. Yeah. I think even if he, even if in his heart of hearts, he doesn't support uh, the brutal killings. Okay. I think you're right. That he, he does support them. What are you talking if, about? This I'm whole, just saying. this whole live stream is a testament to that. Even if he doesn't support it. Okay. He would think, I'm sure he would think it's a funny meme to make that his profile pic. To put of his face on would. like the head of the guy parachuting in. Of course like, he oh, would. It's very lulzy. So, I mean, it's just, it's just total bullshit. This is total fucking bullshit. Look, this is why just we're, a, it's this just is a why, joke. this is why the left is where it's at. Is because there's been ins oh, insane yeah. shit oh, on the yeah. left that happens and then other people on the left don't want to talk about it they don't want to criticize it and guess what this is a real fucking eye-opener for a lot of people on the left a lot of liberals on the left that go holy shit what the fuck's going on here What's all these, on these people are colleges? racist jew haters yes <laughs> i'm all voting with psychos. these people yes. yeah exactly and that's what hassan is scared of he's like oh fuck they're starting the liberals are starting to realize the fucking socialists are psychos yeah yeah good good you know what i got you know what i have to say to that good <laughs> yes fucking there's just some fucking random instagram you know how many fucking likes does, there were some those insane oh, fucking know. tweets you saw them we all saw them i that know came out. i was like what the fuck yes there were those insane fucking tweets that came out the day and the day after they're like you all y'all gotta be fucking you know, scared that this is what liberation looks like. Okay. An open advocation. Right. It's like 20,000 likes and you're 20, going. 20,000 likes. One of them had like 50 fucking thousand. It was insane. 50,000 likes. Okay. Yeah. We're going to fucking talk about it. That's psychotic. And you're full of shit because if it was, rev if there's some tweet. Okay, oh, I know. From some, some random. Some Nazi fucking right, account. Some random fucking account. Just tweet out like, you know, hey, I think it's great if we fucking just kill every Palestinian, you know, down to the last one, you know, just level the whole fucking place, you know, which I'm sure people fucking tweeted out, you know, Hassan's gonna be like, oh my God, look, the tweet that said that we should turn Gaza into the parking lot, you know, got 50,000 likes and got retweeted by Ben Shapiro. Oh my God, we need to talk about this. Oh, of course, we can fucking imagine? talk about that. When you have a, a group of like 10 fucking weirdo neo-Nazis in Florida, unfortunately, you know, go fucking walk around in some traffic area with with swastikas and wave the stupid fucking flags you know fucking hassan covered that shit he didn't say oh it's some ra 15 random people who they're not important yeah i remember that like in michigan or something it, no it happened in florida recently oh okay I'm sure it happened in michigan too. <laughs> Which you have condemned time and time again. Will you now condemn an entire movement? Will you now condemn an entire movement? How unproductive has has this conversation been? Okay, Hassan hasn't even condemned Black Lives Matter when they literally stole millions of dollars from all the people and kept it, <laughs> pocketed it for themselves. It never yeah. even made it to anyone in the black community. I mean, that's pretty easy to well, wait, announce. Wait, 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 wait. That's not fair, Adam. Okay. I mean, the people were black that pocketed all the money, so they're part of the black community. <laughs> Are they? I mean, come on now. Look, if, if you're just gonna if you're just gonna basically steal all the charitable proceeds, I don't I feel like the black community ought to kick you out, even if you are black. Hey, I saw this tweet, it had like two likes. Hey, I saw this tweet, it had ten thousand likes. Fuck two likes. Hundred thousand likes. That's a tweet, brother. You talk about the Hezbollah situation later. 
Lebanon. That's still like a hundred thousand people that were like, "Yeah, that's a good idea." Yeah, what what the <laughs> fuck is this comment? Oh, if a hundred thousand people are on board with something crazy, you just say, "Oh, a tweet." Like, fuck you. What the fuck? This is you lying sack of shit. That's a bullshit. That's a bullshit analysis, and you know it's, it's totally bullshit. bullshit. Yeah. Look, I I get mad all the time when I see CNN put up a tweet that's got like four likes. It's like, who gives a fuck if it's got four likes? If fifty thousand people click like on that, I'm thinking. Wow, that's something fifty thousand people think is based. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a little, that's much more scary. So this is nonsense argument he's making. Bananas broke. Reality, okay. No so you condemn Black Lives but part, Matter. Part of our challenge, though, and this is this is. Hey, look at this. He, he he's he's sneaking that in. He's like, so you condemn Black Lives Matter. Important, just as as a leader, you see. He asked me what I would do. I would say we have got the in occupation. We got to this make sure to that Palestinians have the same dignity, the same. I hated watching this. This hurt my fucking soul, dude. I mean, holy moly. Okay. Wow. Some garbage to your content you got here. It gets worse. No, it can't get any worse. It gets worse, Adam. I'm pretty demoralized here. You're going to be mean, even more demoralized. It never I ends. Can't, no, I can't have that. It I need never ends. I'm give Wormy a pat over here. We can I save this. <laughs> we can save it for Tuesday. What do you mean? If oh, you're, if, if you don't have the energy, I'm too demoralized. If you're too demoralized, yeah. Look, I have my service animal over here. I'm, I'm getting through. Okay. I'm get, I'm getting by. You can get through. Okay. I got my sweet kitty here. Sags for ten dollars says this is for Sitch going off and dropping all these f bombs. Rip monetization. Yeah, listen, I, I. Considering the subject matter Fuck of this, you. I know, Fuck you! Fuck you! It's a lot of that bomb. Considering We're the never subject gonna, yeah. matter of this, there's no way the stream would be monetized. So, but yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I was like, "Fuck it, I'm putting Israel Palestine in the th in the title." And yeah, it's just no way. It is what it is. It is people what it been is. people have literally been begging us to talk about the Israel Palestine stuff. You know, when right. are we going to talk about it? When we're going to talk about it? So, I mean, I figure we just talk. About, talk about it eventually obviously so uh bobby miles foreman the third thank you for twenty dollars says if sitch was in charge of an islamic nationalist terrorist government he would not use s-class as human shields that's true that's true of course not yeah. of course not that's yeah. what the a team is for baby that's that doesn't say that really no that's what really? i'm saying oh, okay well, if well, i'm in, if, if i'm in charge don't put that of on a, the super chatter listen, come on no 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 that's what i'm saying if 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 I'm in charge of an evil Islamic terrorist organization, I'm gonna right. be like, listen, in order for us to determine who to use as human shields, we have to go in alphabetical order by group orientation. So oh what do you know? A team <laughs> that comes first in the alphabet, right? A team you're making A team into human shields? This is not a good look, Sitch. Well I listen. Mean... Think about it logically. I thought there was an S class A team alliance here. It's sounding more No, like... no, 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 no. Listen, listen, think about this. Logically, okay. If you, Logically. Have, you have a letter, we're talking okay. about human shields, okay? Yeah. What's Logically, gonna, what's going to give you more shield coverage? Mm -hmm. The shape of the letter A or mm -hmm. an S? I mean, the S is like there's very little coverage there, right? Your head is basically the A the is over. like a heart shot. No, the little bar it prevents protects your heart, like that little bar on the on A. The That's S, right where your yeah. heart is. No, 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 on the A. Yes, is like the little curve across is going to be where your guts are. Your heart's I right feel, out in the open. Oh, I feel like the A. I feel like the A hole <laughs> is right where your heart is. No, the A is definitely going to give you more coverage. Okay. I never thought I would be able to say the A hole is right where your heart is on this this podcast. I'm so glad I finally got to say. It. There you go. There you go. The A hole is where your heart is. Uh, Grendel Vat for twenty dollars says objectively better. Hassan, what about the northern Iraq, where all the Kurds now have semi-autonomous government control over their oil resources? Oil resources, and oh yeah, don't have to worry about being ethnically cleansed by Saddam. It's a good point. Do the Kurds make out better? I hope they did. I mean, yeah. that would be a silver lining in the whole debacle. So, right. I don't know. Okay. S class is shield class. Look at that. 
Yeah. Andrew Andrew Clark coming in for two dollars. Shield shield class. That's why we use right. the eight, eight team for our shields. We pick up the eight team and use it as a shield. You're so oh, that's not good, man. You need to you <laughs> What do you mean? Chill out. Nah. You're talking about human shields, okay? I mean, are A team even people? Oh wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> And look, he's laughing maniacally about it. <laughs> this is, look, this is not a good look. Bitch, <laughs> you need to, you need to relax here. <laughs> you need to take your medication or something. What's the problem? What's, what's the problem? What's the problem? You sound evil. <laughs> what? Nice, what's though. the issue? What's the issue? Okay, let's go. What do we got? What's going on? So A this is, is your, for armor. There you go. This is your com your compilation. This is my compilation. Which you've cleverly named Hassan Israel. Yeah, this was like a five, six hour stream that I cut down to 48 minutes. Oh, really? Yeah. So what day did this occur on? I don't fucking know. Was it when the action <laughs> it wasn't that was taking long ago. place? 13 days ago, it says right there. Dollars were just... spent there to build this unbelievable barrier under the surface and above the surface with all kinds of electronic devices. And finally, you see that the spirit of resistance is many times stronger than anything else. And they broke it and penetrated into Israel, which is now shocked. Gaza. Yeah. Um, this is not me saying it. It's an Israeli journalist in the BBC saying it, in the immediate aftermath of a massive, of a massive military operation inside of the borders of Israel that has never happened before. It is pretty fucking wacky to refer to this as the spirit of resistance. Like that's pretty fucking insane. I don't care who said that. Refer to that attack as the spirit of resistance. You know, I did not like when he said that at all. Yeah. Yeah. It made me think a-hole. But uh, let's see, he's going to bring up what was uh, Hassan Piker's tweet the day of the attack. Okay, he's going to read it for us. Hassan? With many... Yeah. Okay. Civilians dying. Okay? And a ton of hostages that they took. To which I responded with, and this was still my perspective, there is no perfect retaliation to apartheid. There are only victims everywhere. One party holds all the power to end the violence, however, and it's certainly not the Palestinians living under a colonial apartheid regime that has chained them in an open-air prison. It bombs routinely. So to be clear, when he says there's no perfect retaliation to apartheid, that is him. Okay. He's referring to the attack where Hamas came into Israel and killed and murdered and raped and kidnapped 1,400 people. And his response to that is, there's no perfect retaliation to apartheid. Right. Disgusting. Disgusting. Yeah. More, Disgusting. more, bu yeah. more bullshit from Hassan. Yeah. He doesn't say this, this was a horrific attack. He says, well, there's no perfect retaliation to apartheid. Wah. Spins his bow tie and honks his clown nose. Like, are you fucking for real? Well, and saying that that somehow Israel has the power to stop the violence. I just, yeah. oh God, it's so fucking brain dead. Listen, I don't know if you know this, Adam, but if Israel just stopped being big meanie weenies to the Gaza people, then Hamas would just hug them and they could live in peace and harmony and friendship. <laughs> I, don't, don't you, you Hamas, delusional? Oh, you sweet summer child! No, you. listen, listen. You delusional piece no, no, of no. shit. Listen, you don't, you don't understand what's going on here. Okay, Hamas. I have, look. I understand. No, no, you're no, a moron. No, I understand. No. You're an idiot. No, no. Listen, Hamas is like Doomer. What? <laughs> okay, they don't say bring a lot Doomer of, into this. Listen, Come on. They say a lot of hurtful, hateful things. They're very mm. loud. Doomer, very I do loud not bark. condone this. Just so I you know. do. I condone and condemn. Okay, this statement. Hamas is like Doomer, according to Hassan Piker. Um, 
they they say very hurtful things they have very bad right. rhetoric right but at right. the end of the day deep down They're you all harmless. know that they love you right. okay they're really suendere just like right. doomers really we all know doomers is suendere for me right. Doomer Hamas loves is really... chat. he's just all talk yeah exactly hassan right. thinks that hamas is really suendere for israel and so if right. israel just open their heart to love with hamas then hamas would be like finally finally the love i wanted look and then doomers they would never hug each other Look, Doomer famously has a wrench on the channel. He's never come into the chat and banned 1,400 fucking people, okay? Like, That's Doomer true. is not, Doomer true. Is not Hamas. Yeah, are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Okay, you could be right. That's ridiculous, yeah. You could be right. I can't believe that he's, this is just, it's obvious that Hassan is brain dead. That's what's going on here. Right. Yeah. And there are plenty of people, there are plenty of people who refuse to see that and say, well, um, you know, they really blew it. I saw a lot of people saying they really blew it. The Palestinians really blew it. The backlash is going to be so bad. They're going to end up killing a bunch of Palestinians. To them, I say, do you think this calculation is not in the minds of Palestinians? You can push humans. This guy's a fucking idiot, Sitch. I can't take it. I can't I told take you. it. I told you. You said you're like this is the worst. How can it get worse? It gets worse, Adam. It always I gets can't, worse. I can't fucking take it. Like he just look the uh, the thing that we talked about. How some people yes. will say, look, and someone even super chat. They're like eighty percent of the Palestinians are in favor of these people. Right. Look, he buys into that narrative. Yeah. No, he, he buys does. into he, he that narrative. Right. He thinks all the Palestinian people are just freedom fighters, that they don't want to have a peaceful life. They're all on board with Hamas. It's shaking them down for money and taking advantage of them. Yeah. These people have no idea how, how it goes in these third world countries. They're so spoiled by Western style democracies that they think, oh, look, it's just like, it's just like it is in America. It's just, they have no government. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have a government. It's just a government that shakes you do down. Do they? Constantly. Yeah. Do they? Well, you're I right. Mean, they, have was... a, they have a terrorist gang that shakes. What them do down. you That's... think? What do you think? They're how do they um, redress grievances in Gaza? I... You think they go to the courts? You think they have a court system set up? No. You think the Hamas leadership works it out? How do you think their court, do you think they do jury trials? What do you think they do to settle disputes? No clue. In Gaza? Yeah. Do you, would you want to learn? No, you want I your don't. car stolen in Gaza and figure it out? Right. It's ridiculous. Only so far until they realize that this is their only method. They will go out on their own terms in this. Wait, 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 wait. We need to back up. We need to fully hear how stupid this is. No, I, I hate it. Yeah. Stop Plenty it. You're people. A there are plenty of people who refuse to see that and say, well, um, you know, they really blew it. I saw a lot of people saying they really blew it. The Palestinians really blew it. The backlash is going to be so bad. They're going to end up killing a bunch of Palestinians. To them, I say, do you think this calculation is not in the minds of Palestinians? You can push humans only so far until they realize that this is their only method. They will go out on their own terms in this regard. You want to stop the violence. You want to stop the bloodshed. You have to, you have to pull back on your end, because this violence and this bloodshed is disproportional. The violence is asymmetrical. So there you go. He said, the people who were criticizing Hamas for doing this, saying that this will cause blowback, right? Which is obvious. Hassan is criticizing those people, saying no. You sh Hassan is literally saying here. Okay. Yeah. That I you should not criticize Hamas. Right. Okay. For doing this in terms yeah. of it causing blowback for the Palestinian people. Right. Because Israel pushed them to this. Right. Israel's the one that needs to yeah. stop the violence. Right. L they just listen. They're just like, haven't you guys seen the Joker movie? They're just the <laughs> Joker, baby. And they can only be pushed so far. I mean, I saw the Joker movie. I'm trying to figure out how that 
how Israel is no Hamas is Joker. I know, but how is yeah. Israel pushing that? Israel's more is Mori. Israel's Robert De Niro. Oh, okay. Okay. Hmm. According to Hassan. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. Look, people say people try to make this distinction between Hamas and Palestinians. You are completely oblivious to the reality. Hamas is a uh, is a Muslim Brotherhood fundamentalist cutout. It also happens to be the only popular form of governance amongst Palestinians. Do you want to know why that is the case? Do you want to examine the reason as to why Palestinians yeah, who are comprised of incredibly diverse backgrounds are now looking at a, a fundamentalist group of, of Islamists for the yeah, most part? Tell us, citizens of the world. Only savior yeah, do you why? think that it is important to analyze that situation oh, or do yeah, you think important. it's easy to just say let's separate hamas from the palestinian plight let's are separate hamas and their or what? actions <laughs> they are different this is the reason why people do this is because they want to support palestinian people but they think the only support palestinian people can get is if they are perfect victims if they just sit back and die except the media rarely ever covers it when that happens for no you stupid fucking idiot it's because if a group of people all just say hey we're all gonna support terrorism now then fuck them you can't work with that group of people right right that's why well, I'm skeptical that the polls are accurate, obviously. No, I'm for, skeptical too. Yeah. I'm saying Hassan's analysis here is, well, they want them to be perfect victims. It's like, no, you should actually be pushing this, Hassan, because if this is why this is like insane to me. Hassan is so privileged, okay? He's so fucking rich and so privileged and he exists in this own hoity-toity universe where he's protected that he's too stupid to understand. That if this narrative he's pushing were to become the dominant narrative, this would make more people have the attitude of just saying, wipe out all the Gazans. This have more people have no sympathy for people in the Gaza Strip, not less. And he's too fucking stupid and privileged to realize that. Hmm. Don't you agree? Like, if the average American had the same idea in their head that Hassan does, that there's no difference between people in Gaza and Hamas, and that Hamas is just the most popular form of government. Does how does that yeah. not justify you to just fucking blow the fuck as many people in Gaza up as you want? How's that this not is why people that? are look. This is why people are turning to the eighty percent approval of Hamas poll as justification yes. for oh, yes, opening yeah. up a new parking lot in right. the south. There, yeah, no, I look. You think bad. you think Hassan would be able to work that in his little fucking wormy brain? I don't, this, I mean, I, if, if the God, if Gazan people rose up and weeded out Hamas themselves, if they said, look, this is, they've gone too far and we're going to pay the price. We need to get rid of these people. And they basically apprehended or killed all the Hamas members or, and turned them over to Israel or whatever. I mean, that would be. That would be difficult for Hassan to digest, right? I don't. And that that would never happen though, because this is this is exactly why they indoctrinate the children like they do. Because Jews are the scapegoat. Like they, they, they don't, they don't even have the concept of putting up the sign that has five hundred days since our last terrorist attack. <laughs> like they they're right. indoctrinated to think that the Jews want to commit terrorist attacks on them. Yes. Like the thing that everyone always talks about, how, you know, if if Hamas put the guns down, there would be peace. And if Israel put the guns down, they would be destroyed. They believe that in in Palestine in the same exact way. They, exactly. They've indoctrinated the people to believe that if Hamas put the guns down, Israel would destroy them. That's a great Even point. though that's not true. <laughs> that's completely right. untrue. That's the power of the propaganda. But if they didn't have that propaganda, if they did have factions that were, you know, had Western media and realized, 
you know, the Jews are not going to annihilate us. We could actually build a pretty decent country here. They might try to apprehend this Hamas group and turn them over to the to the Israelis. And that would be a way yeah. step in the right direction. I mean, this is probably what's going on in the West Bank. And this is probably why the West Bank is is kind of normalizing peaceful relations with. Well, yeah. And, and I mean, what you're saying is a very good point that the people in Gaza have been indoctrinated to think the propaganda that Hassan is spewing, they believe. is truth. Yes. That, that the Israeli government and the Israeli people just want to wipe them all out. So it's weird you, that he believes this propaganda as yeah. an American when he has right. access to all of American media. But he's so fucking stupid, he's been indoctrinated by Hamas propaganda. Yeah. So thank you, Hassan, for for going to your audience of children and helping push Hamas uh, propaganda, <laughs> number one. Uh, because number two, like if he was actually intelligent and not a piece of shit and actually cared about making things better, um, there's a... He could bring the critique that I brought and say, listen, this is why Israel needs to be so good to the West Bank government. And he's still working yes, with the West Bank government. I agree. Because yes. if they did do that, if they did pull out all the West Bank settlers and they did show that peace, like a good peaceful relationship with the West Bank is 100% like doable. Possible, then, yes. Right. Then people in Gaza could look at point that. point to that, yep. And then they could say, oh my God, yeah. I want to live like that. Yeah. Those people have so much better living conditions than I have. I want right. that here. And if if Hamas is my government and they're not willing to do that, I'm going to fucking take them out. Yep. That's the only way to have peace. They got to have That's a it. flight that goes back and forth from Gaza to the West Bank just daily. So they constantly have people from <laughs> Gaza going into West Bank and going, oh, my go. God, it's amazing. Look, that's basically what happened between East and, and West Berlin in right. Germany when it was right. like, you know, the Russians weren't keeping up any any services or anything like that. It became a hell on yeah. earth to live in. And, and what did they do? They had to build a wall to keep the people in. Yeah, <laughs> to keep yeah. them from running right to prosperity people have a way of wanting to find prosperity don't they yeah and this is why this yeah. is so fu this is why Hassan is so brain damaged on his fake bourgeoisie revolution champagne socialist bullshit because he could make that critique and still go frothing at the mouth angry at israel mm -hmm. because he could say look israel's not doing what they should be doing because they're not in order to cultivate this relationship. And he could go be super angry and aggressive with them and blah, 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 right? right? Without literally simping for a terrorist organization. Yeah, they the stuff that they're doing with the settlers is unsettling. Yes, it is. to say the least. It is. But he, Hassan doesn't, since Hassan believes that Israelis just want to wipe out all of the Palestinians, he doesn't think that that's even a thing. He's, right. He would he would say, "Oh, you guys are so naive for thinking any possible peaceful relationship between Israel and the West Bank is even possible." Is it a situation where I mean, obviously, if Americans wanted to buy property in, I don't know, Japan, France, mm -hmm. whatever, I mean, we wouldn't really have the power to stop them from doing that. Is that a the same kind of situation? That does, is, yeah, does Israel is. have the power to stop them from buying property in the West Bank? Well, not for non-Israeli citizens. They could. Well, look, they we could. don't even have. Oh, I mean, we don't have that ability here for American citizens. No, but this came up. This came up. There are extrajudicial uh, laws that your government can pass that that limits behavior of its citizens in other countries. Right. Okay. And Israel can say, number one, Israel can say, uh, we will pass Forbid a law you. saying that you, an Israeli citizen, cannot do this action in the West Bank. They can 100% pass that law if there was okay. political will to do it, number one. Number two, Israel does support them um, because they provide, to some extent, security. Security. Yeah. Right. They could just pull the security out and say, listen, you guys, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially, they can say, oh, okay, well, you know, get fucked. Right? That's a pretty powerful incentive to get out of there, right? Yes. And that, I mean, that's why I said they, sh 
I think they should go further. I think they should forcibly do what they did in Gaza, remove them all. And the, the Israeli counter to that is, well, we did that and Gaza became what it is. My response to that is, well, the West Bank already looks like it's in much better shape in terms of trying to work yeah, if it's with going Israel. In the right, than, if it's going in the right direction. Right, than Gaza was. Yeah. And why would you want to ruin this opportunity with these yeah. stupid fucking settlers? Yeah, Just pull a bunch them out of, of there. religious yahoos. Yeah. Don't even, I mean, I don't, I, personally, I would not even fucking compensate them, but I know that would be like a legal issue. If you want to fucking compensate them, whatever. Just do whatever. Just fucking pull them out. Say, fuck you. How many How many settlers are there? There's a lot. I don't okay. know the exact number, but there's a lot. A thousand, just get them the fuck out million? of there. How many settlers in West Bank? Just guess. I have no fucking clue what the number okay, is. Okay, never mind. It's in the thousands, obviously. Okay, well, look, that's all I wanted. Ballpark. Couple. This is saying over five hundred thousand. I that can't. Is that five that half a million? Yeah, I don't half think. a million settlers. I don't know. I that's say Hamas this, propaganda, this, man. Well, I don't know. There's there's saying there's a bunch of numbers saying it's in that ballpark. That's fucking insane. If that's half true. a million people get all those. Fucking, oh my god, listen, they've taken over. Round up all those fucking people, half a million people, and you start fucking. This is what I would do if I was Israel. That's crazy. I would say, listen. Yeah, I thought if, it was like a dozen. <laughs> this is what no 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 it's a lot. Um I, this is what I Israel I would do. I'd say we're gonna start pulling you out. And if you and and to make it to facilitate the quickness of this, if you don't remove yourself, maybe they could just do this if they want if they don't have the resources to pull all them out individually. If you don't remove yourself, we're gonna take away your Israeli citizenship. Ooh. Ooh we're gonna revoke your citizenship, right? Just tell them, listen. We're going to rip up your passport. You're, you're West Bank citizens now. Yep. <laughs> you're their problem. Yeah. So I don't know. What if, they, what if they stayed and like totally took over the government and everything? I'm they pretty sure there's a, the, there's a larger... <laughs> they changed uh, the name of the country to West <laughs> Israel. There you go. I mean, I don't know. That'd be interesting, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> there's a not, larger Palestinian population, so it has to do with the force. <laughs> That would not be interesting. I mean, yeah. the evangelicals over here would be like, praise Jesus, the borders of Israel are complete. Mm -hmm. It's not good. <laughs> not fucking good. For year after year after year, when they march peacefully to that same border wall so they can peacefully return, which is their right, and they get sniped in the thousands... When it's like, look, he's making it sound like they have a Mardi Gras festival once a year where they yeah. just march into the bullets. Which, Is this true? I, yeah, no, it's not. There was, he's talking about this like one time period where, as I said, people march up to the fucking gate that, that says, the big fucking ass sign says, we will shoot you when you approach the gate. And then they approach the gate and then they get shot. And then you go, oh, how dare they do this thing? It's like, okay. <laughs> Look, I'm sure Hamas is putting people up to this. I'm sure. To test the, the I'm defenses. Sure listen, listen. Hamas is fucking evil and everything. You know, everything's not... Every bad action in Gaza is not a defeat of Hamas. There's lots of people doing stupid shit. There are lots of people that are fed up. We're living in a really bad situation, which, you know, I'm sympathetic to. Um, but mm -hmm. you don't walk up to the fence that, that says they're going to shoot you if you approach it. Because what if you just found out your girlfriend cheated on you, though? You're super depressed. Well, then you walk up to the fence and you get <laughs> shot. Okay, I don't tell you. Because, like, again, this is why Hassan is so BS with this stuff. It's this stuff. Israel's not behaving in a vacuum, as mm -hmm. this recent attack shows. They have that fence. They have all the security because people kept suicide bombing. Okay, people kept attacking Israel from Gaza. Right. People kept doing the violence. And that's, oh, that's why crazy. all the security exists. Well, that, they didn't just look, do it for the lulls. That's why they shoot them. That's why they don't want them to get close to the fence. They're like, this is another suicide bomber. Look, he's right. going to blow a big hole in the fence. We're going to have to go get more razor wire. A bunch of people are going to run through, try to commit terrorist attacks, you know, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Right. Wow. This sucks. Yeah. Like look, little our, kids. Our our border they just want to come in and like work <laughs> yeah i know really makes you uh 
<laughs> that makes you be like, listen, I don't want open borders, but at least they're not trying to fucking blow us up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. They're just trying to get in here and do it, get some yeah. jobs. Yeah. <laughs> Clean the place up a bit. Look. And that's this, this why, why Hamas is so despicable, because if they weren't these Hamas, that there wasn't all this other terrorist organization shit, then yeah, there were a lot of people. There were tons of people. This was part of when, when the border wall. Who had jobs in Israel, I know. Yeah. Yes, when the border wall, because I was old enough to remember when a lot of the border wall uh, was being erected. And there were mm -hmm. lots of people who, lots, there's thousands of people, thousands and thousands, if not millions of Palestinians. Like, I, I work in Israel. Who had jobs that they could no longer go to because of the, the, the security checkpoints. A lot of people come from Mexico. They work seasonally in California. Send money back to Mexico to their families. Yeah. Which is even dangerous I... in Israel because they're like, well, who are they fucking sending money back to? Is it going to yeah. Hamas, you know? Yeah, that's the thing that sucks. Yeah. The money going back to Mexico, it's like, look, they're building up their country. Good. I mean, that's better than sending a bunch of foreign aid, right? Right. Teen-year-olds, nurses, they get sniped and they get fucking killed. And nobody ever makes a peep pregnant women dying because they... Look, it's pregnant women and nurses that are going at the border wall. Listen, I, if you're a pregnant that? woman, you should not be approaching the big fucking wall that says, we will shoot you when you approach the wall. I don't know how to tell you. Is the nurse approaching because someone else approached... Because the pregnant woman approached first? Oh, trying to save there her? You go. Who knows? Peacefully marched. The greatest comparison is... The greatest comparison to the circumstances here is either to Algeria and its violent struggle against colonial uh, uh, French occupation or uh, Nelson Mandela and the ANC fighting against apartheid. So today, I also want to cover the, the, the often forgotten, often whitewashed history of the struggle against South Africa fighting against apartheid. So today, when they march peacefully to that same border wall so they can peacefully return, which is their right, and they get sniped in the thousands, when it's like little kids, 14-year-olds, nurses, they get sniped and they did get fucking killed. Did you rewind it or did I fuck up when I was doing this? Uh, you probably fucked up. Killed. Okay. And nobody ever makes a peep pregnant women dying because they peacefully marched. The greatest comparison is the greatest so comparison to the circumstances here that is he either can't to even edit Algeria a clip. and its fuck violent yeah. struggle what against colonial uh, uh, French occupation, or uh, Nelson Mandela and the ANC fighting. I would have had a nice little fade there. I would have had a little background music. Oh man, it would have been. Tits. What the hell's Sitch going can't on? even Sitch can't even get the right clip minute. in the right spot. What do you mean what's going on? Well, wait, because I did I did all this. I had, did I put did I upload sure the wrong you version? Did. <laughs> oh my god. You have multiple versions? Oh, oh you know what? Maybe I oh, fuck. Did I upload the non edited version? Maybe that's why the would, problem. Why would you do that? Um, was the, the non-edited version 48 minutes? Hold on. You're like, no, I wait, have a, was 40, wait, now I'm, I'm I have a version funny. that's, I mean, look, I've already been triggered like five times with what he's saying. So it seems like you're on the right, on the right track here. Okay. No. Okay. I think, I don't know why. I just, I guess I just fucked it up. I fucked it look, up. Look, it happens. Okay. 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 Sorry. Not, not to me. I'm like an editing pro, but okay. apartheid should be. So today, one more I also want to cover okay. the 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 often forgotten, often whitewashed history of the struggle against South African apartheid, because the ANC, the African National Congress, originally was a peaceful movement. Okay. So. This is going to be a long section, mm -hmm. but it's insane. And I don't know if there's a lot of commentary for us to bring up to talk about. Okay, I'll shut up. Um, 
Well, I just want, and I just want to explain why I want it to be like played because mm -hmm. he is about, Hassan's going to lay out in the context, okay, in the context of Hamas. He's going to lay out why it was acceptable for the South Africans to use, for Nelson Mandela, to use violence. Sick. Okay. So obviously he's making comparison to lay out why it's totally justified for Hamas to use violence. And so why this is so despicable. Disgusting. Because like, even though he says, when you ask him, oh, it was totally wrong for Hamas to go do what they did on October 7th, right? Why then is he then going to turn around and say all this shit? This sounds like dog whistling to me, I, it's I've heard suspect. the term dog whistling a lot. What does that mean? What does dog whistling mean? Uh, I mean, it means when you... It, it's a statement you say when someone is uh, being pretty sus, being pretty sussy-wussy. <laughs> Being a big sus. Spell, how do I spell dog whistling? Okay. It was a peaceful movement, and they were peacefully resisting against this unjustifiable apartheid state. And yet, it got to a point where, you know, 69, uh, 69 black people were butchered, mercilessly slaughtered, where even Nelson Mandela realized that it is not necessarily just a struggle it, it, when all other opportunities are lost when there is no other way to push back against a colonial state an apartheid state that is unjustifiably treating you like a second-class citizen then you must engage in violent struggle violence as i've always said is a constant in politics it's a constant in politics it's unchanging Violence is always a constant in politics and is unchanging, okay? So Hassan here is laying out the foundations of why it's like this whole concept of, of a like a liberal, nonviolent government with peaceful transitions of power and, and all that stuff. That's, not, that's all just fake. It's all just fake. According I mean, this is such bullshit. Well, yeah. The whole point of politics is to avoid violence. Well, war, politics, right? war is the breakdown of politics. Yes. Nelson Mandela was on the U.S. FBI terrorist watch list until 2008. Long after he had won and had actually changed, or not changed rather, but moved to immediately facilitate peace in South Africa. 2008. He was democratically elected as a leader in 1994, and it, until 2008, he was still considered a terrorist. Nelson Mandela was offered freedom after being jailed, I believe, in 1967, after uh, he went to Algeria and Ethiopia and learned about the violent struggle against colonial occupation and came back and said, the people deserve the people demand uh, uh, emancipation and they are willing to take matters into their own hands and there is no other way to do this, okay? We have debated for far too long. There's no more room for debate. There's no more room for civil disobedience. This does not work. And they jailed him. How's this applicable? So Hassan is, is comparing a situation where someone says civil disobedience does not work to Hamas in October 7th. Just really let that stew around in the old brain. Okay. I mean, I don't know how the situation is comparable to apartheid in South Africa. Well, he, the it's comparable because what he's saying is that they had to use violence to get their freedom. So obviously the Palestinians have to use violence to get their freedom. That's the comparison. Yeah, but that's not really the same situation here. 
Look at they his have chat. To use, they have to use nonviolence to get to freedom. No, That's no, no, what... no. That's because you're a libcock. Oh, okay. He's saying this in response to his tweet about October 7th. Yeah, I know. Look, it's disgusting. It's totally yeah. disgusting. And his chat, here's his chat. You got two from the river to the sea. Okay. Chance. That's not good. Right. Which means get rid of Israel right. completely. Uh, and then he has someone else saying Palestine will be free, inshallah. Right. Then someone says, I don't understand how people can expect Palestinians to remain peaceful when they're dealing with monsters like this every day. And there's so well, it's just there. like the cartoon, just like the Hamas cartoon. <laughs> right. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's good. It's real good. They jailed him while while his supporters still continued their freedom comes from the barrel of a gun. There's another person in his chat. Why is nobody else spitting facts like this? Says someone else in his chat. <laughs> Play the Star Trek clip where Data talks about violence being an effective vehicle for political change. <laughs> no, this way. is his fucking this number one largest political streamer. Okay, in response to the worst terrorist attack on Israel soil is radicalizing his his audience to violence before our eyes. Where's the yeah. data clip? He's logical. And I guess it's just fine. I guess it's just fine, everybody. Because, you know, he's on the left. It's not a right-wing person, so, you know. Acts of violence. Now, let me tell you something. The world branded them terrorists. The world branded Nelson Mandela as a terrorist. Do I even have to say anything? He was on the terrorist watch list until 2008. Remember that. Okay? In that entire process, there were moments where there was also a lot of, especially in the aftermath of the dissolution of the USSR, where people were realizing that there was no longer uh, the threat of communism. People wanted change in South Africa, and there was a robust boycott, divestment, and sanction move, a movement, a peaceful movement to boycott, divest, and sanction the state of South Africa as long as it continues its apartheid. This movement actually took hold, and it applied external pressure. Foreign capital chose to pull out of South Africa, so both of these factors, violence on the ground and external pressure, caused an ally, caused an ally of the United States, an ally of the West, uh, in a deeply anti-communist state that engaged in a, a, a never-ending, uh, they engaged in a never-ending, continued violent military apparatus that forcibly oppressed black people, treated them as second-class citizens. It finally ended. But throughout that duration, Nelson Mandela was told on not one, but two different occasions, 10 years apart, if you condemn the violence, we will let you go free. The ANC at the time was still banned, the African National Congress. Okay? The ANC at the time was banned. Nelson Mandela the first time said, how can you negotiate with me when I am still chained in prison? I will not concede. Once again, I believe in 1985, the last time they, they went to Nelson Mandela and said, we will free you if you denounce Marxism, if you denounce communism, and if you denounce the violence that your supporters are engaging in. And he said, through his daughter, no. I will not denounce Marxism, I will not denounce communism, and I will not denounce the violent actions that people are engaging in as long as the apartheid continues, as long as we are not able to participate in political action, I will, I will stay in prison. Okay. So you can really understand the scope of the wickedness of Hassan Piker. 
Okay. He is telling this story about Nelson Mandela where he's directly, obviously, making this comparison that Nelson Mandela would not denounce, denounce violence, yeah. The violence. Okay. And he's saying this in relation to the October 7th terrorist attack on Israel. And right. he's obviously saying this in relation to saying that you, the audience, and Hamas and Palestinians should not denounce the violence. Right. And if you've ever, and if even though he said it's bad, if you listen to him closely, I don't think he's ever denounced it. He just said, yeah, it's bad. Yeah, he's so a Nelson Mandela in this situation. Right. He's saying, yeah, it's bad, but I don't know if he's ever denounced it. So, no. yeah. So he's using this fucking, so this horrible person is using this despicable comparison to talk about, you know, the, the say to put on a pedestal Nelson Mandela for not denouncing the violence that was going on in South Africa. And if you look at his chat, it is a sea of people posting the the Chad no emoji and saying giga Chad, giga Chad, giga Chad. Okay. So since this is all subtext for him really talking about Hamas, he has radicalized his audience. Hassan Piker has radicalized his audience to say it is giga Chad to not denounce the violence that Hamas perpetuated on October 7th, where they killed, tortured, raped, kidnapped, murdered 1,400 Israelis. That is what right. you are watching in this clip. Yeah. Yeah, he's saying Israel had it coming. He's been saying that for this whole, look, we've been live streaming for like five hours. He's been saying it all along. It's just- It's disgusting. Disgusting. It's so despicable. And it's who, who, like, just... Who, who is the Nelson know. Mandela in Hamas? Who the, I, I don't fucking know. It doesn't matter. It's just the, the fact that he's making this comparison. No, no, no. Obviously, he's making the, the comparison to serve his argument. Right. But I just and The, the like, fact that he's radicalizing his audience. He's just look, say, he's don't advocating the violence. Right? Look, he's openly advocating for political violence here. Yeah, 100%. Look, I, I would I don't know much about South Africa. I know Kitty used to live in South Africa and she says it's terrible. I know the the China boys who make YouTube videos, uh one of them is from South Africa. It says it's a shithole, it's the worst place ever to live. Like that's why he basically moved to China right. and finally made it to America. Like he's like, I don't have a nation I don't have a nation to go home to. It's it's terrible there. So, yeah. Did Nelson Mandela turn South Africa around and now South Africa is a great place to live? I mean, I only know these two people who are like, I got out of there. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know enough about it to even comment. I don't even know enough about the situation that was going on with apartheid to weigh in morally. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Weigh in morally about it. Um, but I do know enough about this situation. To yes. Say that it is not, there's no justification for this violence, for yeah. This violence, this despicable act. And I don't give a fuck what Hassan says. Well, when you ask him directly, and he, and he says, oh, no, I don't support that. He is fucking lying. He, he totally is supports fucking it. lying. Because if he honestly believed that there was no justification for that, he would not give this fucking story where he's giving his audience a justification. And saying, essentially, oh, it's so based. It's so ultra-based if you don't denounce the violence. That's what he's saying. He's saying it's so ultra-based if you don't denounce the violence. And the fact that this person is able to go and be one of the largest political streamers on the fucking planet and go on Twitch and preach this message of violence and hatred and doesn't get called out for it and doesn't get in fucking trouble for it is mind-fucking-blowing to me. Everyone's it so is. fucking concerned the fact that he got the fucking hospital thing wrong and they ignore this shit. This is crazy. Yeah, I looked up the definition of dog whistling. So this is from Wikipedia. So, you know, obviously <laughs> Wikipedia sucks on some things, but right. 
Um, dog whistling is in politics. A dog whistle is the use of coded or suggest suggestive language in political messaging to garner support for a political group without provoking opposition. How is this not dog whistling? <laughs> it's a hundred percent. How's dog that whistling? not exactly what he's doing here? One thousand percent. And he's gonna. It's so funny. And I left it in here. And this, he's like, "Oh, the people are gonna come in the stream, and they're gonna dishonestly clip me." The, there's no what. <laughs> there's nothing to dishonestly clip. Okay, why are you telling the story? Why are you making this comparison? It's so obvious. It's so obvious. Yeah, it big time obvious. Look who's Hassan. Tell us who's the who is the Nelson Mandela in Hamas? Was it one of the hang glider guys? Was it that guy who had the woman who was obviously raped and shoving her into a car? Is that the Nelson Mandela guy? Yeah. Is it the the, the, who, the person that tied a baby and a parent together and burned them alive? Is that yeah? Is that, is that the Nelson Mandela guy? Right. Look at all this, all, all the justifications that he tries to come up with. He's like these 50 Palestinian people that ha got killed or whatever. Or these people that got killed. This this festival that he's dreamed up in his mind that takes place once a year where everybody, you know, wears white and candles and peacefully approaches the fence and gets mowed down by the Israeli forces. Like, what? None of he doesn't have evidence for any of these justifications. Every time he mentions them, I'm like, "What? Fifty people died. What happened?" Right. None of this stuff is real. All of this stuff that he's doing—that's what's so sick about it. Like he's dog whistling. He's doing these justifications for for political violence for something that is just like he's completely gaslit his audience into thinking is something completely different. This open air prison narrative. Right. It's awful. It's totally awful. It is. They had to concede at the end. They had to release him from prison, and he became uh, the president. This is very important to understand because anti-colonial struggle is not pretty. Anti-colonial struggle is going to have a lot of unnecessary and, and horrifying acts of violence. Okay, Mandela was not a tanky Lemafeao is something you can say now, just like Martin Luther King was a revisionist. Why can you say that? Because we have whitewashed his history. Nobody, most people do not know the history of Nelson Mandela because they only know Nelson Mandela as the guy who uh, went up and played nice with the same prosecutor who fucking threw him in jail and wanted to give him the death penalty. You know him as the leader of South Africa. You do not know him as the revolutionary figure of South Africa. That is by... He, he is making the argument that Nelson Mandela is a tanky, though. <laughs> like, yeah. That's exactly the argument yeah. that he's making. He's saying that he was a violent revolutionary tanky who succeeded in his goals by being a violent revolutionary tanky. That's Therefore, not true. I know yeah. enough about it to know that that is not true. Therefore... I mean, he literally said in this clip, he said it was a combination of the violence on the ground with the BDS movement that created, you know, that ended the apartheid state. So he's, I mean, he's literally saying, listen, he's telling to his audience, if you want to be president, if you want to enact political change, be a violent revolutionary tanky, don't denounce violence. And one day you'll be president of your country. Okay. Well, this I'm is the, the story he's laying out. I don't know how South Africa apartheid ended. I never saw the soccer movie <laughs> with Matt Damon. Right. So I don't feel qualified enough to weigh in on South Africa, but I feel oh. like I'm going to be learning yeah. about this in the days to come. Yeah. And he's comparing this like the dumbest fucking idiot imaginable that he is. Not only is he radicalizing his audience, okay, but to compare this and to think that this is a viable solution for peace for Palestine and the people in the Gaza Strip, you have to be so fuck like it's despicable. You know, he's like, Oh, I can't denounce Hamas because I'm not there. It's like, oh, okay, so you're just gonna make the situation worse. Right? You're gonna you're gonna mm -hmm. basically justify and reinforce 
the violence that is going to make everything worse for the people that live in Gaza. That's all you're doing. That's all you're doing. You privileged champagne socialist bougie asshole. That's all he's doing. Nonviolent struggle won the civil rights movement in America. Yeah. It's just, it's so weird. Yeah. Yeah. By design. Because if you knew him as a revolutionary figure, by the way, I love being like Nelson Mandela is not a tanky because if you use the terminology tanky, then yes, Nelson Mandela would fit that 100,000%. Wow. Just so you know. Wow. Okay. What do you mean he's not a tangy? He, he, he. Learning new yeah. stuff hey, every Algerian day here. here. The National Liberation Front had to literally move away from the countryside and the mountains of northern Algeria to the cities. The movie Battle of Algiers showcases the brutal reality of decolonialization by taking the fight to the settlers themselves. It's an unfortunate reality, but that's how it's been historically speaking. Absolutely. So they just compared this situation to uh, Israel. Right. Absolutely. Just listen. You got to take the fight to the settlers. That's what that guy just said. You got to take the fight to the settlers. Wow. You know, the, the Israeli civilians who just, who weren't, by the way, were not even settlers. <laughs> well, I guess it depends. If you, if you say any, any uh, Israeli, any Jew in the entire area of Israel is a settler, then yeah, then I guess you could say that. So I guess that's Hassan's take on the situation. It's just, this Ouch. is so wildly despicable. We're going to get to all of it in a second. What's going on here? Hassan's drinking. Oh. He's drinking some. Why am I okay. talking about this? Because it's not that far. Oh, in case you thought I was just taking him out of context, maybe you know, not being fair to Hassan, being bad faith, that he was making the comparison. Someone asked him directly, why are you talking about this? And his direct answer is, because it's not that far. It's not that different. Why the fuck do you oh, think okay. he's talking about this? Okay, let's hear it again, just for posterity's sake. So, why am I talking about this? Because it's not that far. It's not, it's not that far off in history. And it's important to reframe this perspective because a lot of people see the violent reaction to an apartheid state. And if you are not aware of the endless violence of facilitating said apartheid state, you think, wow, this is unprovoked. I cannot believe how unprovoked this is. That is by design. Okay? This is not unprovoked. There is no unprovoked violence in this circumstance. It is absolutely unimaginably ahistorical to consider this a violent action that is completely unprovoked. Okay? There you go. It's all justified, I guess. Right? Under that narrative. Right. Yeah, I don't... Oh, look... <laughs> Hassan's a fucking moron. I don't sign off on anything he's saying. Obviously, I know what he's doing. I looked up apartheid. Apartheid says segregation on grounds other than race. Is this... Mm -hmm. I mean, I... Does this qualify as apartheid? They're, the Gaza Strip has their own government, and I guess they're saying... It's an open air prison because they are not allowed to leave Gaza. They're not able to leave Gaza. I mean, they 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 have access to the sea, but I guess they don't have boats or anything. Right? Are they allowed to go into the water? I don't think so. Okay. Not Palestinian. Hmm. Okay. I don't know if you know this. My name is Hassan. 
I am Muslim, I'm Turkish, so a lot of people might get that confused, especially right now, because you're like, oh, this guy's fucking, uh, you know, probably a, a Muslim guy. Uh, it was, you know, who knows? I am not Palestinian. So, for me, the only assessment I can make is that, yes, Hamas is an, a fundamentalist group, okay? Palestine is an incredibly diverse area. It is in, in well, historically was a very diverse area where Jews, Christians, and Muslims lived there under uh, the the uh, Ottoman rule. Okay, it is not me saying Hamas represents the interests of the Palestinian people. Hamas represents Palestinian vengeance according to the Palestinian people because that violent retribution is the only way that they can see. Uh, is the only way they see out of this struggle. Palestinians consider Hamas to be the only government formation that is at least in some way, shape, or form protecting them. They are fully aware. Isn't that exactly the same for Israel? Uh, no, because Israel is evil and unjustified. And apparently Hamas is justified. I just, I feel like Israel... He's he's making the argument here that Hamas is the personification of violent vengeance for the Palestinian people, and right. that's okay. Yeah, but he's talking I mean, that's what about, it sounds like. but in the context of Israel, who obviously wants a pound of flesh for those fourteen hundred uh, Israeli citizens that they slaughtered, right? Right. But that's not. That's not justified in Hassan's mind. No. I just I don't understand why it's okay for them to ha have vengeance. Look, I obviously I think peaceful resolution is the way out. And I look, I, I we explained, I thought very well at the be 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 very beginning of the live stream. What's really going on here? Come on, come on. Hassan uh, has no idea about geopolitics or how power works or any of that kind of stuff. These people are in power be because, you know, it's, they can do whatever they want. That's what people want to do. So he, they're he doesn't care. These people. His, no, he his doesn't view, care about any of that no, stuff. His view is, oh, this in his mind is an example of why like liberalism is cucked and doesn't work and why you have to be a radical revolutionary, you know, revolutionary. Look, every... Essentially. And it, you know it, it's funny too because like violent struggle doesn't work though. No, not not in this situation. Not in this right. situation. It's not going to work. And it's funny too because he's so because he's so racist because his brain has been so rotted to the core to hate America and to hate liberalism as a concept. He's siding with a group that would fucking kill him. Oh, I know. Okay, Hamas would fucking kill this guy. He's yeah, not they don't Islamic. Like weakness. He's any fucking atheist? Would they yeah. even consider him a fucking apostate? Hamas would kill and throw all the LGBT people, all the trans kids off the fucking rooftops. And these stupid, stupid fucking pieces of shit are just because they hate America so much are advocating for a group that would murder them all and take away all their freedoms and force them to live in a far right-wing religious government and situation that they would all fucking despise. And yet, they all hate America so much that they're supporting this group. Yeah, it's totally insane. Like, they would kill him for being weak. Like, they'd be... They don't want weak people. They want people who are going to pick up guns and fight with them. And as soon as you show any sign of weakness, they're going to kill you because you're useless to them. That's uh, that's the environment that they live in. Yep. Hassan would never survive in that environment. No. Like uh, Sam Hyde called him out and he ran like a little bitch. Like uh, Hamas is going to just chew him up and spit him out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is it's obviously just insane, but. That every single time Hamas does something that fucking Israel counters with uh violent retribution that is tenfold okay 
Do not take their autonomy away by being like, oh, this is a separate moment. This is a separate instance. I, I make no... So, so he's literally saying don't separate them. <laughs> so st he's literally advocating against you separating the Hamas, you know, violent action. From the population. From the population. He's saying that's taking away their agency. <laughs> I just, I just, this was wild to me. Yeah. Really making the case for... For just blowing being, the shit out of them, you know. Yeah. And not <laughs> having kind, any sympathy for the people in Gaza whatsoever. Yeah, really making that case. It's kind of insane. No mistake. The actions that happened yesterday are not simply... The actions that happened yesterday are not simply Hamas. If you think that it's simply Hamas... Uh, and you are a leftist or you're a radical po uh, person who believes in radical uh, politics or at least aesthetically believes in radical politics, you are not seeing the entire, you're not seeing the entire picture. Were there brutal, unjustifiable acts of violence that uh, civilians had to endure? Absolutely. Absolutely. I've seen the fucking videos. I know. I saw the girl with the dreads in the back of the pickup truck. That shit is completely unacceptable. Okay. Uh -oh. But I feel the butt coming. But that might not represent the interests of the Palestinians. Wait, wait, wait. I saw the girl with the dreads in the back of the pickup truck. That shit is completely unacceptable. Okay? That might not represent the interests of the Palestinians, but that is violent retribution that was an inevitability. Okay? It's violence is unstoppable in that situation. If all you know is violence, if all you have withstood is violence, if every single moment of your life is violent, okay, some fucking douchebags are going to behave in that regard. Uh, whereas uh, during a uh, a military operation, they don't even have a decent standing military. They don't have anything. They have no rules of engagement. They don't have fucking a standing military. They literally built these little tin cans, okay, that they strapped a fucking parachute to so they could fly over the Israeli smart border. You think those motherfuckers have any, like, a, uh, like, you think those guys uh, have, like, a, like a decent understanding of, of, uh, of how to, to make sure that, like, uh, a lot of white Western leftists will... Uh, be able to continue defending them PR wise? Of course not. Because that's all that matters, right? It's just the ability for, you know, white leftists to defend them. It's not like, you know, what matters is just committing unspeakable atrocities on people. That doesn't matter. Just the narrative that's all that matters, apparently, in this uh, conversation. Narratives are not going to. So, fix this conflict. I mean, you know, the, he's saying that there's so the people. It's so, it's so interesting. So earlier he said that they're smart enough to figure out that that they don't care about the blowback, but now he's saying they're so stupid and unsophisticated that you can just absolve them of uh, any of the wrongdoings. Essentially, you can all all of this is just to blame Israel. Blame Israel and America by proxy. That's the only thing that's going on here. He wants yeah. to be able to say it's the West's fault. We did this. That's well, like it's the even only worse than that. answer it's, he always has. It's, it's actually much worse than that. Um, because he's not just saying it's Israel's fault. He's saying he's saying it is Israel's fault, but also you can't really criticize them for doing it. Yeah, because right? it's Israel's fault. No, 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 no. Not because that he's saying you can't really criticize them for doing it because this is what liberation looks like. <laughs> I, look, that's what that's why he gave that. Like, this is why it's like he's being such a fucking cowardly little weaselly bitch. Because on one hand, he's like, oh, you know, I saw what happened with the girl with the dreads. You know, it's really bad. It's it's not justifiable. But then he won't denounce the action. Then he's like, well, but, you know, this was a operation. The people are unsophisticated. They can't control their troops. You know, they're all just a bunch of fucking idiots and tin can. Like, what the fuck is this? 
What the fuck is this shit? That's what's going on here. He wants to justify Hamas flying into Israel, you know, killing people. But like, oh, well, you know, they went a little too far in some places. But I, I you know, maybe that was a problem, right? Like, this is why this is sick. This is yeah. fucked. I mean, they had to all coordinate. They all did it at the same time on the same day. Well, he's, he's being a fucking lying piece of shit. Okay. There's no, when they were planning this operation, the leadership of Hamas is not like, listen, guys, make sure yeah, you don't no kill raping. any. Yeah. Don't kill or rape any innocent civilians. We're only going to go after military targets. That did not, that conversation didn't fucking happen. The conversation was, we're going to go over there. And I want you to just fucking shoot and kill anything that fucking moves. That was yeah. the conversation. And that's what they did. You No, well, I'm sure they said rape whoever you feel like raping. Yeah. I mean, that's... Oh, you know what? Don't kill anything that moves. Make sure you get a bunch of hostages so that we can use them as human shields. That's, yeah. So don't kill everyone, right? You can kill and rape a bunch of people, but but make sure you keep, a, you know, some alive because we need them as hostages. Right. And Hassan yeah. is over here. It's a free for fucking all. running interference for this shit, carrying water for this shit. It's despicable. It is I don't know despicable. how Ethan could stand being on a fucking stream with this piece of shit because he gives some mealy mouth, weak sauce. Oh, yeah, it was bad. It was bad. Yeah, it's so bad that then two seconds later, you fucking start justifying it. Get the fuck out of here. Well, he, he is lying. Like all the all the justifications that he comes up with are bold-faced lies <laughs> they just are yes they are you look into them and they just there's no there there this idea that israel is committing atrocities on the palestinian people 24 7 is just fiction that's yeah, the problem right. i have look I, right. i'm open-minded if the israelis are being you know pieces of shit and killing a bunch of people senselessly for fun look that's not good no. But they can never come up with that. It's exactly the same thing as... Well, as... Look, th there are instances where Israel's done fucked up shit. You know, we talked... The, the settlers are fucking awful. They shouldn't be around. Yeah, There's but they're not gripe. They're not marching in and fucking raping and killing people. Yeah, I know. I mean, they're obviously, not. look, it's fucked up if some Israeli settler is going to buy a house in the West Bank. Yes. And think I'm moving there. My per my private security is going to start being dicks to everyone. That's fucked up, but that's not like that's I'm not going to go yeah, rape and kill this. people, right? For fun, not, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like worlds apart. Yep, but Hassan just doesn't care. Let's see. Yeah, he, I love this. It. Is you know this is what you got to do. Apparently, this is what the whole liberation works like us, even though he's so fucking privileged because he. He is not going to have the like if a bunch of people, okay, let's like imagine that wherever Hassan lives in his fucking Hollywood mansion, okay, if those people created like their own autonomous zone in California, and those mm -hmm. people went off and started doing terrorist attacks on America so badly, so much so that the American government had to start bombing where Hassan lives. You think his take is going to be a little different on whether he supports people doing these actions, these terrorist actions, if suddenly he's going to get bombed, if his property is going to get bombed, if his house is going to get bombed, if he's oh, going to get gonna fucking bombed? Oh, it's going to be totally bombed? different. Oh, suddenly it's going to be a little different. Maybe they shouldn't be fucking doing this crazy shit. Yeah. But no, from his safety and security of his fucking Hollywood mansion, he can just say this like horrendous shit. So, you know. Yeah, I don't look, there's no, I don't, I just think it's best if you categorically deny this violent revolution malarkey. I know they always, I mean, I guess they want to go back to the American revolution, right? They want to say, oh, that was, that worked. Yeah. I guess that did kind of work. It's not really a fucking you... comparable situation. Like, th but this th this is why, like, I don't even want to talk about it because it's so fucking stupid when they bring up this shit, okay? Again, 1948, you have a situation. Mm -hmm. They want to split the country in half. Is You know, the Jews in Israel say yes, and the non-Jews and Arabs say fuck you. 
we don't we refuse for there to be any two states that exist and they go to fucking war they go to war to annihilate the population what do you think mm-hmm. would happen to the jewish population if the arabs won okay do you think they would have just said oh listen you can all live peacefully no, under our, been... our under our rule, right? You think no. that's what what would happen, or you think Holocaust all those people? Part two. Yeah, you think all those people would have been either killed or expelled from the fucking country? Killed. Right. It would have been. It would have been both of those things. And it's like, but guess what? They fucking lost. Okay. They said no. We're not going to accept the two state solution. They went to war and they fucking lost. And now, you know, seventy years fucking later. Everyone's dealing with those fucking consequences. Right. Maybe you should have fucking agreed. Right. That's not what the fuck happened in in America. That's not what the fuck happened in apartheid Africa. These comparisons are fucking retarded. I just want to be able to fight the. That's how you. What the fuck are you talking about? This revolutionary garbage that violence. Two state solution was offered back then. It was offered. Even more closer. It was offered in the 90s. It's been offered multiple times. And some people keep fucking saying no. Hamas is saying fucking no. They don't want peace. They don't want it. They have zero desire for peace. They have zero desire for making. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Alexander Hamilton, all the founding fathers. They they did not have. They wanted a country for Americans. Right. Okay. They didn't say, hey, British, we want you to fucking all die. Yeah. Okay. And cease to exist. Situation. They said, we want to have an independent country. If Hamas right. said to Israel, we want to have an independent country and we're willing to not fucking fight you, if you let us be an independent country, we would be in a fucking completely different situation. That's not what's happening because Hamas isn't interested in governance. They're not interested in having a functioning country. That's not their goal. And it never was. No, their goal is just to be shitheads to Jews. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're Jew haters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the So they'll go to the Civil War next and they'll say, look, it's the Civil War. Violent action. Yeah. <laughs> successful. Okay. Freed the slaves. Well, that was the I South. Mean, actually, I mean, that would be a bad ex- comparison too because the South started it. Well, the South started, and I will also argue that it didn't, like, I don't, the civil rights movement was won through peaceful protest. Yeah, but see, they create a bunch of fiction about this. Oh, Martin Luther King was a secret revolutionary communist, and actually, it was all the secret, you know, he specifically worked hand in hand with all the secret leftist violent activists. Um, look, they had uh, some look, kind of, like, 10-dimensional chess strategy to make let's it so leave, that, you know. Let's leave the fictional stuff out of it because right. I just I'm just saying I don't that's what their can... response to you. I is know, I know, obviously, right. obviously, obviously. They're gonna try to win the argument by lying because they're liars right. and that's what yes. they do. But I'm just saying I think you could make an argument that the Civil War I mean, yes, they won technically, but you still had Jim Crow and segregation and all that stuff. So right. I mean it wasn't I would argue that the violence le- was what led to other other That's countries got point, rid yeah. of yeah other countries got rid of slavery without having a civil war and if you could compare those countries i think the violence is what led to jim crow obviously because they it created were, resentment they forced yeah exactly psychological yeah exactly. i mean that's a great point and i, and I you know i mean i don't blame and that the hostility this, wasn't right. resolved until there was peaceful resolution right and and people talk about how 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 the assassination of Lincoln made Reconstruction so much worse, and how things might have been so much better because Lincoln, who was fucking based, had this i you know this idea of like no 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 we need to welcome the South back in the fold and not like punish them because he was looking at it from a broader American identity he was looking at it from a grander timeline perspective of like we need to just heal the country and right. not just be fucking you know. Let our emotions and angers of vengeance consume. Retribution, yeah, exactly. And retribution. But he got assassinated and retribution reigned supreme. Exactly. And, you know, then that caused so many problems afterwards, right? I just want to have the best arguments against this this idea because it's like, it's so much like a cancer. 
so many of these kids they have this idea of violent revolution Bunch that's of fucking kids who've never everything. done shit in their life okay stilling still oh, I know. you know living off their parents dime or talking about fucking doing the violent revolution you know uprising <laughs> oh, fucking my it's God. wild okay it's the the larping yourselves into war <laughs> yeah oh my god it's so true it's so true the useful idiot dumb shits make way for the psychopaths they're angry they're reacting to the violence that is their constant lives okay they have nothing they have nothing left i've said this already It's religion making them think that they can actually win? They're truly delusional? Yeah, dude, totally. It's, it's definitely religion. Yeah. Look, he's disgusted by that because they don't, they're not following his sermon. He's dog yeah. whistling too hard that they can't keep up. Yep. Yeah. <sighs> How dare you blame religion? Look, it's Israel's fault. Can't you follow along, you dumbasses? He's so demoralized. Look, look how his chat, look how fucking brain dead his chat is. We have someone in all caps saying, how can it be war when Palestine doesn't even have an army? People need to wake up. Oh, that's so sad. We have someone says, why is this, this is, okay. Why is this hard to understand? Palestine going to clap back after 60 years of immoral, unethical eviction from white people doing colonialism justified with religious text interpretations so we have very mask off on the whole racist aspect of it hmm. you know um we can't someone else we can't choose what hamas does and doesn't do but the israel government totally has the opportunity to be influenced so there you go you should you should S smart right you should incentivize the violent psychopaths of the world because you can't change them. You just have to, the people you can influence, you have to just deal with those, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Hassan's so serious. To here. them, they are retaliating for the first time uh, directly inside of the border walls of their, of their prisoners. They make no distinction, which is wrong because there is a distinction. Of course there is. Like, these are people born on the other side of a border wall that, uh, who knows what their fucking perspective is, you know what I mean? They could literally be anti-Zionists anti living inside of Israeli borders. That is, there are plenty of them out there, okay? You don't know. You can look for nuance in the situation, but... I need you to understand that, that that wasn't a peace festival. That was just like a regular pe festival, by the way. Like uh, the that that is just like massaging the narrative, which is still unacceptable. Two hundred and fifty people dying in a fucking in a in a in a festival is ridiculous. It's awful. Well, I'm I'm glad it's unacceptable. I'm glad it's un. We've reached the point. Okay, I'm glad it's unacceptable. Right? You can just justify away all the violence, but I, I, that's unacceptable. Like, I don't. What is fucking happening here? What the fuck is happening here? Is he, is, maybe I'm wrong, okay? Maybe I shouldn't be this angry at Hassan. Maybe Hassan is literally just so fucking stupid. He doesn't understand how in one breath he gives this long fucking story about um, Nelson Mandela and he's justifying the violence that Hamas does to his entire audience. And you can read his audience, the chat and his chat is interpreting that way. And he's so stupid that he doesn't understand that's what he's doing. Because he then he says, "Oh, well, doing. it was undeniable. You know, it was bad that they what they did to the the this chat. Like, what? Or what? Or like, what's happening? What the fuck is happening here? How does his fucking dumb fuck brain operate? That's why I wish he wasn't such a fucking coward. And would actually talk to someone who challenged him. And say, well, what the fuck are you doing? What the hell is happening here? Ethan needs to challenge him more, doesn't he? He does. He needs to watch this and be like, well, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, so weird." He, because he said that the, the peace, the music festival wasn't a peace festival and calling it a peace festival is massaging the narrative. Right. So, I mean, he's, he's saying, no, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. 
I mean, it wasn't a, in my understanding, it wasn't a, a quote peace festival either. It was just a music festival, but yeah, sure, whatever. It's right. Inaccurate, but it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't fucking matter, right? Doesn't matter at all. No, no. not at all. Matters to him, though. That's what's weird about it. It was just a music festival. You just heard people say it's a peace festival because every every little minutia counts, okay? Here, uh, this is another thing I wrote on Discord. I'll read it. I said, uh, because many people were saying, like, oh, you know, Israel is going to retaliate. Israel is going to retaliate. Um, two things I said were, remember, Palestinians have nothing, no control over their supplies of water or electricity. Their peaceful coexistence project in the West Bank has led to a tremendous amount of bloodshed and displacement because there is the other side of this. Everyone says, oh, they lost the PR battle. They lost the PR battle. There is no PR battle in this circumstance. I hope you understand that. In their perspective, in their eyes, they are living in hell every single fucking day. So there is no PR battle. They don't give a shit about what our perspective is out here. You need to understand that. You want to know why? It, it, okay. This is the brain run. This is this very simple question, Hassan. Very simple question. Does Hamas's continue ex continual existence of attacking and terrorizing Israel help or hurt, more likely to help or more likely to hurt the conditions of the people in Gaza? It's a very simple fucking question. Yeah. Obviously yeah. hurt. Yeah. If the Obviously. rocket stopped, look, if Obviously. the rocket stopped, if, if Hamas made a declaration, they're like, look, we're not going to attack Israel anymore. We want uh, to fix Gaza up. Right. Turn it over a new leaf. <laughs> we want to host the Olympics one day. There you go. Right. It'd be a completely different story. Yep. It'd be like a million different stories. Yep. But no, he has to tell his audience this stupid long story about how, listen, listen, guys. In South Africa, it was the violence that actually helped bring about positive change. I you can I'm going to talk about this in relation to, to Hamas. That, I mean, it's unacceptable that they killed a bunch of kids at a music festival. But I, you know, what am I saying? Is violence good? Is it bad? I don't know. I just said it's what was required to have changed in South Africa, and I'm just comparing it to Israel and Hamas. You be the judge. I'm not going to tell you what the fuck I'm saying. Like this Look, is so I retarded. I don't know anything about South Africa, but I'm sure that Hassan is getting it wrong. <laughs> like, Obviously, he gets everything does, fucking wrong. Right? How does how does violence? How does Hamas being violent lead to a solution here? It doesn't. It's so yeah, it obvious. Doesn't. That it doesn't. <laughs> I know it doesn't it's, in a million, no billion way years. Yes. No. So I just, like, what are we advocating for here? How is violence the peaceful solution, Hassan? How is it any solution? It's not solution it's to anything. It's not. It's not. It's not. I mean, unless he's saying, look, maybe Hamas can win. And like when people are typing in his chat from the river to the sea, maybe he's thinking, well, that, that's a possibility. Well, see, that's and that would be the question. This, the, he would not answer. Okay. He would never fucking answer this question. Of course. They, yeah. If you had like, the oh, button to press, you know. Listen, it's not my place to tell the Gazans and they're, they're living and they're open air prisons. It's not my place to tell them. Like, it's like, no, 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 no. I'm not asking you fucking their place. I'm asking you, what the fuck do you think the future is of the situation? Do you think there's any fucking positive future if you and other people and Hamas decide to keep being violent is there any way that that creates a positive life for the people in gaza the answer is obviously yeah. no obviously no i'm just look he's in favor of those rocket strikes he really is he wants he likes the rockets flying yeah i mean i if 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 the if the here, let me let me do, let me do some bad faith prediction. Okay, bad faith. First of all, Come on. If the Good Hamas faith. people broke into Israel, and let's say they killed fourteen hundred uh, military people, right? They mm -hmm. fled, and they didn't they didn't kill any civilians. They just killed military people. He'd be doing like backflips. He'd be saying, "Oh, this is based." 
right? Of course he would, yeah. If now here if they killed settlers, okay, if they somehow like transferred to the West Bank with magic and they killed West Bank settlers, I think he would be basically on board with that. Right. That'd be my prediction. I don't know. So th right. like this is so fucking this like his stance on this is so fucking weird and all over the place and intentionally vague and obscure. Yeah, because he's a revolutionary. He sees himself as a revolutionary. He wants right. violence. He wants to see violence. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because on the PR front in the West Bank, okay, for years and years and years, Israel has only taken. Israel has only partitioned. Israel has only bullied. Israel has only displaced hundreds of thousands of Palestinians. An act of settler colonial terrorism that even Israel, if you go back to the fucking 90s, uh, would, would, would turn a blind eye to. Okay? Because they thought, oh, those are just the religious kooks that think that West Bank belongs to Israel too. And now that is the norm. Now, they first... They turned a they turned a blind eye. So so he's basically making the argument that these terrorists coming in and killing fourteen hundred people is payback for the West Bank settlements. That's the argument he's making. That's what he's saying here. Yeah, e even though these people don't live in the West Bank, they live in Gaza. It's a completely different right. part of the country under a completely different government. Right. They're not doing it for the West Bank. Number one. Yeah. Number two, he's hard so to hang on to your collective being against collective punishment with this argument too <laughs> yeah i guess he is in favor of collective punishment because the israelis did pull the they did forcibly pull the israeli settlers out of gaza okay they did the thing you wanted Hassan. and right. this is you know and i guess now you're in favor of collective punishment i guess you're in favor of it now um and that's a great point and you know number two he's too stupid to say well wait a minute why has the israeli government you know, which was originally against this. And why has some of, you know, even though a lot of Israelis are still against it, why has some of the Israeli thought shifted on the, on the settlers? What happened to make them change their mind? You know, when it comes to the, the Palestinians, Hassan has infinite empathy and infinite patience to try to understand why they have the position they, they have. And yet when it comes to some someone in Israel who has a position that he doesn't like, he has no understanding, no empathy, no patience for like, well, why do that? Why that position? Could it be that all the suicide bombings changed a lot of people's fucking opinions on the situation? Maybe that had something to do with it. Just a thought, right. you know? Do you think that's what's going on with the settlements? Or do you think it's just like religious? It's both. It's both. Hmm. Because w like, if it wasn't for the, this is what, and this is why Hassan's analysis of this is so fucking stupid. If it wasn't for the violence, okay, that the Palestinian people have, you know, perpetuated against the Israelis, if it wasn't for the suicide bombings, if it wasn't for all the terrorist attacks that have existed, you know, 10, 20, last 10 or 20 years, the situation would be so fucking different. There wouldn't be settlers because people wouldn't support it. If it was just like peaceful people living in there and they have and they had people coming from America or from Israel, or from other places to go fucking displace people from their homes. The Israeli government would be like, we're not supporting this. And they wouldn't, and the Israeli citizens wouldn't elect people to government that did support that. Why? Right. It's only because of the violence allow, this is why this is so stupid. It's why Hassan's such an idiot. He's like, he's like, well, I said this in Ukraine and I'm going to say it here. When you have violence, you allow the most right wing, you know, radical factions of a country, you know, come into power. He's solely saying this in the Hamas, right? He's saying this in, in regards to Hamas. He ignores it in regards to Israel, where it's like, yes, right. the reason that the right-wing religious ultra-nationalist Israelis have any power or have some power to leverage, you know, the things they want in Israel is because of the violence against Israelis is used as the justification yeah, so these people are attacking bombers. us, they're shooting missiles at us, they're suicide bombing us, blah, 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 blah. If that's not happening, the justification goes away and they don't have support. Right. Get a bunch of flower picking peacenik liberals in power. Exactly. Everything's safe.
When houses were getting bulldozed in the West Bank, none of those people fucking did anything, okay? The West Bank Palestinians weren't the ones who were violently uh, pushing back against Israel. They were peacefully coexisting, okay? This is important to understand. They were peacefully coexisting under an apartheid regime, okay? They built illegal settlements. First, they said, why are we giving money to these fucking religious kooks? That's what they said inside of Israel. They said, these guys are fucking weird. They're gross. They're going over to West Bank. Let's not even, they're freeloaders. Why are we giving them any money? But the state had different opinions. First, they said, we'll turn a blind eye to it. Then they brought in the bulldozers. Then they protected the bulldozers. Then they started building partitions on West Bank territory. They started cementing their fucking water wells. They started building partitions. They set up security checkpoints and they became the military security apparatus in West Bank. So don't fucking tell me that when you're peacefully trying to coexist with Israel, they let you fucking peacefully coexist because what is going on in the West Bank is nothing but violence. No they, they built like a gated community, it sounds like. Yeah, that's what they do. That's exactly what they do. They go in and they build a gated community? Yep. But And that's bad or just... Well, they're doing it because they're slowly trying to basically, you know, push the Palestinians out of the region, so... Oh, really? Yeah. They're, so they're not letting the Palestinians to... live in the gated community. It's a Jewish-Israeli gated community. Right. And the gated commit community is growing it's 500,000 now and they're just kind well, of there's like, little yeah it's not it's not 500,000 in one clump there's like they're all over the place it's like you know, pockets right right gated communities everywhere yeah that grow larger and larger and larger yeah it's exactly right what it is. yeah so it's basically it's like the green zone in Iraq but just growing yes hmm that's not good. No, it's not good. <laughs> That's like not a good situation. But but here Hassan is using this as as justification, yeah, justification for, what happened in Gaza, for, yeah. for Hamas being violence, essentially. Right. Hmm. Someone uh, they... just tweeted, someone tweeted this out. This is important. Someone says, "Never forget what Arafat walked away from in 2000." So this is from when Arafat, who was the head of the PLO, was trying to bill clinton if you were old enough to remember was in some like massive uh camp david peace deals between arafat and i forget the president of israel at the time right and uh this I was do, the, i remember this yeah arafat was like fuck off yeah so this is in 2000 okay so for hassan to sort of be also cringy about the proposal included the establishment of a demilitarized palestinian state on some 92% of the West Bank and 100% of the Gaza Strip, with some territorial compensation for the Palestinians from pre-1967 Israeli territory. The dismantling of most of the settlements and the concentration of the bulk of the settlers inside the 8% of the West Bank to be annexed by Israel. The establishment of the Palestinian capital to be in East Jerusalem, in which some Arab neighbors would become sovereign would become sovereign Palestinian territory and others would enjoy functional autonomy. Palestinian sovereignty over half of the old city of Jerusalem, the Muslim and Christian quarter, and custodianship, though not sovereignty, over the Temple Mount. And a return of refugees to the prospective Palestinian state, though with no right of return to Israel proper, and the organization of international community of a massive aid program to facilitate the refugee rehabilitation. Okay, so mm -hmm. 2000, they said, we're going to give you 92% of the West Bank, 100% of the Gaza. We're going to pull out the settlers. Okay, we're going to give you a capital in East Jerusalem. And Arafat said, no. Yeah, fuck off. And Bill Clinton was so enraged, he banged the table. It says report that he banged the table and said, you were leading your people and the region into a catastrophe. And that's yeah. exactly what, what happened. And it, yeah, it's kind of played out that way. That's exactly how it played out. Bill Clinton said that? Bill Clinton said that, yeah. Yeah. I knew that guy was cool. An article by The Guardian. Arafat didn't negotiate, he just kept saying no. So none of the, none of this, by the way, 
none of this enters into Hassan's like calculation when he wants to blame Israel for literally everything. None of it does. That, well, like, I mean, peace I... was tried for many, 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 many years. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I think it's been tried like four or five times. I mean, there's yes. there's been all kinds of yep. different offers over the over the different American attempts at peace in the Middle East, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, not everyone was talking about Kushner get, finally getting peace in the Middle East, and then all this blew up. Right. I guess he didn't get peace in the Middle East after all. No, I mean, they made progress. I'm not going to deny that, but obviously this is going to push things back in the wrong direction. You think? Yeah. I think so, yeah. I don't know why, though. There's there's a lot of people, and I'm very confused by this, there's a lot of people on Twitter who are like, oh my God, this is World War III. I don't know what they're talking about. This is not World War III. This conflict is going to be very, like, unless Iran attacks Israel or something, like, the conflict is going to, which I don't think is going to happen. Iran is always, Iran is already signaling very hardcore that they're fucking terrified of Israel coming after them, okay? Like, Israel might attack Iran. Who the fuck knows? That could happen. But they were like, I don't want American troops in this. I this is gonna lead to World War Three. That like that I don't know why, like what is the scenario that that happens? Unless like all the surrounding countries suddenly decide to attack Israel, which doesn't seem likely. I don't know why people are so concerned that this is gonna become some World War Three scenario. Yeah, I think if I think if Israel just started carpet bombing gaza just like total fuck it attitude like look we're gonna build whatever we want there we'll build a fucking shopping mall right i think it would make the arab countries that everyone is afraid of getting involved even more afraid <laughs> to get involved like they'd be like oh shit israel's gonna nuke us next fucking nukes over tehran right like they are not playing around anymore they would lose the uh, consent of the all the Western nations, obviously. We'd be like, what? Oh, my God. How dare you? Yeah, exactly. That's why they're not going to do it. But right. I don't think it would cause World War Three. That's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't know. Like, they're all like, oh, oh, my God. You know, someone's going to attack Israel. And then America's going to defend Israel. And then Russia and China are going to attack it. Like, I, I just, I don't know what the fuck scenario people are talking about. When they're like, that well, World War Three. I just don't know what the scenario is. It's very bizarre. It's a weird fucking thing. This is going to be very localized uh, between Israel and Palestine, maybe some additional surrounding neighbors. Highly unlikely, very unlikely that America is going to be sending troops or anything involved. I don't know why people are like so like raising the fucking alarm on this situation. There's nothing to even, uh, you know, signal that that's something that's going to happen. So. But whatever. Right. Let's get through this. Not to the same degree as Gaza, but certainly just as fucking violent at the end of the day. If you live in West Bank and you're a Palestinian and you fucking leave West Bank, you can't get back in. You are not allowed. Your life is fucking ruined. You've watched your own cities, towns, villages turn into parking lots, Israeli parking lots where motherfuckers from Brooklyn come in and live there for free because it's government sponsored. It's nice free real estate. So don't tell me peaceful coexistence can happen. Okay? You can literally look to the West Bank to see what peaceful coexistence looks like. Those guys are at leading the charge on PR. They didn't do anything. They didn't do anything, and yet they get bullied by settlers on a daily fucking basis. And now Ben Gavir and his fucking, that Kahana's dog is able to control and, and, and make the situation in West Bank even more insane. And that aggressive violence in the West Bank is what happened to lead to this incredibly like unimaginable military action that took place in southern Israel and is still ongoing. They took over precincts. They killed a bunch of fucking commanders. Isn't that weird? He 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 says this incredibly pauses. He's looking for an adjective to describe this travesty, and he lands on unimaginable military operation. 
You're like, well, that could go in either. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> Unimaginable. That could go in many directions, right? Like, you think he's simping for this engagement? I, I mean, it's weird. He didn't say horrific. He didn't say horrible. He didn't say he tragic. Stopped him. He was going to say base, but he had to stop himself. Yeah, he didn't say monstrous. He said this. Look, incredibly, like unimaginable military action that took. Say, I cry. What does that mean? Unimaginable. I mean, is that a good unimaginable? Is that a bad unimaginable? What does that mean? Why? That's a weird word for him not to use. This Rag is him up and just rag him up and distract me. What is I, he I talking heard. about? He he's laying out why. Um, He's laying out why they sh why the Palestinians shouldn't be peaceful. He just said, "Look, okay. the Palestinians are trying to be peaceful and do everything right in the West Bank, and they're getting punished for it." Right. So, therefore, I guess that justifies Hamas in Gaza. Well, when he says unimaginable, is he talking about the the hang glider thing? I don't is know he what he means the... by it. He just, I think, he just means like it's large. Hmm. Took place in southern Israel. Took place in southern Israel and is still ongoing. They took over precincts. They killed a bunch of fucking commanders. How do you think that happened? This is one of the most well guarded per capita, like per ounce of land areas on the fucking planet. Because they got so horny on their endless conquest and violence of the West Bank. He is talking about the the he means unimaginable in terms of how did they pull it off. So he doesn't even mean unimaginable in terms of like the horror of the action. He just means unimaginable in terms of like, I can't believe they did it. <laughs> yeah, but he's mystified at how cool yeah. it is, though. I guess. That's the way he's coming at it. I think he right. was going to say based. He's talking about the most recent attack, the music festival attack. Yeah. He's talking about, yeah. 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 Bank that they did not look in their own fucking backyard. There's a reason why Palestinians look at the PLO and think that they're fucking Israel's own people, okay? They are unpopular. The West Bank leadership is completely unpopular. Do you wanna know why? Because they see the leadership as just another cutout of the Israeli apparatus. They see that leadership as letting West uh, Palestinians in the West Bank get fucking slaughtered. They watch every day as dudes that don't live in fucking Israel or Palestine that flew in from like Brooklyn or fucking Long Island or wherever the fuck fly in and forcibly take their own fucking homes and tell them, sorry, this is mine now. Okay. Is, is that what's going on? Like no, they don't buy the land or anything? No, they buy the land, but you know. So the Israeli government buys the land from... Well, no, 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 no. The Israeli government doesn't buy the land. Private people buy the land. Okay. Um, but I'm sure there's situations where private people go to whoever owns the land and they say, hey, I'll buy like the property from you. Like the person owns a bunch, you know, an apartment complex and then some investor says, hey, I'll buy your apartment complex. The guy who owns it is Palestinian. And they'll say... And this doesn't come up in the conversation. A Palestinian guy owns an apartment complex. Some um, person who's probably Jewish, maybe Israeli, maybe he's American, will come and they'll have some big investment fund. They'll say, hey, we'll buy the property for like a shit ton of money. The Palestinian guy says, cha-ching, paycheck, takes it. And then they start, then they evict all the the Palestinian people that live there. Yeah, we. I mean, we got that problem here in Los Angeles, so. Right. It's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. But he's making it sound like they just, uh, you know. Yeah, he's making it sound like the it's like the, gentrification. <laughs> he's making it sound like that the Israeli government just kind of walks in with guns and says, "Get the fuck right, out of here!" Get the fuck out of here! Right, exactly. You know, and then they yeah, just you're on the street. Israeli, and it's not, it's not what's going on. Yeah, I mean, right. it's not good, but it's not what's going on. Okay, and then you can't push back. You can't push back because the police force is an occupying military apparatus that comes in and fucking kills you. <coughs> so tell me, how is peaceful coexistence going in the West Bank? 
Do the do the police there on the West Bank just kill people randomly? I don't know what their police brutality so is like. Hassan is making the argument that the the police in the West Bank that are part of the Palestinian government are all just capitulating to Israel. The Israelis, yeah. Yeah. So therefore he's using like now again, you could leverage this the way that I've leveraged it, which I think is responsibly to say Israel is engaged in doing the exact wrong behavior and how they should be trying to advocate for peace, but he's doing it instead to try to make the argument about why I guess Tomas is correct, maybe question mark. Yeah, look, ex exclamation point, no question mark. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Hassan loves Hamas. It's not. This is why the people of Palestine have no one to turn to but Islamist fundamentalists like Hamas. Which isn't simply a terror cell, but also the governing body that was democratically elected in fucking Gaza, okay? It's not like those guys see the world eye to eye with some... I mean, why does the West Bank government just tell the Palestinian apartment complex owner, fuck you, you can't sell your apartments to foreign nationals. That's what I want them to do in Los Angeles. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. Yeah. If I mean, I don't know if they have. I don't know if they just don't have the ability to uh, enforce that. I don't know. It's a good question. I would do that. Look, go to the Palestinian apartment owner in jail. Say, look, you went from being an apartment owner to now a jailbird. How do you feel? That was dumb. Mm -hmm. Should have kept your apartment complex. Dumbass. Someone like myself, I am not aligned with Hamas. But time and time again, I have said this exact. It's always a but. I mean, always it could be a but. <laughs> there could be a situation because, as we talked about, the Israeli government does end up protecting a lot of the settlers, so that so they could be complicit in essentially when someone buys out the property, um, you know, even if the Palestinian Authority is against it, they could the Israeli government could be complicit in basically saying, well. You know, we control the area now or something. I don't know exactly the logistics of how it works, but. Sounds messed up. It's very messed up, yeah. Sounds totally messed up. Not like those guys see. Listen, listen to this. I want you to look for the butt. See the world okay. eye to eye with someone like myself. I am not aligned with Hamas. But time and. <laughs> but. <laughs> Did you hear I'm not that? aligned with Hamas, but it's never a <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> You never want to have, I'm not aligned with a terrorist organization. Space. <laughs> but. You know, big pause. Big pregnant pause. But, you know, that's never a good look, right? <laughs> There's always a but, man. There's always a but, yeah. He can't just say it. He's got to he's gotta get in there and let his audience know. But. Right. <laughs> but, Sitch. Time again, I have said this exact same thing okay you have to remember when imperialist actions occur in your country the most reactionary elements are seen as those who will fight back they will be seen as the violent liberators you will galvanize them and inside of Palestine, this was by design they neutered and executed all the fucking socialist revolutionaries Every single one, until all that remained was the the, the Mossad-backed fundamentalists, and now that's what all of these people want. That who killed off all the socialists and commies? Well, he's saying Israel helped other Palestinians too. <laughs> This is getting weird, man. Yeah, this yeah. is getting really weird. Well, it's the whole What's going you know, on here. I feel like this is like a he's writing fan fiction here. Or something. It's the whole you know, like oh, America supported, um, you know, the whole America supported uh, Osama bin Laden narrative right. regarding the when they were fighting the Soviets. 
So therefore, vis even though it's not true, you know, America was supporting a bunch of various rebel groups who were fighting the Soviets. And then, you know, I talked about this on that stream. Pakistan basically betrayed America to to they were the ones that that basically made it so that the religious group um, that Al Qaeda basically took control of the region, blah, 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 blah. Right. He's just trying to kind of put that narrative on Israel now with Palestine. Right. Okay. Israel's like, we don't like commies. Right. You but when there's kill actually, all your commies off. Like, yeah, there's very little evidence to support the claim the way that Hassan is making it. Like, you know, it's obviously, but anyway. Is there a lot of commies in Gaza? I mean, it's just. Maybe. I don't really. I mean, I'm sure there were. I'm sure there were. Listen, wherever there's revolutionaries, there are commies. So, <laughs> is uh, there? I'm sure there? I'm sure there were, right? I'm sure there were. Okay. I mean, the Ba'ath Party All these people was, want was technically supposed to be a communist party. But I mean, I was in Iraq, but still. Really? I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I don't think they're not really manifesting, you know, <laughs> communism. But... Huh. Okay. Interesting branding. Yeah. Want is liberation, and the only people that will give them that, or at least will fight back so they die on their own terms, is... That government apparatus and its uh, formation, its military formation. Uh, there, there have been closed door meetings where the the most far right elements are literally saying, "We'll kill our own hostages. It doesn't matter." Okay, we'll kill our own hostages if we have to. It doesn't fucking matter. Now, if if you do that, it's over for Israel. If you kill Israeli citizens that were taken hostage inside of Gaza with Israeli bombs, Israel as a nation state will collapse. Okay, just so, you, like, and I, I, I put this in here just so you can really understand how fucking stupid Hassan's analysis of the situation is. Yeah, I was going to say, this is pretty out there. He, he honestly thinks... That if an Israeli hostage is killed from a bombing strike, that the country of Israel will collapse. Yeah, how well, how does that work? They're like, oh, look, it's over. We got to disband the government now. Like, how fucking stupid is he? All that's going to happen is they're going to say, well, Hamas is using them as a human shield. And yeah, they're horrible people. people. Look, a lot of people expect all the hostages to be got to be killed. Yeah, like, like this is retarded. This the, yeah. this analysis is so stu it's just shockingly stupid. And it's funny because I heard the second thought idiots repeat this, and I guess this is where they got it from. They got their time from Hassan. I'm like, this is the stupidest thought process ever. What is? They don't even explain the thought process. I mean, he he gives some explanation, but it's like, yeah, it doesn't make any it. sense at all. Let's hear it. I want to hear yeah. this this intelligent commentary here. One million percent. Right now... One million percent. That's how, okay. that's how it's a very strong prediction. Okay. Okay. Look, there he's is, got a lot of confidence. Yeah. There are way too many far-right forces inside of the Israeli government and plenty of people fucking despise them for understandable reasons. Okay? So he's basically saying right-wingers control the Israeli government. So that's a key puzzle piece here. I want you to remember that, Sitch. It might be important later. Well, the, the, so the first key puzzle piece is that the right-wingers are fine killing the hostages. Okay. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Right. The second puzzle piece is that there's too many of them in government. The third puzzle mm -hmm. piece is that there's many Israelis that hate those people. Okay. Which should sort of show you that it doesn't justify Hamas doing what they're doing, right? If If... If you just don't like the evil right wing Israeli and there's a bunch of people that hate them, how is Hamas doing what they're doing gonna isn't that gonna help those people? Isn't that gonna yeah, that's what galvanize I'll... their cause? Not only that, I mean if they don't if the right wingers don't care about the hostages and a bunch of right wingers are in government, why is killing the hostages gonna disband the government? You literally no, we'll said find they out. don't they don't care. I'm not, I, this is my speculation. If the ultra nationalist forces are able to literally fucking, uh, uh, you know, wipe out the entirety of Gaza and kill hundreds of Israeli hostages 
in that situation, Israel internally already is a powder keg, there will be mass protests. There will be mass protests internally inside of Israel. That was they it, haven't by the way. done. That was, that was all they said about it. Haven't left so it's going to be like a Black Lives Matter thing? Yeah. It's going to be like all the citizens are going to go out in the streets and protest? And that's yeah. what's going to disband the government? Yeah. That's just a okay. very good analysis of the situation. I don't know how that's going to lead to lead to civilizational collapse. Yeah, no, no. So to answer the question you asked a while ago, it is the PA does say it's against the law to sell your house or land to Israel. So much really? so that they can actually have sentenced people to life in prison with hard no. labor for doing so. Look. Um, Get that apartment owner. I want him in chains. I want him on the rock chain gang. So essentially, so it looks like essentially what will happen is they'll sell the property in a kind of down, in a kind of DL way. Um, and they'll, tr they'll try to escape. And then essentially the settlers will either have like private security or the Israeli government will essentially protect them once they start to move in. So... And there's also situations where they claim, you know, settlers claim that they bought the property and so they're slightly theirs and the people living there claim that they didn't actually buy the property from them and it's a whole big fucking clusterfuck, so. Hmm. Leveled Gaza. Without hostages, they would have leveled Gaza, 100%. So, so here's Hassan essentially implicitly Defending them taking hostages, I guess. Okay. I don't, I'll, and I'll be real. I'm not, I don't think Israel to, I mean, I don't think Hamas taking hostages had any impact on Israel's bombing right now. I don't think, I don't think that has a, a change in their strategy here. I could be wrong, but I don't think that has a big impact on any of this stuff. They don't know where the hostages are and they're targeting military targets yeah they want to take out as many bad guys from the air as they can before they go in with boots on the ground i mean i would be shocked if they haven't killed a bunch of hostages already because i'm assuming what hamas did and which is what hamas said they were going to do is that they were going to bring the hostages and they're going to split them all up and put them in key locations that they thought israel would bomb them right so i'm assuming they've already killed a bunch of the hostages so this prediction has already not come true. But I don't know. I guess we'll find out. They are gearing yeah. up for a ground operation instead of leveling Gaza. Do you want to know why? Because they have hostages. That's the reason why they are gearing up for a ground operation so they can be more targeted. Yeah. Do, do you think, I mean, I... It's a two-fold thing. They're going to have their eyes out for hostages, obviously. They'll probably give them f information on each and every person so they know what they're looking for. Yeah. But they're also out there. They probably have... Remember the deck of playing cards that they did for the people that they were looking for in Baghdad? They're going to do something equivalent of that. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I know the they got... They... I know that H Hamas has turned over... Two, I believe, American hostages. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. So I guess but we'll find out. But... They're going to go in. Well, when I talk about the deck, the deck was the bad guys, the leadership that they wanted to kill. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. They're going to do that same exact thing with Hamas leadership. They're going to say, look, we want these guys. These are the aces. These are the kings. These are the queens, the jacks. That's why they're gearing up to go in. Sure. I don't know what Hassan is talking about. They're yeah. going to go after the leadership. They're like, look, this place needs new management. Right. We're going to make sure that that happens. Same exact thing that we did in Iraq. Hopefully they have better luck, right? They're right next door. Yep. Right next door neighbors. They got to have better luck, right? We're well, half can... a world away. I mean, I, I think their only solution is to is like what I said to try to salvage relations with the PA uh, and, and try to get them in on it.
if they even want to, they could maybe they don't want to, but, but to try to get them in, I think it's the only solution to this conflict currently. So that's so such a dilemma, such a dilemma. Like if your leadership in the West Bank, do you want to move your family to Gaza and be leadership there? Of course not. Not without a giant security detail, right? Right. They're, well, it's gonna, they're going to have to work. That's why I'm saying it. It, it. You know, that's why the settlers' situation is so fucked because that's like it, it's going to require a joint effort between Israel and the PA working closely together, trust with trusting each other to to sort of you know do what needs to be done. And I, I, I mean, I don't see how it's going to be very difficult, if impossible, as long as the settlers are basically. You know, fucking well, up all the West this, situation. All this happened because the too many they needed too many security forces in West Bank to protect the settlers, right? That's, well, that's why they one didn't of have the people claim. on the that's lines. A claim. I don't know if that's true, right? But that's a claim. Okay. It must be emphasized that armed struggle by Palestinian resistance against the occupier is legal under international law. This is from the UN General Assembly. So look who he's retweeting. Can you see that? Matt No no no, that's a picture. Kennard. Oh, J.T. <laughs> Chapman. I just I know that second guy. thought. That's got that's the guy that's got us blocked. Yep, I know that avatar. That's the guy. That's the it's based that they were killing all the Israelis. That's the tanky right there. That's the guy, yeah. Who uh, Hassan uh, follows on Twitter. I hope he blocked Peace Go and R.I. Uh, I'm really important too. Right, because he blocked us after we did that live stream. So, and uh, to be clear, uh, this is so. If you look at the date of this tweet, this is on October seventh. So this is on the day of the killings. Okay, second right. thought tweeted out, not that the legality of liberation struggles should matter, but here's a good little tidbit for the hand wringing liberals. So, on the day of the massacre. Second thought is tweeting out why it's actually legal for Hamas to kill and do all the horrible things they did. And Hassan is bringing this up on stream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let that sink in. Think there's any hand wringing liberals at Curiosity Stream? <laughs> you mean Nebula? A Nebula? Yeah. <laughs> I was trying I guess, to think what it was. I guess so. I guess so. Nebula must Resolution. Have be just drowning in hand wringing liberals. It must be who are not in my favor guess. Of, you know, like terrorist actions. There. Yeah. Thirty seven forty three adopted in nineteen eighty two. There is no ambiguity about it. It reaffirms the legitimacy of the struggle of peoples for independence, territorial integrity, national unity, and liberation from colonial and foreign domination and foreign occupation by all available means, including armed struggle. This is why the Human Rights Watch calling Israel openly an apartheid state is actually legitimately terrifying for Israel, and that's precisely why they've been doing counter-propaganda against it non-fucking-stop, okay? Because once the NGOs start openly stating the situation, okay, start openly fucking addressing what is going on with a, with a shred of honesty, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, there is more uh, legitimacy to the counter-struggle. So I, I don't, you, don't you love all the dog whistling? He keeps bringing all this stuff up. He doesn't. He doesn't. He's not going to say it's not legitimate for them to do this. He's going to bring this up, and it's just going to hang there. He's going to let it hang there. I mean, he's basically building a legal case for it. yeah. What's going the, on here? Right. Yeah. Think about it. The Human Rights Watch, Amnesty, calling Israel an apartheid state. That is genuinely important. It's genuinely important because that all of a sudden reframes every single violent retaliation in a way that has never been reframed in the Western media. The UN still won't do shit. Yeah, of course, UN is feckless. But it, even if you are an institutionalist, there is literally uh, like a legal legitimacy to the to these actions. Okay. Do you think taking foreign hostages and killing foreign civilians was a smart move by Habas and beneficial for them in the long run? No, of course not. I think taking hostages from a purely military perspective 
is is uh, in an effort to uh, not let Israel fucking level Gaza. I don't know. <laughs> he can't oh, even he can't even denounce it. He's like, I is he mean, gonna, I is he gonna maybe. look? He wants to finish the sentence so bad. Yeah. I thought he wasn't gonna finish it. Maybe he's no, gone. I just I like my morality in this situation and my immediate perspective is very different than like my my uh completely uh completely uh uh like I'm not if I'm not looking at it from the perspective of morality and like individual harm being conducted to civilians, then it is uh it is an act of desperation, but it is one that is uh thus far uh, relatively successful if your interests are to ensure that uh, you're not leveled immediately after engaging in violent retaliation against an apartheid state. And you like he's trying so hard to justify hedging, like, hedging, right. hedging. He's like, well, listen, I'm, I'm not going to talk about the morality of the individual people, but I mean, I guess it was pretty smart, right? It was pretty smart. Really? You think this was smart? I mean, I don't think I don't think doing the action was fucking smart from a military perspective. It seems really fucking stupid from a military perspective. Okay. Yeah. Oh look, he's thinking. Stop about saying what settlers said. and those who support them are not civilians, dude. This is fucking nuts. Like you've no, like. Listen, I know, I know it's easy to fucking say that, but, you know, there is also real humans there. Come on. Well, there you go. Listen, we finally, finally reached the point where Hassan will say something good. Okay, right. he will finally push back on his audience and say, don't say they're not civilians. We've, we've, we've reached the bottom, okay? We've reached the bottom point. Hell. Yeah. Also, bro, you're a fucking settler. What do you mean? Like, we, we live in America. Uh oh. oh okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, see, now that's interesting. So, if that's the take, right? If if we're if you're gonna justify, if, then not even Hassan, because Hassan is trying to say that this, you know, for his, I'll be charitable. He is creating some distinction here, right? But if the people in Hassan's audience and second thought are going to say that if you're a settler, you deserve all this violence and they're going to call American settlers. I mean, what are we, what are we doing here? What's going on here? Yeah. Means we deserve nine 11, according to him. <laughs> Dude, what was the point of them attacking the music festival? I'm pro Palestine, but that's going to make them lose a lot of support internationally. Bro so this is Ooh. the clip. This is the full clip that, that you saw Pierce played just the beginning of. Okay. Brother, I can't begin to explain this to you, uh, okay? I, I, they don't give a fuck, okay? They don't care. They have nothing. They don't care. I hope you understand. They care about getting hostages so that they can have leverage. That's all they care about. They care about fighting back. It's like, I, I don't know... I don't know how to explain this to you because, like, what support do they get from the West anyway? What international support do they get? Those who will support Palestinian liberation will support Palestinian liberation and will be called anti-Semites, will be called fucking terrorist supporters, as you are seeing in the chat already. And those who do not, or those who at least like aesthetically claim that they want Palestinians to like live and they're human beings who deserve a life of dignity, but then turn heel immediately... Uh, when they say, well, this time is too far. I think Gaza is going to get wiped out and it's actually Hamas's fault. Well, then those guys weren't fully uh, invested in this anyway. Liberals have been fighting for optics for so long. So, uh, yeah. So long they forgot about literally anything else. Exactly. Israelis were having a rave near where the apartheid regime has created. Uh, uh, Look who it is. Oh, yeah. Twitter squirrel. Twitter squirrel. Yeah. Very famous on the tanky left. Right. Who's uh, basically creating a justification for killing all those people at the dance. The world's largest open air prison, torturing and killing its population with one million children. They were partying, getting high, dancing the techno without a care in the world near to a concentration camp. By the way, 
This is not considered depraved and inhuman. It's considered normal Western civilized behavior to go to the fence of a concentration camp and have a party. Who cares? Palestinians like Iraqis, Afghans, Yemenis, Syrians, Libyans are subhuman anyway. Is, uh, is, is a different way to frame uh, what is going on there. I, I didn't show it to you because I'm scared that there's going to be TOS shit. Okay? Oh, that does the, A different way to frame what's going on right. there. Right. Now, he's going to say it doesn't justify it, but it's weird because I'm pretty sure this Twitter scroll is saying it to justify it. So I don't even know why you'd bring up that tweet in the first place. But okay. I just, this whole concentration camp thing, I'm so mystified by what what goes on in Listen, Gaza. I don't do know if you knew this. Do they grow their own food? Listen, like, how do, they, how do they get food in Gaza? I don't know if you know this, Adam, but like, mm -hmm. the Jews, okay, in Germany, they just started attacking the Germans. Like, the Germans were like, listen, we're going to split Germany in two. The Jews can live here. The non-Jewish Germans can live here. The Jews said no, and they attacked them, okay? And then they, mm -hmm. the Germans won. This is how, this is World War II. I don't know if you know this, okay? The Nazis won, and then they had to just construct these concentration camps because the Jews kept suicide bombing the Nazis, mm -hmm. right? And that's why the Nazis had to restrict trade into the concentration camps because the Jews were just, <laughs> just wouldn't, you know, coexist peacefully with them, right? Right? I that's mean, exactly a, comparable. We should definitely crazy, call what's going on concentration camps because it's the same fucking thing. Crazy retelling of history here. That's yeah. completely inaccurate. So Completely fucking insane. Look, that's why, look, I don't, I contest this whole, it's a concentration camp thing. What, yeah. how do they get food? Do they grow their own food? Does it ever, every morsel that anyone eats in Gaza come from Gaza? Do they have their own monetary system? Do they have a central bank? They're, I mean, they can import things. It's just like uh, Israel and Egypt have the ability to look through everything they import. Because I believe that the so, overwhelming well, majority of food that is imported into the into Gaza, yeah, that's what uh, comes thinking. from out or from outside, right. So it's not. And I think that's part exact, of the big problem with like what's going on now. So it's not exactly a concentration camp. Like if I no. wanted to start a restaurant in there, I could probably import food and spices and cooking ware, right? Because so they, they just don't a, want me. Yeah. They don't want me to import weapons, dynamite, hand grenades. Those are the kinds of things that they don't want me to import, right? Right. It doesn't sound like a constant, like in the strictest sense, a concentration camp or anything. No, it says in, they get a lot of their food, supposedly, they get a lot of their food from Israel. Right. So, it, oh, wait, <laughs> the Israelis are feeding them. Right. Are they paying for this? What kind of, what do they use shekels as they do in Israel? Are they uh, using the Israeli I mean, some shekel paid, some for of it money? Is, is donated through various world food program okay. organizations and things of that nature. So, yeah, I don't look, I don't but buy is, anything but, Hassan is saying about the concentration camp or any of that garbage. But this is why this is so stupid, because he, he's like, oh, my God, they won't let them have concrete. They won't let them have X, Y, Z. And it's like, yeah, because when they do... They build tunnels. <laughs> Hamas builds tunnels. They build bombs. They keep fucking with them. Like, it's not a situation where they're, they're not saying, okay, we will live, you know, peacefully with you, you know, and work with you. That's not what's happening. It's never right. what's happened, you know, with the uh, Gaza, anyway doesn't justify those people dying. I'm not saying that at all. I, I hope you understand that. But you should comprehend what is going on. That's such a weird statement. So he's like, I'm not justifying them dying, but you should understand what's going on. Like, you understand that the people at the music festival, like, there's a border fence there across a large country. Okay. They go to the border fence. You know what they see? You know what they see at the border fence? Mm. Land. Okay, because yeah, there's not, nobody on the other side, right? Yeah, it's not. It's not like they're like they're literally acting as if you know when AOC went to the fence and oh, she yeah, and, and she was like crying. 
And you're like, oh my gosh, he's seeing something horrible. And then you saw the other side. There's nothing there. Nothing, she's looking, yeah. It was like a building. Like there's just a building in the distance. She's not looking at right. anything. Right. It's the same thing. It's not like she's acting like these people like walked outside of a concentration camp. They're looking inside. You know, you've seen the pictures of like the Jews in the concentration <laughs> camp. They're like all like skeletons, essentially. That's like, what they're seeing right. across the Yeah. Yeah. They, the they literally think that like a bunch of people uh, went to the border they look right. through the gate, they see a bunch of skeleton people on the other side, and they're like, this is a good place to have a fucking rave. And then they start yeah, dancing. Yeah, let's do some ecstasy. Right, right. Like, <laughs> that's what the fucking, like, insane worldview that they're laying out here with this narrative. Well, it's got to go with their whole concentration camp theme. Yeah. Liberals have been fucking disgusting. Ukraine supporters completely giving up on the image of actually giving a fuck about liberation. Come on, dog. Come on. I know. What, what, what was... So wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait. I want to go back. Listen to this. Okay, very carefully. Response has been... F Justify those people dying. I'm not saying that at all. I, I hope you understand that. But you should comprehend what is going on. Liberal left response has been fucking disgusting. Ukraine supporters completely giving up on the image of actually giving a fuck about liberation. Okay, so here's someone in the chat saying, the liberal left in America sucks... Because, listen, they supported Ukraine, but now they're giving up on an image of actual liberation, okay? Referring to the travesty of, of October 7th as actual liberation, right? Mm -hmm. Let's see what Hassan's response is to this. Come on, dog. Come on. Oh, he seems kind of, like, upset. Maybe he's saying, come on, dog. Maybe he's going to say, come on. Like, obviously, it makes sense. This is a difference between Russia and invading ukraine you know and like the situation in israel with hamas invading israel and killing a bunch of innocent people right like i don't think most people i'm sure some people would but i don't think most people would have been cheering on if ukrainians just like busted into russia and just started indiscriminately murdering russian citizens left and right that were just like walking around <laughs> okay of course not yeah right so, but so, so, so Hassan's saying, come on, right? Sounds like he's going to give some pushback, maybe, right? 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 Maybe, sure, a little bit. Maybe. Yeah. Look, he's turned over a new leaf. He's maybe. finally going to be, yeah. finally going to be reasonable here. I know. What, what, what was the expectation? Oh, no. He's upset because he's like, obviously, that's the case. <laughs> oh, ouch. there's no pushback. He agrees. So close. He agrees. Ouch. Yeah. No. Okay. Comparing Ukraine to Palestine for many people was simply just a way to win arguments online. There are more people right now that are more interested in, like, clipping something I say out of context or saying that I'm, like, a Sitch. supporter of terrorism and, yeah, and want people to be fucking butchered mercilessly or whatever the fuck. Then Bro, what, do you, what is this whole, this insane conversation? If you're not simping for the terrorists, what is this insane fucking conversation that we've been watching for the last 30 minutes? Why did you tell that Nelson Mandela story? What is the point of the Nelson Mandela story? To justify violence, to say that Nelson Mandela did b based violence and it won him the war in oh, South okay. Africa. So yeah. why would you tell that story in relation to the violence on October 7th? Hmm? To imply that the violence is somehow going to win this war. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. Sitch, why do I have to spell everything out for you? I mean, should, I'm getting accused of taking clips out of context. I'm just saying. Should, I'm, listen, I'm a very stupid person. I don't know what's happening here. I don't you know what I'm You should be watching. able to figure this out. Okay. Look, I found one place that you can do street view in Gaza. Yeah. I'm learning so much. Okay. They have a lot of roads, but there hasn't been a lot of street views. I don't. Did some Google person? It looks like they're on some. They're walking through like a market and taking these 3d pictures you, you've you used google maps before right? yeah i know how it works i'm aware of the technology With street view yeah mm. actually trying to have an honest discussion about what's going on mm, you honest. can't take these people seriously oh, they are just honest. more so interested in causing chaos in their own little bubbles that's it okay i don't know why many people uh legitimately thought that there was like a I don't know why many people thought that, thought that there was a legitimate interest in in emancipation for all peoples, uh, and that's the reason why uh, they were supporting Ukraine. No, 
No, they don't give a shit. And Ukraine itself doesn't give a shit either. Immediately, Ukrainian authorities were just fucking in unison collectively being like, dude, it's, it's just like, you know, what happened to Israel today is just like what Russia is doing to us. Like, they compared... They compared what a violent state apparatus and its brutal invasion into their fucking lands was actually uh, similar to a militant group finally fucking pushing back in some ways after years and years of colonial suppression by a much more powerful state. I, I can't imagine why anyone, I can't imagine why anyone would hear Hassan talk about the situation and think that he's simping for terrorists when he describes October 7th as finally pushing back okay, right. against an evil colonial state. I don't know why anyone would ever confuse that with advocation or sympathy or you know anything positive about this horrible terrorist attack when you describe it as finally pushing back, right? That's a it's a very interesting choice of words to use this on. Yeah. He's basically describing somebody that's been pushed to the brink, bullied yes. into action. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They finally stood up to the bully and they just right. happened to murder their entire family. <laughs> it's like, well, wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> Like, would Ouch. we describe someone who did a school shooting as, like, finally standing up to the bullies? Because that's kind of what's happening here in the way that you're describing this, Hassan. It depends. I guess it, de I guess it depends, according to Hassan. But actually, no. Ukraine saying that this was like Russia invaded them is very apt. Russia invaded them and started killing people. Hamas invaded Israel. And started fucking killing people and kidnapping people, which is what Russia is doing too in Ukraine. It makes the comparison is very close. Hamas is the de facto, it's not even de facto, Hamas is the government of Gaza. So it, no, you don't get to say it's a, you don't get to make some comparison. Well, Russia's part you know, of the state government. Hamas is the government in, in Gaza. I mean, I don't like it. You don't like it. You can say, I think there are holding those people hostages, hostages but you know, so is Kim Jong-un. You know, he's holding all the people in North Korea hostage. He's the government. He, We said that, though, but he didn't like that. He basically said the people elected Hamas because they were enraged with the Israeli right. people. And but electing see, Hamas was the only way that they could get possibly get even. But isn't that interesting? See, he's now trying to make some distinction between Russia, saying it's not right to compare Russia to Hamas, by saying Russia is a state apparatus where Hamas is a militant group when you're right earlier in the stream he was saying no 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 then you shouldn't draw a distinction the Gazan people voted for Hamas so what are they Hassan are they not a state apparatus what exactly are they look he's gonna he's flip-flopping worse than Romney here he's <laughs> master flip-flopper right with a much more full military I mean, this is also the other reason. Mahmoud Abbas has been the most moderate Palestinian leader in history. This is why Palestinians don't like him. His narrative focused on how Palestinians should focus on diplomacy, not war. America and Israel have thwarted every Palestinian diplomatic move. Abbas has not been able to present the people with any wins. He focused on internal institutions, diplo diplomacy, security, coordination with Israelis, and literally, the Palestinians, not because they're fucking anti-Semitic and think that Abbas is, like, working with Israel, which means he's, like, uh, you know, a part of the shadow government or whatever, saw that despite his greatest efforts of coordinating with Israeli authorities, they lost the land. Their people were displaced. They had to go through more checkpoints. They had to fucking withstand more armed and more violent settlers. They had to withstand more violence every single time they wanted to demonstrate. Okay? And see, look, I, I put this in here to show you, this is a valid critique. Finally, here's a valid critique. Okay? You have this guy, Palestinian leader, wants to work with Israel, and he's getting fucked. He's getting disincentivized by working with Israel. Right. This, this is the critique, okay? It's so simple. It's so easy. 
here you go. Like, like it's served to you on a platter, Hassan, for you to just endlessly shit and complain about Israel and talk about how they're really making the situation worse. And it's like, no, this isn't enough. I have to actually simp for the to violent terror. <laughs> I know. Why? 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 Because he's a because he's sad. like a fucking LARPing revolutionary. That's why. Right. This is his big opportunity to build his brand. Yep. On the Israeli Palestinian war. What a freak. Look, look at the <laughs> the chat. Oh my God. Is Talk it, to my getting... gun, Abbas. Jesus. He was an optics and a shadow wizard money gang. <laughs> oh, here's mean? here's an interesting one. He's not going to talk about it. Hassan, can you talk about the Camp David Accords in 2000 between Arafat and Barack? Mm, he's not going to talk about that. He's not going to talk about that. That would be why. too uncomfortable. Yeah, wonder why. Because he would look, he'd have to admit that they had an offer on the table and they walked away from it because they're dickheads. Yep. So please, whenever you say, oh my God, dude, oh my God, what the fuck are you talking about? We got to do diplomacy. We got to do diplomacy. That's the diplomatic outlook. Okay. You are not representing the interests of Palestinians, nor are you even analyzing it with any kind of seriousness. You are looking at it from a perfectly idealistic perspective that does not happen in the real world. Okay, okay. this is so fucking stupid. If, what is, okay, what is the more likely going to create a better situation for the Palestinians? Okay, you have Hamas, doing horrific terrorist attacks, or you have both the West Bank and Gazan Palestinians trying to work with Israel and Israel's fucking them over. And so the rest of the world looks at that and says, stop fucking them over. Don't do this. We're not going to let you do this. Which one of these is more likely to produce like a positive result for the Palestinian people and support if, for the Palestinian cause? If... America pressures Israel to stop fucking around in the West Bank. Yes. And because it's this is like this is so stupid. This is why Hassan's such an idiot. Hassan earlier, he's using what's happening in the West Bank to justify what Gaza, what the Hamas is doing in Gaza. Okay. Right. He ignoring that there's a lot of Israelis and Israeli settlers who are using the doing the exact inverse of that. They're using what's happening in Gaza. And the fact that that happened after they pulled settlers out to justify them being settlers and sending settlers to the West Bank. They're doing the exact opposite thing. And Hassan doesn't see it. He can't see it. Ideology right. is preventing him from seeing it. If Hamas didn't exist and Gaza was under control of the PA, I don't think Israel would be able to be supporting the settlers the way they are. I don't think they'd be able to do that. And I think America would be pressuring them not to. I think Isra I think the international pressure would be very strong on them. I think the Israeli pressure from all the Israelis would be very strong on them. I think the situation would be completely different. And I would say this right now. I'd say this right here. Okay. If if Hamas didn't exist and Gaza was under control of the PA and they were trying to work with Israel. And Israel was still just saying fuck you and doing settler shit to them. I would fucking be in favor of BDS in Israel at that point. Because I'd say, what the fuck are you doing? What's and I think BDSing? Most boycott diversity, you know, sanction. Oh, okay. To not support Israel financially. Right. Right. Um, you know, I would be in favor of that. If if the if the Palestinians were acting peacefully and not doing terrorist attacks. And Israel is still trying to fucking displace them with settler bullshit, then fuck Israel. And that would be the take that the majority of people in the entire world would have if that was the I case. I completely agree. That's how you enact change. You, you know, you were talking about the civil rights thing. Okay. They won through peaceful resistance. You know, Gandhi yep. won through yep. peaceful resistance. If you have like a bunch of like a Palestinians just sitting there in their homes, you know, and being dragged out by Israelis and they, you know, they're just peaceful and they just film this, you know, they're getting beat up by the 
you know, the IDF and they're, you know, whatever. And they, you know, this goes on the internet and there's no terrorist attacks. None of this shit's going on. Okay. People are not going to support Israel at that point. They're not going to support Israel. But you know what's going to make them support Israel? When you have a fucking terrorist organization go into the fucking country and kill and murder and kidnap and rape 1,400 people. That's going to make so much support for them. And the fact that Hassan is twisting himself in the fucking pretzel knots to try to justify this fucking psychopathic action when it actually harms the very fucking material thing he wants in the world shows how fucking stupid he is, shows how emotionally brain dead he is, shows how fucking tribal he is, shows how America bad brain rot he is. Because it's so well, fucking well, stupid, so obvious. Every fucking person knows that this is not the way. I don't. I don't think he's really. I don't think he really cares about these people. I think he's just basically building his brand off of this revolutionary shit. To be maybe. honest, maybe. I mean, it could be that. I hope it's not that cynical. It could be. I don't think he gives. I don't think he gives a rat's ass about any of these people. Why do you? Why would you think that? He obviously doesn't care about the Israeli people. Look, he has right. zero empathy for the people who got murdered. Yep. Right? Yeah. Do you see him show any sense of... No, he, he feels like they had it coming. He sees them as enemy combatants. He sees them as the terrorists. That's the way he sees it. Right. Look, I just... I don't think any... I think all these guys are just crazy they don't they don't care about any of these people i'm tooling all around all around gaza there's a lot of places where people have done this maybe we'll bring it up after we watch this there's a bunch of places where people have done the 3d camera thing and uploaded it to google maps mm -hmm. so you can kind of see and I, I guess maybe it does kind of have a Mexico vibe to it. There's a lot of these little shops that are just completely makeshift put together. One's like a dentist office. One is, it looks like it's at a girl's school. It's kind of weird. Are you saying that's kind of weird for an open air prison? Well, this is the thing. I, you know, I want to test that claim. I want to be like, is it really an open air prison? I mean, I saw a dentist office. <laughs> like... You've never been to the prison dentist, Adam? Well, I'm sure the I'm sure the prison has a dentist. I don't know if the the dentist is like in business. I feel like some of these places are like business owners that have got a 3D camera. And they're like, oh, this will be cool. Look, I'll put my business on Google Maps. There's one one street that's obvious that's like a, a market. It's probably like the one market everybody shops at, and it's on Google Maps, but they walk through with the 3D camera. I got to get one of those 3D cameras. How does that work? It's a camera, and it's But 3D. they don't... Look, they don't have street view, obviously. They haven't let the Google car cruise through Gaza. <laughs> right. But... Any street is very far from the border. Like, there's a wide margin between any any building and the actual border wall so there's like a big swath of desert so you're i'm sorry but the idea that the people out in the desert at the rave were going up and seeing people on the other side is ridiculous <laughs> maybe campers Okay, obviously no sing no person is like, oh man, it's perfectly uh, valid to kill civilians. Okay, it's not. You, I mean, you, you say that, and yet you literally were in the stream supporting people who were saying that exact thing, Hassan. So I don't know how you can pretend that no one is saying that. But if you want the violence to end, which I do. Okay, you have to end the apartheid. Do you get it? The the dumbest motherfucker on the planet asking you if you get it, Sitch. How does that yeah. make you feel? I, I, I get it. I'm pretty confident. At a certain point, you have to recognize that you cannot collaborate with the violent apartheid state. Okay? 
You just can't. Like, look, what is this? How can you? Did how you, can you hear you that? that? Yeah. How do you think this guy cares about anyone? Yeah. You can't collaborate with a violent apartheid state. Yeah. You can't. Well, it just it's just completely delusional. Yep. He's acting like Israel's just at the board. Like he's acting like it's Hunger Games. I just look. I don't see that. Well, this is why I I want him to answer this fucking question: Is what is what is he actually? Number one, what does he actually want Israel to do in response to this attack? And what does he think Hamas's response would be? Like, like is Hassan really so fucking stupid that he thinks if... Where'd you except, go? Oh. oh, did I get cut out? Yeah. Th this, Probably all uh, my Google. Hassan really think that if Israel capitulated to Hamas's demands... That they would just become peaceful or something like what? What is is that? He see honestly think this? Yeah, I mean, this... maybe no, he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, no, he probably does. He's probably stupid enough to actually think that. Sure. Do you think this is furthering the Palestinian cause? Oh, I question. am not Palestinian. Okay. Oh, My analysis on the situation can only be one uh, uh, that has empathy for uh, people that are suffering, that only looks at it from the outside, okay? As someone from the outside, we shall see. <laughs> oh, God. What the heck? What was what that? What response was that? Oh, that was I'm him, basically. That was him basically saying, you know, he wants to say, oh, yeah, off with all their heads. Right. But he he knows he can't say that. He's like, I'm going to get my ass kicked off of Twitch here. I'm not Palestinian. I can't. I can't comment. I'm not Palestinian. I can't do anything but be empathetic to terrorist attacks. Also, will it mean better? I don't know. We'll see. Like, wh how, what fucking delusional world do you think is going to be better? Like, I mean, it could be better in terms of if Israel takes over the fucking area. Wipes out Hamas. Maybe something better will come from that, but shit tons of fucking people are going to die. So no opinion then? No, I, I think it's insane to just look at the actions of individuals that are disorganized in general too, that are violently breaking out of their actual shackles, okay? These are the people oh, wow. that are the established government of the fucking region, you fucking piece of shit. He keeps saying, they're just, oh, they're just random individuals, just random disorganized individuals, okay? They're just random disorganized individuals breaking out of the shackles. You can't hold them responsible for murder, for a organized, systematic murder rape campaign. You can't hold them responsible, these random individuals for just organizing of, like, as he himself said. They were able to organize in, in secret a massive military operation against Israel, a country well known for its ability to spy on people, right? And able to pull off this horrific incident where 14,000 people were killed, raped, kidnapped, etc. And yet he just is like, oh, it's a bunch of disorganized, you know, a bunch of disorganized. Yeah. Oh, what did I say? 14,000. Sorry, 1,400, four you know, killed. And then two, an additional 200 plus kidnaps, right? Um, right. Yeah. yeah. No, there's just a bunch of random disorganized people. They just stumbled across the border drunk, you know, just managed <laughs> to wing the whole situation, right? Like, this is fucking insane the way he's talking about this. Violently breaking out of an open air prison. Uh, like, it's insane for me to turn around and be like, well, you know, it, this is really bad PR, sweaty, because me. And my actual leftist uh, coalition, we're having a really hard time uh, defending liberation for Palestinians from a colonial apartheid settler terrorist state. That's nuts. Okay. So he's racist because he's calling them colonial, colonial colonizers. So he's a fucking racist. Number one. Uh, and number two, it's not just about the PR, Hassan. You understand that, right? It's also about, like, you know, the fuck that the thing that's fucking horrific. <laughs> like, 
the reason people on, the, on your leftist community are talking about the PR thing is because they know there's a bunch of psychopaths in your audience who don't care about like the horrible tragedy of it all. And so they're trying to make an argument to appeal to them to say, listen, I know you don't care about like the loss of life of the Israelis because you're a psychopath, but like it's not going to help your cause. And you're not even going to give that argument anything. anything. It's so deeply unserious. It is so unserious. ridiculous. Especially because, like, obviously in that disorganized, in that disorganized and, and violent uh, retaliation to said unjustifiable apartheid state, there were so many fucking casualties Okay, because they're not super organized like they're not. This isn't a defense of, of uh, Palestinians in general. This isn't a defense of Hamas or its actions. Wait, you just it is a defense. You just you just said that the reason. OK, you fucking lying scumbag. You just said that the reason that there were so many civilian casualties was because they were not organized. OK, mm -hmm. that's a lie. That is a fucking lie. They were they totally were, organized. What are you yeah, talking about? They were they had highly, fucking body cams and shit. They were highly organized. They were bragging about the civil, civilian casualties. They were uploading civilian casualties. That's what they were fucking told to do. Is Hassan so fucking stupid or is he just lying? Is he so stupid that he does not think that Hamas did not tell them the goal here is to go over there and kill and kidnap everyone you can. That was the goal. It was not disorganized. That was the goal. They accomplished their goal. Yeah. That was it. Got a bunch of horrendous footage and uploaded and marketed it as well. Right. He's, he's acting like, oh, well, all the civilians that died, it was just like a mistake. You know? No, listen, there's always John over there. John's a loose cannon, right? No one likes John. We were all like, we we're just going to attack military targets. And then John had to go crazy and kill 200 plus people at a music festival. Like, that's what he's fucking acting like happened. Right. Like it was a school shooting or something. No, like, yeah, just but it was just like. Some random act of violence. Right. You know, it's, it's hilarious because he always whines and criticizes whenever there's police violence. He always says, oh my God. They always give the bad apples, you know, excuse. They always say, oh, there's just some bad police officers, right? And his song gets super fucking triggered and says, no, it's a system. It's not just not individual bad cops. It's a system. All the cops are, they're part of an evil, violent system. And yet Hamas doesn't get the same treatment. For some reason, Hamas doesn't get the collective treatment that the, that the police get. Hamas doesn't get the collective treatment that white people get. He doesn't get the collective treatment that Americans get. No, all the Hamas people... When they do something infinite bad, charity. Yeah, when, yeah, when they do something bad, they're Bring infinitely the charity. Infinite charity. Infinite individuation. Oh, they're all just there's individuals that are part of Hamas that are doing bad things, right? It's right. fucking wild. This is more so to tell you that our optics and our PR is completely, uh, completely irrelevant in the point of contention. OK, because the reality is that every single thing that happened yesterday has happened 10 fucking fold to Palestinians literally since the inception of Israel. So it's like really I listen tenfold. I missed the time where 10 times the Israeli government sent uh, the army into Palestinian uh, territory and just started be... shooting and killing and raping and kidnapping just like all the people they could find. I forgot. I didn't. I missed when that happened, let alone happened 10 times. Well, which would be 14,000, by the way, just as a quinky dink. Right. Yeah. I, I know, missed when said... that. Yeah. I missed when that occurred. You know, I'm just. Look, I found a, I found a review for the Janine restaurant in the Gaza Strip. I mean, open air prison. Oh, okay. Where there's some, some reviews of the restaurant. Right. Two months ago. The experience deserves a lot of good treatment from the workers. Great service. Great and respectful workers. Employees are very good people. May God bless them and all Muslims. All respect and appreciation to you all. Janine restaurant staff, cleaners, supervisors, accountants, chefs, restaurant manager, all thank you and appreciation. Listen, 
do they have look this place has great photos for the food i'm like hungry you they got have 29 some. they got 29 reviews and a five and a half star rating listen that doesn't prove uh -huh. anything adam okay well you just need... look it's an no, open no, air wait. prison oh, stop. <laughs> it doesn't prove anything now until you have to go look up the reviews for the prison cafeteria here in america and see what the yelp reviews for that are okay and compare them from five months ago the most luxurious and best restaurant in the capital wow yeah oh i guess this must be the capital right. but gaza city is the capital right yeah i mean there's a bunch of restaurants that have some pretty amazing looking food here no you gotta go i listen, mean for an open air prison you gotta go look up the yelp reviews for prison cafeterias in america now okay just to be fair and equal and balanced <laughs> i'm starting to really this whole open air prison thing is really starting to rub me the wrong way the mm, more i see you, the like the right. hungrier i get and the more food i see in the gaza strip that looks absolutely delicious yeah I'm getting very angry. Yeah. It's almost like it's a bullshit narrative. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. Oh, look, this place even offers takeout. <laughs> Listen, those people. Oh, my God. It's identified as women-owned. Oh, wow. Those people are breaking out of the prison to assassinate <laughs> 200 people at a music festival, Adam. So it's justified. You know Holy shit. Holy shit. Great now, restaurant. How many three reviews? Five many, and a half stars. Women owned. And, and now all how many of these restaurants are now destroyed and oh, their yeah. owners killed or displaced? But look, since you gotta understand these people right. had their backs against the wall. Oh, okay. I at understand. the break restaurant, they voted for Hamas to do right. this. Right. So that they could end their suffering. Yep. Okay. And in their entire lunch menu from here forward. Right. It's yep. ridiculous. Yep. I bet when the people uh, are pulling their children out of the rubble or they're running away as their homes are destroyed, they're like, yeah, I'm glad I voted for, uh, I voted for this, for Hamas to do this fucking thing. Yeah. That's, I'm sure that's what's going on, Hassan, in their minds. <laughs> I think the people who left these reviews and eat at these nice establishments, yeah. I think they are victims of Hamas. And yeah. I think that Hassan is a fucking idiot. Yeah. And a menace to society. Yep. Just putting out this nonsense into the world that's just making the world a shittier place. Yep. These, these people, look, the people who are eating at these restaurants who are leaving these reviews, they don't want to see... Gaza Strip fucking carpet bombed because a bunch of crazy, insane people decided to go on a rape fest across the border. These people are victims of that. And it's, it's for, for Hassan to even imply that these people voted for that. These people don't have voting rights. <laughs> these people, yep. these people aren't represented by Hamas. These people probably, if if they even have to show, even if they showed up and voted for Hamas, which was close to 20 years now, we've already said that, they probably did it with a gun to their head. <sighs> people want peace. People want peace. Yeah. People, people I mean, people that have restaurant. something. People that have stuff want peace. People that have nothing are fine just with chaos. Of course. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, look, it is a battle between the people who want to build something and the people who want to just steal Try from it. people who build something. Right. And my guess is Hamas is the type of people who like to steal from people who build something. Yep. Yeah. And that's what they're doing here. And Hassan, and Hassan is basically just a mouthpiece for them. Yep. For To build his own brand. Like, I don't, I don't buy any of this shit. Yep. I don't buy it. I don't believe it. I don't believe he cares about these people. Look, I cared enough to go street map view around Gaza to see what the fuck is going on there. I cared enough to look up restaurants in the area and see if they had, oh my God, they have a taco restaurant here. These people are, oh man. These, 
These people are being terrorized by this situation, and it's a situation that is just out of their control because a bunch of psychopaths decided to do this insa insanity. And I mean, that's, uh, that's screwed up as it is, but for Hassan to sit here and basically simp for those psychopaths, what yep. the fuck? Yeah. I think our narrative, the narrative that we started this live stream with, the narrative that I'm sure the Palestinian people are very fine people that just want to have a restaurant and a family and a safe environment and are basically prisoners of Hamas who've taken over and decided that they are just going to be the security in town. They're going to be the monopoly on violence. They're going to be the state. But if they want to show up at your business and have their way with your daughters or, or, you know, take half the till, do whatever they want to do. You pretty much have no, no recourse, no recourse against it. And mm -hmm. those are the people that Hassan is sitting here simping for saying, oh, yeah, they had their backs against the wall. Israel so evil. Israel would like to help these people. You know, they would. Yep. Fucking sad. But sad not anymore. World. I mean, now, uh, Things are so much worse. So, you know. Yeah, all because you, you can't, of this listen, incident. Hassan, you can fucking not be a, a fucking cowardly piece of shit afraid of your audience and actually denounce Hamas. Educate them. Yeah. yeah. Educate say, uh, them on no, this shit. This doesn't solve anything. This makes the situation so much worse for the very people that supposedly you want to help. But no, you're too much of a coward. You're too much of a LARPing champagne socialist for your audience to say that. So, you know, whatever. You know, continue to be a fucking shit human being. What are we doing? We also are operating under the same fucking perspective that uh, Palestinians also recognize, which is that the life of a thousand Palestinians is is only worth the life of one Israeli person. Okay, because Israelis are real people; Palestinians are not. That's it. Just a fucking liar. That's all he is, is a fucking liar. That's the way we see it. Like, it's insane. Nobody he declared the way. annexation. No, look, of none, of these, none of these people have said that. I guess you, you've you said, people have said, you know, just level it. Turn I've it seen people say that, but whatever. it's not like, that's not the mainstream opinion. I just, look... It's impossible. For, it's impossible for me not to have empathy for these people. This is just a fucked up situation. Of the occupied territories. So of course, Palestinians turn to resistance because they see that this is the only way for them to get their rights. The question here is not about dehumanizing Palestinians as is happening and calling them terrorists. It's about asking the question. Why the United States supports Ukraine in fighting what they call occupation, while here they are supporting the occupier who continues to occupy us? But but let me ask you if the, if that is the the analogy you wish to draw, um, the what Hamas is doing is they are targeting Israeli civilians, women, children, grandmothers. No, they are not. Uh, is that is that is that not a classic terror? Isn't that classic terrorism? They're not fighting the Israeli government. They're fighting ordinary people. That's one way of putting it, but it's not true. I think Hamas mainly attacked military establishments, military installations. You like what? This? A music festival is military installation. Yeah. What the? F yeah. They're like this, like insane lie that this guy is just talking about. Former Palestinian information minister. <laughs> okay. Oh, is that what's going on here? Yeah, I mean, that's what it says he is on CNN. And oh. most of the people they they have arrested. It's true, but it doesn't matter because there are still. Don't say no. There, uh, don't don't fucking go against this. This is one hundred percent true, but it doesn't matter because they're not a fucking real military. They're disorganized. And of course, there were people who did some fucked up ass shit and civilians died as a consequence of that, too. But to be clear, he's not saying because it's confusing the way he's wearing this. He's not saying he agrees with this guy. He's saying it's true that they did kill civilians, but then he's weirdly justifying it 
or carrying water for it or excusing it, whatever language you want to use. But this like insane, well, they're disorganized. So I guess that excuses it, even though there's no evidence that they were disorganized. All the evidence shows that they were highly organized. <laughs> this was the exact fucking plan, but you know, whatever. Right. He just made it. He just made this up. But the overwhelming goal there wasn't simply to kill as many people as possible. The oh. overwhelming goal there was to overwhelm the military. Yeah. That's why they went and they fucking took over. Uh, that's why they went and they took over police precincts. They attacked the music festival as well, which is like, a, dude, guys, I'm not saying they didn't kill fucking uh, like actual civilians. They did. Of course they did. Don, you're a fucking clown. They went into cities and killed innocents. Oh my God, you're missing what I'm trying to say. No, we're not. If if you Look. just said that their goal was to kill and attack and take control of military installations, and that the civilian casualties was just, uh, you know, a co just an accident by the disorganization, how did they accident like? If that's their goal, why did they accidentally stumble upon a music festival and kill 200 people? Why didn't they just? go right past them and say, oh, well, these are obviously people just doing a music festival and just continue on to their military goal. Why did they have to stop and start murdering everyone? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Obviously, they were there to murder people. Yeah. To murder civilians. But Hassan could just make up a fucking headcanon fantasy in his mind based on absolutely fucking nothing, and I guess it's okay. This is this is so much worse than the whole uh, the whole hospital thing. What was the name of that hospital? You the one, the Palestinian hospital? Yeah. I don't have, I don't know it offhand, but. It's okay. You can look it up. Of course they did that. And that is completely fucked up. The goal, however, what? once again, like, what do you think three fourths is? What do you think three fourths is? Numerically, what do you think three fourths means? Three fourths of the. The, the 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 people the targets that they fucking killed were still like they're military fuck that's according to the israeli numbers okay i'm gonna ask the chat this so he says that there's some claim here that three-fourths of the fourteen thousand people that died were military M military personnel yeah i couldn't I heard that. find anything that said this does anyone know what he's talking about? Is this true? I couldn't find anything about this. I found the opposite. When I was trying to look into this, what I saw was of the 1,400 that died, only around 200, 250 were, were military uh, people. So I don't know where he magically pulled this three-fourths number from. I could not find any verification for this. Does anyone know what he's talking about? So look, he just makes shit up all the time. So did I say 14,000? 1, 1400, I keep saying 1400, but did he count the bait? Yeah, I don't know. Ever, so, so far, no one in the chat knows what the fuck he's talking about. They're also, this is the first time he's heard it. Yes, yeah, so I've never, I never, not only did I not, I couldn't even like find a verification for this, I couldn't even find the person making the claim that this was the case. I don't even know where this claim derives from in the first place. So I I don't know if he saw like a fucking random, maybe he saw the random Twitter squirrel tweet this shit out and he just believed it or something, but I could not find a single article that did anything like this. All the articles I saw, they all said something in like the 250 range out of the 1400 were estimated military. So is Hassan going to acknowledge that he was wrong again on fucking breaking news? Hell no. I just want to say, so because there were other clips that I don't know if we're going to get to because it's already so late. Because um, Destiny actually had a pretty good like five minute compilation of Hassan getting everything wrong about the hospital and then like freaking out about it afterwards. I want to bring up oh, why really? this is important. Yeah, yeah, bring it up. Well, okay, maybe we'll watch it afterwards. Five actually, minutes, no. who cares? I don't know. It's late, but we'll see. I'm that like means 25% of their man. targets were civilians, okay? Also, it doesn't really help your point optically when you're eating chicken wings 
and talking about some travesty and people dying. And you're like licking this grease off your fingers. I like just caught like, that. I was like, what the he's hell? Like, he's like, oh man, you're, fuck, you're so wrong. This you don't care about the deaths attack. of the, the people. Terrorist attack, finger licking good. I know. It's like, well, you don't have to fucking lick your fingers. Jesus Christ. What is this fucking behavior? fucking sitting here and being like oh that's totally justifiable that's a, that that's that happens you kind of are though i am kind much of. more interested in how that happens why that has happened how do we stop it i just capitulated i go is he really interested they are breaking in out of it? prison a prison that they're inside of not because they fucking believe bad things or whatever the fuck you dumbass liberals think. They're in prison because they happen to be born inside of that prison. An open-air prison. Okay? This, look, if you tool around on Google Maps in the Gaza Strip, yep. that prison narrative totally falls apart. Completely falls apart. I don't know what you think of fuck, like I a prison is like go to your cell, <laughs> right? Right. Not go to our restaurant and leave reviews. Reminds me of Vegas a lot because it's all desert. Just I saw I'm really loving terrorism. Oh God, it, it, the amount of uh, you are Hassan. Look, look your chat even knows. Look, your chat even knows. You've done zero research. You've like heard open air prison and you think this is like a episode. This is like American me, the movie or something. Yep. So they see it in real life, but then you turn around and you say, Hassan really loving terrorism. It's fucking nuts, dude. There are so many people that just don't want to hear anything I've said. This has been, I've covered this for four fucking hours and people literally turn around and clip one opportunity and go dog, there you, there you do it. There, there you go. I got him. I got him. Now I can fucking run with my idiotic fucking propaganda. Okay. It doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what you say. None of what we are saying matters. Okay. It doesn't. Like, look at this guy. You know what shouldn't happen? Killing 260 people at a... Oh, okay. So I was wrong. This is the part that appears uh, by the clip of. Matter what you say, none of what we are saying matters. Okay, it doesn't. Like, look at this guy. You know what shouldn't happen? Killing 260 people at a music festival. No, you're right, man. That just happened on its own because, like, bad guys wanted to do bad things. You're right, dude. If they fucking subjugated you to a open air prison your whole fucking life, you're gonna break out eventually when you realize. That there is no other way to get out of it. Like, do you think? Did you know that? The only way for the people in Gaza to break out and escape their open air prison was to shoot 250 uh, young people that were dancing at a music festival. That was the op. Like, I don't know if you know that. They were all there holding a button. They had a, they had a button. Every single one of them had a button that was attached to their heartbeat. Okay. That keeps the gates gaza locked on the open air prison and the only way to open the gates is to to kill them all that's the only way to free your fellow gazian brothers i don't know if you knew that yeah that's what's so disgusting about yeah. all this it's but I, I mean making it sound like prison break like they were right. had to get their way to freedom no they went back to gaza with the prisoners it's like no, like this is like the insane situation that hassan's putting out is like imagine a bunch of jews in Auschwitz, right? And they mm -hmm. managed to somehow, even though they're in a concentration camp, they somehow managed to become a highly organized uh, military operation with weapons right. and like fucking little paragliders and shit. Right. And they, they finally break out of their concentration camp. But oh no, the German youth group just happens to have a rave set up right at the entrance of the concentration camp. And they can't, and they're just, they're so busy dancing that they won't move to allow the Jews to escape the concentration camp. They're trying to get through all these ravers dancing, but they just won't let them cut in because they're just so high on ecstasy and they just are just dancing like crazy. 
And oh my God, no, the only way for the Jews to escape the prison, the concentration camp is they just have to shoot these ravers that are physically blocking the entrance so they can escape. That's the that's the insane reality that Hassan and the people talking about this in this manner are like making it sound like they had to do, like they had to shoot these fucking kids that were just there at a music festival to escape somehow. That's why the open air prison thing absolutely makes no sense. It's like the Jews breaking out of the concentration camp, killing a bunch of Nazis, and then going home to the concentration camp. Yeah. It's like afterwards, dude, it just makes absolutely no sense. Yeah. yeah. There's a, I mean, you can see a lot of pictures inside Gaza. And I, this idea that it's an open air prison is just. That fucking idea is so. I mean, it looks like it's obviously poor, but yeah, like what's what's he want? He wants all these people to like move to Europe or something. I mean, what is what's he advocating here for? Do you think that this happened out of nowhere? Do you think this happened out of thin air? Are you fucking stupid? So for some reason, he thinks every single Israeli action. Israeli government action against um, the Palestinians, that all happened out of nowhere. That all happens in a vacuum. That all happens because Israel's evil, right? But everything that Hamas does or the Palestinians do against Israel, that all happens for some very complicated reason that we have to fully understand the context of. So, yeah, yeah, because he agrees with them. Do you think the the Israeli state was just like peacefully coexisting, and then these guys came in with fucking gliders out of nowhere. Don't say fuck off, dude. They didn't deserve it, you fucking idiot. My goal is solutions. Your goal is the continuation of violence. You want way more than 260 people dying. You want every single Palestinian to be fucking executed ruthlessly in the streets so that you can build another fucking theme park in Gaza. You, you like this performance that Hassan has put in this angry performance? I don't. He's putting on. Right. I don't. Yeah. I don't like him accusing people of wanting to kill Palestinians. Right. But when Look, he's literally he, advocating for something that's going to cause way more Palestinians to die, and yet he course. has the gall to yell at some random chatter who's calling him a fucking idiot correctly. Yeah. Look, he's sympathizing with the terrorists. We're going to get a bunch of innocent Palestinians killed. And uh, everyone knows that but Hassan. You fuck baying pig. You fucking bloodthirsty, violent pig dog. Suck my dick. Here's, this is the exact same thing that he did with Piers. He's like, look, I lost the argument here. So let me get mad and blame you for, like, basically put the blood of children on you. <laughs> right. Right. It's exactly what he did with Piers. He was like, just in the time we were talking here, millions of Palestinian pe children have died, and you don't even care. How can you ask me these questions? This guy says, look, you're going to get a bunch of innocent Palestinian people killed. And he's like, no, you, you want them killed. You're going to get them killed. Carpet bombed. Suck my dick. <laughs> Isn't that weird? That's his, it's so weird that that's his, always his go-to. Is it it, is like weird. that's always his go-to. Whenever he gets angry, is to tell someone to suck his dick. That's so bizarre. Yeah. Unresolved sexual wonder. anger issues there, Hassan. Jeez. Look, it, you, I, I had no idea that he spent that he basically grew up in Turkey. I don't yeah. know the culture of Turkey. I mean, I know the culture of America because I grew up in America, right? Right. And I've talked to a bunch of Americans who've grown up in different places and kind of compared notes, right? I lived in mm -hmm. New Orleans for a while. I had a friend told me what the high school experience was like in New Orleans. We compared notes, my high school experience in California. I've talked to you a bit about your high school experience in Florida. Right. What's the high school experience like in Turkey? I don't know. Yeah, I don't I even have know. No idea. I mean, Look, I, I, I think Hassan's family was rich at that time too, so I don't even know if it's like a normal Turkish experience or whatever. If you went to like a boarding school or something, 
Right. I have no clue. Look, I think he's really more interested in it, winning arguments on the internet. Look, I, I honestly think if Hassan could win an argument, if it was between Hassan losing an argument on the internet and like 2,500 Palestinian lives, he'd be like, I want to win the argument. Like, that's how little he cares about really what's going on here. It's just like, he wants to win arguments on the internet. Yep. Just frankly, not cool. Nope. How do you think this happens? You think it happens out of nowhere? You think these people are just like, oh, we were violent because we want to be violent. You think that's where violence culminates from? Or do you think... See, look, he's doing it again, Sitch. He's using the poverty causes crime argument. Yep. <laughs> he's doing it again. You don't think people want to just subjugate people? You don't think people want to be able to do whatever they want to people around them? I mean, that's basically what Hassan wants to do. But no, <laughs> they're good people. Yep, yeah, look... If do you think if Hassan basically could do anything, if Hassan was king for a day, could just act indiscriminately on people, do you think he would restrain himself? No. I don't think so either. He'd be an authoritarian <laughs> fucking piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah. How many people do you think would die in that one day? A lot. <laughs> That's human nature. We need we all need institutions to restrain us. Yep. But look, in Gaza, the people who would build any institutions for restraint, they're in control. Right. <laughs> Nothing restrains their appetite. Yeah. But yet you have Hassan here simping for those people as if they're the good guys. As if it's all Israel's fault. Here's an interesting question to ask Son. Son, if you uh, had a magic button that could materialize anything you wanted, any reality you wanted, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but it took a population, right? Basically, you took the a polling of a population would vote on what they wanted, okay, to occur. Would you give this button to the people of Israel and trust their vote on how they want the, the conflict to be resolved? Or would you give this button to Hamas or even the Palestinians and trust their vote on how they want it to be resolved? What, That's who would a you great give that button? question. That's a great question. Yeah. Well, I'd give it to Israel, obviously. Yeah. Who, who would you trust well, look, to resolve it, the conflict in a, in a more equitable, peaceful, non-horrific manner? It's a little scary because yeah. there's the West Bank stuff going on. Like, yeah. is the button just... I mean... <laughs> Like you, if they had the the all power infinity gauntlet, I mean, right. when they were done, it might be all might be all Jewish settlements. That's in the what West I'm saying. Bank we, 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 yeah. So, who? What do you think the vote's going to be? Because I would wager that the majority of people in Israel would vote for a peaceful two state solution on that magic button. There'd be people, obviously, who would want to eliminate the Palestinians. There are people that want to transform them all into Jews or something. But I think mm -hmm. I think the majority would vote for a peaceful two-state solution with uh, peaceful cooperative neighbors because they have a magic gauntlet that could do anything, right? Right. Yeah. That's what they would vote for, and I think the majority of Palestinians would vote for Israel Israelis to be wiped out of the face of the earth <laughs> if that was the the option. I think that's what yeah. the vote would look like. So uh, you got to keep that in mind, but you know. I think it's because you have entrapped them, you have bullied them, you have subjugated them, you have humiliated these fucking people. Two million people live inside of Gaza. I, they're not even fucking people in the eyes of Israelis. Two million. The average age is 18 years old. 57% unemployment. They can't even get fucking concrete inside of Gaza so they can build fucking water salination plants because 97% of their water is toxic. They're dying of mass starvation. You cannot push people.
Are, are they dying of mass starvation? Look, I don't believe anything this guy said. No, I, I have no clue. I don't think so. I don't. I mean, they now maybe. Is there but, like uh, a famine going on right. or something? Again, all of this restrictions that he's just going off on and on and on and on and on and on about. Why all those restrictions exist? Because of violence. Because of violence in the region that required Israel to restrict trade. Well, yeah, restrict obviously. Trade. That's why. Look, and you're going to have a giant unemployment rate if businesses can't move into the area because of security concerns. Right. Right? Like right. if every store is just a corner market <laughs> because, you know, that's that's the only business that can survive. Yeah. yeah, look, this is this is where you butt up against Hassan's stupidity about capitalism, which capitalism always like capitalism needs security to just as a basic foundation of it, right? Right. So you're not you're not going to get uh, any sort of employment. Why is he even bringing up unemployment? He should think of. 80% of unemployment is good because that means no more capitalism. <laughs> I thought that's what he wanted. <laughs> there you go. Right? I mean, I just, look, I don't understand. He's at cross purposes here. Do you want capitalistic businesses and employment in there or not? Hassan, stop yelling. Stop telling people to suck your dick. Your little baby dick. We already into a fucking corner their whole lives and not expect them to fight back at a certain point. Suck my dick. Again. You fuck. Why does he do that? It's so fucking weird. I don't look. I don't think I've yelled at someone to suck my dick since I was like 14. <laughs> <laughs> is that your is that your go to move when you're pissed off at people? Suck my dick. When you're pissed off at someone? Do we, do we, um, I mean, I don't think we've ever told anyone on the live stream to, I mean, look. I don't believe so. Can you imagine? Peace go. Peace go. Suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that'd be pretty funny. It's just so weird. It, it is very strange that that is his go-to angry thing is to go to suck my dick. That's very bizarre. Uh. Since he got a lot of sexual anger. To, to gross to work out I guess it is gross and strange he's the one that needs to like he's in he's the, the one he's the one that needs to like chill out get a good you know dick to suck himself maybe it calm him down <laughs> okay you know I think he's uh projecting a little bit so one thing I'm noticing so I'm I'm tooling around the Gaza Strip and there's these areas in Google Maps that you can yeah click on that are like 3d photos right every single photo is during the day i see buildings i see no people anywhere hmm. how, well, how do they have two million people in this city don't they um i thought so i thought when google takes the pictures they intentionally try to not photograph no, people because they like look when the they're faces. Oh, right they do there and there are there are a few people and the faces are blurred. Right. But it's hard for me to imagine that there's like 2 million people. I just look, you can't take a picture of a Los Angeles street without getting 25 people in the picture, right? right? I mean, it's a city. I don't know. That's very strange. And you have buildings that are four stories with a water tower on top, but it's on a dirt road and no, there's not even a person on the dirt road. Maybe they're they all, just, the culturally, the they just, you know, they stay inside. They're all they in the go. prison, Adam. The prisons are <laughs> oh. all inside the building. Oh, so when he says it's a prison, he's like, there's a prison in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's this? Let's, we're, we're almost done. Let's. Fucking piece of shit. You and others like you who turn a blind eye to apartheid, genocide, and ethnic cleansing are the reasons as to why these people fucking fight back. Okay, this guy can just fuck off already. Okay, <laughs> like everything he's saying is so incendiary. Yep. What the fuck? So much so that you fucking cackling hyenas sit around and think 
Oh, yeah, we're doing this in the West Bank, too. That's the peaceful coexistence project. Look at the West Bank. You're doing it in the West Bank so fucking hard now that you left your ass out in the open in the southern fucking border of Israel. Inevitably, the contradictions become more apparent and the state will collapse. There is no way to have a fascist coalition because endless militant conquest always ends up failing. So if you care about your fellow Israelis, if you care about Jewish people living in Israel, if you care about humanity, even if you do not have a moral position against apartheid, which you should because you're a human, right? You're a human, and it's disgusting to not have a moral uh, anger and moral outrage, not demonstrate moral outrage at the, at the sheer thought of an, a fucking apartheid state. Think about it from a more pessimistic, more cynical, but uh, self-interested perspective then. Fucking dog. So, uh, there you go. Dumbass. Um, so the last one, the last thing I'll say about this is, uh, so when Hassan, uh, jumped the gun, obviously on the hospital story mm -hmm. and, you and know, a looks, giant fool of himself. Right. And it definitely looks like that he was wrong about that one. Um, he has now adopted the position where he cries and whines and says, oh my God, it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant because, you know, Israel is still killing, you know, all these people. They're still killing all these people. Why does it matter, right? Why does it matter whether they killed this, you know, 500 people in this one hospital versus if they bombed a bunch of other places and end up killing 500 people total, right? Mm -hmm. And you guys might hear this too if you have a conversation with someone and they and you challenge them on this and they, you know, expose that they were incorrect with the hospital thing. They might try to give you this kind of BS excuse about why does it matter? Why does it matter, right? Well, the reason it matters, and you know, it's the same reason the whole uh, ISIS, not ISIS, the whole Hamas beheading babies thing matters, okay? Because you might say, well, why does it matter whether they shot 40 babies, whether they burned 40 babies, whether they beheaded 40 babies, right? So if you actually like look at historical events and riots and conflicts, very often they're sparked by some symbolic event. You, know, oh, you always talk about point. the yeah. Arab Spring was it was yeah. sparked by a person lighting themselves on fire. Self-emulation, uh, yeah. The second intifada that Hassan was referring to earlier was supposedly sparked by the president of Israel uh, visiting some location that the, the Palestinians didn't like him visiting. You know, They thought it was disrespectful, right? So... Even though there's like a certain bizarre lot, like cold Vulcan logic to like, well, why does it matter whether 40 babies were shot versus 40 babies were beheaded? Why does it matter if Israel bombs one hospital and kills 500 people versus bombs, you know, 20 different buildings and 500 people in total die? The reason it matters is because we are not cold, hard, logical Vulcan beings. We are irrational animals and we respond to emotional things. And the emotional idea of you know 40 babies being beheaded hits us very differently than just saying 40 babies were shot or died in a bomb. It's the same thing with the hospital thing. And Hassan knows this and everyone knows this and that's why there's so much fighting about it. People know it on an intuitive level. There seems to be something extra emotionally fucked up if there's 500 people in a hospital right, who are trying to get medical services, who are the families of people trying to get medical services, who maybe were told this is a safe area, and Israel drops a bomb and kills those 500 people, that seems extra fucked up, yep. okay? Not to mention it's just a huge amount of people. And it's not like, I'm not just like making this up, because when this was first reported, you were seeing there was lots of violence going on in Middle Eastern countries at embassies, at yep. American embassies, at Israeli embassies, in response to this this idea that Israel killed 500 people at this hospital. That's yep. why it matters. This is a symbolic event that if it was true that Israel did kill 500 people, that would create an emotional ripple 
throughout the world that would have ramifications, that would cause riots, that would cause people to try to protest to get their governments to take action against Israel, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And so when Hassan or some other stupid person say, why, you know, pretends like it doesn't matter, they're full of shit. It does matter. 100% matters. And they know it matters on an intuitive, emotional level. It matters. Yeah. That's why they're arguing about it. Yeah. If it didn't matter, they wouldn't argue about it and they wouldn't care. Yeah. They would just, They'd just say, say whatever. Right. Oh, it was the, oh, oh, it was uh, Hamas that did it. Okay. I thought it was Israel. Fuck it. <laughs> it's like so important to him that it's yeah. Israel. Right. So. Oh, okay. it doesn't matter. But I know 1,000% it was Israel. It totally matters. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> right. Where are all the people? No people. Uh, Dr. Mum for $20 says, Sitch and Adam are too good to use their teams as human shields, but I will gladly hide behind Sitch and Adam instead. Thank you for your selfless sacrifice. Well, there you go. Look, True. we jump on a grenade for you guys. Right. Uh, Soldoge for $20 says, Sidebar, I have a prediction. Peter Bogosian said, Aliens will replace wokeness. I say it will be AI versus anti-AI arguments. It's because talking to anti-AI anti Anti AI art people on Twitter has shown religious zeal to what is quote true art. Um, I would believe that much closer and more likely than Peter Bogosian's aliens take Soto. So I think that's a much better prediction. Is the AI conversation definitely could bloom? So I got in a good Twitter beef with the one of the artists who's in the class action lawsuit suing over copyright infringement suing i think stable diffusion and mid journey they're suing a bunch of them right and uh is it I, class read a action? Bunch... I thought there was only like three plaintiffs is it does that make it a class action uh it's I don't in the, the articles it's definition. listed as a class action so oh, okay i don't know the actual definition of class actions then but Maybe they're trying to get class action status so other artists who've been wronged can join the thing. Yeah, no, that would make sense. That would make sense if that was what they were doing. But anyway, I read a bunch of articles. Well, I read like three articles <laughs> because that's all I could find. But the article said that the judge was going to let them amend their complaint or something because there was something wrong with it. And so now they're going to amend their complaint. I don't think they stand a chance of winning the so, copyright infringement right. case. So to you be clear- get, Am I getting the, something incorrect? Well, no, I just want to be, be add a little bit more specific. Okay. Um, their, com their original complaint, the original lawsuit against Stable Diffusion or whoever was so poor that if it was like on the way it was, the original complaint was written, the it was without judge merit. Yeah, would summarily dismiss it. It wouldn't even go to trial. Right, and so yeah, yes. so he's giving them an opportunity to amend it. So maybe it can go to trial. Right, he's saying this legal complaint has zero merit. If you want to change that, if you want to fix it up, and he specifically said, "Listen, you need more evidence." <laughs> that's that's the key thing that you're missing here. You need to prove to me that your artwork was essential in building these things or is somehow included in these things in the software and the programming or something like that. Look, I just, they're not going to be able to make this hurdle of evidence that he's looking for. Copyright is very simple. I, I told you this before the stream started. It's what we were talking about. Like the, the copyright uh, judges, they look at, the piece, they're like, show me your piece and show me the infringing piece. Let me see how close they are. Like, that's just not how AI works. They don't, they're right. not able to hold up. A, they're like, here's my original piece and here's the piece in my style. And they go, whoa, 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 whoa. You can't copyright a style. Yeah. So, right. yeah. So I don't, the, uh, I don't think that they're going to get anywhere on copyright infringement. They may get somewhere eventually on right to publicity, like people putting their name in as a key, 
a keyword prompt. Mm -hmm. So, but look, I got in a fight with her on Twitter and they're calling everybody thieves. And that really bothers me since right. there's been no copyright judgment placed on anyone in this situation. And look, if you want to call someone a thief because they've stolen your intellectual property and you've got a judgment against them for copyright infringement, okay, that's cool. But that hasn't happened yet. Right. So I've adopted a stance of, look, if you're going to be loosey-goosey with the truth and you're going to call everyone thieves, I'm just going to call you a liar. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, and and I said before the stream, I said, I understand the arguments people make against AI art, and that's fine. You can make that argument. But as I said, I think in the conversation we have with Shad, I don't think, like, there's an argument there that people can argue about whether it's stealing or not. And I understand the argument. Th there's an argument, you know, whether you agree with it or not. There is something there to be argued. There's something complicated there to be worked out. Um, but I don't believe the current law covers any of that whatsoever. Right. And so if they want to have that argument from a legal position, there would have to be a new law created or the law would have to be amended more likely. Probably it would have to be amended to address that, which I don't foresee happening uh, because the amount of people that would want that law amended are very minor. And the amount of people that would want it to be that technology to be open is a lot. And I, so you have the majority of people who are probably in favor of it for their own reasons, even if they're selfish reasons. And then on top of that, if you look at it from like a the corporation standpoint, I, you know, and this is part of what we were talking about before the stream without getting into it because it's already fucking three o'clock in the morning. Um, I don't see Disney or any of the big corporations that really fight for copyright. They're not really going to give a shit about the AI stuff being leveraged. They're going to benefit from AI art being leveraged because they're going to use it themselves. And, you know, we were talking about they might even do a thing where as the, as the AI technology gets better and people are uploading like fucking, you know, putting Batman in, you know, Snow White, having right. like that remix. Snow White starring Batman. <laughs> right. Yeah, Snow we, White. Right. Because there's going to be all these AI remixes with, you know, uh, right. characters that they might actually come to some agreement with YouTube or whatever services uploading these videos where like, you know, DC and Disney are like revenue sharing your Batman in Snow White AI creation or something. Yeah. So I of don't, of course they would. Yeah. So I don't foresee any new legislation ever being passed, at least in America, to stop any of those stuff. And I don't think the current legislation covers any of it. So I, uh, you know, if you're an artist and you feel that your stuff is going to be stolen, you know, I don't tell you, I think you're kind of shit out of luck regarding that situation. So I have, you have not... to kind of learn how to use the the AI to your advantage. Like if you want, like this is what I'd say, if you're an artist and you want to make money off of art, you need to learn how to use this technology. If you yes. don't, you're not, you're going to be left behind. And I think that's it's what really, Chad. Yeah. That's what Chad said. And yeah. I mean, I totally agree. I, I haven't searched. There's supposedly a, something that you can search to see if your artwork was actually included in the training models. And I have artwork online, so I'm curious right. if it is used yeah. on in the training models. So. Well, and also, as Chad said, a lot of these models, um, I forget who, if it was Adobe or whatever, I'm sure a lot of these models that will be created by big companies going forward they're going to completely circumvent any of this shit because they're just using all license for art using, yeah. in the model in the first place. So they're not even going to, you know, they're going to completely circumvent the thing. There's the a place. there's a bunch of models that are like ethically trained on available sure. images and all that stuff. Like they're already working past that. Yeah. So it's yeah. kind of like they're already okay. We'll right. just use different stuff for the training. Yeah. Models. Well, and then also, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter because there's, you know, there's always going to be. People can create models themselves. They can put whatever the fuck they want into it. And they can train right, the model on whatever they want. So they might use your artwork yeah, they'll use without your, your artwork. knowledge. Yeah. I they think that's how Mona Lisa a, a or bit. whatever, you know. Well, you can use a Mona Lisa because it's in public domain. Oh, because okay. it's true. old it's so enough old, already. Yeah, right. yeah. 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 That's true. Old Leonardo's not really like, oh my God, you stole my Mona Lisa. <laughs> He's not around anymore. There you go. Oh my God, Look. you stole my copyright. <laughs> uh. 
I just, I, the only thing that I Mama think is mia. funny. Look, a bunch of the anti AR art people. Ezio, go um, kill that man. Sorry. Read something or other. I can't remember his name. He wanted to come on the live stream that we did with Sam and and Chad, which mm -hmm. I mean, I thought it was a good live stream, to be honest with you. I thought, you know, it didn't devolve into a shouting match. Right. But the AI people were super disgruntled the about that. People. Oh, yeah. The anti AI people were right. super disgruntled about that live stream. I guess not going the way they had hoped or something. Mm hmm. So they wanted this, they were very disgruntled that we didn't invite Reed along. Reed seems, he's done a bunch of response videos to Shad, and he seems a little bit unhinged. So we all kind of agreed. Reed's not coming on, okay? It's just going to devolve into like well, a Shad shouting Well, Shad doesn't want to talk to him. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I well, no, I, I mean, I, look, I, I agreed, and I think Sam agreed that it yeah. would probably devolve into a shouting match, and... We wanted to try to have some sort of constructive conversation. You weren't included. Maybe you were included. I, mean, I was I not included. You. I, I, okay. I was not included. Actually, no, you're right. I was. Well, no, I don't I know. Put I put you in, in that DM chat. room. So Listen, I was yeah. in some group chat. I'll be a little honest. I didn't look at it once. <laughs> well, look, okay. I, didn't I don't know what the conversation to. was. Look, I didn't so. expect you to. Yeah, this, this is why I love Adam. He'll just, I just yeah. like, Adam, you go fucking. Look, I take care of business. I'm a fuck. I'm look, I'm a producer. I'm on it. I do look. I've said we'll have Reed on. Look, Sitch and I are down for a shouting match. <laughs> I told him straight. Up. Yeah, if, we, if he wants to talk to us, I mean, I, I'm not super like you're very strongly invested in the AR conversation. I'm not, though I find it interesting. I mean, if, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm really I'm not that invested in it to be you're honest with you. Pretty invested in it. Look, it gives. Look, I have a BFA, Bachelor of Fine Arts. I'm like, this is the most I've used my degree in my entire you, life. You can be invested in it. You you are invested in it. So, I just think it's interesting, to be honest with you. Most and most of the the most interesting conversations are not really taking place, but that's beside the point. But um, Reed, I guess Reed clipped out some clips from there and was sharing them on Twitter, and that's kind of how I got caught up in the firestorm and ended up connecting with this Kara person who is an artist. All these people are egomaniacs, and I'm just, look, I'm not that type of artist. Oh, I saw, I saw so. this guy's video. Reed, yeah. His channel is Deviant Raw. That's it, yeah. Reed Southern Art. Yeah. Yeah, because and I remember because I watched it first because I thought he was who we were talking to. Well, no, so before I just literally typed in like Shad AI art and it was like the first result and I watched it and then I'm like, wait a minute, this is not who we're talking to. And I went and found the, you know, Fennel's uh, stream about it. But when I, his, because his video is awful. Like it's just like so much of it is just personal attacks and that's what i said like just talking about how much shad's art sucks and you know blah blah blah, blah. and i'm like okay that's I mean, what i said like you cannot like his art but it's not really like an argument in terms of you know the technology so you know i told him it all of his arguments were basically appeal to authority and all of his insults were trying to lower shad's status slash authority as an artist and he right. constantly taught look i've worked on matrix 4 i don't know if you've seen matrix 4 i don't know Sitch, if that's something to be proud of but like i wouldn't be bragging about that if i was you yeah. but whatever fine yeah so he's okay, trying to bolster his to right. but look it is relevant to him making arguments from authority because he's like look i have all this authority i'm a big hollywood guy oh it it's not relevant to whether it's stealing or not. It's not relevant to whether, you know, those like the moral questions about it has nothing to do with whether you make money off of it. Yeah, no. It'd only be relevant to a conversation of whether you, maybe you think how much of the industry might get replaced by it. That would only be like, that's when your experience would be relevant to the conversation. Everything else right. wouldn't be though. So, but whatever. Anyway. All of it. We already know that though. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Who cares about AR? Twitter sucks for twenty dollars. Thanks so much. It says, don't forget the Rwanda that Rwanda democratically voted to take land away from white colonizing farmers, which ended up with several white people killed. Anyone using colonizer or apartheid is explicitly calling for genocide. I mean, that's the way it definitely seems nowadays. Sick. 
Uh, Jared for $50. Thank you, Jared. says, if white privilege exists, why didn't he name his channel Hassan Piker? An interesting question. Um, I don't know that. Okay, let me start over. I go to... We're just going to do the $20 ones, right? I don't think we have time to do them all. We only have... We have an hour and 10 minutes. Oh, well, okay. Let's see if we can do it. Going to muscle through. We're going to do I, it. Yes. High Tech Alchemy for seven months says, if you were on time, I'd listen on the drive home. A team is S class. I checked. <laughs> there you go. Sweet. Uh, legit low talker for 12 months. Thanks so much with a, for one year subscriber with the ragamuffin emoji. Sweet. There you go. Uh, well, Bimo, thanks so much often. for nine months of discipline equals freedom. It says happy October and a very merry festive for the rest of us. There you go, merry festivus. Uh, see, now that's going to be the AI remixes. I'm going to be happy for. They're going to put George Costanza in like everything. It's Batman. Oh yeah, but with George Costanza. <laughs> That's what we weren't expecting, right? All the superhero right. movies starring George Costanza. How awesome would as that be? As Superman. Yes. As Green Lantern. No, that's a blame. As uh, Batman. George, as Batman, as Iron Man. Those as Suicide ones. Squad. There you go. There you go. Or yeah. Kramer as Thanos. Kramer as Thanos. Like, like, oh my God, it's just endless possibilities. I know. Like Look, we want to see remixes. all that. I'm excited. I am excited. I'm sure the movie studios are excited. They're finally going to start making a profit again. They're finally yeah, so, going to give the customers what they want. Someone had someone had a picture that was like uh, I saw on Twitter circulating of like George with like a robot arm and a samurai sword. <laughs> it's like oh, an AI yeah. picture. It looked really great, and I saw it. And they were kind of putting him in like, there was another picture that was great of like George, like, uh, like he was part of the crusades or something, but you're like knights behind him. And that's what I was, I was just thinking like, oh my God, the remix capabilities of you know, all this stuff is going to be so funny. How can you not love this? That's the thing. Like all these artists are being such gatekeepers. So gatekeepy. What's going on? I mean, I get it. If you think you're going to lose money, you know, it makes sense, but. And also, people are going to complain about like the like the like you know how everyone's complaining about sequels now. The derivative nature of this is going to be <laughs> fucking off the charts. Okay, you're going to have a million Batman in uh, movies and TV shows. You're going to have a million George Costanza. It like it's the meme potential is going to be fucking astronomical of all this stuff. Okay, it's just never. It's going to be derivative of derivative of derivative. You know, George Costanza in Twilight. You know, it's like it's going to be a million of these fucking George Costanza, Batman, you know, things like and then there's always going to be like some meme character. Someone makes one meme movie that's funny of like, you know, Homelander in, you know, Titanic. And then that's going to be like a, then there's going to be like a million versions of Homelander is X, you know, and that's going to be the future of entertainment. It's going to be all these fucking derivative memes, which, you know, will be Glorious. fun. But, but like the, the film people are going to be very upset by this. Nah, they'll get over it. I'll be right back. Okay. I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be great. Uh, Konos X for two euro says, will you also watch the Ethan Hassan stream? I mean, we're not going to watch it on stream. You know, I said I was kind of disappointed with Ethan's uh, performance, but Adam said it gets better later. So maybe I'll go back and finish it. But. Uh, Filthy Casual for 500 says, my channel just hit 100 subs. Congratulations. I lurked every weekend for three years. Well, that's great. Thank you. You guys are mostly good. <laughs> Thank you. We strive for mostly good. I wanted to give a minor celebration for my channel. Well, congratulations. That's wonderful. That's really good. It took me a very long time. I don't know how long it took me to get 100 subs. It took me a very long time to get any traction on my YouTube channel. I was basically like, didn't exist on my main channel. Uh, very, very low traction until my Gamergate video. So hang in there. You got you to gotta find something 
that gets kind of like picked up in the algorithm, unfortunately, to first get growth. Uh, Goro Sara for $10 says, I pledge allegiance to the Democrats of the United States of America. I denounce the Republicans for which they stand. One racism <laughs> under greed. That is visible. Their hatred and malice to all bodies. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. Listen, whenever we have like uh, someone on the left on who's like trying to trying to do the uh, struggle session with us, I'll make sure to whip that out, Goro. That'll be what we say. Uh, Thea Wolfie for $10 says, the reason Iraq turned out the way it did is because we tried to immediately install democracy after Iraq was a dictatorship. You cannot give somebody something they're not ready to handle. Yeah, I think that's true. I mean, again, I think a big part of it was, um, you know, what I said about not working with the Ba'ath Party, but obviously that is true. You can't just force democracy onto a group of people that don't really want it or have a cultural uh, mechanism in place to foster its growth. So, Zombie Squad for 15 months. Thank you, Zombie Squad. It says, quote, but sitch. Israel has conscription laws where it requires citizens to serve the military. Ergo, it's fair game to kidnap and torture children. I mean, sad, but I've I've heard that argument. Disturbing. So, you know. Oh my God. What? We've got to get this show on the road. Oh, okay. Look, let uh, me Cam see if I can find that video. What video? <laughs> The compilation. This this live stream has been infuriating, man. I cannot believe the idiocy. Yeah. What compilation are you talking about? Of Hassan being a fool. Oh, the Destiny thing? No, we're not going to watch yeah. that. It's already late. That's cool. Rudyard is coming on on Tuesday. Uh, he's bringing a friend. Nice. So, should be fun. Uh, Caleb the Cynic for $10 says, uh, tithing to the Church of Enlightened Centrist Truth. Well, thank you, Caleb. We appreciate it. Uh, Eli Eloisius Lechomas for one month. Thank you. Says one state being the Roman Empire. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Bring back the Romans. Sure. Lucifer the Torment for 19 months. Look at that. Thanks so much, Lucifer. The 19 months. Look at that. Says 18, 18 reigns supreme. Reign supreme. But not talking about economics. <laughs> what? This was there this super go. chat was almost perfect, Lucifer. Yeah. What are you no. doing to me? Look at that. Look, you get a whole MMT stream now just for this, just for your insolence. Uh, 19 Cere months, that's that's great. You know, he used to be a I he used to be a patron of Devin Tracy. Atheism is unstoppable. Mm -hmm. I, think I think he went he, back. I think oh, he did quit he? and then went back, yeah. He did? Really? Yeah. Oh. Good he told him. me, look, I thought uh, Devin blocked him or something, and he was like, right. fuck you. I was going to bed. Good night, Lucifer. Oh, good night, man. Yeah. Tell Devin we said hi. He was very mean to Devin. <laughs> <laughs> he was very mean to Devin when he uh, stopped supporting him. I think Devin was very mean to him. I was like, whoa, that's not Oh, no, never mind. He said, for. Devin, Tracy, and I hate each other. There you go. <laughs> That's why, yeah. I, look, I thought okay. they were going at each other on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. It was kind of cool, honestly. Look, I I don't know. This is a thing. I mean, Lucifer the Doberman's been a member of the I mean, listen, I think him for... being the mean to Devin Tracy was hilarious. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying. Well, I just, look. I don't know how Devin Tracy could be so mean to him. He's one of his patrons, for heaven's sakes, right? Well, I don't know what sparked... De like Devin Trace was being mean to you. That's no, I know, but I don't know how. What I don't know how their interaction with Lucifer Doman. Uh, you know, I don't know the specifics about that. So, whatever. He was I'm telling like, me you need to chill out. Look, I know, you guys... I know, I know. He listen. You tell Devin anything about like chilling out, he's gonna have like a fucking uh, hemorrhoid about. People it, like wanted a... us to invite him on the stream and stuff. They were like, well, "No, those guys are cool. What are you doing, Devin?" <laughs> He didn't seem interested either, but whatever. No. Who cares? Fuck Devin. He's boring anyway. Uh, Cerebral Palsy for nine months says, I disagree, Sitch. Hassan is so stupid that I'm not sure if he's capable of lying. Another Other better, sure, but not him. A-team reigns supreme. Well, listen. 
Yeah. Despite your horrific blasphemy at the end of that statement. A team. I think um I think this stream convinced me once and for all that that's true. I know in the beginning I said Hassan is smart, but uh Hassan <laughs> is definitely not smart after watching all this. He's definitely very very stupid. So. No, he's smart. He's Thank building goodness. his brand. He doesn't care about any of these people. He's got oh, okay. no so it's care just all cynical ploy. Is that what you're saying? He, they, look, this open air prison thing, he doesn't even believe it. He's like, oh my, these people, they're just normal people. Right. No, nah, he's dumb. He doesn't understand any of that. Uh, Stigma of the Rose for seven months. Thanks so much. This channel is still named Sitch and Adam. Sitch is still to the left of Adam in the name, therefore more to the left than Adam. <laughs> 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 Fix the name or admit the truth. There you go. Wow. wow. Adam right winger confirmed. Look, I guess we just have to change the channel name. No, it's, I listen, I'm more to the left than you are. What are you talking about? People read yeah. left to right. I know. Adam to Sitch. Sitch and Adam. Look, I think we were both. I think we were both raging today. Look, how, really? how's this? I feel like the left and the right should be united on this. It's kind of weird that it is. They are the mostly, situation. but the leftists are like off in their own fucking right realm. It's so weird to me to hear leftists bitch about liberals like they're Rush Limbaugh or something. I know it's funny. Uh, Theoden, King of Brohan. I like that. That's a good name for two dollars. That Says is Hassan, an excellent name. Hassan got up before noon. Fake leftist confirmed. There you go. True. Oh yeah. He complained about it, though, so. True. Uh, sketch for 15 months says, quote, we're all propagandists for the chicken nuggies. Oh, True. yeah. They are yummy. Andrew Clark for 16 months says, Hassan doesn't believe in free will or understanding truth. Hassan believes you can't eliminate or account for biases. There's no point in talking to him. True. I mean, the point is just to make fun of him, I guess, but that is true. Right. It's very Dr. Mad Diddler when that for five dollars. Look at this, Dr. Right. Diddler dropping yet another truth bomb. Oh my God! Says a team. This is, this is disgusting. A team eats tampons. Oh my God! And continues to try and return half-eaten food to restaurants for a full refund. S class is the best class. I love that he puts a. Yeah, so make sure you know that this. I think I came up with a. I think that is actually trademark A team. No, so I would used to say S S class is the best class. And for and some reason, either you or someone in chat took my and turned it into. I guess so. You were making. You were trying to make fun of my as a. And so, like people just like it, so we just ran with it. It is fun. Look. I wish more things rhymed with A team. <laughs> really you do. wish you had a s -s 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 echo know, effect at the end of Supreme. Many, many days yeah. I've sat in a chair and meditated <laughs> on this problem. Hmm. What, Supreme, how do me, we get a me, 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 me. how do we get a you, k -s -k -s -k -s you could say meme at the Supreme at meme, the meme, end meme, of meme. our moniker? I just told you. There is no solution. Supreme, a, a team reigns supreme, me, 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 me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not as good as, but nothing will. <laughs> yeah, just deal with it. <laughs> so is this true? You eat tampons? No, look, that's, uh, why would, uh, how could you even type such a thing? I didn't That's say they so were used. Bad. They're new, okay? Jeez. They're unused. Oh, really? I mean, you didn't say they were used. Oh, okay. Ugh. CS for $10 says, Hassan Piker, unironically, quote, I'm a propagandist. My God, they're going to kill us all. LOL. <laughs> there you go. Right. Uh, Philip Coggins for $10. Thank you, Philip Coggins. Says the Palestinian people are angry that they can't win the wars they started to commit the genocide they desperately want to happen. Now the genocide they're getting is not the one they wanted. I mean, that's not untrue. That's not untrue. 
Uh, Spoopy Two Lucy, euros. thank you, Spoopy, Lu Spoopy Lucy, for the five gifted memberships, despite being a dirty, dirty sticker. Ooh. Thank you. you. Are you still allowed to say that? Are you still allowed to of course. What do you of mean? the choppers? Why would I not be? Well, I mean, what if someone had photographic evidence that you, in fact, were a dirty, dirty chopper? So Adam may or may not <laughs> have some sort of photographic evidence of ya boy PSA Stitch <laughs> attempting to eat attempting. ramen. Attempting? Look, look, it looked like you were doing pretty good. What are you talking uh, with, about? With 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 chopsticks. Listen, I tried, okay, and I I I tried and I threw it on the ground. After a second, I said, "This is bullshit," and I grabbed the waitress and I said, "Listen, listen, listen bitch." bitch. This is America. <laughs> Give me a fucking fork. And she said, yes, sir. And then she did a backflip. She procured a fork for me. And I said, thank you. And then I ate my noodles in peace. Okay. She said $5. <laughs> she did not. There you go. Listen, Zero Fox says, screw the face reveal. Do a sitch chopstick reveal. There you go. Oh, yeah. There you go. It's coming. Right. I may, listen, there may also exist a picture of me petting Wormy that could exist. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying. It might exist. Okay. I, this is this problem is intractable. Right. What? I asked Chat GPT, what's something cool to say that rhymes with A Team Ring Supreme? I haven't when we did the rhyming thing before, I don't it was kind of not very good at the rhymes. It didn't seem like Got any more ideas? <laughs> what did it, what did ChatGPT say? A team like a laser beam. I mean that would a go with your branding, right? A team chases the dream. Oh, a, a team. team. We could do like the Queen song. A team chases, like a laser beam. A team chases the dream. Cream and sunbeam. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> in this dream. The A team. <laughs> I said, "You got any more ideas?" And it said, "Cream and sunbeam in this dream, the A team reigns supreme." <laughs> right. <laughs> A team is the killer queen. How about that? That's pretty good. Oh, here's one. <laughs> I'm glad Here you like it. Here's one. It's a stutter. You should say A t -t 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 team. <laughs> You like that? No, you I like don't. That? You know, like That's that awful. One? Why would you look? I like that. That's one. ridiculous. Good job, it's time for a team reign supreme. That's good. Look at that. You got your little stutter going on. You know, like that. A team. You can't even do it. That's the way I did do it. I did. You don't like my stutter? No, your stutter was wrong. My stutter's not cool. You have to do it fast the way I did. You're like, t -t 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 yeah. Team. There you go. It's like you're really cold. Okay. Right. Your teeth are chattering. It's very cold outside. We're not gonna get through all these super chats. What are you doing? We will. We got a. We got fifty minutes. Forty minutes. What are you talking about? We're at 11 hours and 9 minutes. We got 30 minutes, man. This thing chops off just wherever. Well, if you want, listen, we'll just do the memberships. Okay. Okay. And do the other ones. A Lord, and we'll do the rest on Tuesday. Spoopy yeah. Lucy gifted. I did that one. That's what got oh, us off okay. my chopsticks rants, but thank you. Why did White Bald in for $5? Lucy says, Adam, Lemonbug you... change her name. What's going on? Yeah. It's Halloween. Fake us out. It's Spoopy oh, okay. Lucy. Uh, Should it be Baldwin Spooky? For... She's spooky, but spoopy. Mm. Oh, okay. Dwight Baldwin for five dollars says, "Adam, if you wrote Hassan into your comic, what kind of character would he be?" He'd be like a dick sucker. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> He'd be like a chronic dick sucker. Okay. He'd be running around all over the place, just begging people to suck their dicks. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he would be doing. There you He'd go. Be like, oh, please, please, please. Uh -huh. I'm dying over here. 
<laughs> that's okay. what he. That's what he. Interesting. Doing. I didn't expect that uh, as your answer. Well, I think that would be something he wouldn't like. So I think it's like a propagandist, fucking larper, you know, kind nope. of idiot. No, no, just a guy who runs around <laughs> begging to suck begging people, people begging people to suck their dicks. Yeah, sounds like exactly. a Kevin Smith character. Yeah, totally. There you go. He's like, I'm so hungry. <laughs> I'm starving over here. <laughs> oh my god. Terrible. There you go. That's Hassan. <laughs> okay. And scene. <laughs> okay. He's thirsty, man. That's right. Justin knows what's up. That's right. He's thirsty. He hung. <laughs> <laughs> He's this hungry. man needs some milk. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. Him and Sam. Yeah, there you go. With buckets. That'd be a sidekick. <laughs> No, he would oh, be yeah. Sam's psychic. Oh, yes. With the buckets. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> Clip <Sam>. CT. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> Sam Ann and uh, Hassan. There you go. Don't clip that. <laughs> yeah, don't clip that. That's just going to get us in trouble. Uh, Lord McTheobol for 14 months. Thank you so much. Says, love you guys. Keep up the good work thank, thank you, you yes for 14 months lord uh, brian bishop for one month of discipline equals freedom thanks so much says what do you call a gender neutral lactose intolerant person oh that's a good question gender neutral lactose intolerant yeah hmm, i don't uh non, non by dairy <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. That's a good one. I like non that. by dairy. Oh, non I like that. Dairy. Uh, ostracy for 19 months of discipline equals freedom. Thanks so much. Says, uh, you guys keep saying this election of Hamas that happened years ago. Have either of you looked at the polling or support for Hamas in Gaza currently? It's not a mystery. Yeah. I mean, we talked about that, but I'm assuming you sent that before we talked about that. Right. So. Uh, Black Hat. But Who's... have you read their reviews for their women for only restaurants? Yeah, yeah. I haven't. <laughs> uh, Black Hat 0061 for 19 months. Thank you so much for the 19 months. It says if YouTube allowed you to stream or play anything without drawbacks, what would be the first thing YouTube would do? A team. Look at that. Uh, well, we'd stream Hardcore question. Henry, of course. <laughs> we'd finish up our infamous <laughs> Hardcore Henry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um I don't know. I have to think about that. I, it's not something I, I think about. Is there like some specific copyrighted content I'm like dying to to show people on stream? I mean, well, I would play some music and stuff. Obviously, some cool music. All the best copyrighted music you can't play. We, we need to stream music during the streams. I mean, I would be more just happy so that we could cover the debates. And news broadcasts without like in HBO, you know, real time clips without like fear of retribution. I don't know if there's like remember? a specific movie or something I'm like dying to show people, but so do you remember our controversy over the last Republican? We'll watch debate? Fight Club, that would be it. We'll oh, yeah, Fight totally. Club. That'd be awesome. Give commentary, but evidently, a bunch of people got copyright struck for that last Republican debate by Fox News months I heard later. about that. Yeah, Tim Pool <laughs> like, got Tim Pool got He did. Stuff. Yeah. So did um so did the other guy. That other guy. I can't remember Who's his name. Oh, well. David Again, Pacman. I didn't, I didn't watch their coverage at all, so I don't know did they just watch it and then they would talk during the commercials and then watch it? Is that what happened? Did anyone, did anyone According watch to Tim coverage? Pool, he was he was yelling at them during the debate. So, but they did watch it just all together, the same way that we didn't do. We did our recap. So, well, I feel like for it to be like fair use, you'd have to pause it like constantly to add uh, commentary. Like you just shouting over it probably wouldn't be fair use, in my opinion. Ours is more fun anyway. Right. I mean, That's we're going to continue to. We're going to do the, once it's like the Biden, the Biden-Trump debates, I mean, fun. that's just going to be, oh yeah, we're going to be doing impersonations 
There you go. Sitch is going to do Trump. I'm going to do Biden. Oh, whoa. It's going to be great. My son mm-hmm. is not a crack addict. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. That's actually terrible. That's not really good. I, I got to work on it. I got to listen to more Biden. Come on, uh, man. Come on, come on man. man. Come on, man. If you don't vote for me, you're not black. <laughs> there you go. Okay, where was I? Yeah, uh, let's PC, finish this thanks up. so much, come PC, on. for the 10 gifted memberships. Thank you. Uh, Demon Buddy for 15 months says, I recently found out my father believes Hamas propaganda. He thinks Israel just murders Palestinians in mass for no reason. Wow, that's oh, wild. Oh, that's sad. That is sad, yeah. It's wild. Huh. Uh, see, I think I said I this, but Mark Twins for Thanks so much for the 20 gift of memberships. Thank you, Mark Twins for Friends. Oh, that's awesome. Got 136 new members today. Based. Based. Thank you. Jenks. A hundred percent. I mean, a hundred of those were from J Mac. Thank you, J Mac. Yes, our surrogate father. Uh, Rico yeah. Zoro for nineteen months says vapid free will simp with the don't tread on me lip. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. I like it though. Uh, Hayden Dill for fifteen months says happy early episode three hundred guys. What are you planning for the grand event that you can share? Cake, goodie bags, kicking doomer. S class love and A team uh, shocker jester. I mean, we're probably going to take away Doomer's wrench. That'll be That's fun. True. Right at the start of the 300 show. We're going to have of Doomer course. on and we're going to take his wrench away. Right. We're going to say, Doomer, listen. Him. We're going to say, Doomer, listen. We know and then you really ban want him to talk from the to, chat. <laughs> we know you really want to talk to YMS. So. Come on and talk to him. And then when he comes on, we just take his wrench away, kick him from the chat, kick him from the Zoom call. And we all laugh. <laughs> I'll laugh and, and point. <laughs> we all laugh and point. And then confetti banner falls in your room. <laughs> confetti just drops. And then we just end it. That's all it was. That's the entire stream. How terrible. <laughs> How awful. Would You're that a bad be? person for even imagining that. I want you to know that. <laughs> I like Doomer. Look, I'm... I consider Doomer a close personal friend. It offends me that you're like beating up on him so badly. That's hilarious. Go on. People would love if we did that. They probably love I mean, that it, more than look, what we actually hilarious. do. It is hilarious. It is hilarious, but right. yeah. But there we're not going to do that. But we we have actually. I mean, I we've got a pretty good idea going. We have a really cool plan, so hopefully yes. we'll be able to manifest. Adam is, Adam is being a great producer. Well, we, look, He's working hard to manifest. We've that already, plan. we've already look. We've already got the core guests booked. So That's I think, good. Um, yeah, I think we're off to a stellar start. We are off to a stellar yeah. start. Yes, we have a very cool idea mm-hmm. uh, planned. So right. So. Uh, Otto Mata for 11 months. Thanks so much. Says, listen, bro. Sure, they might have taken out some babies, but sometimes doctors prescribe drugs that take out babies. Sorry, saying there's a difference. <laughs> there you go. Doctors are, are terrorists in Hassan Piker's eyes, obviously. Uh, Michael Gallup for 13 months. Says, Sitch. Excuse me. Sitch, you're doing a straw man. Most people aren't saying it's going to be all roses because we said, okay. Evacuate. They're saying they aren't this evil entity some people paint. Well, I mean, I don't believe I said that. I believe what I was referring to is just sort of this um, dismissive way that Alan Dershowitz, and I've heard other people talk about this kind of dismissive way about the whole idea that, well, they can just leave, they can just evacuate. You know, it's not dismissive. Um, you have to accept the cold, hard reality that a lot of uh, civilians will die, and you just have to talk about it and deal with it. And I mean, it's not a good thing. It's like, that's just the reality situation. So I just don't like kind of the uh, flippant attitude some people have where they try to make it seem like, well, you know, they can all just leave. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, F- Philip Hogan, thanks so much for 10 months, says Egypt hates Hamas almost as much as the Israelis. And the last time Jordan took them in, they tried to start a civil war and assassinate the king in the 70s. Yeah, no, I, I know. They're not. <laughs> 
They don't want, I mean, that's why Egypt isn't letting them in because they don't like Hamas and they don't trust uh, Palestinian refugees. And they're afraid that Egypt is afraid that if they let in Palestinian refugees, that they'll never leave. Well, and they're like a criminal gang, right? Yeah. And they're afraid of criminal elements in the Palestinian uh, population. So, but I mean, that should really be what the leftists are all calling for. They should be calling for a, calling for an international coalition of the surrounding Arab countries, Egypt, Jordan, et cetera. I don't know if they want to go to Syria or Lebanon, but Egypt and Jordan to accept refugees with the UN's help. That's what the, the leftists should be calling for. And it's very interesting that they're uh, not calling for that at all. So now Egypt doesn't want to do that, but it's just the fact that they're not calling for it is very interesting. Uh, Andrew Haskins for 10 months says, sometimes I just can't handle the cringe, you guys. <laughs> I'll change the channel. There you go. Oh, and the Sticks and Hammer 666 is using my art for his cover songs. Well, that's awesome. Great, Andrew. Oh, yeah, that is great. Uh, Nameless Ghoul for two months says, Hassan Nabi, quote, everything is propaganda. Hassan Nabi later when viewing actual propaganda, this isn't propaganda. True. Right. Uh, Pim Tool, thanks so much, Pim Tool, for three months, says, good thing I'm neither S-Class nor A-Team. Team pool fence-sitting supremacy. You will not get involved. It's complicated. There you go. It's complicated. Yeah. Uh, no undesirables. Thanks so much for joining the free will seekers. No undesirable. Equishadox for 17 months. Thanks so much, Equishadox. Says, thanks for another awesome stream. Triggered Sitch is best Sitch. Adam keeping it light despite the topic. Glad you're back and haven't lost a step. Thank you. Yeah. We're only off for one week, guys. <laughs> People are like, oh my God. We're off for one week. It's over. It's fine. But thank you. J-Mac sent us a nice message saying, look, you guys threw off my entire weekend. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. So, it happens. Thanks. It's, it's good to be, it is good to be missed. It's good to be missed. That's true. Appreciate the love. Uh, Kyle Petty for 12 months. Thanks so much for being one of your free will seeker, Kyle Petty. Says about YMS, it's obvious why he hates Drinker. Drinker covers mostly mainstream and is anti woke. YMS covers mostly indie and is pro woke. He's just post hoc justified. There you go. I was listening to some YMS videos yesterday and he liked Hardcore Henry. And who doesn't uh, like Hardcore Henry? It's a good movie. I guess, is that indie? I guess maybe it is indie. Um, I mean. Yeah. It's kind of like a weird in between, I guess. He liked Kung Fury too. I was like, I love Kung Fury. So, yeah. You mean, I never saw Kung Fury. It's like free on the internet. How have you never seen Kung oh, Fury? Oh, oh, oh. I, wait, that's the one that's like the side scrolling video game where he fights Hitler? Yeah. Yeah, I have to. It's amazing. That. It's funny. Yeah. I have yeah. seen Kung Fury. I thought you were talking about something else. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Orca for three months. Thanks so much. Says a movement of posting a black square. A movement of posting a black square can spawn from a lie, but open terrorist support warrants no quote awareness. Or me despises such cowardice. Hi, Adam. True. Hey, what's up? True. What is this? Why is Kung Fury 2 being released in Turkey? There you go. I didn't even know there was a secret. You know who's the best character in Hardcore Henry? Mm -hmm. The British, the British uh, robot clone. Oh yeah, remember the one like British soldier guy who helped him escape the building? I love it. Yeah, that's the best one. That's the best character in Hardcore Henry. Is that guy? He's amazing. Yeah, he's that's so the same guy as from District Nine. Yeah, well, he's same the same. Actor. He's he's the same act. He's yeah, it is, and he's but he plays all the versions of himself, obviously. That was a very, I don't think they needed the gimmick, of Hardcore Henry being first person because it was like a pretty interesting story on its own. We just put it in like a good action sci-fi flick, but I don't think first person movies are the future. <laughs> I'll say that. So. I mean, uh, I'll watch another one. I thought it was pretty good. Right. 
I've seen multiple of them. So Kung Fury release date is November 17th, 2023. There you go. In Press Turkey. Yeah. Kung Fury 2. It's got David Sam Sandberg again playing Kung Fury. It's got Arnold Schwarzenegger playing the president. It's got <laughs> really? Michael Michael Fassbender playing Colt Magnum. I don't remember a Colt Magnum character. Mm-hmm. Who's Alina? David Samberg? That's the guy who played Kung Fury. That's the uh, the he's the filmmaker. Oh, okay. He's just like a random he, guy. Yeah, he's not like famous. Yeah, he. Well, he's famous for Kung Fury, right? No, but I mean, he's not famous outside of that. Right. It's got David Hasselhoff playing the Hoff Nine Thousand. Of course. <laughs> Jesus, the fucking people he got for this. <laughs> well, he got David Hasselhoff in the first one. I think he did the voice. Did he? I mean, according to look up the IMDb, yeah. Yeah, I want to see Arnold Schwarzenegger as the president, right? I mean, that's pretty cool. That's pretty good. Good for him. He got jeez, I can't believe we got these people. Are we Arnold, gonna Michael Fassbender? Impressive. Right. Okay, let's finish this. Uh, you got Ahaz, the hot Viking chick? A a from the, has from the for first eight one. months. Says, have you guys seen the movie <laughs> Wizard of Speed and Time? Great independent movie about Hollywood. It's on YouTube. I haven't. I saw them talking about it on Red Letter Media. I think. Um, I haven't seen it though. It looked very strange. But I'll check it out. The speed effect can seem kind of funny and cool that they were doing for the Wizard of Speed. Is it hmm. like an actually like good movie? I don't know. Let's check it out. It's on YouTube. Let me check it out. The Wizard of Speed and Time. Okay. Uh, CT for Two Canadians says, quote, A Team Reign Supreme was my meme. There you go. CT coined the term. Sweet. I wish it was better. <laughs> wow, that was pretty <laughs> hurtful. Jesus. <coughs> this is why you should be S class, CT. I thought CT was S class. A team doesn't appreciate you. She's A team? I'm just saying, no, she's like neither. She tries to be a fence sitter. Wizard of Speed and Time. Someone said, no, it's terrible, but amazing. A total 80s movie. There you go. Oh, it's one it's of the movies. It's a room tier. That's interesting. I thought Sid was a double, double agent agent till tonight. <laughs> what does that mean? It's basically like UHF. I like UHF. I unironically like UHF. Unironically. It's funny. Adam doesn't like it because he hates it. Have you? Have you watched Turbo Kid? Have you seen Turbo Kid? I have not seen Turbo Kid yet. Oh, you gotta see that. Uh, CT for two Canadian says, I can have it, Adam. I won't. You can have it, Adam. I won't charge you. There you go. Sweet. Free stuff. I like it. Right. <clears throat> you thought I was a leftist? That's a, why. <laughs> Who thought know. that? I don't know. Someone in the chat. Sitch is irrationally afraid of communism irrational i think it's pretty rational <laughs> i think it's fair very rational I think it's incredibly <laughs> rational anyway we'll get we'll make sure uh ct for two canadian says i'm a centrist but you don't make it easy adam <laughs> nice oh no okay well uh Am stream's gonna cut off pretty soon like 10 so minutes no so. more yeah no more super chats so I'll re we'll get to the rest of Super Chats on Tuesday. Anyways. Oh, are we already done? Oh, nice. Okay. It's only 3.42. Anyways, thank you all for coming. Thank you all for your incredibly generous donations. Thank you for making it to the end of the stream. You who have made it to the end of the stream. You are the enlightened individuals 
You are the true protagonist of reality. You are the true wizards of speed and time. And we'll see you all on Tuesday. Clip it, CT. I should have said, suck my...